Chapter 76 Please allow me to challenge you. Luo Air's inquiry was temporarily blocked by Lin In. But private discussions continued incessantly. As a special agent of the Wizards Council, Tick was not in a hurry to mention the evaluation level, but asked about the knowledge of the Mathematical Olympiad with great interest. Lin In didn't mean to hide anything. The wider the spread of these basic mathematical knowledge, the better, so that no one could understand him when he proposed any theories in the future. A banquet where host and guest enjoyed each other quickly ended. After the goblins took away the leftovers on the table, Tick ordered his assistant to bring a transparent crystal ball with a radius of about 10 centimeters. The inside was filled with inexplicable liquid. Of liquid. Try it! Professor Lin! Tick handed over the crystal ball. Lin reached out and took it, turned it over and looked at it for a while, then asked curiously, How to use this thing? It's very simple. You just need to sense it. Just do it as you usually do when casting spells. And then judge it based on the color change. Tick said casually. Lin nodded and tried to use magic power to penetrate it. By sensing his sight, he noticed the strangeness of the liquid inside the ball. This liquid was composed of some element that he didn't recognize at all. It was accumulated in the crystal ball in a very lazy state. It was very difficult to control. Lin and tried his best to make these elements vibrate at a specific frequency. After a few clicks, only a faint red light glowed in the transparent crystal ball. Yes, this is how it is used. You can start. Tick reminded him again. He thought that Lin In was just thinking about how to use this thing, and did not know that the other party had already used his full strength. Then give it a try. Lin In took a deep breath, feeling a little more confident. He has seen that if he wants to drive this crystal ball, the real test is the computing power possessed by a wizard. Or rather, mental strength. Indeed, the higher the level of a wizard, his mental power will increase exponentially, and he will be able to control more powerful and complex magic. There is no problem in using this to evaluate the strength of a wizard. At this point alone, with the help of the intelligent brain, he should be no worse than a formal wizard. What he was most worried about was directly testing the upper limit of the magic power contained in his body. And he would probably not meet the standard. Start overload mode. Lin In recited silently in his mind. And then his eyes became extremely sharp. The crystal ball in his hand shook rapidly. The red light became thicker and thicker. And finally turned into a red. The professor sitting around the square table had different expressions. Some were surprised. Some were solemn. Or some had expected expressions. In just two seconds, Lin stopped. One third of the magic power in his body had been consumed. If he couldn't pass it, there was nothing he could do. Professor Lin, I didn't expect you to be a three-ring wizard, Tick said with emotion as he looked at Lin's slightly immature face. Three rings? It seems a little higher. Lin in glanced at the red crystal ball in his hand although it was more in line with other people's positioning of himself. He was not yet able to burn higher-level spell slots in his mind. Therefore, even though Xi Nao's computing power is sufficient, he has no plans to specialize in second and third ring magic for the time being, because he cannot form spell slots, and the cost-effectiveness is too low. At this moment, Roar on the side suddenly asked, I would like to take the liberty of asking, Professor Lin In, are you over 20 years old this year? Not yet, but soon. Lin replied vaguely. He didn't know if there was any magic that could test bone age. So it was better to be as cautious as possible. A three-ring wizard who is less than 20 years old. Roar's expression changed. And he couldn't help but stood up and spoke. Professor Lin, please allow me to challenge you. Lin paused for a moment. Not quite understanding why the other party suddenly did this. Magic star, Master August. He is Lord Roar's teacher. Tick lowered his voice and whispered. After the other party reminded him, Lin In immediately thought of such a person. August, the most famous genius in the wizarding land, became a great wizard around the age of 24. As for when he broke through to the third level wizard, Lin didn't know. However, judging from Roar's reaction, his presence may now be suspected of breaking the opponent's record. Lin In screamed secretly. If she had known it earlier, she should have said that she was just young-faced. In fact, she was already in her mid-twenties. The wizards present were very interested in this sudden challenge. Especially Philip, Theodore, and others who were very much looking forward to seeing the lame lord's words about the fire of H. L. that could not be extinguished as long as it was ignited. In view of Roar's persistence and the encouragement of the professors, Lin In, who could not find a suitable reason to refuse, had no choice but to agree. The location is at the training ground of Ieta Academy. Due to the flight experiment in the morning and the need to receive two distinguished guests, Helram gave all the teachers and students in the school a day off. 
but even so, there were not a few wizard apprentices who stayed at the training ground and practiced magic hard. After all, in the land of wizards, passing the assessment and becoming an official wizard is the fastest way to change your situation and reach the peak of life. But even hard-working students could hardly resist watching the fun, especially after hearing that their mathematical Olympiad professor was going to duel with another wizard. The wizard apprentices at the training ground immediately gathered around. You know, formal battles between wizards are rarely seen on weekdays. Gianni, I heard that you crossed the sea with Professor Lin In. Do you know what level of wizard the professor is? Alok asked curiously, looking at the two people standing on the field. The gray-haired girl hesitated, shook her head, and did not answer. Logically speaking, Lin should be a first-level wizard. But when he was in Harbor Town, he defeated the Archbishop of the Holy See. So she couldn't be sure, seeing Johnny and not being sure. Alok could only turn around and gossip with Pierce and others about the reason why Professor Lin fought so hard with Mr. Roar from the Wizarding City. No matter what the onlookers thought, Lin and Roar stopped 20 meters away from each other after entering the training ground. I, Roar, a disciple of August and a second-level wizard, hereby challenge Professor Lin N of Aida College. Roar put his right hand on the witchcraft medal on his chest and bowed slightly. This is dueling etiquette in the land of wizards. Since it's just a competition, let's just stop at it. Lin In responded succinctly and returned the favor. Chapter 77 The Second Level High Level Magic High Temperature Steaming and Killing After a few polite words, the two of them looked at the great wizard as the referee. Helram didn't mean to delay at all, and said directly, Let's start! The moment the words fell, Lin In took action first. Seizing the opportunity was extremely important in any battle. In an instant, Seven, magic missiles, condensed instantly and flew out like arrows. Roar frowned, feeling a little dissatisfied in his heart. Using zero ring magic as a test in a battle between official wizards was a bit too disrespectful. Secondary magic protection. Roar raised his hand casually, and a magic barrier blocked the front. However, what was beyond his expectation was that these seven, magic missiles, formed an arc and directly bypassed the protective wall, flying over from the left and right sides. Being caught off guard, Roar's pupil shrank, but his reaction speed was also not slow. Almost instantly, an invisible magic shield protected Roar in the center. Several magic missiles hit it, causing ripples, but they could not break it. This is the second ring magic made shield. But before Roar could breathe a sigh of relief, the second wave of magic barrage was already approaching. This time Lin didn't hold back. Those spherical bodies made of magic power are just empty sh. LS. Various flammable and explosive elements inside are mixed and squeezed together. And they explode at the moment of collision. The muffled sounds of explosions exploded on the training ground. The protective wall composed of magic power broke down instantly. And then cracks appeared on the mage shield. Is this really a magic missile? Alok, who was watching, couldn't help but exclaimed. All the wizard apprentices were also shocked. Of course, they were no strangers to the magic missile technique. In fact, most wizard apprentices who practice elemental science can easily master it, but its power is not satisfactory. So generally speaking, few people are willing to use it. However, Lin and actually used such zero-ring magic to fight against the enemy in a formal wizard battle, and its power was even more powerful than expected. On the training ground, Roar was already retreating again and again. One second he had just released a protective magic, and the next second, several magic missiles hit the same point at the same time using dense explosions to destroy them. The blow shattered. Not only that, the number of missiles is still increasing. At first it was 7 or 10, and then it became 12 or 15. Anyone with a discerning eye can see that. If Lin In did not want to hurt Lua well, I'm afraid the other party would have ended long ago. Is this magic barrage? Several professors present immediately recognized that Lin was using the magic improved by this great wizard. No, that can't be said. After looking at it for a while, they quickly discovered the subtle differences. Helram's magic barrage presets the flight trajectory of the missiles in advance so that it can avoid obstacles and launch attacks from various angles that are beyond the enemy's expectations. Its destructive power is purely based on the accumulation of numbers. Lennon's magic is different. Each missile has the power of a small fireball. And even the flexibility is not bad at all. Professor Lin N is probably a genius who specializes in magic. Philip couldn't help but sigh. A zero-level magic originally used for faint attacks actually produced destructive power comparable to a second-level upper-level magic. The other professors nodded in agreement. 
and then all looked in the direction of Heron Ram. They were curious about what the great wizard would think. At this moment, Helram did not express any opinions. He just stared at the battle between the two men, wondering what he was thinking about, compared to the students and professors who were watching the excitement. Roar was already sweating coldly on the battlefield. He was very aware of the gap between the second ring wizard and the third ring wizard. But he did not expect that the other party only relied on an improved zero. The ring magic made him so embarrassed. If you lose like this, you will lose more than just your own face. Thinking of this, Roar's expression became extremely serious, and a ring on his hand flew arrest slightly. Three ring protection spell, magic barrier. The next moment, a solid magic barrier appeared around him, blocking all the magic missiles flying from all directions. Although Roar used an alchemical item, Helram had no intention of stopping. Strictly speaking, various magic potions and alchemy props are part of a wizard's strength. But generally people who want to save face will not use such things in competitions. Lin In, who was in overload mode, was also keenly aware of the increase in the strength of the protective magic. He looked at the slowly declining intellectual brain energy reserve and immediately decided to make a quick decision. In an instant, a total of 36 magic missiles were suspended in the air. This was also the limit of his spell casting. This blow is comparable to three ring magic. Roar looked solemnly at the magic balls flying in from all directions. He raised his index finger and shook it slightly in the air. An invisible wave spread forward in a semicircular shape. These 36 magic missiles exploded in midair before they even got close. Continuous explosion sounded on the training ground. Alok and others, who just thought that Lin and was going to win, were stunned on the spot. They were confused for a moment. Could it be that something went wrong when the professor was casting the spell? Why did it explode before it even touched the enemy? Sure enough! A smile appeared on Roar's lips. After more than 10 seconds of fighting, he had already sensed the weakness of this magic. When the opponent turns the magic missile into an explosive, it also makes the spell itself extremely unstable. It only needs to apply a little force to destroy the empty SH. L on the surface. And it will burst spontaneously. So now, it's time for him to fight back. And it's the same taunting tit-for-tat style. At the moment when dozens of missiles exploded, Roar activated the Zero Ring Magic Water Condensation Technique. A large number of yellow-green water droplets emerged around him, through the smoke and dust raised by the explosion. It was like a continuous rain of bullets, heading towards Lin, and shot away. The moment he realized that the magic had been broken, Lin activated one of the few protective magics he had, Ice Curtain. A shield wall made of ice rose up from the ground, blocking him in front of him. However, when the smoke from the explosion dissipated, Lin immediately discovered something was wrong because the opponent's attack method seemed different from what he expected. Roar raised his hand and clenched his fist, and countless yellow-green water droplets burst instantly, sublimating into a stream of high temperature, highly toxic, and highly corrosive steam that directly enveloped Lin In. This is the second-level high-level magic, high-temperature steaming and killing. Chapter 78 Ice Road Considering that the opponent was a three-ring wizard, Roar used all his strength and had no intention of holding back. Philip and others also admired it, and thought that Roar's timing of casting the spell was very clever. With the help of a zero ring magic as a cover, he could definitely catch his opponent by surprise. Of course, no one present thought that this magic could really harm a three ring wizard, because it only requires a simple second ring spell, made shield, or a more advanced magic barrier to easily avoid high temperature steaming kill. However, Lin can do none of these magic. In fact, Ice Curtain is the only protective magic he has at his disposal but it has no effect at all in the face of such a large-scale offensive. Hot and extremely corrosive steam has surrounded Lin from all sides in the center. All the elements used for casting spells are essentially magic mimics. With his current strength, there is no possibility of reverse manipulation to seize control. Faced with such a crisis, Lin In had no choice but to use his newly acquired magic, liquid nitrogen ice field. Click. There was a slight muffled sound. In an instant, the highly toxic steam flow that was about to touch the surface of the skin condensed at the terrifying ultra-low temperature. In the hot summer, yellow-green snowflakes actually began to fall in the sky. Lin In moved forward step by step, and the terrifying low temperature spread forward at a faster speed. Is it Ice Realm? Roar's expression was a little solemn. Anyway, he finally forced the opponent to use the ring magic. Multi-pyroblast. Roar raised his hand again, and the second ring on his finger lit up preparing to use the airflow and scorching heat set off by the violent explosion to temporarily slow down the spread of the domain. Five violent fireballs emerged in the void 
and flew towards the spreading white mist. However, the reality was different from what War thought. The fireball rushed into the white mist and disappeared without a trace before it could explode. No, it's not that he disappeared. His magic power was frozen. Roar stepped back in panic, throwing away all the first and second magic rings he knew. Acid shot. Corrosion. Fire touch. Secondary magic protection. It's a pity that these magics have no effect in the face of the ultra-low temperature of more than 190 degrees below zero. They either condense instantly or disappear without a trace like a pyrotechnic. Cold sweat broke out on Roar's forehead. Just when Lin walked five meters in front of him, he finally couldn't help shouting. Stop! I lost this battle! Lennon's forward step stopped. At this moment, the white mist had spread to one meter in front of Roar. Just a little bit of cold air blowing down the wind made Roar shiver. What surprised him even more was that the masonry ground that Lennon walked on turned into a road of ice. What kind of magic is this? Roar swallowed hard. He could imagine what would happen if the white mist came into contact with his body. I'm afraid it would condense with the acid he released. Ice bar? Ice realm! Lin replied casually. Roar didn't believe it at all. It was not like he had never seen those three ring wizards perform this magic. How could it have such terrifying power? Obviously this is another self-improving magic. I have to say that you are a very powerful opponent. Mr. Roar! Especially the idea of mixing a large amount of chlorine elements in water and then erupting it in the form of high temperature steam is really creative. Lin In said with emotion. Said, this is another good magic from a sinister person. It will be his from now on. Lennon's compliment made it difficult for Roar to tell whether the other party was mocking him or not. After all, he fought poorly in this battle. First, he was embarrassed by Zero Ring's magic missile, and then he used magic props to finally regain some control. As a result, he was easily defeated by the opponent's high-temperature steam kill with all his strength. Resisted, it can be said that he has no ability to fight back. But Roar didn't know that Lin's words of praise were definitely sincere. If he hadn't successfully condensed the spell slot of liquid nitrogen ice realm over the past few days, this battle would have really been in danger of overturning. Only a second level wizard could do this. The alarm bell in Lin's heart had already sounded. Just using basic magic to hide the white phosphorus fire against the enemy was indeed a bit too much. While Lennon was reflecting secretly, Helrem had already announced the results of the competition. And a crowd of students and professors gathered around to watch. It's so cold! As soon as he entered the training ground and took a few steps, Theodore couldn't help but shuddered. In his perceptual sight, the movement speed of all elements dropped to an extremely low level. This is still a little bit of low temperature that remains in place because someone may have leaked information and has stopped releasing magic long ago. Several curious students even squatted on the ground, touching the floor tiles of the frost road. Isn't the ground very cold? Pierce said strangely. When he wanted to take his finger back, he was shocked to find that his finger was stuck to the brick. Only then did Pierce realize that it was not that the floor tiles were not ice-free. It was just that his fingers lost consciousness the moment they touched the bricks. The wizard apprentices who were as reckless as him all cried for their fathers and mothers. And they also found that their hands that came into contact with the floor tiles were stuck to them. And they could not pull them off. The tragic situation of several people made those who were also curious but had not had time to act. Such as Alok and others shuddered and hurriedly avoided the floor tiles that Lin and had just walked on. Idiot! All magic is extremely dangerous. Even if it is just the remnants of magic, you must not touch it easily. Kevin, the shaping professor who saw the scene, hurriedly scolded him, and then cast fossils to mud, destroy the cold floor tiles. Pierce and the others were able to take out their fingers, but there was still no feeling on that piece of skin, which made them all turn pale with fright. After checking it, Kevin couldn't help but feel shocked. In just a few seconds, the cells on the contact surface were completely necrotic. Could just the remnants of magic be so powerful? If it collided head-on, wouldn't it be instantly condensed into ice? Kevin glanced at Lin and in shock. Fortunately, although Pierce and the others were reckless, they only touched with their fingers. The contact area was limited. At most, it was just peeling skin. And it was not a serious injury. Chapter 79 The so-called genius is just a false name. Professor Lin, I always thought that those so-called magic geniuses were nothing great. At best, they just work harder and have better luck. It wasn't until today that I really understood how ridiculous this idea is. Kevin looked at Lin with an extremely complicated look. He originally wanted to see the incomparable magical eternal fire that Laud said. But he didn't expect that Lin would pull out another powerful and novel magic in an instant. Philip, 
Tick and others also had expressions of emotion on their faces. The possibility of being promoted again with their talents was very slim. And it was only a matter of time before Lin became a great wizard or even a legendary wizard. Thank you for your praise. Professor Kevin. Lin In nodded and then continued. But you may have misunderstood one thing. My magical talent is far from being comparable to those real geniuses, let alone compared to Master August, who is known as Star of the Magic World. Many of the improved magics are based on the theories of some scholars within the arcane society. As for the wizard's level climbing faster, it is just because he has been exposed to the arcana for a longer time than you. I don't have the slightest confidence that I can set foot in the realm of the great wizard within four years. Lin In shook his head and responded. Seeing how Harem's beard has turned white before he can become a fivering great wizard, you can see how talented August is to be able to break through this realm at the age of 24. Lin In will not be happy just because of a few compliments from others. The title of the number one genius in the land of wizards is just a false name. It would be too arrogant to bear this name. Not to mention that he does not have the ability to match it. And his secret may be exposed one day. Lin's humility, made many students and professors really don't know what to say. If this is not considered a genius, then aren't they all useless? Roar also saw that what Lin and told him just now was probably the truth and was not sarcastic. This was the first time he had seen such a humble person. As for the lost battle, Roar didn't care much. The opponent was a three-ring wizard after all, so it was normal for him to lose. Although there is no qualitative difference between formal wizards, generally speaking, unless one party possesses a set of expensive magic items, the winning rate in cross-level battles is usually pitifully low. Okay. Now that the battle is over, I think no one will question Professor Lin's wizard level evaluation results. Tick looked around at the students and professors gathered on the training ground and saw that no one said anything. He retorted and asked his assistant to bring the two boxes over. Under the gaze of everyone, Tick opened the first box, which contained three badges made of pure gold, with an extremely complicated rune engraved on the surface, which was the symbol of the wizard's council. The three badges are very similar in shape and appearance. The only difference is that there are one to three bright gems inlaid in the center of the badge. I will grant you the status of a three-ring wizard in the name of the wizard's council and under the witness of Master Helam. Tick took off the last badge and solemnly stepped forward and put it on Lin on the robe on the chest. Thank you, Mr. Tick. Lin in nodded. On the training ground, bursts of warm applause rang out. Not only to congratulate Lin on obtaining his identity, but also because the other party had just brought them an extremely exciting battle. I didn't expect Professor Lin to be a three-ring wizard, Alok said excitedly. Obviously the professor looked about the same age as them. I have already said that only three-ring wizards can be qualified to serve as professors at Aida College, a witch named Deborah said proudly, and then gossiped with several companions about the speculation. How old is the professor? Does he have a crush? What magic was used to defeat Roar? As long as you are under 30 years old, I can do it. The red-haired witch beside her suddenly spoke boldly. I'm different. No matter how old the professor is, I can do it, Deborah said subconsciously, and then quickly stopped. After hearing this, several witch apprentices suddenly blushed, and then laughed. The fight started. Only Johnny looked confused and did not participate in the discussion. She remembered that Lin N had only been exposed to magic for more than half a year, and now he had become a three-ring wizard. Ever since that meeting in UR Town, she had become increasingly confused about her former classmate. This is your robe. Professor Lin, on the training ground. After putting the badge on Lin, Tick opened another box and took out a gorgeously decorated robe. This robe is both a status symbol and a magic prop. It has slight magic resistance and can be dusted once a day. Lin reached out and took it. After looking at the slightly showy robe and badge, he suddenly felt that the professor medals and uniforms issued by Aida College were more pleasing to the eye. The most important thing was not to feel guilty. Tick handed the two tokens to Lin then took out a long parchment and read out the rules and regulations of the wizarding land. In addition to the cumbersome basic regulations that exist in the Sika's empire, the most mentioned ones are the punishments for wizards who harm civilians. And every item is detailed. For example, if an official wizard kills an ordinary person who does not know magic for no reason, or if he conducts taboo magic experiments in private and causes the death of civilians, he will face at least several years of forced labor or imprisonment. If the circumstances are serious, they may even be directly deprived of their wizard status and sentenced to death. And if you kill an official wizard, the consequences are even more serious. You will either be sent to a magic stone mine to dig for a lifetime, imprisoned for life, 
or directly executed. I have to ask, are you a psychic wizard, Professor Lin? After Tick finished reading the first hundred rules, he looked at Lin and asked, Not really. Lin shook his head. He had not yet learned the so-called psychic magic. In this case, there is no need to mention the regulations on the use of psionic magic. You just need to remember one thing. The Wizards Council prohibits the private study of psionic magic. If you are really interested, you can go to the Psychic Academy in Greenreel for regulations. Study, Tick solemnly reminded. Lin was somewhat surprised. Although he had learned from Philip before that the Wizarding Land was cautious about psychic magic, he never expected that there were special laws and regulations for the use of psychic magic. Chapter 80 The Giant Hand Raised to the Sky Seeing that Lin-En had written down these rules, the expression on Tick's face relaxed, and the previous serious atmosphere on the court was no longer there. Only then did Lin-En ask with some confusion, Mr. Tick, doesn't it mean that foreign wizards usually have to go through a period of examination before being granted the status of an official wizard? I personally think that the inspection period is no longer necessary. But as a matter of routine, I still need to stay at the Aida Harbor for a month. By the way, I want to ask you some knowledge about the Mathematical Olympiad, Tick said with a smile. Since the other party joined Aida Academy, it was equivalent to getting the endorsement of the great wizard Heron Ram. So he didn't mind advancing the process to gain favor. Of course, it's no problem. I happen to be very interested in alchemy. I'd like Mr. Tick to give me some advice when the time comes. Lin and responded freely. He knew very well that there would be no love or hate for no reason in this world. Since entering the wizarding land, the preferential treatment he had received was because he could bring benefits to others. Heron Ram hoped that the novel knowledge he possessed would make Aida Academy famous. Others believed that he was not weak in strength and talented, and should not be offended, and that he was a person worth pleasing. Therefore, Lin is not averse to using some basic scientific knowledge to exchange for identity, status, money and magic knowledge. It is essentially an exchange of resources. This kind of interest maintenance is more stable than most relationships. After the status-conferring ceremony, Lin En was embraced by a group of enthusiastic professors and students to celebrate until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. The drunken Lin refused Theodore's support and returned to the room alone. The moment he closed the door, he was almost sober. Obviously, the so-called drunkenness is just an excuse to drink less. A truly wise man will not easily let himself fall into the dilemma of confusion. Lin In sat cross-legged on the bed and began a day's routine of meditation. His mental power continued to spread, covering every element he could perceive. He continued to do regular exercises and broke through his limits bit by bit. In the battle with Roar, Lin has realized that he is now a squishy guy with high attack and low defense. He can easily kill most enemies, and at the same time, he will be killed because of a low-level magic that fails to protect him in place. Get rid of it. If you want to change this predicament, there are only two methods. Either learn alchemy, or buy some alchemy items for yourself. Like Roar, rely on items to activate higher level protective spells during battle. But it is time consuming and time consuming. Spending money will ultimately treat the symptoms, but not the root cause. The best way is of course to become an official wizard as soon as possible. So that you can build magic like, made shield, and, secondary magic protection, to protect yourself in all aspects. In recent days, Lin En has noticed that the growth of his magic power has been slowing down, and it will be close to stagnating and reaching perfection in about a week. In this way, how to obtain a bottle of, source of magic, has become the primary consideration. Applying for a student as a professor is one way, but it is not without its problems. First of all, I have only been teaching the Olympiad for more than half a month. It would be too hasty to suddenly say that a certain student has successfully graduated, and it can easily arouse suspicion. What's more, I have just obtained the status of an official wizard. It is unlikely that the Wizards Council will approve such an outrageous decision. Application. Therefore, this method can only be used as a last resort. If he is willing to wait a few months, things will go much smoother. The second is to obtain it through some possible black markets. The free fall experiment in the morning allowed him to earn 69 magic gold coins at one time. The airship can also bring him a lot of income. He can also get some research funds from Halram and he can collect it within a week. Enough for two to three hundred magic gold coins shouldn't be a problem. Barely enough. However, there is still a lack of corresponding purchasing channels. And sometimes even if you have money, you may not be able to spend it. Perhaps you can start from those apprentices who have no hope of being promoted to official wizards. These people are usually the most anxious. Or it is also a way to disguise your identity 
and go to places where people are mixed to gather information. Some thoughts were constantly flowing in Lennon's mind. Suddenly, the orderly elements around him were directly disrupted. Various elements collided and mixed together, almost causing an explosion. Lennon quickly gathered his thoughts and began to meditate attentively. Early the next morning, Lennon, who had meditated all night, felt the magic in her body and walked out of bed. On the desk nearby, the goblins have placed the prepared breakfast there. A piece of white bread, a grilled sausage, and the refreshing juice of the magic tree. After briefly washing up, Lin put his hand on top of the ingredients, checked the elemental composition, and made sure there was nothing wrong with them before eating slowly. 071. How much energy reserves are left? While eating, Lin and asked a question in his mind. Energy remaining 25.6%. Is that all there is to it? Lennon's action of slicing sausages paused for a moment. After arriving at the wizard's land, because there was no fighting on weekdays, the system's energy reserve once increased to more than 50%. However, in order to condense the magic bits, he practiced liquid nitrogen ice realm several times a day, which consumed a lot of energy. In addition, he had to deal with the wizard level test and roars challenge yesterday. So in just a few days, the energy reserve of the intelligent brain fell instead of rising leaving only half of its original value. Before he truly becomes an official wizard, if he wants to fight with all his strength, the power of his brain is indispensable. But this energy is replenished. It's too slow. Lin shook his head, ate the last piece of grilled sausage, drank the juice from the magic tree, and then got up and went out. He had a mathematical Olympiad class to attend this morning. As soon as he walked out of the professor's residence, Lin's face suddenly showed a look of surprise because he suddenly discovered that Aida College had an additional landmark building overnight, which was erected not far from the door. At, a large number of goblins are busy surrounding the building doing final repairs. It was a pair of giant hands made of pure white marble. The carvings from the palm lines to the knuckles were very fine. They were more than 30 meters high. There were two large and one small ones placed in the palms of the two palms. Lift them to the sky. On the pure white marble, the entire process of the free fall experiment was recorded in detail in the form of runes. The name of this sculpture is Lin's Two Ball Experiment. Chapter 81 Sudden News of Death. Boy, I'm Galileo. Just as Lin was complaining silently in his heart, a voice sounded from behind him. How do you feel? Are you satisfied? Professor Lin? The person who spoke was Tick, an alchemist from the Wizarding City, stroking his beard quite proudly. After Lin and ran away on the pretext of being drunk last night, a group of professors discussed how to record this morning's shocking experiment in the form of a sculpture. This is one of the highest honors in the entire academy. This means that every student who joins Ieta College in the future will be able to admire each other's deeds the moment they walk through the gate of the college. He also made some small suggestions on the external form of the sculpture. Coupled with the magic of several professors and the hard work of the goblins day and night, it was completed in just half a day. It looks, well, very shocking. Lin and said against his will. In fact, he felt that the artistic level of this sculpture was really average. Tick himself was very satisfied with this work, and did not hear the perfunctoriness in the other party's words at all. Instead, on the way to the Olympiad subject classroom, he explained to Lin how to express a wizard's inner thoughts through sculpture. Lin and always maintained a polite smile on his face, and it wasn't until he entered the classroom that he changed to a solemn expression. After being divided into classes, the number of people in the entire elite class was much smaller, with only 46 people remaining. No, from today onwards there will probably be 47 people, because there is one more Lydia. At this moment, the halfling girl is sitting at the front of the entire classroom, because she is too short. The table and chairs are all special, one size smaller than the others, and she looks very abrupt. Lennon's first glance after entering the door it focused on her. Facing Lennon's gaze, Lydia did not tremble like other students. Instead, she held up a parchment roll with great anticipation and said impatiently, Professor, can class start now? Hello. Pierce and others couldn't help but feel a little pity and nostalgia in their eyes when they looked at Lydia. They vaguely remembered that they were so excited on the first day of mathematical Olympiad class. Since everyone is so impatient, let's start class now. Lynn turned to look at the gray-haired witch and said, Johnny, please collect everyone's homework. I gave you a whole day. So you must have already calculated the data of the lookout. Right, Lin said with a smile. As soon as these words came out, there was a sudden burst of mourning in the classroom. 
as members of the elite class of Olympiad Mathematics. Each of them has good arithmetic talent. But the structure of the Wanwang Space Airship is very complicated. And the best airship airbag is oval. Even though Lin and has taught the corresponding formula before and given some data, it is still extremely difficult to calculate it accurately. But no matter how reluctant they were, they could only hand over the calculation paper. And Lydia was no exception. In fact, during the more than half a month of making the airship, every time Lin and took time to come over to explain the drawings to her, he would talk about a lot of geometric formulas and theorems. So her learning progress was actually no better than those of the students in these elite classes. We want it low. Lin took the stack of parchment rolls that Johnny had collected, frowned when he saw the first one, and said something. Deborah, why are there only volumes for the airbag and cockpit? But not for the tail. But you didn't give the data on the airship's tail. The red-haired witch stood up and said weakly, but it can be calculated. Can it? Lin and looked at the wizard's present and explained. The shape of the tail can be broken down into a right triangle plus a square. I gave you a proportional plan view. If you pay attention, you can find that the hypotenuse of the cockpit is parallel to the hypotenuse of the airship's tail. The length likewise, since there is data on the hypotenuse. Other data can be easily calculated using the Pythagorean theorem. It's not easy at all. The red-haired witch looked sad. Lin in, however, was merciless and said directly, When you go back, copy the corresponding formula 50 times. Also, before get out of class is over, give me another calculation of the data. All the students in the audience couldn't help but shrink their necks. They couldn't even calculate the area of the tail fin. What is this Pythagorean theorem? Tick turned to look at Alok and asked in confusion. It's a calculation rule discovered by the professor. For a right triangle on a plane, adding the squares of the lengths of the two right-angled sides will be equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse. Alok checked his notebook several times to confirm he was not wrong. His expression was vaguely excited. Having participated in yesterday's investiture ceremony, he naturally knew that he was in front of a three-ring wizard and master of alchemy. Such a big shot is actually asking me questions. Alok feels that this is probably the most glorious moment in his life. What is a square? Tick then asked. These nouns were all unfamiliar words to him. Squaring is the multiplication of the same two numbers. Alok was so convinced that he didn't even look at the formulas in his notebook. Then he introduced the alchemist master to the area formulas of circles and polygons. A look of understanding appeared on Tick's face. When he was learning to draw the array patterns, he also noticed similar patterns. But he did not summarize the patterns of each shape like Lin In, and also formed a pattern. An independent discipline. Some alchemists in the Wizarding City like to ponder these things. I heard that some people have even pushed the pi to the ninth decimal place, which is so accurate that it cannot be more accurate. Alok glanced at Lin In on the stage, guessing that he hadn't talked about his homework so quickly, and a bold idea came to his mind. He looked at Tick and spoke with an anxious expression. Mr. Tick, some time ago, Professor Lin and invented an interesting game. I wonder if you are interested. What game? Tick was somewhat curious. Alok immediately became excited, picked up the quill, and casually drew a 3 by 6 square on the parchment. After thinking about it, he crossed out the last square, and then explained the rules of the game. Read it again. Starting from one copper coin. Does the amount of the next square have to be double compared to the previous square? Tick repeated it, and then wondered why Alok had to specifically cross out a square. Yes, as long as you can fill all the grids. Then these ten gold coins are yours. Alok took out all his savings, and then continued. But any coins you put down are also mine. The difference between one copper coin and ten gold coins is a hundred thousand times. Tick became more and more interested in this game. He calculated it silently in his mind then picked up a pen and filled in the squares. When filling in the last number, Tick was surprised and said with interest, Interesting. Really interesting. The 17th square is 65,536. So the sum of all the values is a total of 131,107 copper coins. Alok responded quickly. Tick took more than 10 seconds to simply add it. And it was exactly right. He knew from the beginning that he would lose. After all, the wizard apprentice in front of him could not give him money in vain. But he did not expect that the sum of the 17 small squares would actually increase the initial value by 130,000 times. So, the other party specifically crossed out a box because they were worried that the amount was too high and they would regret it. Tick suddenly didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Since he didn't bring any silver coins or copper coins, he took out four magic gold coins and put them on the table. He was always willing to admit defeat. 
Three gold coins are enough. Alok didn't dare to ask for more. So he quickly pushed one back. The alchemist master in front of him was not the first person to be tricked by him. After being frustrated by Professor Lin, he immediately started playing this square game with his father Albert when he returned home. In the end, he theoretically won all the family property. And Albert still owed him tens of thousands of gold coins. But in the end, he didn't get a penny and was beaten severely. At this point, he understood the truth that being too greedy will result in a beating. Fortunately, this master alchemist is a man of his word. Alok accepted the three gold coins happily, but the next second he heard a familiar voice on the stage. Alok, since you know all about the mathematical Olympiad formulas, why don't you take the stage and explain it to everyone? The joyful expression on the 15 or 16-year-old boy's face suddenly froze. He shivered uncontrollably and stood up slightly tremblingly. Lin and looked at him very kindly. Good boy, you really have a way of using the knowledge I gave you to trick others. Under the gloating gazes of all the students, Alok had no choice but to walk to the podium, pick up a parchment, and use his shallow knowledge of mathematical Olympiad to stumblingly talk about it. Alok has never felt that time is so long in his life. He has forgotten everything in his mind due to the tension. From time to time, bursts of laughter can be heard from the audience. In the end, he only stayed on the stage for more than 10 minutes before he was expelled. Taking into account the learning progress of Tick and Lydia, Lin reviewed the geometric formulas that he had taught before in the next class period. When get out of class was over, Tick also gave him a gift in return. A book four fingers thick. Rune and Alchemy. Although there are some basic alchemy books in Yetta Academy, they are nothing compared to those given by an alchemist master. Lin flipped through a few pages. In addition to the analysis of some basic alchemical runes, this book also had notes written at the bottom of each page. There is no way that so many notes were written temporarily. They should be the textbook, used to teach a certain core apprentice. Even so, it is a very precious gift. Which means that when learning alchemy, one can avoid many deezers. Lin and said a few casual words, and put the alchemy book away. Tick had just finished a mathematical Olympia class. And his mind was filled with all kinds of questions that Lin and needed to answer. However, after glancing at the halfling girl who had been hanging around since get out of class, he was very enlightened. He said goodbye and left. Professor Lin! Lydia immediately came up, put her bulging money bag on the podium with her feet, put it on her waist, and said proudly, Yesterday, we sold 837 tickets all day long, totaling 83 magic gold coins and 70 silver coins. All here. The halfling girl kept talking about the grand event in the square yesterday afternoon. The team taking the airship lined up all the way to the pier of the harbor. Everyone couldn't wait to fly to the sky to take a look. Lin was a little surprised that so many tickets were sold in just one day. It seemed that the charm of flying was greater than he imagined. By the way, there is also this account book. Uncle Darren asked me to give it to you. Lydia took out another portable booklet and stuffed it into Lin's hand, which recorded the list of all the people who purchased the tickets. It even clearly states which batch of airships are on board. Lin asked Ji now to write down all these data, and then took out the 8 gold and 37 silver belonging to the halfling in the purse and returned it to Lydia along with the account book. When you go back, tell Darren that you don't have to send this thing every day. Just show it to me every once in a while. The halfling girl's expression became a little confused, because Lin's reaction was different from what Darren and others predicted. With such a huge amount, they thought that the other party would definitely require a daily inspection. Lin and didn't explain. He deliberately kept some loose control over money, just to see if these halflings would do some tricks secretly. An airship is just the beginning. There will be many opportunities to earn gold coins in the future. For example, the wizarding land still uses very backward papyrus and parchment to record text. He can make a lot of money just by selling paper. The bowl is full. It's just that he can't do these things himself. And he will definitely need to hire some trustworthy people. It depends on whether these halflings can resist the greed in their hearts. The two were chatting when a rush of footsteps suddenly came from outside the door. And then the classroom door was slammed. Lin turned his head and looked over. He didn't see anyone at first sight. He didn't realize it until he lowered his head. It was Darren who broke in. After not seeing each other for a day, the unshaven halfling became much more haggard than before. He walked in and looked around. When he saw Lin in, he suddenly seemed to have seen a savior and spoke in a panic. It's bad. Professor Lin. Ralph. Ralph is dead. Ralph? Who is that? Lin paused for a moment. But before he could think clearly, he was pulled away by the eager Darren sleeves. 
Chapter 82, Sleeping Mist, and Corrosion. When Lin arrived at the harbor dock, a group of people were gathering in the dark alleyway next to the Broad Axe Tavern. After squeezing in, they saw a short and fat body lying on the ground. Ralph is only about 1.3 meters tall and looks very strong. However, his entire upper body is a bloody mess, and half of his neck is missing. His eyes are wide open. His face is full of horror, and his hands are there was also an iron wrench clutched inside. Oh my god! Poor Ralph! Who on earth would do such a cruel thing to him? If he dies like this, what will happen to little Deanie? A female halfling kept sobbing while covering her handkerchief, said with a choked tone. Damn bastard! If I know who did it, I will definitely smash his head with a hammer. The halfling people present were also filled with righteous indignation, and they smashed the earthen street wall with their rough and callous fists in annoyance. Even Lydia, who was usually lively and cheerful, was furious at this moment, clenching her fists tightly. Suddenly, Lin frowned, squatted down, and put his hand on top of Ralph's robe. Under the action of magic hand, some of the white powder stuck to the opponent's body was absorbed. After using the basic substance analysis technique to decompose it, Lin discovered that this was not anything recorded in the system database. This is the powder from the rhizome of withered grass, which is usually used to assist in releasing a ring of magic sleeping mist. Behind him, a voice sounded. Lin turned around and looked over. The person who spoke was a middle-aged wizard. The other party was wearing a standard rope, and the metal hanging on his chest was inlaid with three bright gems and had a mark like a silver eagle. Before Lennon could ask any questions, the man took the initiative to introduce him. I am the sheriff of Aida Harbor. You can call me Leia. Lennon nodded and asked. Hello, Mr. Sheriff. I would like to know why Ralph died here. Is there any other discovery? I just asked the staff of Broad Axe Tavern. This halfling came here early in the morning and got very drunk. Then he went out alone. About ten minutes later, someone heard a fight in the alley and a voice calling for help. By the time we arrived, the halfling's body had been severely corroded, and there was no possibility of rescue. Leia told what happened very succinctly, paused, and then continued, I think there is a high probability that a wizard apprentice did it. As for the reason, it is not yet certain. In short, I have asked the security team to inquire and investigate. Lin nodded, agreeing with Leia's guess. If the person who did it was an official wizard, then Ralph would not be able to resist at all. Only apprentices need to use magic materials when performing low-level magic. Lin En lowered his head and glanced at the yellowish powder suspended in his hand. The other party must have used drowning mist first. So do you want to capture Ralph alive? However, it was obvious that the wizard apprentice underestimated the halfling's physical fitness. Sleep mist did not have a very good effect and even aroused Ralph's resistance. With the opponent's strength, if he hits any part with a wrench, it will inevitably cause considerable damage. As for what finally killed Ralph, it should be a ring of magic corrosion. Who knows what Ralph has done in the past few days? Has he made any grudges with anyone? Or is he quick to say things that shouldn't be said? Lin and looked at the halflings and asked. Ralph has been making airships in the workshop for more than half a month. Staying with us and not going anywhere. Yesterday afternoon, he even drove the airship for a while instead of Lydia. Darren said choked with sobs. Last night, only last night, we went to drink and celebrate. Let Ralph be responsible for watching the airship to prevent anyone from sneaking in and causing trouble on the airship. It's all my fault for hurting him. If I hadn't arranged for him to keep vigil, he wouldn't have held it in until early in the morning and then went to the pub to have a good drink. Darren said with a choked sob, and big tears kept falling from the corners of his eyes. My nose twitched. Lynn thought about it and remembered that he had met Ralph several times when he went to the workshop. He was one of the halflings responsible for making the airship cabin. So are you here for the airship design? Lin couldn't help but think of this possibility. Because the timing of Ralph's death was too coincidental. He just conducted a flight experiment in the square yesterday morning. One of the core makers of the airship died today. And the person who did it first used non-lethal magic like sleep mist. Which was obviously prepared. Take the person away directly for torture. Despite this suspicion, Lin still asked Ralph if he had any strange behavior recently, and then called a few people who heard the cry for help first, asking them to hear the cry for help from beginning to end, and then recounted in detail the process of entering the alleyway and discovering the body. Unfortunately, after some interrogation, Lin and reluctantly found that there were too few clues, because after hearing the movement in the alleyway, 
The first reaction of the townspeople was not to go in to check, but to run away quickly. Notifying the guards and the sheriff was the best they could do. No one saw the appearance of the murderer at all. Lin understood this kind of behavior very well. Even a wizard apprentice could cause horrific damage by using the fireball technique. Under such circumstances, no one could take the initiative to go to dangerous places. Considering this, Lin looked at the sheriff helplessly and spoke. Sir Leia, please pay attention these days and find someone who is about 1.7 to 1.75 meters tall and may have injuries to his leg bones, arms, or waist and abdomen. I can understand the injury, but why is he 1.7 meters tall? Could it be that Professor Lin and has seen the murderer? Leia questioned in confusion. Shoe size. Lin pointed to the ground in front of Ralph's body and replied directly. Darren and Lydia immediately looked in the direction Lin was pointing. But their eyes were blank for a while because they saw nothing. Leia was different. She walked directly to the place where Lin and stood just now. Through the perspective of perception, she could see the footprints made of some residual dust on the ground. Generally speaking, the height will be about seven times the length of the feet. Of course. I mean, if the person doing it is a normal human being. Lin and explained. For example, the ratio of his own height and foot length is very consistent with this. Standard. But if the person doing it is some weird thing like orcs or elves, that may not necessarily be the case. At least it can serve as a useful clue. As for following the footprints, that is simply a fantasy. The entire alleyway was trampled in a mess by the crowd of onlookers. And only the area near the corpse was a little cleaner. Leaving some traces. Chapter 83 The Other Side of the World Is that so? I've been taught a lesson. Leia's look at Lin became a little strange. He strongly suspected that the other party was also a police officer before crossing the sea to the wizard's land. Otherwise, how could he be more proficient in investigating clues than himself? Here are five magic gold coins. Help me give them to Ralph's family. Lin took out some magic gold coins from his pocket and handed them to Darren. Since Ralph was most likely attacked because of the airship, he naturally had to make some response. Otherwise, no one would be willing to help him in the future. However, the investigation can ultimately be left to Leia, who is the sheriff. After all, he didn't have his own intelligence personnel, and he didn't know which apprentices met the mentioned conditions, let alone follow up and investigate them one by one. Lin In now realized that although he had gained a lot of fame in the past half month, he did not have many manpower at his disposal, and it was difficult to get some information. In view of this, Lin had no choice but to remind Darren. Lydia and others to pay attention to safety recently and never act alone. The other party's attempt to take away Ralph failed, and he might make the next move. A wizard apprentice would most likely be just a pawn. They stayed in the alley until noon. Everyone who couldn't find any more clues had to disperse. As for the body, Leia brought it back to the security team, on the grounds that he hoped to find more things that he had not noticed before. Trace. On the way back to the workshop, Lydia and the others were in a very low mood. The joy of making the airship and earning a large amount of magic gold coins had long since dissipated. However, they still followed Lin and instructions and gave the airship's airbag to them. Drained. Then Lin personally replaced the hydrogen filled inside the airbag with helium. Both gases can provide enough lift for an airship. It's just that hydrogen is easy to obtain but flammable and explosive. I chose this thing before just to help Lydia complete the test of Heron Ram. In addition, he also has a little caution. That is, once the design of the airship is leaked and someone makes another airship using the same method, it will leave a fatal weakness. As long as the airbag is broken and a spark is thrown, this thing will turn into a big fireball flying in the sky. Lennon was thinking as he stepped out of the workshop. When he was about to return to Aida College, he saw someone who was beyond his expectation waiting outside the door. Mr. Lauder, what do you want from me? Lynn stopped walking, looked at the man waiting at the door, and asked, there is some news. Maybe there is something you want to know. Mr. Lenin, are you interested in hearing it? Lauder hunched over and spoke very respectfully. He didn't look like a gang leader in charge of hundreds of people at all, but more like a noble housekeeper. Lin stared at Lauder for a while and said indifferently, Let's find a quieter place to talk. He did not choose to return to the academy because in his eyes, it was not a private place. Please come with me. Your Excellency Lin. A look of surprise appeared on Lauder's face and he quickly stretched out his hand to lead them the way. The two walked all the way through the streets and the central square on the west side. After walking out of a long and narrow alley, they arrived at Nanchung District, which was next to the pier, and he had never been there before. 
Lin and looked around at everything around him. Ever since he stepped into Aida Harbor, the scenes he had seen were extremely prosperous and orderly. But the entire Nanchung district was different. There were only low houses and broken wooden houses. And most of them were the expressions on people's faces were very numb and anxious. For a moment, he even suspected that he had returned to the Sika's empire. If there is one thing that is the same as outside, it is orderliness. Although all the buildings are old and dilapidated, they were still built according to specific rules. I didn't expect there to be a place like this in Aida, Lin said in surprise. What is this? A slum in a city? I think it's not just yet a... This kind of place exists in every city on this continent, Lauder said with some emotion. As long as those noble gentlemen still live a luxurious life, it will exist forever. Go down. Lenin glanced at the other party and felt that the other party meant something. Because there were no nobles in the wizarding land, Lauder also realized the innuendo in his words and quickly spoke to make up for it. Actually, the situation here is much better than in Asika's empire. In Ayata, few people starve to death. In theory, even poor people with physical disabilities can receive enough relief food to survive. Relief food? Is there such a benefit? Lin was very surprised. The entire wizarding land was just a giant island. Logically speaking, there shouldn't be many places for farming. After Lauder's explanation, Lin and finally understood that all the grain-producing areas in the wizarding land were developed using magic. Those elemental wizards even developed special production increasing witchcraft. So the food production twice as high as the outside world. Lin In, dressed in a gorgeous robe, looked out of place in the entire Nanchung district, and soon attracted all kinds of looks, either envious, jealous, or inexplicable. Hatred? But when Lin glanced over, everyone on the street became respectful and humble. One of the people caught Lin In's attention. He was a middle-aged man in his thirties. He was blind in one eye. His whole body was larger on the right and smaller on the left. He looked very awkward. The five fingers on his right hand looked like monsters of sharp claws. After walking further away, Lin turned to look at Lauder and asked, Who is that just now? Could it be that there are races like half-orcs in this continent? But why has he never heard of it? Lauder hesitated and spoke in a low voice. That's a defective product. Defective product? Lin paused. I heard some wizards call them that. Lauder lowered his voice and explained. These people are all products of the magic workshop. Rumor has it that they are related to a wizard who is proficient in shaping magic. As long as there are 10 magic gold coins, anyone can undergo a transformation. But I heard that the success rate is very low and they will become defective. Pin is already very lucky. Of course, the so-called defective product is just a contemptuous term for wizards. In fact, it is as easy for a monster like this to kill a few ordinary people as it is to slaughter a chicken or a sheep. There is no shortage of people in Nanchung District who are desperate for power. The power of magic in the wizard's land is everything. If the transformation can be successful, it will be possible to reach the sky in one step and have power comparable to that of a formal wizard. Chapter 84 Bloody Thorns That's it. Mr. Lin. Lauder led Lin all the way to. The house seemed to have been abandoned for a long time. The exterior walls were covered with ivy. And the courtyard was overgrown with weeds. Only a few dead trees stood there alone. Making a rustling sound when the wind blew. After walking in, it was very lively inside. Hundreds of people were crowded in this small front hall. Lin recognized at a glance that these people were the sailors who had crossed the sea with Lauder. However, after not seeing each other for more than half a month, they looked even more miserable than when they were drifting at sea for half a month. Many people's clothes were messy. Their faces were sallow. And some bandage marks could be seen on their bodies. There were even several seriously injured sailors lying unconscious on stretchers. It's Master Lin! When these sailors saw Lin, they immediately gathered around him excitedly. But they were quickly stopped by Lauder. You all should calm down for a moment. I still have something to discuss with Mr. Lin In. After Laudy Laud persuaded everyone to leave, he turned around and looked at Lin In. Please follow me. Lin In glanced at everyone present, without saying anything, and followed Lauder towards the inner room. This is a living room. It looks shabby on the outside. But it is very clean inside. The tables, chairs and benches are all wiped spotless. Is there any news that I can tell you now? Lin sat down on one of the chairs and asked directly. Just today at noon, one of my sailors accidentally discovered a strange wizard apprentice near Black Doctor Ladaka's residence. I think it is likely that he attacked the man named Ralph Halfling. Lauder spoke in detail as much as possible. This wizard apprentice was wearing a black robe. He was about 34 or 5 years old. 
about 1.7 meters tall, and his walking posture was a little staggering. It was most likely that his leg was injured. The robe, there are still some traces of acid corrosion on the hem. Was it because the distance was too close? So while using corrosion to kill Ralph, he also hurt himself? Lenin thought thoughtfully. It is understandable that an apprentice would make such a mistake. In addition, he is very likely to be a member of the Bloody Thorns, Lauder said hesitantly. Bloody Thorns? Lin paused for a moment. If you remember correctly, this was a very strange potion that required a large amount of blood to be watered in order to bloom into the most dazzling flowers. But the other party was definitely not referring to a magic potion. I heard that there is a big shot inside the Bloodthorn who is willing to pay 500 magic gold coins to buy your airship blueprint. No matter what the method is, Lauder said in a low voice. Who? Lennon's eyes narrowed. And then he asked coldly, How did you get this news? I heard it from some well-informed whistlers. As for which wizard gave the order, I'm not sure. Lauder shook his head. So what exactly is this bloody thorn? Lennon leaned back in his chair and pondered for a while. Then suddenly asked, What made him even more surprised was that since the other party wanted the drawings of the airship, why didn't they discuss it with him first and make an honest purchase? After thinking about it, Lin In had some guesses. For him, the technology of this airship was nothing. But others may not see it that way. In a sense, this thing is a strategic weapon. It is always at the bottom of any alchemy workshop. It represents a steady stream of wealth. Normally, no one will sell it easily. Even I don't plan to sell airships before I develop the internal combustion engine. Facing Lin's inquiry, Lauder quickly explained. No one knew who the leader of Bloodthorn was. They only knew that it was an organization composed of a large number of wizard apprentices who had no hope of promotion. The internal forces were complicated. It has even attracted many official wizards to join. And it is said that it has deep connections with many alchemy workshops. There are rumors that as long as you contribute enough points, Bloody Thorn has a way to make anyone a 100% official wizard. Hearing this, Lennon couldn't help but feel a little moved. Judging from the information he has obtained from the insidious work in Aida Academy these days, a person's magical talent will largely determine whether he can become an official wizard. For example, a wizard apprentice who reaches the age of 30 and has not completed his studies at Aida Academy will be deemed to have no magical talent. And the possibility of making a breakthrough in this life is extremely slim. Even if you complete your studies and successfully overflow the magic power in your body. After taking the source of magic power, the success rate of promotion is not 100%. Usually only about 40% of apprentices can successfully become full-time apprentices. Wizard, you can imagine how difficult it is to filter down layer by layer. This bloody thorn actually claims to have the ability to make anyone an official wizard. If it is not a lie, it can attract so many people to join. However, after seeing those so-called defective products, Lin In would not naively think that this was a normal method. Otherwise it would have become mainstream long ago. The Magic Council has always advocated the use of source of magic for promotion. At least there are no side effects. And so many apprentices who are still alive and kicking after taking the magic potion are enough to prove this. Then do you know what they want my airship to do? Lin's fingers tapped on the armrests of the chair from time to time. As long as such a big thing is used, it is impossible to hide it. Sooner or later he will find out. Moreover, Lin In is already preparing to apply for a patent from the Alchemy Association these days. Even if the other party gets the blueprint of the airship, it will not help, unless they don't intend to use it openly at all, judging from the fact that after the flight experiment yesterday afternoon, it didn't take long for the other party to get the news and wanted to obtain the drawings. These people should be in urgent need of an airship to do something. I don't know about this. Probably only people inside the Bloody Thorn know about it. Lauder shook his head helplessly. Then the last question is, why did you come here to tell me this information? Do you want to get something? Lin stood up, stared at Lauder in front of him, and asked. Lauder's expression changed again and again, and he forced himself to swallow countless words as they came to his lips. In the end, he just responded with a wry smile. Actually, we are just looking for a way to survive. I remember when we were crossing the sea. Didn't you bring 300 people with you? Lin in asked very strangely. He remembered that all these sailors were strong young men at the beginning, but after not seeing each other for half a month, they were almost exhausted. Became a group of refugees. Even if you work odd jobs, you won't get to this point. You probably don't understand that the wizarding land is different from the outside world. Lauder said with a sigh. The most important thing here is people. Or rather our poor people who don't know magic. 
Chapter 85 Chaotic Nancheng District At the Port of Ida, a wizard apprentice can use some basic magic to support several or even a dozen laborers. If not, it can also be used as a magic stone to infinitely replenish magic power. So there is no shortage of people in most jobs. As for formal wizards, they are not engaged in production. They either hold important positions in the port city or conduct magic research in a workshop. They are high-ranking figures. In short, these 300 people are grabbing business no matter where they go. The reason why it was so miserable was of course because I didn't get it. There is no way that everyone has a backer, either connected to a certain magic workshop or a relative of some wizard. Only he didn't. What else can I do if I can't beat him? Of course, I was holding it back. So in the past half month, they have suffered a lot and lost some manpower. Fortunately, they have also learned a lot of information, relying on the dozens of crossbows they brought. They can barely stand firm in Nanchung District. Heal. However, it is obviously not an option to continue like this. Even though all he has brought are trustworthy cronies. If he fails to achieve success and can only survive on the meager relief food, no matter how solid the trust relationship is, it will inevitably fail. Cracks appear. Listening to Lauder's complaint, Lin finally understood the underlying rules of Ieta Harbor. It can only be said that he has not yet learned to view the world with magical thinking. And many things are constantly refreshing his knowledge. In addition, we can't establish ourselves in Nanchung District without your help, Lauder said flatteringly. It seems that during this period of time, you have been acting under my banner. Lenin's tone suddenly turned cold. He didn't want to make any enemies inexplicably. No, of course not. It's just that many people know that we followed you through the Sea of Mist and defeated the Maelstrom. Lauder quickly shook his head, saying that those were all additional effects brought about by rumors in the market, and they did not dare to do this. He hesitated, raised his right hand again, and said tentatively, And the cooperation between us has not been interrupted. Right. Lin immediately saw the extremely obvious flame-shaped mark on the back of Lauder's hand, and his expression was suddenly startled. He had really forgotten about this matter before. After all, this magic mark actually had no effect. It was purely used to intimidate the other party into obedience. However, Lin didn't expose this. After thinking about it, he took out a money bag from his robe and threw it to Lauder. There are ten magic gold coins here, which are considered as intelligence and follow-up expenses. Lauder happily took it. If he were still in the seaport town of the Sika's empire, a mere ten magic gold coins would be nothing to him. But it's different now. He lost most of his property in Eye of Death and supported so many people. He has long been unable to make ends meet. This money can at least alleviate his urgent needs. What is more important is the other party's statement, which means that they have re-established a cooperative relationship. Keep an eye on the apprentice's whereabouts. Do you know where he is hiding now? Lin asked. The other party was very cautious. The man I sent to track him accidentally lost him. However, I think his injury has not healed. He will probably go there again next time. Lauder hurriedly explained. Lin nodded. When he shows up next time, send someone to notify me as soon as possible. In addition, I need to know this person's identity and information in as much detail as possible. Even though Lauder agreed, he got to know many well-informed whistles during this period. He was just a wizard apprentice. As long as he had money, everything would be easy. By the way, have you provoked anyone in Nanchung District these days? Only then did Lin become concerned about the sailors of the ship gang. Judging from their condition, it seemed that they had just experienced a battle not long ago. It's Viper, Lei Luo. He is the leader of the gang in Nanchung District. He has undergone magical transformation and is very difficult to deal with. Last time we lost a lot of manpower to repel the opponent's offensive. Lauder explained the whole story in general. When he first came to Ida Seaport, he wanted to return to his old business and engage in cargo trading. Who would have thought that this area had already been contracted by several big shots? After going round and round all the way, he finally had no choice but to join the low-level gang. The reason why he chose to seize Viper, Lei Luo's territory was naturally that the opponent's power was the weakest, and he didn't have a strong enough backer. In other words, you are facing a lot of trouble now. Is there a way to solve it? Lin asked. It's enough for you to be here today, Lauder said cautiously. Lin was stunned for a moment and then quickly understood what the other party meant. He didn't make any disguise when he entered Nanchung District. Anyone who was interested could get the news. If the previous news that the boat gang was connected to him was just a rumor, it has now been confirmed. Is my name already so famous? Lin was a little surprised. Now the entire Aida knows that you are a three-ring wizard 
who is less than 20 years old. And your talent is even higher than Magic Star Master August. Lauder was not stingy with his praise. As early as the battle in Harbor Town, he understood that the young wizard in front of him would never be an unknown person after arriving in the wizarding land. He just didn't expect that it has only been half a month since he became famous. There are even rumors in the market that in addition to the age, fire that seems to be able to burn everything. The other party also masters a powerful magic that can freeze everything. Facing Lauder's praise, Lin didn't care much. He was very aware of his current strength. If he didn't use the help of his brain, it would be difficult to deal with an official wizard. And obviously not everyone can control this name. At least, Bloodthorn dares to do these little tricks behind his back. While Lennon was thinking about it, he continued to ask for information about Nanchung District and those magic workshops. Lauder had no intention of hiding anything and decisively told all the information he had heard from the spies. The more he listened, the more surprised Lin became. Because things like spending money on magic transformation are not uncommon in Nanchung District. Some magic workshops are even conducting some more creepy magic experiments. As for people who disappear inexplicably every once in a while. The order in Nanchung District is so chaotic. Don't the security team care about it? Lin and asked puzzledly. For those wizards. As long as there is no trouble in the main city. They don't bother to care about such things. Lauder shook his head. To put it bluntly. People like them, who don't play much role, are just tools kept in captivity by wizards to study magic. Chapter 86 Every Law is a Bloody Lesson In the evening, Lin and left Nanchung District under Lauder's ardent farewell. The moment you step out of the narrow alley, the lively and bustling central square appears in front of you. The broad streets were bustling with traffic and people, creating a noisy and prosperous scene. A huge airship passed through the sky above the city, causing waves of children to laugh and play in pursuit. Although Ralph's death caused a big blow to the halflings, life always has to go on. This prosperous and peaceful scene is in sharp contrast to the dilapidation and chaos of Nanchung District. However, Lennon didn't have much energy at this time, let alone the ability to care about the poor people who were devastated by magic. He was constantly thinking about the next action in his mind. Starting the investigation from the wizard apprentice, who attempted to steal the airship blueprints was probably a good choice. In addition to the airship matter, Lin also wanted to get in touch with the organization called Bloodthorn. Not only because he wanted to obtain a source of magic from this channel, Lin also wanted to find out how a wizard apprentice completed a class jump and whether there was any other way to be promoted to an official wizard. Perhaps the move into Nanchung District was a little surprising. In the next few days, Lin failed to receive a message from Lauder. There was no news from the security team. Lin was not surprised by this. Judging from Lauder's words and the chaotic situation in Nanchung District, the so-called security team may be deeply involved with those magic workshops. If he pressed again and again, the best result would be for Leia to lead people to find and kill the wizard apprentice. Give him an explanation, and the possibility of continuing the investigation would be slim to none. Since there was no useful news, Lin Eng could only calm down for the time being and continue his daily life as a professor. He attended classes to study magic and accumulated his magic power to the limit. Until the morning of the third day, Lenin took a lot of materials and prepared to do one thing. And that was to apply for teaching funds. Whether it's researching magic or building an intelligence network, money is needed in almost every aspect. Considering that an airship has already aroused the covetousness of interested people, Lenin is not planning to come up with more novel things in the short term. So if you want to obtain a large amount of funds in a short period of time, you can only start with teaching funds. This time, he was going to ask the lion for 100 magic gold coins. This amount is a bit too much. But what did Brotherson say? If you want to open the windows, you must first propose to take off the roof. However, Lin's plan had already come to nothing before it even started. Philip looked at the long teaching plan and shook his head in confusion. You are a little late. Professor Lin. Master Hellram is not in the academy these days. What a coincidence. Lin couldn't help but frown. Remember the psyker apprentice you brought back? Philip asked. White pigeon. Of course Len had not forgotten this. He had also visited the other party in the medical room once. But he was still sealed in the ice coffin as before. Yes. Master Halram left with this little girl last night. Probably to the wizarding city. Philip said uncertainly. Lennon nodded first. Then hesitated for a while. And then asked in confusion. Professor Philip. I had a doubt before. Master Helram seems to be very concerned about this matter. Beige is just an ordinary apprentice recruited by Kalu in the Sika's empire. Logically speaking, he has no relationship with the Great Wizard. 
Maybe it's because of Yetta. Philip said hesitantly. Aida? This college? Lin paused for a moment. He really couldn't imagine how Bay's life and death had anything to do with this college. No. I'm talking about Master Helram's daughter Aida. A child with great talent for magic. She looks somewhat similar to the little halfling girl. It's a pity that she came into contact with magic too early. He was still immature and died in a magic accident. So when I saw this psyker called White Dove this time, I was probably a little emotional. Philip said with a slight sigh. In fact, Aida Academy has a rule that only those who are 12 years old can enter the school, which is also related to this, just to avoid some unnecessary magic accidents. Lynn nodded. No wonder her ram would be so tolerant of a noisy halfling girl without any magical talent. It turned out to be Iwujiwu. Since the great wizard was not here, Lin En had no choice but to take back the long teaching list. Approval slips worth hundreds of magic gold coins were not something that these professors could make the decision about. By the way, Professor Philip, I heard that there are many magic workshops in Nanchung District that are using poor people for experiments. Is this true? This does not seem to be in compliance with the regulations of the parliament. Lenin thought of what he saw and heard in Nanchung District yesterday. Asked tentatively, Lauder's words alone were not enough to gain trust. Lin was even more curious as to how the great wizard Haram, as the actual ruler of this seaport city, viewed all this. He couldn't be kept in the dark. Right. Even if some of them don't comply with the regulations. So what? Most of the poor people who participate in magic experiments do so voluntarily. And no one can stop them. Since someone wants to gain the power of magic, they must pay the price. Phillips, the tone was somewhat cold. Elements. Shaping. Potions. Alchemy. There is no easy way to develop magic in every discipline. For example, the fusion of elements can sometimes cause unimaginable damage. The development of each potion also requires a large number of test subjects. Shaping magic requires dissection and study of the structure of those magical creatures. Even alchemy is drawing if there is even the slightest mistake in the formation process. The consequences will be disastrous. Almost every year, wizards die in magic experiments. Even if protection is taken in advance, it cannot prevent all accidents. Of course, the more casualties were the apprentice assistants and the poor people participating in the experiment. The past hundred years have been settled. In fact, every rule of the Magic Council is a bloody lesson. Lin An was speechless for a moment. In this chaotic world, it was obvious that wizards could not be expected to value human life. Professor Lin An, someone is looking for you outside the college. Do you want to allow him in? While the two were chatting, a little head suddenly stuck out from the door, holding the door with two little hands and asked. Seeing that familiar and lovely face, Lin smiled and nodded. Lydia, please take him to my room. I will be there in a moment. If nothing else, it should have been the arrival of his subordinate sent by Lauder. Chapter 87 Nor, I am so powerful now that it is unimaginable. In the afternoon, in a quiet street in Nanshan District, Apprentice Nur tightened his robe and his dark face was smeared with some plaster. Since he doesn't know shaping magic, he can only rely on this method to prevent others from recognizing him. However, such a poor disguise obviously did not have much effect. From the moment he entered Nanshan District, Newer was keenly aware that someone was following him behind him. Covered by her sleeves, Newer quietly observed the scene behind her through the reflection of the bronze mirror in her palm. About 30 meters away from him, there was a poor man in ragged clothes who had followed him for three streets. It couldn't be a coincidence. Damn it. Newer cursed secretly in his heart. He naturally knew that his risky action some time ago had probably attracted the attention of the security team. I heard that the youngest and most talented three-ring wizard in the entire harbor town, who crossed the sea from outside the wizarding land, was also tracing his whereabouts. Newer's face became extremely ugly, and his pace became a little faster. He walked through the streets and alleys, trying to get rid of the pursuer through the complicated roads in Nanshung District but he soon discovered that such a move would not help. Because there may be more than one pursuer, it seems the only option is to get rid of it. Newer's heart was cruel, and he circled half a circle, finally entering a collapsed house that had been abandoned for a long time. On the street outside, the three sailors who met each other looked at each other, hesitating whether to follow them secretly. If there was any secret passage inside the collapsed house, they would have lost them again before coming. Lauder gave a death order and never let the other party leave his sight. Thinking of this, several people gritted their teeth, leaving one person waiting outside, and the other two cautiously followed in. The collapsed house was empty. 
The only things left were a few broken wooden boards stacked in the corner and a half-broken table and chair. The walls were covered with moss. And a gust of wind brought up a stench. Rotten smell. Where are people? The two sailors were stunned for a moment. And just as they were thinking, a dim rune suddenly lit up on the edge of the door above their heads. Immediately afterwards there was a harsh explosion. And along with the shock wave, rubble and smoke instantly enveloped everything in the collapsed room. Before the two sailors even realized what happened, they were overturned to the ground and their bodies were crushed, buried with beams and a large amount of rubble. Another sailor who was guarding outside rushed in immediately, and what greeted him was Nur's evil smile and corrosion. The corrosive ray was in front of him in an instant, and countless crystal liquids spilled down. There was no way to avoid it. The panicked sailor fell to the ground and could only watch as countless acid liquids got closer and closer to him. Suddenly, a wall of ice crystals rose from the ground, blocking all the acid. The smile on Newer's face froze immediately, and he turned to look at the door and said viciously, Friend, I advise you not to meddle in other people's business. I am Lord Radak's assistant, Nur, a member of the Bloodthorn. Lin In, who had changed his appearance, did not reply. He activated Mage's hand immediately, and a large amount of gravel on the ground levitated, revealing the two sailors buried underneath since they were not directly hit by the explosion. Both of them were still alive, but their brains were hit and fell into coma. Seeing this, Lenin also breathed a sigh of relief. It seemed that he had arrived not too late, when Dang even looked at the sailor, who had not yet recovered from the shock of the aftermath of the disaster. He said bluntly, Move them out! Thank you, Master Wizard! The sailor did not recognize Lin in disguise but he immediately reacted and hurriedly stepped forward and dragged the two unconscious companions farther away. The expression on Newer's face became extremely solemn. He understood that he was probably in danger today. He stepped back step by step. His right hand quietly reached behind his back and gently drew out a copper rod. Magic barrage. Lin In, who had been paying attention to the other party's movements, naturally quickly noticed the other party's movements. After the sailors were farther away, he raised his hand directly and dozens of magic missiles appeared in the void. Official wizard? Newer's pupil shrank. Although Lin only cast zero ring magic, such a quantity was obviously not something that an apprentice could control. Realizing this, Newer threw the copper rod in his hand without hesitation. The runes on the rod lit up one after another, and then exploded violently. The ferocious iron pieces hit Lin in like a heavy rain. Go! The moment Newer threw the copper rod, he turned around and ran away. He didn't even look at the result. He opened a secret door on the wall and got in directly. He understood that this move might cause some obstacles, but it would never kill an official wizard. Sure enough, the next moment, the secret door behind him was blown open together with the earthen wall, and the violent shock wave directly blew Nur away. After rolling on the ground a few times in embarrassment, Nur managed to stand up, put his hand into the pocket on his waist, took out a bottle of dark green potion, and then poured it directly into his mouth. This is a bottle of transformation potion, which he prepared himself as an assistant over the years according to the secret formula. It has quite a lot of side effects. He originally wanted to find an opportunity to resell it at a high price. But now, he obviously can't care so much. He knew very well what would happen to him if he was caught. The moment he drank the potion, Newer felt his body become hot, as if his whole body had been thrown into a furnace. And he couldn't help but let out painful roars. Magic Barrage Several magic missiles whizzed past, hitting various parts of Newer's body with incomparable precision. Although they did not attack the vital points in order to survive, they blasted holes in the joints of his hands and feet. If a normal person was attacked like this, he would probably have lost the ability to resist. However, Newer was different. Under the influence of the potion, his skin gradually turned dark green, and the wounds on the joints of his hands and feet were healing rapidly. Newer's eyes were red. Staring at the culprit, who had forced him into such a situation, and a strong anger welled up in his heart. The transformation process after taking the potion is irreversible, which also means that he will continue to live in such an ugly posture from now on. But in return, Nor also felt that every cell in his body was filled with huge magic power. He is now unimaginably powerful. Chapter 88 Magic Transformation Hulk, Lin In, who just came in, was also startled by the image of Nor, but soon realized that he was overthinking it because the opponent's condition looked very bad. His height had swelled to more than two meters. His right shoulder was swollen, and his chest was heaving. Violently, water kept flowing from the corners of his mouth, 
looking like a deformed monster. So, is it the result of magical transformation? Lin immediately thought of the deformed people he had seen in Nanchung District. The so-called defective people. While he was thinking about it, the angry Nua rushed over and covered a distance of several meters in a few steps. Lin stretched his fingers forward, and a wisp of fire appeared at his fingertips, then quickly expanded into raging flames, and collided with Nu, who was running wildly. The scorching tongues of fire continued to bake and burn Nu's green skin, but the latter ignored it and let out a painful roar from his mouth. He faced the fire wave head on and swung his right fist towards Lin. Nor knew very well that close combat was his only chance of victory. Except for wizards who are proficient in shaping. The fragile bodies of other wizards are not much stronger than ordinary people. Faced with this powerful and heavy punch, Lin dodged sideways, and his thick right fist made a heavy fist mark on the earthen wall beside him. The strength and speed are much inferior to those of which hunters who have taken Divine Grace Potion. The most important thing is that Nor's punches are unorganized, and he obviously doesn't have much experience in close combat. But the recovery speed is quite fast. Lin In was keenly aware that the other party's burned skin was peeling off and healing rapidly. The pain caused by the flames burning all over his body caused Nur to fall into a frenzy. He glared at Lin in front of him with red eyes, roared again, and ran rampant like an out-of-control tank. Seeing this scene, Lin In did not use magic, but drew out the long sword from his waist. It was too dangerous to use white phosphorus fire at such a close distance. Even liquid nitrogenized domain could not use it in such a short distance. Complete instant kill within time. What's more, he still needs to stay alive. Seeing that Lin In was planning to fight him with a sword, Nud suddenly felt that the wizard in front of him might have lost his mind in panic. He had already seen that the other party was not a wizard from the shaping school. Otherwise, he would have activated his magic transformation when he got close. But if you are approached by a magician, what can the other party do? A proud grin appeared on Newer's face. Perhaps, he would become the first apprentice to kill an official wizard in a head-on battle. However, Newer soon discovered that things seemed to be different from what he thought. The opponent was not strong and fast. But he could always avoid the attack by a hair. However, his body seemed to be actively sent to the opponent's body. In front of the blade. In a moment, deep blood marks were cut on the green skin. Although these injuries always healed within a few seconds. Nor's expression became a little uneasy. Nothing is free. And so is his healing ability. As a wizard apprentice, the little magic power in his body is being rapidly drained. And it won't be long before he will be completely drained. Thinking of this, Nur's attack became more and more crazy. But this only made the flaws of his attack more obvious. Lin In on the other side also immediately noticed that the opponent's strength, speed and recovery ability were slowly weakening. It's time. Lin's eyes narrowed and he lowered his head to avoid newer sandbag-sized right fist. Then he turned around and slashed the dark green calf with his sword, cutting off the tendons of the leg muscles. Newer's huge body was instantly unbalanced and fell to his knees. On the ground, without waiting for the opponent to react, Lin swung his sword and stabbed straight from the side and back, and got stuck in the gap in the spine very accurately. Nor roared and was about to get up to fight back, but soon he was horrified to find that his entire lower limbs had lost control and his body could only limp to the ground. No matter how hard he tried, he could not change the situation. What kind of magic is this? Nur was completely panicked, and then the ravaged and shapeless ground beneath him quickly cracked and turned into fine sand, engulfing his body. After a few seconds, it solidified again. He recognized these two magic spells. They were fossils to mud and mud to stone. In just a few moments, most of Nur's body was embedded in the ground and could no longer move. This Lord Wizard, you can't kill me. Otherwise, Lord Ladak will never let you go. And, bloody thorns, you will never understand their power. Nur shouted in fear. What answered him was a sharp sword that pierced his shoulder from top to bottom. Nur's screams were immediately replaced by wails of pain. Lenin pulled out the long sword, pointed it at Nur's head this time, and said very succinctly, I asked, Answer! If you shout for one more second, I will chop you one more time. Newer's wailing sound suddenly stuck in her mouth, and she could only hold back the pain and look at Lin in in fear. Nur, the ninth batch of students recruited by Aida College, was forced to leave six years ago because he failed to pass the test of elements and shaping subjects, and joined the Bloodthorn the following year. Lin in slowly told some of the information he learned from Lauder, destroying the opponent's psychological defense, and then looked at Nor and continued to speak. I know you very well. Nor, so you'd better not try to lie in front of me. Otherwise, 
you won't want to know the consequences. Now tell me, where were you, and what did you do that morning three days ago? Lin asked. I was in the Broad Axe Tavern. The halfling named Ralph found me, and wanted to exchange the blueprint of the airship for a bounty. Nur's eyes flickered and he stammered. Lennon's eyes suddenly turned cold. And this time, he swung his sword directly through Nur's right arm. The sharp sting immediately aroused a burst of painful wails. Obviously the other person is lying. Because the day before Ralph's death, he had just conducted a flight experiment. Bloodthorn would not issue the reward until the afternoon or evening at the earliest. And the halfling was still helping to control the airship that afternoon. I have to be responsible for vigil at night. How can I have time to inquire about such secret information? I'm afraid you're not kidding me. Lennon looked at Nur, who was still a little dishonest, and said playfully, Did you know? There used to be a very interesting punishment in our place called Ling Chi, which was to use a knife to cut off the prisoner's flesh piece by piece. But don't worry. The executioner's skills are definitely better than you think. They will avoid those major arteries and ensure that the length and thickness of every piece of meat they cut is exactly right. Otherwise, the executioner will usually pass out. I'll also pour some salt water on the knife. Chapter 89 I heard that high temperature has a miraculous effect on stopping bleeding. Lin N vividly described the criminal law called Ling Chi to Nur. Nur broke into a cold sweat when he heard it. He looked at the sword that was constantly moving in the opponent's hand. It seemed that the next moment, he would slash his body with the sword as mentioned in the words. After hearing that the other party wanted to sprinkle salt on the execution knife, Nur couldn't help but shudder. He knew how painful it was to sprinkle salt on the wound. It would really mean that he could not survive, but could not die. Nor even felt that compared to the wizard in front of him. Lord Ladakh, who used the poor to do various magic experiments, had turned into an extremely kind person. Not even the devils in H. I can think of such a punishment. My skills are naturally not as good as those of executioners. It often takes less than a hundred cuts to kill someone. But fortunately, your recovery ability is very good. It must be good for practicing. Right, Lenin Rayo said. He said with interest, then touched the pocket of his robe and said with regret, It's a pity that I seem to have forgotten to bring a bag of salt. Nurse nearly collapsed rationality eased a little. At least he could die less painfully. But the next moment, he heard the demon speak. But it seems that direct quenching is also possible. I heard that high temperature has a miraculous effect on stopping bleeding. As Lin In spoke, he put his right hand on the sword and a burst of hot flame spurted out, burning the silver sword red. Nur's body was trembling, and at the moment the sword fell, he finally couldn't help shouting, Wait! Wait! It's me! I took the initiative to find Ralph! Ah! Before he finished speaking, the burnt red sword had already pierced Nur's shoulder, cutting off a piece of flesh from it. Nur was going crazy. His red eyes were staring at Lin, and he couldn't understand why even though he was willing to talk. The other party still refused to let him go. Too slow. Keep talking. I hope your words can be faster than my sword this time. Lin In took the sword back and continued to temper it to prevent it from getting cold. Facing such a ferocious, bottomless demon who was ready to cut people into pieces, Nor completely collapsed and began to speak tremblingly. The story started five days ago. One day he accidentally overheard several halflings in the Broken Axe Tavern, bragging that they were making a very large alchemy machine that could fly into the sky. And it did not require any magic. Not only him, but also the other drinkers in the tavern did not believe this, and only regarded these remarks as bragging by these halflings. After all, when they helped Lydia make various aircraft in the past, they also they would all boast about it. And as a result, the aircraft fell down without exception. It wasn't until Lynn performed a shocking flight experiment in full view of the public that Nor realized that it was all true. So after learning that a wizard in the Bloody Thorn was willing to spend 500 magic gold coins in exchange for the blueprints of the airship. He immediately took action and waited patiently near the Broken Axe Tavern every day. He understood that these drunkards the halflings will come sooner or later. Nor poured out everything like beans from a bamboo tube. He knew very well that once he finished telling all the information, it would have no use value. In the end, he would probably die. But it would be better than being hit with a hot sword, slowly chopped into a bloody skeleton. So you focused on Ralph who is alone. And after using the sleeping fog failed. You killed him? Lin said with a sneer. The expression on Newer's face was full of regret. It was not that he regretted the action of attacking Ralph. But that he regretted that he was not careful enough and did not expect that the cologne wine would affect the coma effect of the withered grass powder. Otherwise, his actions would not have existed at all. 
possibility of being discovered. Lin In did not believe the other party's words easily. Instead, he interrogated every detail of the action, asking Nor to tell him everything he had done in the past few days from beginning to end. Finally, he divided the questions one by one. If there is any hesitation, or if the front and back are not aligned, I will slash them with the hot sword. The sword cut open the flesh, and the blood was condensed by hundreds of degrees of heat before it even flowed out. After experiencing such a sour feeling, no one with a bright mind could make up a perfect set of lies in this situation. By the time Lin's cross-examination was complete, Nor had been stabbed 17 times. He seemed a little confused. He had reached the point where he knew everything and talked about it endlessly. Sometimes, he even learned to answer quickly in order to avoid being stabbed. Seeing Nor's face full of snot and tears, looking like he was on the verge of collapse, Lin In was also quite helpless. Wouldn't it be okay to just tell the truth from the beginning? If you insist on telling lies like this, force him to use some unconventional means. For Lin, who is not very good at psychological warfare, the only way to confirm the authenticity is to use this stupid method. Is the reward order still there? Lin In asked again. A full 500 magic gold coins may arouse the greed of many people. Lin In is not worried about his own safety. After all, he usually stays in Ieta Academy and is still a three-ring wizard on the surface. No one should have the courage to rush in and cause trouble. But it is different for halflings such as Lydia. No. The reward order has been withdrawn. Newer replied tremblingly. What's the reason? Lin In was a little surprised. Didn't the operation to capture Ralph fail? Could it be that the other party has given up completely? Lin In held up the tempered sword in his hand and kept shaking it. The hot blade made Newer's heart rise to his throat again. I don't know. I just heard. I heard that Mr. Ladak has obtained some construction drawings of the airship from other places. Newer responded quickly, fearing that if he was too late, he would be struck with another sword. Because of this, he was not treated as waste by Lord Ladak due to this failed operation. Lennon's brow suddenly frowned. Are you sure? Apart from Ralph, the only halflings who had actually seen the drawings were Darren and Lydia. Lynn was not willing to doubt them unless necessary. Of course, Lenin also knew that betrayal sometimes only depends on whether the price is high enough. 500 magic gold coins is not a small sum. This is why he deliberately used the ledger to test the halflings before. Probably. Should. Neuer's expression became a little hesitant. But he raised his sword in front of Lin and spoke very quickly. No. I am sure. And very sure. Chapter 90 Bloody Letter The sword in Lin's hand finally hovered in midair. Because Nur's words were not difficult to confirm. He only needed to ask Lauder to ask those, whistle, again to know whether the reward order had been withdrawn. In other words, the people inside, Bloody Thorns, probably already know how to make airships. But I don't know if they have confirmed that this thing is suspended by gas that is lower than air density inside the air bag. It may not seem difficult to discover this. But the mainstream theory of flight in the wizarding land is to rely on thrust to lift off, or to use shaping magic to imitate the flight of birds. Although the wizards of the element school have long discovered the existence of these elements, the buoyancy of hydrogen, helium, neon, ammonia and other gases alone is very weak. For example, if you want to lift a person up, you must maintain more than 60 cubic meters of hydrogen gas around you at all times, which consumes countless magic powers. It is estimated that no wizard would consider flying in this way. It is precisely because of this that after the flight experiment a few days ago, there were even rumors that he installed some kind of alchemical instrument under the airship cabin to continuously provide lift. However, this kind of misleading will not last long. After all, the huge airbag of the airship is too conspicuous. It will not be long before someone thinks that it is some kind of gas in the airbag that takes effect. Once you get the drawings, you can confirm this immediately. After all, there is no power-providing machine in the cabin. After repeated experiments, you can quickly find some kind of gas suitable for providing lift. So, do you know what the big shot at, Bloodthorn, wants to do with the airship? Lin looked at Neuer and asked again. Compared with technical leaks, he was more concerned about the purpose of these people. If they drove an airship to do something, such as bombing an important town, the blame might fall on him in the end. Now everyone knows that the airship is their own unique alchemical creation. It's for this. As soon as Nor spoke, his expression suddenly became extremely painful. His mouth was open wide but it seemed as if someone was holding his throat. And then he hit his head on the ground crazily. Bang, bang, bang. With loud noises, Newer's originally hard forehead immediately became red and swollen. And blood poured out of it. But he seemed not to notice it. Facing Newer who suddenly went crazy. 
Lin was also startled. He stretched out his hand to hold down the opponent's head, which was constantly hitting the ground. But the next moment, he realized that the opponent had stopped moving. Lin and lifted Noor's cheek. The other person's forehead was covered with blood. His eyes were wide open. And his expression was ferocious. After checking his breathing and carotid arteries, he suddenly discovered that the other party was already dead. Looking at Noor who suddenly went crazy and died in front of him. Lin couldn't help but feel a chill in his back. He looked around very quickly, but could not see any people. And he had not noticed any movement before. Fossils turned into mud. Lennon raised his hand to cast a spell and freed half of Neuer's body from the ground. He held the sword tightly in his right hand, ready to deal with the possibility of a sudden attack by a corpse. However, nothing he worried about happened. Neuer's skin was still green and shiny, and the sword wounds on his body had long since healed. And there was no visible problem on the outside. Some kind of attack involving the soul? Lennon suddenly thought of this, because Neuer's current state was somewhat similar to that of Baigu. There was no visible injury on the outside. So it was most likely that it was soul damage. The only difference is that when Baigu released soul scream, he was counterattacked by Anjuk, who had some divine power. While Nuer was attacked a moment, he explained the use of the airship. It is possible that someone has engraved some kind of magic in his mind, which will be activated immediately when Nuer says something that cannot be revealed, destroying his brain. Only those psychic wizards who have a deep understanding of the soul can do this. Lin immediately realized that this wizard organization called Bloody Thorn might be more complex and dangerous than he imagined. In addition to involving magic transformation and researching ways to become a formal wizard, he may also be specializing in psychic magic that is banned in the entire wizarding land. What made Lin even more uneasy was that when Neuer was interrogated by him before, he had revealed a lot of personnel information about the Blood Thorn, but failed to trigger this mechanism. Just when he was talking about airships, just as he was thinking about it, a burst of messy footsteps suddenly came over. Lin turned his head and looked over. A ball of fire had ignited in his palm. But it quickly went out. The people who came were none other than Lauder and several of his confidants. Lord Lin? Lauder looked at the strange wizard in front of him and asked uncertainly. It's me! Lin nodded, not trying to hide it. Lauder breathed a sigh of relief and was not surprised that Lin looked slightly unfamiliar now. As early as when he was in Harbor Town, he saw that Lin was a wizard who was proficient in shaping. And he was tricked by Rabble in disguise. So he naturally remembered it deeply. Is this Nor? Why is it different from the one in the intelligence? Lauder quickly noticed the green body next to Lin In. Since the magic power in the body has been exhausted, newer strong figure of more than two meters tall has long shrunk back. But the skin is still green. And the identity of the other party can only be vaguely discerned from the outline of the face. Could it be that this is some kind of torture magic? It's the effect of a transformation potion. And it should be related to the defective product you mentioned before. Lin interrupted Lauder's fantasy. Used ice magic to freeze her, And then said, Find a few more people to take him back. Remember to be secretive and don't be seen by others. Lin In was still very interested in this so-called defective product. Of course, this does not mean that he also wants to become the Hulk. But he plans to study how that kind of transformation potion can greatly increase a person's physical fitness in a very short period of time and have the ability to heal injuries. Ability. Since some wizards call such people defective, there must be perfect works. After asking Water and others to hide Nor, it was almost lunchtime in the afternoon. Lin did not rush to do research, but went straight back to the dormitory at Ayata Harbor. After stepping into the door, Lin and Steps suddenly stopped, and his whole body became extremely vigilant. A bright red sealed envelope was leaning on the desk shelf, and there was no such thing before he left. Chapter 91 The Gathering of the Faceless Men Has anyone entered your room during this time? It is also possible that he used magic to control the goblins to place this thing on his desk. Lin and realized this immediately. And then the bright red envelope trembled slightly, as if it sensed something. Ice Curtain Lin and raised his hand to cast a spell without hesitation. And a solid wall of ice crystals stood in front of him. His right hand was pressed on the door handle, ready to open the door and run away at any time. Under Lin Un's vigilant gaze, the bright red envelope opened automatically and floated in the air. The golden magic text inside was very conspicuous. Dear Mr. Carr, in view of your outstanding performance in Ayata Harbor, we sincerely invite you to become a member of the Faceless Ones. The Faceless Men are dedicated to exploring the mysteries of magic. There are no rules or distinctions here. All members will exchange knowledge on an equal footing and jointly explore the truth of the world. The next meeting will be four days later, at 11 p.m. sharp. 
We look forward to your presence. Lin's eyes swept across the long page, and his eyes finally focused on the two words, Carl, at the beginning of the envelope. Has your identity been exposed? Lin couldn't help but have this idea in his mind. Carl was the name of the body he occupied. He had not heard this name for a long time after arriving in Harbor Town. Although the red letter in front of him seemed to be just an invitation. And the content and title were very polite. But from the direct identification of his identity. It was obvious that the person who came was evil and had a threatening tone. And now the only one who knows his identity for sure is Johnny. No. The white pigeon and the uncertain Kalu are also half. Lin's first target of suspicion was naturally Johnny. After entering Harbor Town. The identity and status he gained did not match his original body. Carl and the other party might have some doubts in his mind. Just exposing his identity would not do any good to Johnny, because that would mean that the responsibility for the interruption of the route would be brought up again, compared to his officially certified status. An apprentice's words do not have much credibility. Next is Baigu. Although the child is now half dead, some powerful psychic wizards may be able to search out some key information from her mind. Helram has already taken Baigu's frozen body to find a great wizard who is proficient in psychic magic. Maybe it has something to do with this. However, Lin quickly rejected this speculation. Because the great wizard just set out yesterday. Not to mention whether he could reach the wizard city in one day. But at least, he couldn't turn back and send himself a letter. In addition, the power possessed by Haram is beyond his ability to compete with. If the other party seizes the opportunity, there is no need to go to such trouble if he wants to do something himself. If he guessed correctly, by Ji's soul has most likely been taken away by Jinao. And even if there is magic to search for memories, it may not be useful. All kinds of thoughts flashed through his mind. After experiencing the initial panic, Lin quickly calmed down. The other party may not really be able to confirm this. This letter is probably a test. Otherwise this letter would not have been submitted until now. Because there is no evidence to prove that he is Carl. In the land of wizards where psychic magic is completely prohibited, things like checking brain memories cannot be proven as evidence. After all, the person who said this was tantamount to self-declaring that he was a psychic wizard and illegally used magic that was expressly prohibited by the wizard's council. This was no small crime. Just as Lennon was thinking about it, the envelope floating in midair spontaneously burned and turned into scattered paper ashes. At the same time, a delicate-looking ring fell out and landed in the teacup on the desk. Making a crisp sound, Lennon activated Mage's hand and took the ring in front of him. According to the description in the envelope, you only need to input magic power inside to emit a specific magic frequency and project part of the magic power with will to the meeting place. There is no need to appear in person, and it will not appear with the true face. This is the meaning of faceless man. No one except the inviter can know the identity of the others. Each member can freely discuss topics that are considered taboo in the wizarding land, including spiritual magic, which is considered taboo. This is somewhat similar. Holographic projection? Lin turned over and looked at this exquisite ring. The whole body of the ring was made of mithril. And many strange magic words were engraved on the surface. The most eye-catching one was the red gemstone inlaid on the ring holder, which was carved into a very looking flower. Showy flowers. Bloody thorns? Lin in naturally recognized this strange flower, and instantly understood who sent the envelope and ring. Was the action of interrogating Nor just now noticed? Lin thought to himself. Maybe the moment Nor died, the person who planted the soul restriction in his mind received the news, and then sent this letter. As for whether this was a threat, a warning, or a solicitation, Lin didn't know. But one thing was certain. This wizard organization named Bloodthorn seemed to know a lot of information that they shouldn't know. Whether it was the airship blueprints he suddenly got, or the name Carl. Prophecy? Divination? Spiritual contact with the possibly dead Kolu some kind of magic that can eavesdrop on other people's conversations, a spell to detect lies, and buying someone with money to know this information. Thinking about various possibilities, Lennon's expression suddenly became cold. He wrapped the ring suspended in his palm with a magic stone that could isolate magic. Then he took down the books on the bookshelf one by one and opened them on the wooden board behind. He made a hole and hid the ring inside. He was not going to bring something of unknown origin. And Lennon had no intention of attending the so-called Faceless men, party. Maybe it would be a hung in banquet. And going there would not prove that the other party's guess was correct. There are still four days until the next meeting of the faceless men, which is probably the deadline that the other party specially left for him to consider. But Lennon doesn't want to follow this pace. Black Doctor Ladoc? Lynn recalled the name Newer mentioned repeatedly 
when he was cross-examining him. This Ladakh should be the core figure in Bloody Thorn, and the person most likely to set a soul restriction in Noor's mind and send a letter to himself. Chapter 92 Shaping Potion Experiment One day later, in a clean room in the Bo Gang Station in Nanchung District, Lin, who had finished his morning class, was holding a sharp dagger and cutting off a piece of flesh from a green corpse. Noor's physical condition was completely different between his life and death. His body no longer had the miraculous ability to recover and became shriveled, like green bacon. Lenin tried to put a small piece of cut meat into the palm of his hand, and then activated the basic material deconstruction technique, preparing to see how newer cells were different from those of ordinary people. However, to his expectation, the cells inside these pieces of meat were extremely unstable, and they disintegrated directly after being slightly affected. Dark green blood and tissue cells flew in all directions, gathered together under the influence of Mage's hand and were finally discarded aside. Because it is a defective product, the flesh and blood tissue itself is very unstable. Or is it because of the infusion of magic power that creates rejection? When he was experimenting with magic before, he discovered that all living creatures have slight magic resistance. If he is a wizard, the resistance will be higher. This is clearly reflected in the battles between wizards. For example, the second ring magic, high temperature steam killing, used by Roar on him, in theory, he can break this magic as long as he controls the high temperature gases in reverse. But the nature of these gases it is a creation of the other party's magic power. So it is not affected by him at all. Lenin pondered for a long time. And subconsciously wanted to find an optical microscope to use physical means to observe the state of these flesh and blood tissues. But after looking at the empty room, he couldn't help but shake his head. The conditions are really difficult. How can we conduct magic research in such a state? Incubators? sterilization rooms, centrifuges, refrigerated cabinets. There is nothing now. Although magical magic can replace the functions of many instruments, it is not omnipotent. A fully equipped workshop and laboratory is an essential thing for every wizard who is keen on studying magic. Boom, boom, boom. A slight knock sounded from outside the door. Lin refroze Nor's body and let them in. Lord Lin, everything you need has been prepared. Lauder led several sailors to carefully walk in from the door, carrying large boxes in their hands. It contains things like sulfur, saltpeter, and glycerin. Of course, Lin didn't plan to use any black powder this time, but was just preparing to configure some things for self-defense. Although he planned to find trouble for Black Doctor Ladak, he did not rush in directly to arrest people. Judging from the little information revealed by Nur, Bloody Thorn is an extremely large organization with at least several three-ring wizards more than a dozen formal and hundreds of wizard apprentices inside. For Lin, who has a relatively young foundation, it is almost impossible to compete head-on with him. Although after developing the white phosphorus fire and liquid nitrogen ice realm, his combat power was not weak. But Lin knew very well that any official wizard would not be an easy character to deal with. If bishops like Ansiak who are proficient in divine arts are difficult to deal with because they can borrow power from the gods. Then the power of wizards lies in the various weird magic and alchemy tools. Lenin could imagine how many ways those three-ring wizards, who had no hope of being promoted to great wizards, and were not very short of money would use to save their lives. At least for him. If he hadn't been poor, he would have bought himself a set of life-saving alchemy items. It was better to kill his opponent with money than to die without spending all the money. Therefore, a head-on conflict is the stupidest move. Lin In is not prepared to reveal his identity unless absolutely necessary. Otherwise, he will have to face various overt or covert targets before the Bloodthorn is completely destroyed. In comparison, Lin In is more inclined to sneak in quietly in disguise, find an opportunity to be alone with Black Doctor Ladak, then knock him out in the dark with a stick, and take him away for questioning without anyone noticing. But such a smooth scenario probably only exists in fantasy. In order to face possible conflicts, it is naturally necessary to make some preparations. The hell flame that is rumored to be used to destroy Harbor Town, or the liquid nitrogen ice domain that has been exposed in the battle with Roar cannot be used casually. Otherwise it will easily remind people of their identity. Unless confirmed. Silence everyone who sees it. Under disguise, the only things that can be used are some basic magic and sword skills that rely on brain analysis to become extremely powerful. This was obviously not enough to deal with some extreme situations. In view of this, Lin prepared to improve a new magic as a trump card. And this time, the choice was corrosion. This thing is a very magical magic. 
It is so magical that if 10 wizards use corrosion at the same time, the damage caused may be different. Because the strength of corrosion completely depends on the strength of the corrosive liquid created. Previously, Newer used the gastric juice of corpses, which is highly corrosive to the flesh. However, its shortcomings are limited in dealing with people wearing protective equipment, and it cannot dissolve metal. Lennon is preparing to prepare aqua regia as a material for performing corrosion and many derivative magics. Aqua regia is also called royal acid or nitrohydrochloric acid. It is composed of a mixture of one unit volume of concentrated nitric acid and three units of concentrated hydrochloric acid. It is extremely corrosive and can even easily melt hard metals. Only a few substances such as tantalum, iridium, and silicon can resist it. It's erosion. The high temperature steam killing used by Roar before also provided him with a lot of inspiration. With slight improvements, he may be able to form a series of unique corrosive magic systems, which is completely different from his previous fighting style and can be used to deal with ordinary situations. That's enough. In addition, Lin also plans to make another more dangerous thing to ensure that he can escape when facing a siege. Has Ladak not come out of his mansion today? Lin asked as he checked the raw materials in several large boxes. No. We have been watching him for a whole day. And that Radak seems to rarely go out. Lauder responded anxiously. This didn't surprise Lin. So where is the person I want you to find? Does he have a target? Sir Lin in. We have found it. Lauder quickly handed over the information. Timmy's. 29 years old was expelled from the academy early last year because of a vicious conflict that nearly killed a student. It is currently unclear whether he is a member of the Bloodthorn, but he goes to the Blackthorn every night. Physician, Ladak's mansion should be one of the other party's apprentices. I heard that several homeless people who disappeared inexplicably in Nanchung district are related to him. Lauder added hesitantly. Lin nodded. He wanted to go to Ladak and get some information. Naturally, he needed a suitable identity that was not easily suspected. This Timmy's is very suitable. He was only expelled last year. He has not been an apprentice in Ladakh for too long. He is not familiar with each other and has a lot of room for maneuver. As for Nor, although he was the opponent's assistant, his identity could no longer be used. After all, Ladakh should have already known about Nor's death. Lin and pondered for a while, asked Lauder and others to go out, and started to prepare concentrated nitric acid and concentrated hydrochloric acid. It was best to condense the corresponding spell slots as soon as possible. In the evening, Lin appeared in the South City District as Apprentice Timis. As for Timmy's himself, he has been bundled up and invited to be a guest at the Boat Gang's residence. In view of Noor's sudden death while being interrogated for information, Lin did not make it too difficult for him. After asking for some basic information, he asked Timmy's to take a large amount of withered grass rhizome powder. The dose was enough to make people sleep a few days. And now he is planning to use this identity to find out the background of Black Doctor, Ladakh. At 6 o'clock in the evening, Lin arrived outside the manor in Ladakh on time. Before arriving here, he never thought that he could see such a majestic scene in Nanchung District. The entire manor occupies a vast area and is surrounded by iron fences that are 3 meters high and 10 centimeters thick, leaving only a gravel path for two people to walk side by side, which extends to the deepest part of the manor. Timmy! Why are you here so late today? At the entrance of the manor, more than a dozen apprentices were waiting there. After seeing Lin, a witch in her thirties with black hair couldn't help but frown. Lord Ladak doesn't have a good temper. After the apprentice, who messed up the experiment last time was taken away, no one saw him again. I had something urgent to do today, and I was accidentally delayed for some time on the road. Lin in showed a slightly fearful expression just right. I hope you can delay a little longer next time. A gloomy voice sounded next to him, and the wizard who spoke had a sarcastic smile on his lips. Lin frowned slightly, but didn't say anything. On the contrary, the witch who spoke before spoke dissatisfiedly. Bah! What do you mean? You know very well. Don't you? Patty! One less person means one less opponent. I am not as hypocritical as you. The wizard named Bach said with a sneer. Everyone present fell into silence in unison. Every year. Master Ladak would select an apprentice with the best performance and give him the opportunity to be promoted. The one with the greatest chance this year was Ladaka's new assistant Nor. But this guy messed up a very important thing and has completely disappeared these days. Many people speculated that Nor may have become Ladaka's assistant. Lord Dark's new experimental materials. The silence on the field did not last long. The door of the manor was open the next moment. And a strong man with a height of two meters came out. 
Lord Coleman. A group of wizard apprentices greeted him very respectfully. Come in with me. Everyone. Coleman looked at the respectful apprentices with slight contempt. Once upon a time, he was just a material lying in the laboratory being dissected and studied by these people. But now, he has become a powerful magic user. But he naturally doesn't have a good impression of these people who have done harm to him. Lin and others followed Coleman through the long stone road and entered the manor's castle. The interior of the manor is heavily guarded, and several patrol teams can still be seen, even at night. After stepping into the castle, what you see is a magnificent scene, magnificent dome chandeliers, giant sculptures and decorations, various works of art hanging on the walls, and even the carpets are made of expensive Warcraft furs. It is paved, and you can feel the soft and comfortable touch just by stepping on it. Coleman did not stop and led everyone directly out of the depths of the castle. A faint smell of blood suddenly hit his nostrils. Lin turned around and looked at the wizard apprentices beside him. They did not react at all. Obviously already used to it. After entering the basement, Coleman began to arrange today's tasks for each apprentice. Then looked at Lin and others and said, Bok, Patty, and Timmy's, you will be in charge of Laboratory 7 later. Hearing this, the other apprentices breathed a sigh of relief. And some of them had expressions of gloating on their faces. Since Bok and others had taken on this dangerous task, they could feel relatively relaxed. Lord Coleman. Bok panicked and wanted to beg for mercy. The ones in laboratory number 7 were all defective products that had lost their minds. And the goal of the experiment was to test the rejection of different shaping potions. Reaction. The dangers can be imagined. But under Coleman's cold gaze, Bok could only be forced to swallow the words that came to his mouth again. The experiments arranged by Mr. Ladock must be completed by someone. Otherwise, you can ask, who is willing to take your place? Coleman said playfully. Bok's face turned pale. He knew, of course, that no one here would be kind enough to take on a dangerous task. In the end, he could only look at Lin resentfully. If it weren't for the conversation at the door just now, Coleman wouldn't have noticed them. Lin In remained silent throughout the whole process. Because the information he learned from Timmy's was very limited, and he didn't know how dangerous this so-called experiment could be to make a group of apprentices so frightened. Under Coleman's forced arrangement, Lin, Burke and Patty entered a compartment in the castle. Compared with the narrow and sealed environment outside, the space inside the laboratory is quite large, filled with a strong smell of blood and various stinking potions. The cabinets on the side are filled with transparent jars. Each jar contains that they are weird creatures. Their heads have been cut open and coated with a thick layer of gelatin liquid making them look particularly oozing. The most eye-catching thing is the operating table, which looks more like a hideous instrument of torture. There are daggers, tweezers, scissors, and needles and threads for suturing on it, as well as several rusty iron chains used to restrain the hands and feet. After Bach and Patty entered, they kept staring at several sealed iron coffins in the corner. After hesitating for a long time, Bach gritted his teeth and stepped forward to open the iron coffin. Chapter 93 Magic Laboratory Number 7 As the iron coffin lid slowly slid open, a pungent breath rushed towards the face, revealing a strange-looking man inside. He was lying naked. His skin was dry and black. His lips were pale and chapped. His arms were bent in a deformed shape, as if they had been interrupted by something. And his body was covered with various scars. But he did not. He died with his eyes closed and his breathing steady, his chest rising and falling weakly, as if he was sleeping. Come here and help. He won't wake up in a short time. Bok pinched his nose and said in disgust. Len In was not afraid. He pulled up his sleeves and put a layer of water film on his palms. He helped Bok move the experiment to the stage. And then tied up the opponent's limbs and neck with chains. I'll do the operation. You will be responsible for recording. Bok naturally took over the leadership. Threw the experimental record book on the table to Lin. And then ordered Patty to get the potion. Lin In who had not yet figured out the experimental process, was happy to do some preliminary work. He immediately picked up the experimental record book and started reading it. Magical calendar year 726, June 21st. Experimental target, experimental subject number 09. Preliminary detection of kidney necrosis and stomach atrophy. His vital signs were weak, and he had a strong reaction after drinking the salamander potion. Experimental target, experimental subject number 011 a damaged product of the shaping troll potion, with tenacious vital signs. After being injected with the griffin potion, his right arm swelled abnormally and burst. Experimental target, experimental subject number 015. Drink the worm potion. Out of control, 
resulting in the death of four guards and two wizard apprentices. Lin quickly flipped through the pages of the experiment record book. The records above were shocking. A total of 17 fusion experiments with shaping potions were conducted and all failed. There are generally three fates for experimental subjects. Sudden death due to severe rejection reaction. Direct death during surgery due to weak vital signs. Or get more powerful power in a short time. The last one is extremely prone to accidents, causing a total of three casualties, which is why there are so many harnesses and chains specially used to restrain experimental objects on the experimental platform. The person in front of him should be experimental subject number 18. He once drank the magic potion made from the blood of the poisonous mist snake demon. Due to an error in the fusion process, he finally went crazy and lost his mind. So it can only be used as waste. Fusion experimental materials between shaping potions. In other words, the key to this potion is to allow humans to gain power similar to that of Warcraft. Lin and realized this immediately. So what Neuer drank before was probably the shaping troll potion. Which gave him such a strong recovery ability. What are you so confused about? Timmy's? Bok had already picked up the dagger and put on an old alchemy goggles. Seeing that Lin was still looking through the previous experiment records, Bok couldn't help but scold it. At this moment, the experimental subject whose limbs and neck were bound by iron chains, suddenly opened his eyes. His red pupils revealed a strong murderous aura, and low roars sounded from his throat from time to time. He struggled and tried to pounce. He came over, but because the iron restraints on his limbs were tightly locked with chains, he couldn't escape at all. Bok swallowed, his wrists trembling slightly, and waited for more than ten minutes. When the other party was tired from the tossing, he bit the bullet and used a candle nearby to sterilize the dagger and cut open the chest cavity of experimental subject number 18. At the same time, a golden bracelet on his left hand lit up slightly, and the wound that kept pouring out blood quickly solidified. The blood supply function of the heart is normal, and the degree of cellular magic energy infection is about 70%, which is higher than before. The liver and kidneys are abnormal. There is obvious swelling. Is there poisonous gas? It may be the influence of the poisonous mist snake demon medicine. Bok's face was full of nervousness but he still had the basic qualities. He barely ignored the experimental subject's continuous struggle and used the alchemy goggles to observe the experimental subject's condition. Lenin also put on a special single-sided alchemy eyepiece and found that this thing was very similar to a microscope. But the magnification was very low. Only about 70 times. And he could barely see the general structure of some cells. After probably getting used to it, Lenin picked up the quill on the side and began to write down the data of various body organs of experimental subject number 18. Naturally, he would not forget such an important flaw in handwriting. He had already recorded it with his smart brain. If he wrote slower, it shouldn't be a problem to imitate it 80% to 90%. After confirming that the other party's condition was still intact, Bok took a troll potion handed over by Patty, forcibly grabbed the subject's head, and drank half of it directly. Just half a minute after taking the medicine, the experimental subject fell into a frenzy. His body expanded in a circle, and the iron chain collapsed tightly. His body struggled and twisted hard, and even the heavy experimental table shook slightly. The previous injuries, it is recovering at an extremely fast speed. Bach hesitated and didn't want to step forward, but he didn't dare to miss this good opportunity to collect data. So he had no choice but to bite the bullet. However, experimental subject number 18 made an action that no one had expected. He actually tore off his right wrist and broke free a part of the restraints. Bach was immediately startled. And before he could react, he was whipped away by a forelimb as thick as a thigh that was bleeding green blood. Patty was petrified. And she couldn't help but let out a scream. Bach hit the wall behind him, endured the pain and stood up. He immediately pressed the alarm bell and called the guards over. But before he could act, a sharp steel sword followed the gap between the ulna and radius of the forearm and nailed the subject's waving right arm to the experimental table. Immediately afterwards, Lin methodically tied up the 18 experimental subjects with iron chains. After struggling for a while, the experimental subjects' bodies quickly shrank, and under the violent rejection reaction, they soon became silent. Both Burke and Patty breathed a sigh of relief. It wasn't until Lin confirmed that the defective product was dead that Bach dared to step forward again to complete the dissection work that he had failed to complete before. His back was already soaked with cold sweat, just like Nor. After the subject died, the flesh and blood in the body became shriveled and lifeless, like a bubble that would burst when pinched, and the various organs of the body were also rapidly failing. Lin recorded the details of these observations one by one, 
and then together with Bach and Patty, threw the dead experimental subjects back into the iron coffin. Bach looked at the remaining iron coffins and felt a little scared. So he looked at the two people and spoke. Take turns. This time it's your turn. Patty. Timis. The witch shook her head crazily and didn't dare to get close at all. Then let me do it. Lenin stepped forward alone and opened the second coffin. After looking at it for a while, he had memorized the process. So there should be no mistakes. Chapter 90 for the rioting experimental subject. With Lynn taking the lead, Bach and Patty also managed to suppress the fear in their hearts. They quickly moved the second experimental subject to the experimental table and increased the number of chains. Lenin looked at the instruments at hand with disgust. He didn't even have a decent scalpel. So he had no choice but to choose a sharp knife for flame disinfection, which Patty took over Lynn's work. When she saw the overall planning text in the record book, she couldn't help but feel a little surprised. These records were very clear and clear. After the experimental subject took the magic potion, every time period, the bodies various the changes in the organs were recorded in great detail, down to the second. But Timmy's probably didn't have time to look at the magic hourglass just now. Isn't this just randomly filled in data? While Patty was hesitating, Lynn had already picked up a sharp knife and started dissecting. Bach was on the side responsible for stopping the bleeding and laying off the hands. But he was a little worried that Lynn would mess things up. It was not an easy task to dissect a living and defective body. These crazy and irrational monsters led not only was it psychological pressure, but the constant attempts to break free also made the anatomy very difficult. However, Lennon's knife was more stable than he imagined, and the experimental subject that was roaring in front of him seemed not to exist at all. Does he really have no fear in the face of these monsters? Bach was puzzled. What made him even more unhappy was that since Lennon took over, there had been no accidents. The dissection process was very smooth. After taking the potion, the experimental body did not even survive the initial fusion stage. Just hang up immediately. The riot of the first experimental subject seemed to be just an accident, which made Bach somewhat unhappy. He had known that he should have let the other party take over from the beginning. Lin didn't know what Bach was thinking. And he had no time to care. He had devoted himself wholeheartedly to the experiment. And even took over the dissection work of the remaining experimental subjects without even conducting the so-called rotation system in the middle. Facing these experimental subjects, who had already lost their minds and been transformed into monsters. Lin didn't have much mercy. It was just right to send them to death as soon as possible. When the fourth experimental subject fell on the experimental table due to rejection reaction, Lin finally gained something. There should be some unknown magic material added to these shaping potions, making the liquid easily absorbed by the human body. It is absorbed by each digestive tract and quickly reaches the heart through blood circulation. So it takes effect so quickly. Precisely because of this, the heart will be the first organ to be infected and transformed by magic power. Finally, it will continuously transport energy-filled blood to all parts of the body for further transformation. What makes Lin somewhat strange is that since the rejection reaction is so serious, why not just use the magic power he possesses to transform it? Then Lin reacted instantly. Isn't that what the subject of plastic surgery is about? I heard that the wizards of this school have extremely strong melee combat capabilities, and the best among them can also transform themselves into some kind of powerful magical beast. It should be said that this kind of magic potion was originally developed based on the theory of plasticity. So, does the so-called perfect product mean that the person who takes the magic potion has power comparable to the official wizard of plasticity? No. After all, external force is used. So there should be some difference. Lenin thought to himself and soon dissected the fifth experimental subject. This one looked to be only 15 or 16 years old. His body was far less strong than the previous experimental subjects, and instead looked a little thin. What surprised him the most was that the experimental subject's level of magic penetration was very low. Only about 30%. Experiment number 22. Have you ever drank the salamander potion before? Unfortunately, it didn't have much effect. So it became a waste product. Lin In took the experiment log and looked at it. After pondering for a moment, he suddenly looked at Patty said, Patty, give me a bottle of fire line potion. Timis, what are you planning to do? Bach asked with a frown. I've made some discoveries, and I'm going to experiment with another magic potion. Lin explained casually. In the previous experiments, they had all used troll potions, because a certain apprentice previously discovered that creatures like trolls have strong recovery capabilities, and the transformed magic cells are highly active and they focus on strengthening the body. Relatively speaking, the conflict with other magic potions is not that great. 
It is so strong that it is theoretically most likely to be integrated with other transformation potions. But Lin didn't think so. Just because the modification of the troll potion was very active, it might have aggravated the magic rejection reaction. Nur, who had only taken this kind of potion, was in a good state after his death. Prove it. Bok was very dissatisfied with Lin's risky move. If something went wrong, wouldn't the three of them be in trouble? Lin naturally ignored Bok's opinion. He didn't come here to do research. But to attract the attention of Black Doctor, Ladak. He would have to wait until what year and month to come there step by step. Under someone's repeated urging, Patty hesitated for a while and finally took the Fire Lion Potion. After Lin and reached out to take it, he drank the whole bottle directly. Bok looked on with horror. Under such violent injection of drugs, the fifth experimental subject reacted in just ten seconds. His body kept shaking, and his skin turned red in a short period of time. It has improved. The level of magic energy infection in the cells has actually increased. Bok saw a scene that shocked him through the alchemy goggles. The power brought by the fire line potion was rapidly infecting the entire body of the experimental subject. It even swallowed up the remaining power of the original salamander potion. Really? Lin In was not surprised by this. In several previous experiments, he had long discovered that in addition to mutual repulsion, the powers brought by different shaping potions also had the possibility of devouring each other. And the two creatures he chose they all have similar fire control abilities. The most critical point is that the fifth experimental subject was originally very low in magic power. Which means that the blood power brought by the fire lion potion added later can easily swallow the former as nourishment. Although this is somewhat contrary to the purpose of laboratory number 7 to try to fuse different types of shaping potions to create a magician with two different witchcraft talents. There is a chance that one can perfectly integrate the fire lion demon the magician of medicine. Bach also saw this. In his horrified expression, the whole body of the test subject suddenly ignited with hot flames, burning the iron chains binding the body red. In the end, the swollen body actually directly burned the body. The red chain broke. Chapter 95 Defective Products Must Have the Consciousness of Being Defective Due to the Power of the Flames Several people had already retreated aside, and Patty even screamed, Magic Transformation! This is Magic Transformation! The originally thin boy had completely transformed into a monster. His head was similar to that of a lion. His back was covered with bone spurs. His limbs were like claws. His skin was dark red. And his eyes were shining with red light. The only chain that bound his body was the one that bound his right leg. It's all your fault. Timmy's. This is all your fault. Seeing this, Bok shouted in panic. Lennon raised his hand and pressed the alarm bell next to him. The piercing cry immediately spread throughout the room and the closed door of the laboratory was immediately opened. A dozen guards and armor rushed in immediately, and the leader was Coleman. After seeing the half-human, half-beast monster on the experimental table, Coleman couldn't help but cursed. Damn it! Another riot of defective products! Then Coleman glared at Lin and the others fiercely, but he was no stranger to this situation. While the monster was chained, a group of guards immediately took out their waistbands. Crossbow arrows. A dense sound of piercing the air resounded throughout the room. After the arrows made from the magic fir tree pierced the body of the experiment, they immediately exploded, blasting blood holes in the opponent's body. However, such an attack failed to have much effect. Instead, it struggled more and more crazily. The chain binding its right leg broke instantly. And the half-animal, half-human monster directly dragged the heavy experiment. The stage was thrown towards everyone. Get away! Cold sweat broke out on Coleman's forehead. Even he didn't dare to take the hit. He could only watch helplessly as the huge experimental table crashed into the crowd. And several guards, who had no time to dodge directly hit it. He fell to the ground and was pressed under the experimental table, not knowing whether he was alive or dead. Then the half-animal, half-human monster rushed over directly. Its footsteps were extremely heavy. Every time it stepped on it, the sound of broken floor tiles could be heard continuously. A defective product must have the self-consciousness of a defective product. Coleman was also aroused with a little anger. He waved the broad axe blade and collided with the ferocious claws of the beast. Bang! The huge collision force caused Coleman to take three or four steps back. Losing to a defective product in wrestling made Coleman feel a little embarrassed. Before the orc could rush forward again, he had already taken a step forward, swung his thick right arm fiercely, and the axe blade passed through a trace of arc struck the half-orc shoulder. TSK. The tearing sound of the sharp blade was clearly audible, and the axe blade sank directly in. Scarlet blood spurted out 
and sprinkled on Coleman's face. However, just when he wanted to turn around and pull out the axe blade, he found that the axe blade stuck by muscles and bones. There was a painful expression on the orc's face, but his left paw held Coleman's body tightly, and then a burst of hot flame suddenly shot up from his body and burned towards Coleman. Talented witchcraft? How is this possible? Coleman's face was full of horror. Innate witchcraft is something that only a magician like him who can perfectly integrate a bloodline can master. But no matter how surprised he was, he couldn't change the situation. And the scorching heat soon rolled over. Damn it! Damn it, Coleman yelled. Hurriedly released the axe blade in his right hand. Kicked the orc. And then the recoil force barely avoided the flames. However, without the weapon at his disposal, and the need to guard against the flames that appeared from time to time, Coleman was instantly at a disadvantage. Not far away. Several guards hesitantly held crossbows, but did not dare to activate them easily. Some guards recklessly held heavy swords and wanted to step forward to help, but were slapped away by the orcs. Seeing the miserable state of the guard, Bach and Patty immediately gave up their intention to help. They were worried about accidentally injuring Coleman, and they were also afraid that the monster would turn around and pour out its anger on themselves. Roar! The orc looked up to the sky and roared, then suddenly opened his mouth, and a blazing flame condensed in his mouth. Coleman, who was forced to retreat to the corner, had no way to avoid it. At this moment, three magic missiles whizzed over and hit the orc on the head, knocking him a little away. The pillar of fire almost missed Coleman's shoulder and flew away. In the past, the bombardment left a deep crater in the wall. The person who launched the attack was naturally Lin. He knew very well that things could get serious. But Coleman, a rare magic user, could not die. Otherwise, they would definitely be punished. The orc who was disturbed was very angry and immediately turned his gaze to Lin In. However, before he could move, he felt the ground beneath him soften and his body suddenly sank. Coleman, who had a narrow brush with death, was also aroused with some ferocity. He held a dagger and pounced from the flank. His movements were fast and agile, and he rushed to the orc in almost the blink of an eye. In front of him, the dagger in his hand stabbed into the opponent's back. The orc suddenly let out a cry of pain, and slapped Coleman with all his strength with his thick right arm, slapping Coleman to the ground. However, just as he was about to continue the pursuit, the annoying magic missile flew over again and bombarded him together on his somewhat deformed right leg. Coleman did not miss this opportunity and rolled forward again. The sharp dagger stabbed out, leaving a deep scar on the orc's abdomen, and blood flowed out under Lin's constant interference. Coleman quickly reversed the situation. The guards in the castle also came one after another, with the combined efforts of the three magicians. The half-man, half-beast monster was quickly subdued. Coleman, who was covered in injuries, spat, kicked the experimental subject's lion-like head, and then looked at Lin and the others. But before he could ask questions, a gloomy voice spoke. It rang. Who can tell me what is going on? As the words fell, a warlock wearing black robes and a skinny face walked in from the door with a group of apprentices. His eye sockets were sunken and his skin was as dry as a skeleton. The other party was clearly standing there, but there was no movement in his aura, and his eyes were filled with deathly silence, which was daunting. Seeing his appearance, Coleman's body trembled slightly, as if he was very frightened. Lord Ladakh, including Coleman, everyone on the field bowed their heads respectfully and said H, Lo. The visitor is suddenly the master of this castle Ladakh Blackstone. Chapter 96, Take Action. Let me see what you are capable of. Radak glanced at the messy scene in the entire laboratory, then looked at Coleman who was covered in injuries and several guards who died tragically. And finally his eyes stopped on the orc who fell on the ground and didn't know whether to live or die. It's Timmy's! It's all Timmy's fault! Bok rolled and crawled in front of Ladak, shouting, fearing that the other party would hold him responsible. Ladak ignored Bok shouting, but walked straight to the half-man, half-animal monster, reached out and grabbed its head, looked at it carefully, and after about a minute, he asked coldly, Who is Timmy's? Lin stood up immediately. I am Timmy's, reporting back to Lord Ladak. As Bok said, I am responsible for presiding over this experiment. Seeing Lin and admit it on his own initiative, Bok and Patty were relieved. What they were most worried about was that the other party would forcibly dump this responsibility on them. Bok even revealed the fact that Lin and used the Fire Lion Potion on his own initiative. All the apprentices present looked at Lin with pity. Changing the experimental process without permission and causing such a big mess was a big crime. However, 
Ladakh's reaction was different from what they expected. And he spoke slowly. Where's the lab report? Here. Lord Radak. Lin stepped forward and handed over the experimental record. He knew that he had made the right bet. The other party didn't care at all about this out-of-control experiment. How many things were smashed? And how many guards died? As long as they could produce results. It didn't matter. Ladakh reached out and took it. There was a ring on his pail. Withered right index finger that was the token used by the faceless one to authenticate his identity. Lin quickly withdrew his gaze with a calm expression on his face and explained while Ladakh was checking the experimental records. Sir Ladakh, after experiments, I found that the modified troll potion is very active and may aggravate the magic rejection reaction. So I adjusted the use of the fire line potion. Under Lin Un's narration, Radak kept flipping through the experiment report. After reading it, he looked at the apprentices present and spoke again. Who suggested using troll potion for experiments before? Yes, it's me, Lord Radak. A short and fat apprentice in his forties came out shakily. In other words, seventeen precious experimental subjects were wasted because of your mistake. Radak's tone was very cold. The short and fat apprentice suddenly turned pale, and his whole body started to tremble uncontrollably. He had already guessed what kind of punishment he was about to suffer, and then he seemed to have lost his mind and actually flew forward to escape from the wide open window. Go. However, Coleman's reaction was faster, and the injuries on his body did not affect his movements at all. When he rushed over like lightning, he grabbed his collar, then pulled him back hard and pressed him down. He hit the wall and punched it. Bang. There were dull crashes and screams one after another, accompanied by the crisp sound of broken bones. The fat apprentice was suddenly beaten by Coleman until his nose was bruised and his face was swollen, with blood flowing freely. Oh, I was wrong. Lord Ladak, have mercy on me. The pudgy apprentice fell to the ground and howled in pain. Bach and others were trembling with fear. They just watched Coleman knock the opponent unconscious. And then several guards surrounded him and tied him up. Tie up. Radak watched all this in silence. And finally looked at Lin and said, You did a great job this time. Timmy's, is there anything you want? I want to be your assistant. Lin said without hesitation. And he was not worried about the other party doubting him. After all, after Nor's death, every apprentice present was eyeing this position and wanted to get Lada his favor and a chance for promotion. Radak did not answer directly, but spoke. Coleman, send some people to clean up this place and put this experimental subject in the dungeon. As for you, Timmy's, come with me. The apprentices present also came to their senses at this time, and soon realized that the riot of the experimental subjects just now was not just an experimental accident. They looked at Lin In with expressions of envy and jealousy on their faces. Bach was even more dumbfounded. Just now, in order to escape his guilt, he had completely removed himself. Now he could only watch Lin and being favored alone. And he almost regretted it. Under the gaze of various eyes, Lin followed Ladak deeper into the castle and finally stopped in front of a high wall in the basement. Radak raised the scepter in his hand and touched it lightly on the wall. A ripple spread and a door suddenly appeared on the originally empty wall. Then the closed door opened automatically. Inside was a huge secret room which was more spacious than the front hall of the castle. All the decorations were extremely simple, giving off a sense of the vicissitudes of time. There is a giant statue in the center. This statue is two meters high. It is silver gray in color. The carving is exquisite and complicated, and it looks lifelike. As the two of them stepped in, the surrounding torches were lit one by one, illuminating the dim basement. Only then did Lin notice that there were coffins one after another on both sides of the secret room. There were corpses placed in the coffins. So many that he almost thought he had arrived at a morgue. Such a sight made his vigilance rise to the peak. And Lin couldn't help but begin to wonder if Ladak had discovered his identity. Do you want to take action? Lin was caught in a dilemma. There were only two of him and Ladak here. Which was a good opportunity. However, the countless corpses displayed in the secret room made him feel a little uneasy. Let's do it. Let me see what you are capable of. Radak suddenly said. Lin and subconsciously wanted to condense the white phosphorus fire and blast it directly on Ladak's head. Then he realized that the other party was talking about the short, childlike corpse placed on the experimental table. Lin In, who realized that he had misunderstood, quickly adjusted his mentality, took the sharp knife on the side and walked to the experimental table. This area is far more open and bright than other places in the secret room. A palm-sized azure gem is embedded in the ceiling above. 
providing lighting for the entire experimental platform. After seeing the appearance of the body clearly, the expression on Lin's face changed subtly, because he discovered that the person in front of him was Rail, who was attacked a few days ago, and was taken back to the security center by Leia and others. Husband. Chapter 97 Death of Ladakh. Seeing that Lin-In didn't move, Radak thought that he was facing such a bloody corpse and didn't know where to start. So he warned him, Start with the internal organs and cut off the useless carrion. Lin finally came back to his senses and began to dissect Ralph's body with an expressionless face. The skin felt cold to the touch, and there were still some condensed ice crystals on it. It must have been frozen before. No wonder it was intact. Save till now. Radak just stared at Lin's movements of swinging the knife giving him a few reminders from time to time, and ordering him to take out some organs that were not easy to preserve and immerse them in a dark green liquid. Lin vaguely realized that what he was doing might not be as simple as dissecting a corpse. The excavation work in the secret room continued until 5 o'clock in the morning. Due to the need to guard against possible attacks by Derek, Lin had to keep tense until he finally breathed a sigh of relief when he walked out of Radak's manor. Shaping potion experiments. Faceless men. Ralph. Lennon thought about everything she saw in the manor. What is certain is that, Black Doctor, Derek is indeed related to the Faceless Men, and should be a core member of the Bloodthorn, as he guessed. However, Lennon did not take action rashly. Although there were only two of them in the secret room, the sound insulation was very good, and it was very private. Lennon always felt that something was wrong. The only good news is that he has become Derek's assistant very smoothly, which will provide great convenience for his next actions. In the next two days, Lin Ng continued his teaching duties as a professor of Olympic mathematics in the morning, and in the evening he served as Ladakh's assistant as Timmy's, gathering more information. As for the rest of the time, he devoted himself to studying shaping magic in the library. It was not until the third day that Lin finally made up his mind. He knew that he could not wait any longer, because tomorrow night was the day when the faceless men would gather. At night, in the Ladakh castle, Lin entered the secret room deep in the castle as usual. However, today's secret room has some changes compared to the past. The most obvious one is the addition of a short and fat figure. That was the apprentice, who was beaten up because of the potion incident. At this moment, he was tied above an alchemy circle, with snot and tears left on the floor. After seeing Lin in, he looked more like grasping the last straw. He shouted loudly, Please, beg for me. Timmy's, I can't die like this. Do you remember? I was the one who recommended you to become Lord Radak's apprentice. The pudgy wizard apprentice cried and begged, until he realized that Lin and didn't pay attention to what he meant. So he started to curse, and his words became more and more vicious. If it weren't for Lin In, he wouldn't be in this situation. And Lin In just looked at him indifferently, and then turned his attention to Radak. Over the past few days, he has discovered that the Black Doctor rarely leaves this underground fortress unless necessary. Feed him to drink. Radak took out a bottle of cyan potion, handed it to Lin, and then burned the remaining alchemy runes. Lin Ng glanced at the alchemy formation at his feet, silently memorized it, then grabbed the pudgy apprentice's neck and drank the potion. In just a few seconds, the effect of the medicine took effect. The ferocious and twisted expression on the short and fat apprentice's face slowly softened. Finally, the corner of his mouth slightly raised. A smile appeared, and he fell into a deep sleep. Seeing this strange scene, Lennon couldn't help but feel a little frightened, and quickly withdrew from the coverage of the alchemy circle. At the same time, Ladak had finished burning the last rune, then laughed gloomily a few times and recited a difficult-to-pronounce spell. The short and fat apprentice's body soon levitated, his mouth wide open, his body trembling constantly, and then a faint blue light gradually emerged. No, Lin soon discovered that it was not light, but an illusory and transparent figure that was constantly surging like water waves. This is... Soul? This was the first time that Lin-In saw such a shocking sight. He immediately understood why Ladakh had to build such a secret laboratory. If the previous experiments with shaping potions were just side effects, then why did Ladakh build such a secret laboratory? The practice of psychic witchcraft is truly unacceptable in the land of wizards. The azure spirit body was suspended in the center of the alchemy circle, staring at the two people with a hateful and resentful look, and then let out a weird scream, and slammed into the two people. The moment the scream rang out, Lin felt as if something had hit his brain. He had experienced this feeling before, when by Gu used soul scream, but this time, the effect seemed to be much weaker. Lin was only slightly affected, and then quickly retreated. After a few steps, 
He still didn't know how to deal with the spirit. Ladak remained steady. The alchemy circle on the ground suddenly lit up. The flying spirit body seemed to have hit an invisible barrier. No matter how the illusory body surged, it could not leave this range. Lin En even noticed that this strange spirit was becoming more and more illusory. Ladak did not wait too long. The soul of the wizard apprentice was too weak. Once it left the body, it would not take long to completely dissipate. As he raised his hand, the malicious spirit seemed to be tightly bound by some kind of force. And then was forced to pour into the halfling corpse placed on the test bench. About ten seconds later, Ralph's body suddenly opened his eyes, stood up stiffly from the experimental table, slowly twisted his neck, looked around, and finally stopped at the forest not far from the experimental table. Well in Ladakh. Then, Ralph showed an angry expression on his face and opened his mouth as if he wanted to say something. But what he came out with was just waves of unpleasant roars. But his body was completely out of control. He didn't take two steps and fell directly to the ground. Fell to the ground. Waste. Ladak looked dissatisfied at the halfling who couldn't even walk smoothly. After spending so much energy, this attempt still failed. The only use is to be refined into a corpse. Ladak once again activated the secret method of controlling spirits. Relf's body trembled violently, then spontaneously walked aside like a puppet on strings, and finally lay down in an iron coffin in the secret room. You should have seen it. Timmy's? Only then did Radak turn his head to look at Lin. Smiling gloomily, I can give you another chance to choose. Are you still ready to be my assistant? Of course. Lord Radak. Lin lowered his head. He knew very well that the so-called choice meant that he had no choice. After seeing such a taboo psychic experiment, he had to either obey or die. Very good. Come here. Radak was very satisfied with Lin and his performance of understanding current affairs and said in a deep voice. Lin and walked forward slowly and soon reached the other party. Radak stretched out his hand. He also needed to set a restriction in Lin's mind to prevent the other party from betraying him. At this moment, a dangerous warning sign suddenly surged into his heart. However, by the time he noticed something was wrong, it was already too late. Lennon raised his hand simultaneously, and hot fire surged out from his palm, swallowing up Ladak's body in an instant. Ah! A shrill scream resounded throughout the secret room, and Ladak's whole body was ignited into a torch. The fierce white phosphorus fire was like maggots on the tarsus, constantly devouring his flesh and blood. Facing a strange psychic wizard, Lin In didn't even dare to plan to survive. As soon as he took action, he used all his strength to continuously enhance the power of the white phosphorus fire. Ladak's shrill screams lasted for a full minute, and then he fell to the ground. His body almost burned to charcoal. Do you die? Lin In stopped casting spells and looked at Ladak, who had completely silenced him, but still did not dare to let down his guard. The entire secret room was so quiet that you could hear a pin drop. A few seconds later, an angry shout rang out from nowhere in the closed secret room. You're not Timmy's. Who are you? Lennon's heart suddenly sank to the bottom. The worst situation he expected happened. From the moment he saw Ladak a few days ago, he sensed that something was wrong with him. So he didn't take action. But I didn't expect that this was actually a zombie under control. Lin's silence seemed to anger Ladak. And three of the coffins placed on both sides of the secret room suddenly opened. Three tall and strong figures wearing black robes came out of the coffin. Each of them kept their original appearance. The difference was that at this moment, their pupils had turned gray. Their skin was purple. And their bodies were full of blood. With endless hostility and violence. Multipyroblast. Two of the figures began to cast spells at the moment they regained consciousness. And several violent fireballs emerged in the void and flew towards Lin In. The last person changed his body shape and turned into a ferocious giant bear. Flying towards Lin In. Lin took a step back. Dozens of magic missiles appeared around him colliding with the flying fireballs. The violent explosions continued to echo in the secret room, and the rest of the magic missiles followed the smoke. Covering, he rushed towards the two people behind him. Secondary magic protection. Two wizards in black robes immediately cast spells for protection, and several obstacles formed by magic blocked the front. However, the remaining magic missiles were all filled with ingredients and suddenly exploded in midair. Inside, a large amount of orange-yellow liquid poured down like raindrops. This is the high-imitation second-level magic, high-temperature steam killing. But the difference is that the magic missile does not contain chlorine. But the more corrosive aqua regia, a large number of raindrops, dripped on his robes and exposed skin. 
the long-lost wizard was unaware that his body had corroded into big holes, exposing the dense white bones. As he walked, his whole body looked like a corpse. Tan Mumu collapsed and fell to the ground. At the same time, the ferocious giant bear had already rushed in front of Lin In, and its sharp claws clawed hard at his face. As long as he got a few inches closer, he could tear off his head. Lin In took another step back, evading it by a hair's breadth, and already held the dagger hidden in his cuff with his right hand. Cell demonization. Lin In used the method of the shaping school for the first time, and a large amount of magic power poured into his right arm. At the moment when the giant bear's pounce action ended, the sharp sword blade had already been unsheathed, slicing across the huge neck and almost half of the head. Cut it off. Blood sprayed out and dyed the ground red. The giant bear let out a roar, and its huge body fell to the ground while maintaining its forward posture. Lenun's right hand was constantly trembling. Although he gained strength beyond the ordinary, with the help of magic burst in a short period of time, it was still a big burden on his body. But a quick victory was the only option. Because this time five coffins were opened. In view of Lin and melee ability shown before, no one chose melee anymore, but instead released witchcraft together. Faced with the siege of several people, Lin Un's response was to create more and stronger white phosphorus flames. At this moment, most of the magic power in the body disappeared, and the energy reserve of G now was also reduced by 5%. Then the raging H, L flames condensed into a demonic hand, blasting all kinds of fire blasts, ice arrows, and rows of enemies from behind. The coffin and coffin are included together. With just one blow, half of the secret room was turned into a sea of fire. Lin In did not intend to fall into an endless battle. Before the remaining coffins could be opened, dozens of white phosphorus fireballs reappeared in the void and flew in all directions, preparing to destroy all the surrounding coffins. One after another, invisible magic barriers rose from the surrounding area, blocking some of the fireballs that flew towards them. Lin and even noticed that a solid barrier had been raised on the empty experimental platform. Or the Three Ring Protection spell, Magic Barrier. Is there something important about protecting this place as a priority? Lin and immediately thought of the previous experiment and had a vague guess in his mind. What kind of fire is this? At the same time, Ladak's voice rang again. But this time it was no longer an angry shout. But there was a hint of panic in his words. Although most of the fireballs were blocked by the magic barrier, the flames did not go out. Instead, they adhered to the barrier and even tended to expand. The remaining coffins in the secret room were finally no longer opened. Ladak concentrated all his power in one place, and the giant statue erected in the secret room moved. This golem made of mithril was indestructible, wielding a long knife and the giant shield slashed towards Lin. Facing such a behemoth, Lin In knew very well that neither fire nor ice would be effective, but his response was still, magic barrage. Dozens of magic missiles were like sealed arrows, constantly hitting the huge demon statue. But they were like waves crashing on the rocks, unable to cause the slightest impact. At the moment when the golem's long knife fell, Lin's fingers moved slightly, and one of the magic missiles deviated from the original route, accurately passing through the hole burned by the white phosphorus fire in the magic barrier. And the target it is the palm-sized azure gem located above the experimental table. Chapter 98 Ignoring Does Not Affect Viewing Chapter 99 The Source of Magic Stop it! Radak was completely panicked and immediately withdrew all his power. The huge golem stopped moving. And then a sharp sound wave continued to echo in the sealed laboratory. The magic missile that was close at hand also seemed to be affected by some kind of violent impact. And soon exploded with a bang. But Ladakh didn't feel the slightest joy. Because after the magic sh, I was broken. The hot white phosphorus flames inside spurted out. And soon contaminated the azure gemstone. The originally sharp and magical, soul scream, immediately turned into a painful wail. The remaining dozen or so coffins in the secret room began to tremble violently. Lin In had already held a fireball in his hand. And with the sound of gems breaking, a transparent resentful spirit appeared in the secret room. Its face ferocious and twisted, as if it was carrying countless pain and resentment. Probably because the load was broken and severely damaged. Its figure was extremely illusory, and could not even compare to the previous sorcerer's apprentice. The air medium was like sharp knives, constantly consuming the few people in Ladakh. The power of the screams and wailing lasted for more than half a minute before ending abruptly, and the illusory spirit body quickly collapsed completely in front of Lin In. Lin In was finally freed from the influence of Soul Scream. He knew that he had guessed correctly, since all the people controlled were corpses. 
Ladakh must have kept his souls elsewhere. Something similar to a lich's phylactery. The target he chose was the azure gemstone used as a searchlight on the experimental bench. I have to say that Ladakh has a very bad taste and uses his soul for lighting. If it weren't for the previous few experiments, he found that the magical response of this thing was very strong. And he probably wouldn't be able to associate it with this thing. Under Lin Un's control, the blazing white phosphorus fire in the secret room gradually extinguished. And what was left was a ruin. Hundreds of coffins had been burned. The only ones that were intact were the golem made of mithril and the experiment table. A whole bookshelf is filled with magic books. Biological materials and ectoplasm. Detailed explanation of psionic magic. Advanced potions. Lin glanced at the bookshelf. In addition to a large number of books on psychic powers and potions, there were also many research notes. But he didn't have time to look through it. And he didn't even have time to clean up the messy secret room. So he used shaping magic to transform into Radak's appearance. Opened the door to the secret room and walked out. The castle was in chaos at the moment. And Lin was not surprised by this situation. Unavoidable that he would be disturbed when dealing with Ladakh. Lin and took advantage of his identity as an assistant to do some tricks in the place where the defective products were kept. Calculating the time. It should have taken effect. However, the castle's guards were more powerful than he thought. By the time Lin arrived at the front hall, several rioting defectives had already been subdued. Sir Ladak. Experimental subjects number 12, 27, and 32 suddenly broke free from their cages. The casualties are being counted. For the time being, the cause has not been identified. After seeing Lennon's figure, Coleman and others immediately knelt down and made a report tremblingly. The riot of the experimental subjects this time was very inexplicable. And no one could be found to take the blame for it. Everyone was extremely worried that Ladak would pour his anger on his head. Lin glanced at Coleman indifferently and said in a tone that seemed to be suppressing anger, It was Timmy's who did it. He was an agent sent by the Nordland Magic Workshop and wanted to steal an important research result. Although Lin did not explicitly explain what to do with Timmy's. Everyone could guess that Timmy's death must be very tragic. I knew there must be something wrong with Timmy's. Bok shouted excitedly. Ever since Timmy's became a preliminary assistant based on his previous research achievements, he has always been worried about it. He thought that he had contributed a lot to that experiment. But all the achievements were taken away by the other party. Now that he heard that Timmy's was unlucky, Bok couldn't help but feel a twisted sense of pleasure in his heart. However, after seeing Lin's glance, the excited expression on Bok's face suddenly stopped. Because he suddenly thought of recruiting Timmy's as his assistant. And it was the adult who personally nodded in agreement. Fortunately, Lin didn't pay attention to what he meant. Instead, he turned to look at Coleman and spoke again. Coleman, please continue to investigate for me. No one can be spared. I want to see how many rats there are in this castle. I understand. Lord Radak. Coleman quickly replied. Hearing this, all the apprentices' expressions changed. And they all looked at each other with a hint of wariness. This is exactly what Lin and wants to achieve. To put everyone in the castle into a situation of mutual surveillance and suspicion. In this way, even if he shows some weird things, no one will suddenly have a brain attack. And began to doubt whether the Ladakh man in front of him was genuine. Immediately afterwards, Lin began to arrange for personnel to clean up the wreckage and count the losses. Since Ladakh usually has a lot of power, Lin found that there was almost no obstacle to his command, because no one dared to question his orders. In other words, as long as his identity is not revealed, everything in the entire magic workshop can be used at his will. After arranging the affairs in the castle, Lin did not delay and returned to the secret room to start sorting out Ladakh's relics, especially the experimental notes. The magic knowledge in them was the greatest treasure. Logan flower, requiem grass, hag's claws, magic mulberry root, plus ectoplasm? Lenin sat in front of the cold experimental table, flipping through a research notebook in his hand. What was recorded on it was the formula of source of magic power. If those shaping potions strengthen the wizard's body, then magic power source is used to increase mental strength. This is also the essence of how wizards can cast spells. In fact, it is not difficult to obtain the other materials. You can buy them by spending magic gold coins. The most important thing is this spiritual quality. Ectoplasm widely exists in the minds of those powerful magical creatures. But the quantity is rare. For example, the ectoplasm obtained from killing a fire lion can only make a bottle of source of magic. And this substance also exists in the brains of wizard apprentices and even formal wizards. Regardless of the formal wizards. According to Ladakh's speculation, 
Only the ectoplasm in the brains of three wizard apprentices can be used to assemble a raw material, and the probability of promotion is higher. Chapter 100 Overturning the Foundation of Magic No wonder the land of wizards is so strict about the formula of source of magic. If it is announced, it will probably become a werewolf. Those wizard apprentices, who are not talented enough and eager to be promoted will definitely do anything. Come out. Is this the meaning of the bloody thorns? Lin immediately felt that the name was very appropriate. Just like the properties of this potion, every promoted official wizard in the bloody thorns is watered by the blood of his companions. From, while thinking about it, Lin looked at the remaining manuscripts. Ladakh had many research results, basically related to psychic magic. For example, how to use alchemical formations to extract a person's soul, and how to make a corpse and a container to store the soul. The reason why Ladak specializes in these psychic magics is also very simple. That is, he is not talented enough and has been unable to enter the realm of a great wizard. So he plans to use some crooked methods. What Radak really wants to do is to put his soul into a more gifted body. However, this is obviously not an easy task. The dozens of experimental records recorded in the handbook all failed. Radak once tried to extract the soul of an apprentice, directly occupy the magpie's nest, and put his soul into this body. As a result, there was an extremely uncomfortable situation between the body and soul. So he had to give up. Then he thought of appropriating a living wizard apprentice. It was just that Ladakh could not find a way to perfectly integrate the two souls until his death. Seeing this, Lin In felt a little ashamed. Strictly speaking, he seemed to have done these things when he traveled through time. But even he didn't know the reason. In any case, the priority was to improve his wizard level. Lin quickly gave up his plan to explore psychic magic. Now that he knew how to make the source of magic, he naturally hoped to break through to one as soon as possible. An official wizard. In this way, his last shortcoming no longer exists. Throughout the night, Lin devoted all his energy to making potions. This was thanks to the fact that Ladakh's manor had enough potions in reserve. If he wanted any materials, he could just go out of the secret room and tell a few apprentices to get them. The only problem is that Lennon's research on potions is really limited. Although he holds the formula in his hand, he can only slowly explore the characteristics, processing methods, and storage time of each potion. In just one night, he wastes the equivalent of materials for hundreds of magic gold coins. He is quite tolerant of this, since he is not using anything that belongs to him anyway. Making something yourself is always more reliable than taking a potion made by someone else. I continue to work like this until early in the morning. The old crucible was filled with chaotic colored liquid. The brewing cycle of the potion was about three days. When the color became completely transparent, the most important liquid could be added. Spiritual essence. This is one equal part of the source of magic power. Seeing that the opportunity for breakthrough was imminent, Lin In forced himself to calm down and then began to brew the second potion before taking it yourself. Of course you need to find someone to be a guinea pig. If Ladakh changed the formula blindly or did something wrong, wouldn't he be tricked to death? While Lin was brewing the potion, the entire wizarding land had been detonated by the new issue of Magic Daily. Overturning the foundation of magic the law of free fall. The roar from the arcane society, the theory of magic in the land of wizards has long been outdated. Arguing from the sails and the sea surface. The continent under our feet may be a sphere. The sky is empty the two-ball experiment of the sky airship revealing the amazing omissions of Master Yade. As a professional writer, Roar knew how to attract attention. The 100,000 copies of the extra printed newspaper were swept away in half a day and were quickly placed on every wizard's desk. This is absolutely ridiculous. In a magnificent magic workshop, the great wizard Raphael immediately laughed angrily after reading the title of the Magic Daily. A three-ring wizard from the outside world dares to say that he has overturned the foundation of magic and that questioning magic theory is outdated. This can only be described as ignorant. But is that one crazy? How dare you openly publish such ridiculous remarks? Some doubts arose in Raphael's heart. And then he patiently looked at it. His expression gradually changed from disdain and sneered to doubt. When he saw the star map on the page, his whole expression immediately changed. Perfect. Simply perfect. As an architect with obsessive compulsive disorder, Raphael firmly believes that the truth of the world must be extremely regular and full of beauty. As for the star maps produced by wizards of the prophecy school, the movement trajectories of the nearby stars can be considered beautiful. But the farther stars are different. They can only be described as chaotic. And there may even be sudden movement trajectories. Jumping weirdness. So almost instantly Raphael was sure that the star map on the magic daily was correct. Bang. 
Just as he was thinking about it, two huge banging sounds suddenly came from outside the door, accompanied by the sound of cracking floor tiles. Raphael put away the newspaper with great dissatisfaction, opened the door and walked out, and then saw two half-meter diameter bullets. The sphere hit the floor tiles under the tower in the distance. Then bursts of noise came from the tower above. It's true. It's true. Two spheres of different sizes fell at the same time. Nonsense. I can see very clearly. The ball is obviously delayed by three-tenths of a second, a wizard said with a frown. He was staring at it with farsightedness the whole time and could see very clearly. Isn't it mentioned above? That's because of the influence of air resistance. This is what Master Yade's theory actually says. But why are feathers and pages different? It is said that Master Halram has done an experiment. As long as the air is drained, everything will fall down at the same time. A group of apprentices were gathering on the tower, talking about the experiments recorded in the Magic Daily. Many people's faces turned red, and they kept retorting. The dispute almost started on the spot. The moment Raphael saw the two spheres, he understood that these apprentices were verifying the law of free fall, although the height and weight were certainly not consistent. The results were obviously the same. Lord Raphael, is the continent under our feet really round? On the side, the wizard responsible for recording the experiment asked in confusion, now that the law of free fall has been confirmed. Is the so-called planet theory also true? Chapter 101 Ring of the Faceless One How can this be? Raphael subconsciously wanted to refute. He confirmed that heliocentrism was correct. But he had not yet decided whether the continent under his feet was a flat surface or a sphere. It is too arbitrary to rely solely on sails on the sea as a basis. There are not a few people who think like Raphael. Compared with a free fall experiment that can be certified, the planetary theory is the most incredible. No one can create a sphere so big that it looks like flat ground when you walk on it. It is impossible to even imagine such an existence. It is even more difficult to understand why the seawater would adhere to a sphere instead of falling directly. However, the public's doubts did not last long. The legendary wizard, who had been wandering in the sky for several days and almost lost his way, finally returned and brought news that shocked everyone. The continent beneath their feet might indeed be round. This shocking news swept the entire wizarding land in an instant. Whether they believed it or not, everyone remembered this strange name. Lin from outside the wizarding land. Professor Lin. The next morning, Lin In, who had finished a mathematical Olympiad class, was thinking about what kind of creature's spiritual essence should be used as a basis for promotion. But his thoughts were interrupted by a voice. Sir Roar, what's the matter? Lin In looked at Roar behind him in surprise and asked. This is today's magic daily. You probably haven't had time to read it yet. Right. Roar handed a newspaper to Lin In with a smile. After seeing the specially enlarged titles above, Lin's mouth couldn't help but twitch overturning the foundation of magic the law of free fall. Roar from the arcane society. The theory of magic in the land of wizards has long been outdated. You are not deliberately causing trouble for me. Are you? Mr. Roar? Lin could already imagine how big a storm would be in the entire wizarding land. How is that possible? I'm just an ordinary writer. It's not up to me to decide what content to post. Roar shrugged and said jokingly. And I just repeated what you said. Lin rolled his eyes and forgot about the rest but he didn't say that he wanted to overturn the magic foundation or anything. You don't have to worry. A senior member of the parliament has already ascended to the sky and confirmed that the continent under our feet may indeed be a sphere, Roar said with emotion. Even now, he still has some difficulty. Confidence. Confirmed from high altitude? How high does that have to be? Lennon's face was full of astonishment. Although the planet is round, the size of this thing is really too big. If the size of the earth in the previous life was used, it would need to rise to a place 100 kilometers above the ground to see a more obvious arc. Of course, maybe the planet under your feet is not that big. Or maybe the legendary wizard's eyesight is very good. But it needs to be at least 10 kilometers away to be able to observe the arc with the naked eye, which is already close to the height of the Earth's ozone layer in previous lives. However, this also saved him a lot of trouble. In this way, the two theories he proposed were verified by existing facts and had a legendary wizard as an endorsement which could avoid a lot of trouble. I think the invitation letter from the parliament should arrive in a few days, Roar said. Invitation? Lennon was stunned for a moment and asked in confusion. Of course, it is an academic seminar. It is held every year in the wizarding land. And each school of thought will send personnel to participate, Roar explained. There is also the patent application for your aerial airship. Lord Tick has also handed it in for you. Then next time we meet, 
I will thank him properly, Lin In said with a smile. At night, Lin entered the manor again as Radek. Several crucibles placed on the experimental table kept bubbling. He recorded the placement of everything through his brain. And it is still intact. It didn't move. Apparently no one else came in during this time. After checking the progress of the potion as usual, Lin took the Atlas of Magical Creatures and started looking at it. It has to be said that as a three-ring wizard who has lived for a long time, Ladakh has a lot of books. And there is a lot of knowledge that cannot be obtained in the Academy Library. For example, this Atlas of Magical Creatures indicates the content and strength of spiritual matter in the brains of more than ten common magical creatures. Generally speaking, the more powerful the creature, the greater the increase in spiritual power after being promoted to an official wizard. Obvious. The only thing that makes Lin feel a little worried is that Ladakh's manor only has the ectoplasm of fire lions, basilisks, and griffins. The strength of these three magical creatures can only be considered medium. And Lin is not 100% sure. Promotion completed. After all, the original Carl's magic talent can only be regarded as average. If he had not traveled through time and strengthened his mental power by merging his two souls, it would have been impossible for him to reach the limit of his magic reserves in just two months. While thinking, a slight fluctuation of magic power suddenly jumped up in the closed chamber. Lin In became vigilant subconsciously and looked at the place where the magic wave came from. Under the broken floor tiles, Something was flickering faintly. Mage's hand. Lennon raised his hand to cast a spell. And the broken floor tiles were soon lifted up. A delicate looking ring levitated below and was photographed in front of him. Ring of the Faceless Ones? Lin recognized this thing immediately. But it was not the one he had received originally. But a relic from Ladakh. Before, he thought that this thing had been burned by the white phosphorus fire. But he didn't expect that it was so hard and showed no trace of damage under the high temperature of thousands of degrees. It was constantly flashing with fluorescence. According to the original description on the envelope, this should be a signal for a rally. Calculating the time, it is indeed the day for the faceless men to gather. Lenun's expression couldn't help but change, since Ladakh was already in a state of shock. Many things could not be confirmed in person. He could only guess that the drawings of the airship were obtained by Ladakh using soul-searching witchcraft from Ralph, acquired by the brain. However, in the notes, there was no mention of any need to use an airship. Therefore, there is a high probability that Ladakh does not need this thing himself, but obtains it for others. Lin hesitated for a moment and quickly made a decision. Perhaps he could attend this gathering as Ladakh and explore the reality of the faceless men. Here, Lin in carefully input a trace of magic power. It was an extremely strange feeling, as if his vision was instantly divided into two halves. One half was the scene in the secret room in front of him, and the other half was a dark space. Chapter 102 It just so happens that I also have some research on the human body. The body seemed to be in chaos, surrounded by darkness. In front of him, more than a dozen figures were arranged in a circle, with a faint glow of magic floating around them. Lin Ng glanced over. Everyone's appearance was illusory, surging like unstable water waves. He could only vaguely distinguish the height, shortness, fatness, and changes in facial expressions. Virtual scene detected. Do you want to parse it and search for the signal source? A notification sound suddenly sounded in Lin's mind, almost startling him. When he noticed that no one around him was moving, he realized that Jinao's voice would not be transmitted through the magic power. In this space. Yes. Lin and responded quietly in his mind. He was also very interested in this strange space. He didn't expect that this time he would come to attend the gathering as Ladakh and he would actually gain something unexpected. However, after taking a look at the progress of the analysis, Lennon's mouth couldn't help but twitch, because the progress of the analysis was very slow. About two minutes later, the number of illusory figures in this special space stopped increasing. Lennon counted a total of 15 people including himself. Is everyone here already? The witch directly opposite said. Number four hasn't been here for a long time. Right. Another person next to him shook his head. Perhaps he died somewhere? Who knows? Don't talk about useless things. Just start. A tall and thin figure impatiently interrupted the discussion between the two, and then looked at the crowd and said, Let me start by saying that I am talking about the human body. If you are not interested, you can leave. As soon as these words were spoken, the five shadows immediately disappeared. Lennon watched silently and did not move. The tall and thin figure spoke quickly. After my research, I found that there are more than 200 bones and more than 600 muscles in the human body. 
Muscles are composed of slender threads. When refined, they become a strange tissue structure made of four elements. Under the eloquent narration of the tall and thin figure, everyone present was either deep in thought or laughing. Some people asked questions from time to time, and the wizard answered them patiently. After the explanation was over, eight people except Lin In reached out their hands and ejected a transparent coin. Do I need to pay to hear this knowledge? Lin In immediately thought of this, and it could be brought in directly through magic. It should not be ordinary currency. Number seven. Do you have any objection to what I said? The wizard who spoke was quite dissatisfied and turned to look at Lin In. His illusory body was shaking constantly, which was an angry gesture. According to the rules, if you don't want to listen, you can skip it and leave directly. But the other party actually didn't want to pay after listening. Under the gaze of dozens of pairs of eyes, Lin In was silent for a while, and then said with a smile, You can think so. In fact, I have known the knowledge you mentioned for a long time. It is not anything new, and it is not helpful to me. However, these words made the wizard extremely dissatisfied, and Lin In continued to speak without waiting for his refutation. It just so happens that I also have some research on the human body. For example, I named the threads that make up muscles as you mentioned muscle fibers. The total number of muscle fibers in the human body is about 6 billion, and 70% of them are composed of 3% water and 27% protein. As for bones, they are composed of collagen, calcium, phosphorus, and other ingredients. Lin In talked eloquently and expanded on the wizard's previous speech. Not only did he explain it in more detail, he even explained clearly the proportions of the elements that make up these substances. The illusory figure of the tall and thin figure kept changing, and his face became gloomy. Although he couldn't understand the terms protein and collagen at all, there was also some information that he already knew but deliberately concealed. This means that the other party is not cheating, but actually has a deeper understanding of the human body. It seems that these coins should be reserved for number seven. Seeing that the tall and thin wizard remained silent, the witch sneered and said, but looking at Lin, she couldn't help but feel a chill in her heart. How many bodies had he dissected and studied? How can we understand the human body so deeply? How do you count the six billion muscle fibers? You win this time. The tall and lanky wizard looked ugly and threw the transparent coin he received towards Lin. Lin In used a trace of magic power to capture these coins in his hand. And Jinao's beep sounded again. Unnamed energy was detected. There are similar records in the database. Is it converted into energy? Lenin calmly chose whether or not this time. In view of the fact that so many people were watching, he had no intention of studying it immediately. Now that you've received the money, can you tell us what the so-called protein and calcium are? The tall and lanky wizard said with a dark face. He was naturally extremely unhappy that Lin N had stolen his limelight. But the weird terms the other party mentioned made him feel itchy. Protein is an important component of all cells and tissues in the human body. It is composed of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and other elements. Lenin said a few words very generally. As for some more detailed things, he has not yet researched clearly excuses the past. No one present raised any doubts. The research on magic could not be accomplished overnight. In fact, they were surprised that Lenin could study it so deeply. Although there were some interludes in the middle, the first lecture ended quickly, and the figure that disappeared before reappeared in this chaotic space. Then another wizard stood up, and he was talking about psychic magic. The whole meeting lasted for several hours, and everyone talked about knowledge that was not convenient to communicate openly. However, here, everyone can speak freely, and even tell the details of their own human experiments without caring. The analysis progress of Xi now also increased to 3%. Lin and listened very seriously, and sent out three coins he had received before. After the meeting ended, the faceless men agreed on the time for the next meeting and then announced that the meeting was adjourned. After hearing the news, Lin Un's expression became a little strange. Did he just break up the meeting like that? He thought someone would question why the new members he recruited before speaking out didn't show up. But in the end no one mentioned it at all. Judging from the previous conversations between these people, this faceless men organization can only be described loosely, as if it is just a place to exchange knowledge with each other. Just as Lin was about to leave this illusory space, a wizard next to him suddenly spoke. Number three. 7, 11, and 15. Please keep them for a while. Chapter 103 Hunting the Eye of Death Soon there were only five people left in the chaotic space. Lenin glanced at the three men and two women, including himself, but due to lack of information, did not take the lead in starting a conversation. 
The witch on the side couldn't help it any longer and asked directly, North, I have obtained the high-level magic crystal cannon you want. It took a lot of effort. Now you should be able to tell me what I need these things for. Right. Advanced magic crystal cannon? Lin In immediately looked at that person in surprise. This thing is a secret of the alchemy society. It is rumored that as long as there is enough magic power supply, every shot fired can have a power close to the four-ring magic. I want this thing. Naturally. In order to go to the Sea of Mist and hunt for the Eye of Death. Dot. The wizard named North said with a gloomy smile. Eyes of Death? Maelstrom? Lenin looked confused. But the remaining people immediately seemed to have thought of something. And a wizard spoke in a panic. Are you crazy? The other people couldn't help but retort. North, if you want to die yourself, don't drag us with you. Even the great wizard doesn't dare to say that he can hunt this kind of monster with confidence. Of course they knew what the Eye of Death in North's mouth was referring to. It was an extremely powerful magical creature in the Sea of Mist, capable of controlling water flow and devouring souls. It was also the source of the Maelstrom. According to the information obtained by the Parliament's Institute of Magical Creatures, there are approximately 50 Eyes of Death in the entire Sea of Fog, together with the legendary spell Lost Mist. They form the most important line of defense against the Church's invasion. Even a great wizard would not be willing to face such a monster on the sea. Even if he could win, it would be meaningless because the opponent could escape at any time. Amidst everyone's discussion, Lenin finally gained some understanding of this magical creature called the Eye of Death. In other words, is the maelstrom in the Sea of Mists actually caused by living things? Lenin immediately remembered the power that seemed to be able to absorb the soul when he rushed through the foggy sea in a boat. Of course, it's difficult normally. But who said I have to fight it on the sea? We don't need to take a boat to go there. A smile appeared on North's lips and his eyes turned to Lin. Are you planning to rely on airships to carry out beyond visual range strikes? Lin and instantly understood what the other party wanted to express. Although this powerful magical creature can control water flow and affect souls, it should not have the ability to fly. In other words, as long as they rise to a height of several hundred meters, the ability of the Eye of Death will not have any impact on them, and they can only passively accept the sanctions of the magic crystal cannon. No wonder, Bloodthorn, is willing to spend a lot of money to steal his airship blueprints. This is indeed the easiest way to kill the Eye of Death. Beyond visual range? It's a good title. And very appropriate. North opened the corner of his mouth and said with a proud smile, I still have a few questions. First, how should we find the Eye of Death in the Sea of Fog and confirm the direction? Second, the visibility in the fog is very low. How should we aim if we fly to high altitudes? Third, what should we do if the other party escapes? Lenin asked. Hearing this, everyone present immediately looked at North. These points are very critical. If they are not able to solve them, they will end up working in vain. You don't need to worry about these problems. Of course, I have my own solution. North hesitated and did not answer directly. He had been preparing for this hunt for a full year. He was originally planning to move the magic crystal cannon to an alchemy ship. On the ship, he fought tooth and nail with the eye of death. But a few days ago, the visitor from outside the wizarding land made a sky airship that made North change his mind. Seeing North being so confident, everyone was a little moved. What can we get from helping you? A witch said. A death I corpse is worth at least 30,000 magic gold coins. I only need a sufficient amount of blood. And the rest will be distributed according to contribution. North said without hesitation, and then looked at Lin In. Ladak, you contributed some of the blueprints of the airship, and you are the best at potions among us. Once you obtain the spiritual essence of the Eye of Death, you will make it. You only need to hand over three bottles of Source of Magic, that's enough. The rest is your reward. If I'm not wrong, the potion made using the ectoplasm of the Eye of Death may allow people to become psychers. North's words made Lin pause for a moment. The word psyker was not unfamiliar to him. In the land of wizards, it usually refers to those who are born with great spiritual power. For example, the white pigeon he once saw could even perform weird psychic witchcraft during the apprenticeship stage, even affecting Archbishop Anziuk. Others usually need to be promoted to official wizards before they can learn psychic magic. Even Lin, who has experienced a soul fusion, is no exception. As early as the Sika's empire, he had obtained it from by good soul scream. Although he can also use it, the effect is pitifully weak. Of course, Norse words are not without purpose. It is rumored that the evil mage Mer, who was despised by the entire wizarding land, became a psyker through the potion brewed by the Mind Flayer ectoplasm. And the power of the Eye of Death will only be more powerful than the Mind Flayer. 
As for you, Barbara, after everything is done, I will give you 4,000 magic gold coins as the price for purchasing a high-level magic crystal cannon, Nor said. Barbara also showed a smile on her face. It was unimaginable that North was so generous. The value of a high-level magic crystal cannon was only about 2,000 magic gold coins. At most, the source of it was troublesome. But the other party was actually willing to spend a purchase at twice the price. Then North looked at the other two people and also made a huge promise. He would never allow any mistakes in this operation. The production and modification of the airship will be completed in a few days. I think you all have free time. Right. North glanced at everyone gloomily. The meaning was very obvious. No matter whether they were free or not. They must all spare time. It's time. Why don't we schedule it for the day after tomorrow? I happen to have a very important experiment recently. Lin-In suggested proactively. But the real reason was naturally that what he said was different. The reason why he chose this time was because the day after tomorrow happens to be the day of holiday for Aida College. Lin-In naturally did not intend to be absent from this so-called hunting operation. North and others wanted to drive an airship made with stolen blueprints. Hunt down a death eye. And then take away most of the profits. It's that easy. Chapter 104 Magically Modified Airship After discussing the details of hunting nigh of death, this meeting was officially concluded. The separated consciousness returned to its original form again. Lenin opened his hand. And five illusory coins were brought directly over. Recalling the previous Yi now prompts. Lenin had some vague guesses in his mind. I am afraid that this thing is related to the soul. Maybe a coin represents a human life? Unnamed energy detected. Is it converted into energy? She now's beep sounded again. Lin hesitated for a moment. But still chose yes. Even if these coins represented souls, those who died could not be resurrected. The next moment, the five illusory coins disappeared instantly. And instead, the energy increased by a full 5%. So high. Lin In was somewhat surprised. Doesn't that mean that if he had stood up and said a few more words and obtained enough illusory coins, he would have been able to replenish the energy reserve of his brain? However, these energies are all exchanged for knowledge. And saying too much may arouse suspicion. Not to mention that this thing may be related to the soul. And it is somewhat uncomfortable to use. Lin and quickly adjusted his mentality. This could be regarded as a way to quickly replenish the energy of the brain. Then he turned his attention to the boiling potion table in front of him. In a day or two, the potion would continue to boil. The preparation is completed. But with a more perfect goal, Lin naturally does not want to rely on the spiritual advancement of the fire lion. Basilisk or griffin. Which may cause some obstacles when he breaks through the great wizard in the future. That's it for today's Mathematical Olympiad class. In the next week, I need to research and improve a magic. So the class will be suspended for a while. During these days, you can take the time to review the knowledge you have learned before. Two days later, in Ieta Academy, Lin and looked at the apprentices in the audience and announced, although tomorrow was a holiday, he felt that there might not be enough time. So he simply asked for a few more days off. That's great. As soon as Lin finished speaking, a burst of eager cheers suddenly sounded in the classroom. There is no way. For more than a month, they have been mentally exhausted every day. However, the growth of mental power is also very rapid. Johnny even realized that the magic power in his body was close to perfection. And he could apply for graduation as long as he completed one course. Looking at the extremely excited wizard apprentices, Lin couldn't help but shook his head. They were happy too early. Then, next it's time to arrange homework. Lennon's voice was like the whisper of a devil. And the moods of all the apprentices were like riding a roller coaster. Falling from heaven to rock bottom in an instant. Don't worry. There are only a few hundred questions in total. It's not difficult at all. Five minutes later, Lennon walked out of the classroom door under the resentful gazes of Alok and others. He returned to the room and picked up the potions and liquid explosives that he had made in the past few days. When Lin changed his clothes and appeared outside the manor again in the image of Ladakh, a luxurious carriage had already stopped in front of the door. Master Ladakh, please! Master North is already waiting for you! The strong servant stretched out his hand to open the car curtain and bowed his head very respectfully. Lenin glanced at him, nodded, opened the curtain and got into the carriage. The camel beast pulling the cart in front quickly started running with its legs. The road in Yetta Harbor was very smooth. And Lin, who was sitting in the carriage, could not feel too many bumps. But he soon discovered that the direction of the carriage was heading straight out of the city. But that's right. The size of the airship is not small. If this thing was built in Ieta Harbor, 
I'm afraid it would have been discovered long ago. Lin In remained calm and allowed the carriage to move forward. As the carriage went deeper and deeper into the outskirts of the city, the road gradually became rugged and difficult to walk. However, the carriage did not slow down, but instead sped up. Finally, the carriage stopped at the bottom of a cliff by the sea. Master Wizard, please come this way. The sturdy servant opened the car door and made a gesture of invitation. Lennon nodded, jumped off the carriage, and walked into an abandoned cave at the bottom of the cliff under the guidance of the other party. After passing through a long tunnel, his eyes suddenly opened up. The interior of the mountain was actually an extremely vast space, and Lin immediately saw the huge airship placed in the center, both in shape and size. It was exactly the same as the airship made by Lydia before, but the difference is that these wizards also performed some magical transformations on it. The inner wall of the cabin is inlaid with pieces of metal plates with many strange runes drawn on them, and a ferocious magic crystal cannon is loaded underneath. The muzzle was half a meter thick, and it was chilling to look at. Ladakh, look! This is our airship! What a magnificent creation! A thin-cheeked old wizard walked over from the side, his face full of excitement. This is the initiator of this operation north. That should be my airship. Lenin glanced at north, but had no intention of settling a score with him immediately, and instead asked, So, have you found the secret to how this thing can fly? All Ralph knew was the drawing of the airship frame which lacked the most important things. Of course, I tried dozens of times before I discovered the secret. North nodded, but had no intention of revealing it. Although this thing is destined not to be used openly, he spent several days researching it. Not to mention that this also involves a weakness of the airship. And North is naturally unwilling to reveal it at will. Lenin did not continue to ask, but looked at the three people standing in front of the airship. Hank, Eva and Barbara. In a secret meeting of the small group a few days ago, Lin In had already figured out their names and identities through the conversations of several people. These people were all three ring wizards and senior staff of Bloodthorn. If there is anything these people have in common, it is their age. Even Eva, who looks the youngest, looks to be in her 40s or 50s. When do we start taking action? Barbara, who was impatient, asked hurriedly when she saw that everyone had arrived. Not now. This airship is too conspicuous. If it goes out, it will be spotted by cruising ships. We'd better wait until night before taking action. Nor shook his head. In fact, he was the most anxious one. But now he could only wait, urging the apprentices to move barrels filled with pungent liquid to the airship. Chapter 105 You better pray that we have better luck this time. At night, over the Aida Harbor, a huge airship was slowly sailing toward the sea under the cover of darkness. This height should be more than a thousand meters. Right. Hank felt the sea breeze that was constantly blowing and said with emotion. From a distance, he could even see the scene of the harbor city below. Absolutely. No one should be able to spot us at this height. North's expression also became more relaxed. Because this airship uses magical steam power to drive the propeller at the bottom. And is equipped with wind protection and a stable alchemical formation. It sails very quickly. By the time the full moon hangs high in the sky, they have entered the sea of mist. Range. The vast mist surged up and quickly occupied everyone's field of vision. Hank, Eva, and Barbara looked grave. They were all born in the land of wizards. Although they had learned all kinds of information about the Sea of Mist, the real face of the fog was unknown. Yes, this is the first time. Lenin turned to look at North, very curious about how he could find the so-called Eye of Death. When they reached the sea, North no longer hid it and took out a wooden compass. Lin recognized it at a glance. When he fled to the Sea of Mist, Laud used a compass with a similar appearance to locate the location of the wizarding land. Hank and others looked puzzled. But North quickly explained, This compass can locate nearby objects with huge magic power. If the detection range is open to the maximum, it will always point to the Corona Tower in the wizarding city. So we only need to adjust the range to locate the Eye of Death. Dot. North said as he turned the thimble above to minimize the positioning range of the compass. The pointer on the compass immediately started to rotate and finally pointed to Lin, who was standing aside. I didn't expect you, Ladak, to be the one with the most magic power among us, Barbara said in surprise. Lin and didn't expect this either. He was not even an official wizard now. But he soon realized that this should take into account the magic power stored in the brain. Under the gaze of everyone, Lin in changed his mind and smiled gloomily. That's because I happen to develop some very interesting gadgets these days. If this operation doesn't go smoothly enough, Maybe you will have the opportunity to see its power. 
Lenun's words instantly diverted everyone's attention. Since the compass magic detection can locate the Corona Tower, it obviously means that it is not only detecting its own magic power, but may also include the total magic power of the alchemy items on the body. Thinking of this, several people couldn't help but guess what powerful alchemy tools Lakda had come up with during this period of time. North continued to increase the detection range of the compass. After expanding the range to 50 kilometers, the compass needle finally moved away from Lin's body and pointed to the depths of the Sea of Mist. Lin secretly breathed a sigh of relief. What he was most worried about was that the pointer kept pointing at him. So he really couldn't explain it. Fortunately, although Intelligent Brain's energy has received a wave of replenishment, the total amount has only increased to about 30%, which is not more powerful than the Eye of Death. After discovering the target, North immediately asked the apprentices responsible for controlling the airship to change the course and sail in the direction indicated by the compass. The distance of 50 kilometers is not too far for the speed of the airship. But the problem is that the Eye of Death seems to be constantly moving. So the airship traveled for most of the day and could not catch up. The patience of Barbara and others was also being worn away bit by bit. On the Sea of Mist, there was nothing but thick fog all around. They couldn't even tell the height they were at now. They could only tell through the light how high they were. Day or night. By the way, North, our hunting of the Eye of Death will have no impact on the protection of this sea area. Right. A somewhat impatient Eva asked curiously. What do you think this thing is? A sea beast kept in captivity by the council? A dog that guards our home? Nor said with a sneer. Don't be ridiculous. These terrifying monsters create large whirlpools just to eat the living creatures in the nearby sea and devour their souls. Whether it is the Holy Sea personnel or wizards like us, they are just food in their eyes. And the sea, there is no difference in the fish. Maybe the taste will be better. If you have time to care about the Eye of Death, why don't you pray that we are lucky this time and don't encounter two powerful individuals? Nor said solemnly. Lin and looked at the foggy sky. The scope of this legendary magic was larger than he imagined. He just didn't know how high he needed to rise to get rid of the fog. 5,000 meters? 10,000 meters? As time passed, Lin found the vastness of the sea of mist more and more frightening. He could vaguely feel that the target seemed to be very close. The sound of rushing water came from below. And North immediately ordered the apprentice to lower the height of the airship. Soon, the sound of the rolling water became louder and louder. As if it was constantly echoing in my ears. The height is too low. Rise quickly. Lin suddenly shouted. Hank and others immediately looked toward the bottom of the airship. There was still a thick fog. Like a bottomless abyss. But a few seconds later, Barbara with sharp eyes saw the faint waves. Only then did everyone realize that due to the low visibility, the airship had unknowingly dropped to a height of only a few meters above the sea level. Did you hear that? Come up! Nor suddenly panicked and looked at the apprentice controlling the airship, shouting eagerly. At this moment, an erratic sound like a bell sounded in everyone's minds. Lin, Barbara, Hank and others immediately felt that their thoughts seemed to be affected. The apprentices who controlled the airship stood there blankly, motionless, and kept mumbling something. Following a violent vibration, the airship stopped on the water, like a huge ship, being dragged towards the center of the vortex by the swirling water. The rolled-up sea water kept hitting both sides of the cabin, making the entire airship sway left and right. Damn it! Nor suppressed the discomfort in his brain and cursed angrily. He kicked away the apprentices who were standing there stupidly. Then he held a pipe and frantically converted the magic power in his body into hydrogen for replenishment. Into the air bag above. Lenin clung to the corners of the cabin to steady his body. While an apprentice beside him was thrown away in the violent shaking. It wasn't until the rushing water reached his mouth and nose that the sorcerer's apprentice seemed to wake up. He screamed and struggled. But was swept in by the flowing water. Chapter 106 The Eye of Death That Fell Into Madness Help me! Lord North! The apprentice who was thrown off the airship kept struggling and wailing, and was sucked into the turbulent whirlpool. Get up! North yelled. After injecting a sufficient amount of hydrogen, the airship broke away from the water bit by bit, and flew up moments before being sucked into the maelstrom. Seeing the airship leaving the water in front of them, everyone present breathed a sigh of relief. If they were sucked into the maelstrom, they would all die. North's hands and feet were trembling. After experiencing a life and death crisis, he didn't dare to hide it anymore. He quickly took out a palm-sized crimson crystal and used the mage's hand to pinch it with a look of pain on his face. It shot into the sky and exploded violently a moment later. A burst of dazzling red light appeared. The world suddenly changed. 
and the original thick white mist subsided at a speed visible to the naked eye. Lin and looked around. In just 10 seconds, the thick fog covering a radius of 2 to 3 kilometers had disappeared without a trace. According to a rough estimate, the scope of the maelstrom should be smaller than last time. Since there is such a useful thing, why didn't you take it out just now? Barbara asked dissatisfiedly. They almost died underwater just now. This is the bone marrow of the feathered serpent. It can temporarily neutralize the fog, but the range and duration are very limited. Only this one can never be used easily, Nor said with a solemn expression, while looking into the distance. Nearby although the white fog has been neutralized and dispersed, the fog in the distance is slowly gathering towards the center. They must not delay for too long. Quick! Everyone move! Throw these things down! North called to everyone and threw the barrels placed on the airship toward the center of the vortex. The wooden barrel containing the inexplicable liquid quickly fell on the sea surface and flowed into the large whirlpool along with the current. Then Lin was surprised to find that the originally turbulent water was slowly calming down. What on earth is going on? The maelstrom has subsided? Hank and others were also surprised. But the next moment, they realized that they had thought too much. And the extremely stable sea surface was constantly bubbling as if it had been boiled by fire. After a moment, a huge tentacle stretched out from the maelstrom and then hit the sea hard. The entire sea seemed to shake. Huge waves tens of meters high suddenly jumped up, and the wave shot straight into the sky. The terrifying momentum was frightening. But this was just the beginning. More and more huge tentacles stretched out from the bottom of the sea, covered with ferocious barbs, each barb flashing with a blue-cold light, obviously sharp and abnormal, like several winding dragons rolling on the sea. North was so excited that he couldn't control himself. The news he got was correct. This thing would really make death, I fall into a state of irrational madness. Now! Hank! Adjust the muzzle and kill it! Nor shouted as he looked at several people. If possible, he would like to do it himself. But apart from those unreliable apprentices, he is the only one who can fly an airship now. This? Do you really want to fight? Hank looked at the furious eye of death below and couldn't help but swallow his saliva. They seemed to have angered someone they shouldn't have provoked. North looked at Hank who was hesitant and didn't dare to take action. He wanted to kick him off the airship. So he turned to look at Lin and said, It's up to you. Ladakh. Lin Ng glanced at him and directly took over the gunner's position. Move the switch to adjust the angle of the magic crystal cannon. And after about three seconds, directly press the wrench. A large amount of substantial magic power condensed at the half meter thick muzzle. And then as the roar resounded throughout the world, a brilliant blue light spurted out, striking a certain point on the sea with destructive power. Rumble. The violent explosion caused a chain reaction. And the sea surface sank instantly. But the next moment, a huge amount of seawater rushed into the interior crazily. The power of the advanced magic crystal cannon was extremely astonishing. Even the airship that was blessed with alchemical formations such as stability, wind protection, and rapidity started to shake under the strong recoil. However, this inevitable blow was missed. Except for the flying water. Nothing hit. Ladakh. What did you do? Nor said with great distress. This shot requires several high-quality magic stones. And its power is completely obtained with money. When Hank and Eva hit Barbara, she also looked at Lin with a strange expression. The eye of death is so big. Can it miss it? Ahem. Mistake. Try again. Lin said slightly embarrassed. At such a long distance, he subconsciously aimed according to the ballistic parabola. But the result was that the cannon fired by this thing was actually a straight line. In order to facilitate Lin's aim, North quickly lowered the airship to a height of 300 meters. This time, Lin readjusted the trajectory of the magic crystal cannon. A few seconds later, there was another violent roar, and the bright blue light passed over the constantly swinging tentacles and hit a sea surface. Could it be that he missed the target again? This idea popped into the minds of North and others, but they soon discovered that they were wrong. As a large amount of sea water evaporated, a huge figure hidden under the sea surface appeared. Eyes of death. Everyone present widened their eyes and stared at this figure. The revealed length alone was more than 20 meters. If you include the tentacles, it would probably break the record of 100 meters. The pitch black body was as if it was cast from steel. The head is triangular in shape. And a pair of scarlet eyes are even more ferocious and terrifying. But before everyone could recover from the shock, another ray of light from the magic crystal cannon appeared. Lin and actually launched the attack again before the airship could shake violently due to the recoil. Before the display seawater had poured in, this blow directly hit Death Eye's body. 
The dark steel-like body was directly pierced by the dazzling beam of light. And a huge, bone-deep scar emerged. A large amount of blood spurted out from it. Dying the nearby sea surface dark green. Angry roars resounded across the sky. And the seawater began to churn as if it had come alive. A dozen thick tentacles stretched out and struck down continuously. Setting off huge waves several feet high on the sea surface. However, the airship is too high. And no matter how big the waves are, it cannot cause harm to Lin and others inside. Even a roar that can affect the spirit has become very weak after spanning a distance of 300 meters. The magic crystal cannons landed on the sea one after another, blasting scars on the huge body of the Eye of Death. In normal times, even if you have a magic crystal cannon that can break through defenses, it is by no means an easy task to severely injure a thinking giant beast. However, after swallowing the liquid in the barrel, Death Eye has lost its mind and only knows how to continuously wave its tentacles to attack distant enemies. Chapter 107 Indiscriminate Bombing That's it! Kill it! Nor shouted with great excitement. Hank and the others looked at the terrifying giant beast on the sea struggling, but helpless, and there was an uncontrollable excitement in their hearts. They all saw the power of the Eye of Death. If they were to fight on the sea in a boat, it is estimated that a few of their three-ring mages would not be enough to fill the opponent's teeth. But now such a monster can only be ravaged to death by them without the ability to resist. Such a contrast even gave them the feeling that they were dreaming. When the 13th Magic Crystal Cannon was accurately fired, the body of the Eye of Death had been riddled with holes. Several of the tentacles floating on the sea had been broken off, and blood and debris were scattered all over the sky. The vast sea surface below has been stained with blood and completely changed its color. However, the vitality of this thing was much stronger than everyone expected. Even under such an attack, it was still not completely dead. It kept slapping the sea surface. Its huge body twisted crazily, and even began to consciously dodge the speeding incoming waves. Magic beam. The surrounding thick white mist gradually closed in, and the visibility was reduced by half. It was obvious that the crystallized power of a feathered snake bone marrow was limited, and it took just over ten minutes for it to hold on. Lenin fired another magic crystal cannon, then turned to look at the people watching and spoke. North! The reserve of magic stones is running out. This won't work. You should do something. Hearing this, Hank and the others looked at each other and nodded together. They had already reached this point, and no one wanted this hunting operation to fail in the end. Thinking of this, the three of them raised their hands and started to cast spells and bombardments. They threw all kinds of frost, fireballs, and corrosion spells one after another. They didn't care about the accuracy. In short, they were done with the explosion. Even North gave up controlling the airship, ran to the edge of the airship, condensed dozens of pyroblasts, and smashed them toward the sea below. Under the continuous bombardment of the magic crystal cannon and the digital three-ring wizards, the Eye of Death finally could no longer hold up. The huge body quickly flipped over on the sea, stirring up countless waves, and the body was densely covered with burn marks. And then no matter how the spell hit him, there was no movement. Do you die? North and the others looked at the Eye of Death which was no longer moving, and its body covered almost half of the sea. They couldn't help but hesitate a little. After all, the opponent's power was too terrifying, and the fear in the heart of the opponent's death would be difficult to subside without truly confirming the opponent's death. Lin Ng glanced at the launching device in his hand. There was not much magic left in the magic crystal cannon, and it was not enough to launch the next attack. As everyone hesitated, the huge body of the Eye of Death gradually sank and submerged slowly into the sea. North became anxious immediately and finally managed to kill the giant beast. The initial investment alone cost him thousands of magic gold coins to prepare various supplies. If he allowed Death Eye's body to sink into the water, he would go crazy. North hurriedly rushed to the driver's seat and pressed the switch of the air valve. A large amount of hydrogen rushed out from the auxiliary airbag. The airship quickly lowered its height, and the wooden board at the bottom of the cockpit bounced away with a bang. Different from the airship made by Lydia. What was loaded at the bottom of the cockpit was not a ball, but a giant hook that looked like an anchor, with many sharp barbs arranged on it. It was obviously specially made for a tool for hunting giant sea beasts. After the height of the airship dropped to 50 meters, North, who could no longer hold it in, launched the giant hook, with a whistling sound that broke through the air. The giant claws plunged straight into the huge body of the Eye of Death. The barb structure was deeply embedded in the flesh, and the special rope connecting in the middle collapsed tightly. The slow sinking trend of the Eye of Death stopped instantly, and North was relieved. Next, they only needed to drag the thing back slowly. 
although such a large sunken corpse has long exceeded the maximum load limit of this magically modified airship. It can still be towed with the help of the buoyancy of seawater. The only thing that made North feel a little regretful was that after a violent bombing, only half of Death Eye's body was left, and a large amount of body tissue, and most of the blood had sunk to the bottom of the sea. Lin In on the side felt something was wrong, because when the hook entered the body, the body of the Eye of Death suddenly shook violently several times, perhaps not just because of the impact. At the same time, a scarred tentacle suddenly shot out from the dark green sea below and wrapped around the thick rope. It's pretending to be dead. Be careful! Hank yelled in panic. But it's obviously too late to warn now. Under the horrified gaze of everyone, the tentacles were attached to the ropes and they pulled hard. And the airship suspended in the air was dragged and fell to the sea. The huge force caused the airship to tremble violently and voluntarily. And there was a creep inside the cabin. Crunching friction sound. It's over! We are dead! Barbara screamed. Her whole face turned purple. And she desperately grabbed the edge of the airship. But she could only watch the airship fall. And below was the eye of death. Open mouth parts and waving tentacles. It actually wants to tie up the entire cabin and swallow it directly. Lin and tightly grasped the launcher of the magic crystal cannon. Staring closely at the tentacle dragging the airship. The magic power inside was not enough to launch the next magic crystal cannon. In a life and death crisis, Lin In would not keep it and replenish part of your own magic power. Nearly 60% of the magic power in the body was drained out in an instant. And a magic crystal cannon with only half the original size was shot out again, directly blowing the tentacle with the rope attached to it into two pieces. The violent shock wave generated by the explosion also caused the airship to deviate from its direction, avoiding the fate of being crushed and swallowed. But the fate of falling was still inevitable. Boom! The huge airship hit the sea diagonally, causing a wave several feet high. Lin In and others were hit headfirst into the wooden planks of the cabin under the huge impact. Since most of the structure of the cabin is made of wood, and the airbag is filled with hydrogen, the entire airship did not sink, but floated sideways on the sea. Damn it! Damn it! This monster should have lost his mind a long time ago! North felt dizzy and cursed in anger and fear. Lin, Hank and others had no time to curse, because a huge tentacle hit the airship from top to bottom. Chapter 108 Chapter 107 Since it wants to eat so much, let it eat! Ice Curtain Secondary Magic Protection Mage Armor and Magic Barrier Facing the huge tentacles coming towards them, several people present used the strongest protective magic they had. Several ice walls were the first to block the front. But the next moment, they were burst like bubbles. Even the three-ring protection spell the magic barrier was unable to withstand the furious eye of death and was crushed to pieces in less than two seconds. The tentacles quickly hit the cockpit of the airship heavily and the fine runes on the metal plate outside the cabin suddenly lit up with a deafening sound. The outer SH. L of the airship suddenly dented and the most critical one was the demon. The crystal cannon was smashed to pieces. This is because the previous protective magic and the alchemy formation arranged on the airship blocked most of the power. Otherwise, just by such an impact, the entire airship would be broken into two parts in an instant. Everyone in the airship was beaten to pieces by this huge force. It wasn't until this moment that everyone realized the terror of the power of the Eye of Death. What even chilled the hearts of several people was that the Eye of Death actually knew how to pretend to be dead and prioritized destroying the magic crystal cannon that threatened the most. This undoubtedly meant that the opponent had probably regained some of its sanity. However, the giant tentacle did not stop. With a sweep, before everyone could react, Eva on the far right was knocked away. No! Eva! Barbara shouted in horror, just watching helplessly as another tentacle rose from the bottom of the sea, beating Eva into a ball of flesh. Seeing Eva's tragic death on the spot, Barbara's eyes turned red. She gave up her protection and pointed at the tentacle. Ice breath, a strange cold current shot out. The movement of the tentacles dangling near the cabin became extremely slow, and the crystal water droplets on the surface instantly condensed into ice. North and others, who were familiar with Barbara, immediately understood and fired several rounds of pyroblast with their hands. Under the attack of ice and fire, the huge tentacle was immediately blown into two pieces. It won't last long. Kill it! Otherwise none of us will survive! North roared loudly. Under the obstruction of the Eye of Death, it is extremely difficult for this airship to fly again. The only way to survive is to kill the opponent directly. Everyone present understood this truth. But there were still eleven remaining tentacles of the Eye of Death, half of which had already been wrapped around the airbag of the airship, trying to drag the entire airship in. 
Hank cursed secretly and raised his hand to gather multiple pyroblast technique. At this time, Nor seemed to have remembered something and hurriedly interrupted. Be careful. The fire magic must not hit the air bag. Hank and Barbara, who were about to cast the spell, couldn't help but froze for a moment. The entire air bag was very huge and stood between everyone and the eye of death. Doesn't this mean that they would be prohibited from using fire magic? Will this thing explode? Lin immediately realized that the suspending gas used by this airship was probably hydrogen. The kind that can blow us all to death at such a close distance. North said in horror. In fact, there was actually a second airship under their feet. As for the first ship, because of an apprentice's mistake, it turned into a ball of fire, causing a large number of casualties. Therefore, when making the airship under his feet, he deliberately used fireproof materials to make the most important airbag. But he was determined not to be able to stop it. Live too powerful fire magic. However, after receiving confirmation from North, an idea came to Lin's mind. Dongjo grabbed the pipe of the auxiliary airbag, converted the magic power in his body into oxygen and injected it into it, and then raised his hand to cast a spell. Magic barrage. The next moment, a dozen magic missiles were suspended around Lin, and then whizzed away. But the target was not the waving tentacles, but the rope connecting the airbag and the cockpit. What are you going to do? Hank asked in shock. Lin's movement was too fast. No one had time to react. And the airship's airbag separated from the cockpit. Our magic alone is not enough to kill the eye of death. Since it wants to eat this thing so much, we might as well let it eat it. Lin replied calmly. Although they had successfully blown up a tentacle just now, it was difficult for them to threaten the opponent's body. Only a terrifying weapon, like the advanced magic crystal cannon could pose a big enough threat to the eye of death. With the advanced magic crystal cannon smashed, there was only one way left to cause fatal damage to the eye of death. North instantly understood what Lin meant. And while feeling a chill in his back, he also realized that this was indeed their only chance. North, Hank, and Barbara, if you want to survive, you will obey my command later. You only have one chance. Lin looked at the two of them and said decisively, Hank and Barbara didn't understand what Lin was talking about at all. But they also knew that they couldn't think of any way to reverse the situation. So they nodded curtly. In this moment of delay, the Eye of Death had already waved its tentacles and dragged the huge air bag in front of him, squeezing his toy like an irritable child, and pulling the air bag out of shape. Although this thing affects their use of fire magic, it also blocks the sight of the Eye of Death. The monster that lives in the sea of mist all year round has never seen an airship. In its knowledge, the airbag and cockpit are both they are one piece and can be eaten together. The Eye of Death's teeth are obviously very good, not to mention the airbag frame composed of camel beast leather and branches of the magic tree. Even steel can be chewed to pieces. From now on, count silently for three seconds, and then everyone will use the strongest fire magic. Seeing that the time was ripe, Lenin said loudly, approaching and casting magic barrage again. A large number of magic missiles appeared again and roared away. Every wizard knows this kind of basic magic. As long as he doesn't act too conspicuously, Lin doesn't worry about his identity being suspected, probably aware of the danger. Although deaths, I could not see the scene behind the airbag. The remaining tentacles were waving randomly. Some of the magic missiles hit the giant tentacles, corroding the skin and creating pits. It was obvious that the magical power on the surface was just a disguise, and the interior was still full of corrosive aqua regia. The remaining magic missiles all hit the airbags. The gas in the front and auxiliary air bags suddenly spurted out, and a large amount of hydrogen and oxygen floated out and mixed together. Chapter 109 Ending the Eye of Death If you want to cause a hydrogen explosion, you have to keep the hydrogen in the air between 4% and 75.6%. If you want the most violent explosion, you have to keep the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen around 2 colon 1. Without a doubt, Lin did it. Although it is not the standard ratio, it is very close. Multi-pyroblast, North and others, who had been counting silently, took action the moment the missile hit the air bag. Several three-ring wizards cast spells together, and in an instant, dozens of violent fireballs roared in. After losing half of the protective circle used to break through the tentacles, they collided with the air bag. Boom. At this moment, the mixed gas was violently ignited, and the world seemed to shake. A huge explosion resounded through the sky, and along with a dust cloud rising, Dazzling firelight and violent shock waves swept towards the surroundings. The Eye of Death, which had just bitten through the air bag, immediately tasted a taste that he had never tasted in his life. 
flames and explosions were poured directly into the huge mouth. The damage caused by blasting from the inside is often the most severe. Burning. Pain. Numbness. Attacking from various parts inside and outside the body. Almost instantly it felt as if it had turned into a ball of red-hot iron. Severe pain spread all over the body. As if something was tearing apart its own flesh and blood. It roared even more crazily. Lin In and others had no time to pay attention to the eye of death at this moment. Because the terrifying waves accompanying the shock wave had already swallowed up the cockpit. The battered cockpit was blown into the sea by huge waves more than 10 meters high. And Lin. North. Hank and Barbara were no exception. The seawater that was dyed dark green poured in from all directions. As if it was thrown into a roller. The constantly rolling water made everyone dizzy. By the time the cockpit resurfaced, everyone present looked wet and embarrassed. Damn it! Damn it! No matter what you say next time, I will never fall into your trap again! Hank cursed angrily. He originally believed that Norse evil talents would do such a fatal thing. Lin and immediately turned his gaze in the direction of the eye of death, this ferocious beast, had completely stopped moving. Its huge body was blown to pieces. All its tentacles were blown off. And all the body parts either sinking to the bottom of the water, or floating on the sea. Not even a third of the head is covered. And the whole body is wrapped in blazing flames. It should really be dead. Right. A look of fear appeared on Barbara's face. If it can still survive like this, then I will walk backwards from now on. Norse spat and said viciously, and then checked the cockpit under his feet. Even if metal plates and protective alchemy arrays were installed on both sides of the cabin in advance, the damage to the entire cabin was still not optimistic, and the rear of the cabin was completely deformed. Fortunately, the convenience of magic is enough to solve this little trouble. Now that the airbag of the airship is gone, they can only treat it as a boat and drive back slowly. Although he was full of confidence when he said it before, when he actually sat in the cabin and approached, North felt a cold sweat in his heart for fear that the Eye of Death would move again and attack them. However, none of this happened. Everyone arrived in front of the huge corpse smoothly. After extinguishing the burning flames, it was finally time to collect the loot. The first is the ectoplasm in the brain, which is undoubtedly the most precious thing. The power of the Eye of Death even allows these ectoplasms to form crystals in the brain, which are about the size of a fist. Judging from the weight, it should be enough to brew five bottles. The above source of magic, what surprised Lin was that after receiving the crystal, North just threw it to him casually, and then eagerly filled the Eye of Death's blood in a carefully prepared bucket made of mithril. Is this important? Hank suddenly asked. Barbara on the side also looked over, and anyone could see that North valued the blood of the Eye of Death. It is even possible that North planned this hunting operation and spent countless energy just for this thing. Actually, there's nothing special about this kind of blood. It's just that the alchemy circle I'm researching just needs this thing. North looked at the few people surrounding him in a half circle and said angrily, And the sea is full of them. If you want, you can catch them yourself. However, Barbara and Hank were unwilling to give up. The blood in the seawater had long been diluted, and the effect was greatly reduced no matter what it was used for. They really risked their lives this time and survived several times. They were even more aware of the power of the Eye of Death. So they were very curious about North's purpose of collecting blood. Let's do this. My reward can be had but you have to give us some collected blood, Hank suddenly suggested, and then looked at Lin, who had not spoken yet. What do you think? Ladakh? That's reasonable. Lin nodded and stood up together. You are trying too hard. Don't forget, the airship used to hunt the Eye of Death, the magic crystal cannon, and the feathered serpent bone marrow to dispel the fog were all bought by me at a high price. North rebuked with suppressed anger. Barbara's expression became a little embarrassed. Don't say that, North. We just want to replace part of the reward with blood. You just need to give us a bottle of blood to use for research. Faced with the pressure of the three people, North's expression changed. But he had to compromise. Even though they were all members of the Bloodthorn. To put it bluntly, they were just alliances of interests. In the battle just now, he was consumed. He has absorbed a lot of magic power. If several people attack him at the same time, he may really die here. Thinking of this, North could only take out a few empty potion bottles with an ugly expression, filled some of the blood, and then threw them to the three of them. After Hank and Barbara took it, they looked in Lin's direction intentionally or unintentionally. The spiritual essence of the Eye of Death is also an extremely precious thing. I'm only responsible for making the potion, not for distributing it, but my share must not be touched. Lin naturally saw what the two were thinking, spoke casually, 
and kick the ball to North again. No matter how many empty promises he makes. He doesn't care. You can spend money to buy it then. North said through gritted teeth. The two of them stopped immediately. And they did not dare to continue to stimulate North. Lest this guy would go crazy and die with them. Chapter 110 Weird Rat Experiment On the way back. Because the airship turned into a ship and they needed to drag the remains of the giant beast. The few people had to drift on the sea for three full days. Due to the previous disputes, everyone along the way was extremely vigilant and did not even dare to close their eyes when sleeping. In this atmosphere of mutual fear, Lin had no intention of deliberately provoking a dispute. After all, this ship was too small. Once a fight started on it, it would most likely damage the cabin or the ship in North's hands. Without the compass, he could only drift on the sea of mist forever. North, Hank, and Barbara obviously understood this. So even though the atmosphere was a bit tense along the way, they still maintained a harmonious attitude on the surface. It wasn't until the night of the fourth day that the ship returned to the wizard's land under the cover of night. Finally home. After setting foot on land, Barbara slowly breathed a sigh of relief and felt that her legs were shaking. The sea of mist was really too torturous. There was nothing there but white mist. Hank even cursed that he was like this. I never want to cross the sea by boat again in my life. Anyway, everyone has worked hard on this trip. I will give you the things I promised you one by one in a few days. Nor said tiredly. You'd better not delay for too long. Barbara warned. The money to buy the high-grade magic crystal cannon was paid for by herself. This was not a small amount of money. North just nodded in agreement. And then ordered his men to arrange several carriages to send several people back to the city overnight. Lin had no intention of delaying and returned to the manor in Ladakh. After returning to the castle in Ladakh, he asked Coleman and others to catch a hundred rodents for him for biological experiments. Coleman was dumbfounded by such an order. Where could he catch so many rodents? In the end, the apprentices who were conducting experiments had to stop what they were doing and catch mice in the castle. After working for half a night, they barely managed to collect half of them, and they had to go to other places to catch mice. Lin Eng quickly realized the convenience of having a force, whether it was potion materials or rats for experiments. They were all gathered for him in just a few hours. Taking advantage of this time, Lin Eng reviewed all the books on the production of Source of Magic in the secret room, and then took out the crystal that was taken out of Death Eye's brain. The appearance of the crystal appears to be completely translucent, with a dark red color, and the surface is covered with strange runes and patterns. Just one look at it makes people fall into silence as if their souls are being absorbed into it. Judging from the weighing, it is only about 150 grams, which is very light. According to Ladakh's records in his notes, brewing a source of magic power usually requires 30 grams of spiritual matter as material. In other words, these spiritual qualities are only enough to make five copies of source of magic and most. It seems like a lot, but if used for experiments, I'm afraid it's not enough at all. Lin Ng could only save as much as possible and put equal amounts of the spiritual essence of Salamander, Griffin and Eye of Death into the potion that had been brewed long ago, and produced three bottles of Source of Magic in different colors. Then, using 0.5 milliliters as a unit, nine rodents were arranged as experimental targets, and each group of three rodents were asked to take the corresponding potion, probably because it was too little. After waiting for a long time, it had no effect at all. According to the records in Ladaka's notes, this thing should take effect within a few seconds. Lin could only slowly increase the dosage of the medicine until the total amount exceeded 2 milliliters. Three of the rodents immediately started to make noises and became more and more violent. One of them even tried to bite through the cage. What these rodents had just taken was a potion brewed using the ectoplasm of the Eye of Death. Lin recorded all these changes and then divided the control group into groups. Of the three rodents in each group, one was dissected on the spot to record the data. One remained the same and the other continued to increase the dose for the experiment. 100 rodents sounds like a lot, but in fact it is not enough in a controlled experiment. In just one night, the materials on hand are almost used. The wide experimental table was filled with rodents in different forms of death. Some of them were dissected by him, while others died suddenly after taking an overdose of magic potion. Among them, the rodent that took the eye of death potion was the most terrifying. After drinking about 5 milliliters of the potion, its eyes began to turn red, and it screamed something different. Then half a minute later, without any warning, die. What frightened Lin the most was that when he was looked at by those red eyes, he even felt as if he was facing the eyes of death. However, he had killed all the main bodies, and Lin In was not afraid of a small rodent. 
He captured the last experimental subject, forced it to take 5 milliliters of magic potion, and then directly performed vivisection without waiting for it to die. Is there a strong magic reaction in the brain? Lin discovered this unexpectedly. In fact, as long as rodents take the magic potion, some magic reactions will appear in their brains. This is normal and a characteristic of magical creatures, which means the formula is correct. It's just that this rodent is a little different. The magic reaction in the brain is too strong, and it has even reached the level of a first-level magic. It can only be described as an exaggeration. And then symptoms of brain death appeared. Lin took Ladak's notes and looked through them. He only found some records about brain death caused by taking magic potions. There was no mention of the reason why the rodent's eyes were red, and it was extremely aggressive. This may be the peculiarity of the dead eye ectoplasm. As a potion master, Lakta has in-depth research on the source of magic power. Of course, this guy is not as humane as he is. He directly uses human bodies for experiments. Many of the missing poor people in Nancheng district are related to this magic workshop. Lakta even used wizard apprentices to conduct experiments and accumulated accumulated knowledge. A lot of experience. What Lin In is doing is to confirm whether Lakta has played any tricks in the notes. And the strength of the eye of death spirit. Judging from the previous state of the rat taking the potion. The difference is probably more than 10 times. Such a strong drug effect made Lin a little worried. 30 grams of ectoplasm is the optimal ratio concluded by the potion masters of the council. Which can maximize the effect of source of magic. But an effect that is too powerful may cause some side effects. The violent posture of the previous rodent also made him very concerned. After thinking for a long time. Lenin finally decided to create a weakened version of the source of magic and find someone to give it a try. If there are no side effects, take the potion yourself. Chapter 111 Untie the Knot The next day, at noon, Johnny knocked on the door after receiving the notice. After getting permission, he opened the door and walked in. Professor Lin In, are you looking for me? The silver gray-haired witch gently closed the door, holding the Olympiad subject notes in her hand, and asked playfully, Lin was not in a hurry to get down to business, but looked at Johnny and asked curiously, It's been so many days. Don't you have anything to say to me? Since coming to the land of wizards, he has done a lot of things, which is far different from his original form. Carl, a noble boy who only studied magic for half a year, there was a look of hesitation on Johnny's face, and he hesitated to speak. Finally, he shook his head and said seriously, When I was in Nordland, if it weren't for you, I would have died long ago. This was also the reason why she was willing to trust Lin An and keep his secret. After all, he saved her twice. Lin nodded, but quickly asked again. Just a few days ago, I received an invitation letter and the name Carl was mentioned on it. But I have never revealed your identity to anyone else. Johnny frowned and said with certainty. But she soon discovered that her defense was very weak because she was the only one who knew the identity of the other party. The silver haired which bit her lip but she couldn't think of any way to prove herself. I know it's not you. Lin was not surprised by this. He still had trust in Johnny. Firstly, it was the comradeship established on the escape route. And secondly, when he was in Harbor Town, the other party was willing to risk his life to rob the prison to save him. Coupled with the bundling of interests, the possibility of betrayal is slim. I'm just worried that someone will analyze what you said. Lin explained, and then asked Johnny who he had met these days and when he had talked about the past of the Sika's empire, the silver gray-haired witch said, as she was thinking about it, in the past two months since she came to the wizarding land, she rarely went out. She only spoke to the apprentices of Aida College. She only said a few words when she was annoyed by questions. And it was all the excuse they had thought up on the Sea of Mist. That is, after Kalu was captured, several of their apprentices, under the leadership of Lin In, barely escaped from the pursuit of the Holy Sea. It's just that except for two people, everyone else fell to the pursuit of the Holy See. After careful questioning, Lin finally gave up on looking for clues from Johnny because there were no omissions in the other party's words. By the way, I came to you this time for another important matter. Lin took out a bottle of dark red potion and placed it on the table. What is this? Johnny asked curiously. Source of magic. Lin In said word by word. The expression of the silver gray haired which became extremely surprised. She looked at Lin and then turned her attention to the bottle of dark red, source of magic. The magic potion in front of him is undoubtedly something that any apprentice is eager to obtain. This is the certificate for promotion to an official wizard. If I guess correctly, your magic power should have reached its limit. Right? 
Lin asked. Johnny was different from him. Before entering the Wizarding Land, he had learned magic from Kalu for four years. With his talent, he was probably very close to being promoted. At first, Lin planned to find an apprentice directly at the manor in Ladakh to conduct experiments. But after thinking about it, it was too wasteful. Although this source of magic power is a weakened version, with only 10 grams of Eye of Death ectoplasm added as a primer. According to his calculations, the effect is still stronger than the source of magic power made with ordinary materials. A lot. He couldn't help a certain apprentice get promoted and then kill him to keep it secret. Right. Although the wizard apprentices in the manor helped Ladakh do a lot of dirty work. They had no enmity against him, and there was no need to do such a thing. Not to mention that the spirit essence of the Eye of Death is very precious. After some experiments and brewing two potions, there is only less than 50 grams left. So you need to use it sparingly. Another point is that if the target is changed to Johnny, then the identity problem will be easily solved. As long as the witch applies for graduation after a period of time, gets approved by herself, and goes through a few procedures, she can become an official wizard recognized by the parliament. This potion is slightly different. I brewed it myself. The effect should be more powerful than the one issued by the council. And the probability of promotion is higher. But I am not 100% sure. There may be side effects. In short, everything is unknown. If you are not willing to take risks, forget it. Lin in explained the pros and cons very concisely and had no intention of tricking the other party into taking the medicine. However, Johnny's attention was not on this. Nor did he ask what the so-called side effects were. He took a deep breath and suddenly asked, So, you're not officially a wizard yet, are you? She is not stupid. And of course she can guess Lennon's purpose of taking out the source of magic. Lin fell silent and did not answer. The title of wizard apprentice will be taken off his head from tomorrow. But sometimes silence is also an answer. Johnny immediately knew that he had guessed correctly. And the doubts in his heart suddenly disappeared. These days, the strangest thing to her is that Lennon's promotion speed is too exaggerated. If Lin is really a three-ring magician, then the so-called super genius in the wizarding land, magic star, August is not even worthy of carrying his shoes. But now it seems that they are just wizard apprentices. And Lin should have used other means to release powerful magic. This is not impossible. For example, using the power of magic hand, one can use one level high level magic five times a day. If Lin gained the appreciation of a great wizard or even a legendary wizard in that secret magic society, it would be normal for him to obtain several alchemy items that can cast rearing magic. Thinking of this, Johnny picked up the source of magic on the table and drank it without hesitation out of trust in Lin. Compared to the extremely unlikely side effects, she was more interested in the higher probability of promotion that Lin in said. No apprentice dares to say that he will be able to cross this great barrier. Even the slightest improvement counts. Lin kept a close eye on Johnny's changes. He found someone to experiment with. The second important reason was to see what the promotion process was like and whether there was anything he could learn from. Chapter 112, I call it Antimatter Annihilation Cannon. The moment he drank the magic potion, a strong magic wave appeared around Johnny and the magic power in his body seemed to boil. Then the witch's expression gradually became painful. She closed her eyes and there were beads of sweat on her forehead as if she was struggling. Lin looked at the other party nervously, not daring to disturb Johnny, who was still in a breakthrough state, and couldn't help him. He could only wait quietly for the effect of the potion to end. About three minutes later, the magic power fluctuations around him gradually subsided. Johnny slowly opened his eyes. His body swayed, and he almost fell to the ground. How's it going? Was it successful? Lin stretched out his hand to hold Johnny steady, and asked quickly. The silver-haired witch did not answer but stretched out her hand, and several hot fireballs appeared around her, spitting continuously around her body. Casting a spell without the aid of any materials is the mark of a true wizard. I succeeded. A very touching smile appeared on Johnny's face, like a child who discovered his favorite toy. After extinguishing the fireball, he began to experiment with other magic. Fire, thrust, poisonous mist. This is completely different from the usual feeling of using materials to cast spells. Going from apprentice to official wizard is a qualitative leap. Lennon could understand the witch's excitement. So he didn't rush to ask. He didn't speak until the other party was tired of playing. How's it going? Is there anything you don't feel comfortable with? Did you encounter any obstacles when you broke through? If there is any obstacle. Johnny pondered for a while. Then suddenly frowned and said. 
It's just that the potion you made tastes terrible. Lin In was obviously stunned for a moment, and his face suddenly showed a dumbfounded expression. After teasing Lin for a while, the silver gray haired witch stopped joking and explained how she felt after taking the medicine. It mainly involves transforming the body and improving the spirit, and it is accompanied by severe pain, which is unbearable. But as long as you can get through it, it will be fine. There was also the so called side effect, which she didn't notice at all. As for the breakthrough, it's a very refreshing feeling. Johnny racked his brains and really didn't know what kind of adjective to use. After learning about the breakthrough process from Johnny, Lin felt reassured that at least the formula of the potion was accurate. However, in order to avoid some emergencies, Lin did not choose to break through in Aida College. Instead, after sending Johnny away, he returned to the secret room in Ladakh. It's very secluded here, so you don't have to worry about anyone disturbing you. Lin In took out a perfectly prepared source of magic and drank it in one gulp. Dark red liquid flowed down the throat. As soon as he took it into his mouth, Lin understood why Johnny said the potion was unpleasant to drink, because the taste was indeed hard to describe. He obviously couldn't feel any heat when he held the potion bottle, but when he drank it, it felt like it was sticky. The lava was poured directly into the mouth. Immediately afterwards, there were bursts of biting itching and burning sensations throughout the body. The whole person seemed to be in a boiler, but it was not the body that was burned, but the soul. Lennon's body was constantly shaking. His teeth were clenching. The veins all over his body were bulging. His face was flushed. And beads of sweat were constantly appearing on his forehead. Although I had anticipated the horror of the potion before, I never imagined that the effect would be so overbearing and violent. An inexplicable force was constantly eroding his body and finally rushed straight into his brain. At that moment, his brain seemed to explode, and Lin briefly lost consciousness. When he regained consciousness again, his body had appeared in another place. In front of him is the endless sea, and he is standing on the sea at the moment, constantly swaying with the rolling waves. When he realized this, Lin's body sank, and the raging sea water squeezed him from all directions. However, before he could react, his body was lifted up by a slimy thing. Lin glanced down and realized that it was a huge tentacle holding him up. On the sea below, a ferocious and huge figure has emerged, exuding a suffocating power. The red eyes are staring at him, and the pupils are filled with anger and hatred. Die! I! The moment Lin and looked into the eyes of death, his body felt as if it had fallen into an ice cellar and froze in place. Then he felt the tentacle surrounding him pinch hard, and his body was crushed violently. Blood spilled onto the sea and the flesh and blood fragments fell into the ocean, and the traces quickly disappeared. But the next second, Lin's body reappeared on the sea surface, and he had figured out that he was in the world of thinking at this moment. Perhaps the magic potion he had just taken had stimulated his power too perfectly, so powerful that the eye of death could directly form an entity in his consciousness. Just as he was thinking about it, the seawater under his feet was rolling endlessly, but another tentacle was drawn towards him from under the sea. This time, Lin flew directly up. He imagined that a lot of helium was holding his body up. And he was suspended directly in the sky hundreds of meters high. Although you won't really die if you are killed. The pain is not bad at all. More and more tentacles rise from under the sea. Twisting crazily and changing various postures. Extending like an unlimited length. Seeming to entangle Lin in the sky and drag him into it. Drown in the deep sea. Grass. Lin and cursed secretly. Death I actually felt that its tentacles were really that long. After raising the height again, to avoid being struck by a tentacle, hundreds of head-sized white phosphorus fireballs appeared around Lin In and struck towards the Eye of Death, turning the entire sea into a sea of fire. The angry sea beast kept roaring, and its huge body and tentacles exposed on the sea were quickly covered in flames. However, this level of attack was far from enough. Lin In was not the only one who could not die within the sea of consciousness. The thoroughly irritated Eye of Death roared and roared and the hundred-meter-long body actually jumped out of the sea and flew away. Up in the sky, Lin was stunned, and then realized that his thinking was too rational and not bold enough. In this unique space, you may be able to try things you can't do in the real world. Lin raised his hands high, and kept making hydrogen atoms with his left hand. A large number of anti-hydrogen atoms emerged from the palm of his right hand, and bound them into two huge magic balls with magnetic force, and then threw them together towards the speeding sky. Come the eyes of death. I call it antimatter annihilation cannon. Chapter 113. Breakthrough as an official wizard. The so-called antimatter, as the name suggests, 
is the anti-state of normal matter. When matter and antimatter meet, they will annihilate and cancel each other out, causing an explosion and generating huge energy. Its power lies in the fact that the mass-to-energy conversion ratio produced by annihilation is close to 100%. In contrast, the mass-to-energy conversion ratio of a hydrogen bomb is only about 0.7%. In the face of the power of annihilation of matter and antimatter, the so-called nuclear energy is not worth mentioning at all. The flying eye of death immediately sends this fatal crisis. Not only the death of the body, but also the annihilation of the soul. Countless tentacles like pillars of heaven struck at it, but the two magic balls had already collided. Together, space and time seemed to have stopped, and only endless light and heat remained in front of Lin. That is tens of thousands of times more dazzling light than the sun, and the heat generated can only be measured in hundreds of billions of billions. Everything lost its meaning under such a terrifying energy explosion. The huge eye of death and countless sea pillar-like tentacles were all annihilated in one hundredth of a second. Immediately afterwards came the entire ocean. The seabed rose rapidly. Hundreds of millions of tons of seawater were evaporated instantly. The energy waves and high-energy rays generated by the explosion spread in all directions. And the entire space trembled violently. Until a slight sound resounded in the space. Covered by the violent explosion. It reached Lin's ears very accurately. It was as if he heard the sound with his soul. It was the consciousness space that was shattering. And the fine cracks were spreading like spider webs. But this was Lin's last thought. The terrifying energy wave had already hit him. And the whole process was painless because the body was destroyed in an instant. The vast space of consciousness was completely shattered by the impact of the energy wave. And the remaining energy was integrated into Lin and body. The solid barrier that blocked the growth of magic power was now easily broken through like paper. Lin felt that every cell in his body was cheering for joy. And the total amount of magic power was rising rapidly. The brain becomes extremely clear. Although it is not as good as the improvement in overload mode. The computing power has also increased several times. The elements are becoming clearer in his perception. And he can control them as he pleases. If he had to rely on the power of his brain to release white phosphorus hand of fire demon and liquid nitrogen ice realm before, he can now release these magics entirely on his own power. And the growth of magic power continue. And even directly cross the second obstacle. Directly promoted from apprentice to the level of second level wizard. Lenin sensed it. And the magic power reserve increased more than 10 times compared to before. The power of the eye of death is evident. Physical fitness has also improved. Lenin clenched his fists and tried jumping a few more times. The cells in his body were demonized to a certain extent. It's just that the proportion of demons is not high. This should not be his unique benefit. When he was doing the double ball experiment before, he found that the wizards who moved the iron balls were stronger than the other. After spending 10 minutes getting used to all kinds of magic, Lenin finally relaxed. After entering the wizard's land, he was most worried about his identity as an apprentice being revealed. Now this biggest shortcoming has been revealed. Phil, no one can question his identity anymore. Next it's time to verify whether Lakta's conjecture is correct. Lin opened the notes and quickly found records about psychic magic. Soul scream. Flesh reorganization. Rotten body. Necromantic manipulation. Soul scream is undoubtedly the psychic magic that Lin In is most familiar with. But now there is no target to attack and there is no way to test the actual effect. While, flesh and flesh reorganization, rotten body, and the like are all made by Ian. He has no intention of doing this with corpse methods. After seeing the relevant records of, undead control, Lin and suddenly had a thought in his mind, and asked in his mind. 071. Can you release the unknown energy you stored before? It is estimated that 1% of energy consumption is used to maintain the energy body. No problem. Just do it. Lin said without hesitation. After becoming an official wizard, he no longer cared so much about the energy reserves of G now. After all, if you don't use it on weekdays, you can always save it slowly. After Lin and spoke, a faint blue fluorescence floated out from his body and gradually condensed into shape one meter away. It was a girl of 13 or 14 years old. Her figure was illusory, flowing like water waves. Since she is also a psyker, Lin sees the girl's body as much more solid than the previous pudgy apprentice and Ladak whose soul was severely damaged. He can even distinguish the facial features and the clothes she is wearing. White Pigeon! Lin In asked tentatively. His hunch was indeed correct. The unknown energy body collected by Ji now, before was undoubtedly the opponent's soul. The girl slowly opened her eyes, her eyes full of confusion and confusion. Her consciousness seemed to still be stuck at the moment of death. 
and she was vaguely mumbling something. I don't want to die. Lin In read what Bai Gu wanted to express. And there was a little helplessness on his face. The 13-year-old girl seemed to have come back to her senses at this moment. She shrank with fear and looked at the unfamiliar space around her. When she reached Lin In, she seemed to have found her backbone and subconsciously drifted over and reached out to grab the corner of his clothes. However, this action was in vain and the illusory palm passed directly through the clothes. Bai Gu was obviously stunned for a moment. And then she noticed something strange about her body, which was transparent and illusory. Only then did she realize that she was dead. A timid and overwhelmed expression suddenly appeared on the witch's face, and her eyes were filled with crystal tears. If she were still alive, the tears would have fallen from her eyes long ago. Ahem. Actually, you are not dead now. I can only say that you have changed your way of living. Lin and comforted him very tactfully. Unfortunately, his comfort obviously had no effect. The crystal tears on Bai Ji's face immediately fell down. But before they hit the ground, they turned into dots of fluorescent light and dissipated in the air. The sound of crying was also intermittent and erratic, which makes people's hair stand on end. Lin and suddenly had a headache. The last thing he knew was to comfort others, let alone the other person was a ghost. In the end, he had no choice but to tell Bai Gu that her body was actually still there. When he figured out how to stuff a soul into a body here, maybe she can come back to life. Chapter 114 I'm afraid we've all been treated as swordsmen. Under Lin An's unimpressive comfort, Bai Gu finally stopped crying, and then looked at him helplessly, looking pitiful. Let's do this. Don't resist. I'll do a little experiment. Lin An took a few steps closer, put his hand on Bai Ji's head, and then penetrated his spiritual power into the spirit body. This is exactly how psionic wizardry, necromanipulation works. A look of panic suddenly appeared on the girl's face. She could feel something rushing into her body. She instinctively wanted to resist or escape. But remembering Lin Un's instructions, Bai Gu still endured it. But his eyes were tightly closed, as if he was looking forward to death. This feeling is amazing. After the spell was cast, Lin immediately discovered that he seemed to have an extra body that he could control at will. As soon as her mind moved, the illusory girl on the side raised her hand and then spun around a few times. At this time, Bai Gu also realized that her body was out of control. Having learned psychic magic, she naturally understood what was going on. She stared at Lin In with a very resentful look, looking like she was about to cry. Seeing this scene, Lin In, who had planned to weigh the girl's spirit body, had no choice but to give up. However, as soon as he let go of the control, the white dove turned into a faint blue light and crashed straight into his body. She now's beep sounded again. The special energy body has been absorbed and can be converted into 12% of the energy reserve. Do you want to use it immediately? No! Lin In responded quickly. And then she was a little dumbfounded. In order to avoid his experiment, Bai Gu chose to return to the reserve pool of Ji now. But he didn't know that that was the most dangerous place. In other words, Ji now has become the sole support of White Pigeon? Lin immediately thought of this problem. Because there is no way for the soul body to exist independently from the body. Even a three-ring wizard like Ladak needs to make a soul container for himself. But now this situation may be better described as restraint. Let's name this energy soul power. Lin In said thoughtfully. Database loaded. Although the spirit experiment ended just after it started, Lin still obtained some information. First, as Radak suspected, the potion brewed using the eye of death can indeed make people become psychers. The second is psychic magic. This kind of power beyond his knowledge is very strange and powerful. But it is also extremely dangerous to use. For example, when controlling a spirit body, once the white pigeon makes a resistance move, he must use more soul power to suppress the other party. Otherwise, the controlled spirit body may break away, and he will suffer considerable damage. Backlash. This is probably why Lakta did not dare to control too many corpses at once in the secret room. Therefore, compared to the ability to control undead, Lin is more interested in another use of this magic, which is to control some creatures with weak soul power. When he was in Harbor Town, Bai Gu once controlled a group of Grey Crows for inquiring about information. This can be said to be a bug-level ability to detect intelligence. The only disadvantage is that controlling creatures will distract one's energy. It is a bit like controlling multiple units while playing a game. Too many units will inevitably affect the ability to control each unit. Lin continued to look through Radak's notes. Although he did not intend to use some of the evil psychic magic, only by understanding it clearly could he understand how to deal with it. In the next few days, Lin In, who had completed his promotion, 
put all his energy into condensing spell slots, especially protective spells, to improve his strength as much as possible. He has not forgotten that he previously promised to hand over the remaining source of magic power. Lin and naturally had no intention of keeping the promise. They had not yet settled the debt regarding the airship. However, the development of things was somewhat beyond his expectation. Before he could do anything, Barbara and Hank had already come to the door. You are saying that there is something wrong with Norris' recent state? Lin asked in surprise, after hearing the two people's complaints in Ladakh's manner. Hank nodded. According to what they had discussed before, after the hunting operation was over, Nor should pay him a thousand magic gold coins as a reward, as well as a part of the body tissue of the Eye of Death that had been decomposed. However, it had been almost three days, but the other party had not made any move. The apprentice he sent to urge him even reported that North was not at the base, outside the manor, or harbor town at all. This had to give him some bad associations. I'm afraid North is not prepared to pay us, Barbara said angrily. In her opinion, North must have suffered heavy losses in the hunt for the Eye of Death. So he simply left it behind and kept delaying it. With, they came to Lin in this time to unite the front and attack at the promotion ceremony of the day after tomorrow, Bloody Thorns. Lin and looked at the two people in front of him with a strange expression. When he first heard about this organization, Lin In was still very worried. After all, the entire Bloody Thorn was very large and had a complex composition of personnel. But now it seems that the whole thing is just a mess. And each member is completely focused on their own affairs. Each. Of course, this is probably related to the fact that several people were very unhappy when hunting the Eye of Death. Nor spent so much effort. But in the end, he only got the part of the Eye of Death that was blown to pieces. He was forced to hand over part of the blood halfway. And he definitely had resentment in his heart. Lin In was naturally happy to see such a scene. It would be better if they could get angry and start a fight. Thinking of this, Lin opened the fire path. I'm afraid things are not that simple. I think you all remember how much North Atash is important to those blood. And it can even be said that he does it at all costs. He must be eager to do something with this thing. Hiding it from all of us. Situation. Perhaps, he never thought of paying the so-called reward from the beginning. I'm afraid we have all been treated as knives. As he spoke, Lin himself was stunned for a moment and became a little suspicious because he suddenly felt that his analysis seemed to make sense. North is too generous, to the point of being ridiculously generous. For example, North was actually willing to pay several times the market price to buy the high-end magic crystal cannon that Barbara got. That's a total of 4,000 magic gold coins. And the combined net worth of many three-ring wizards is not that much. There was also the ectoplasm of the Eye of Death. Although Ladakh was the only one among them who knew how to make the source of magic, North had no intention of interfering with it after throwing it to him, Barbara and Hank looked at each other, and there was a look of uncertainty in their eyes. There is probably only one thing that a three-ring wizard can do to risk all his wealth. Are all the wizards in Chapter 115 Arcane Society crazy? He wants to be a great wizard, Barbara said in horror, and then a trace of desire appeared on her face. This is undoubtedly the dream of every three-ring wizard. There are thousands of official wizards in the entire wizarding land, but the total number of people who can truly become great wizards is only a few dozen. But the question is, what to do? Just rely on the blood of the Eye of Death? This is just our conjecture. Hank was a little more rational. If promotion was really that easy, they wouldn't have wasted so many years becoming a three-ring wizard. Whether it's a guess or not, I have to ask North to find out. Barbara said emotionally. North, like them, is a person with ordinary talent and no hope of breaking through the great wizard in this life. If the other party can be promoted through this method, then he must be able to do it too. Asked. How? Lin said with a sneer. Barbara's face suddenly turned livid. According to Hank, North couldn't find anyone at all now. He was probably hiding from them on purpose and secretly making some plans. What she was even more worried about was that by the time she found it, North might have already completed the breakthrough. And then they would be at an absolute disadvantage. Perhaps we can find some helpers. Hank couldn't help but have a poisonous plan in his mind. There are more than one or two three-ring wizards who want to be promoted to great wizards. In a sense, they have many allies. Since North is so secretive, maybe the method used for promotion is not serious. They can use this to blackmail North into giving them this method. Otherwise, they will let his cronies spread this matter throughout the world. The land of wizards. For a possible promotion method, Hank and Barbara often make vicious plans, even with a hint of madness. Lennon broke out in a cold sweat, and there was a hint of pity in his eyes 
as he looked at the two of them. Although Hank and Barbara are three-ring wizards. At this moment, there is almost no difference between them and the apprentices who work hard to be promoted to official wizards. But this is the cruelty of the wizarding world. Each level is a symbol of power and power. After discussing various ways to interrogate North and establishing a temporary alliance, Hank and Barbara couldn't wait to say goodbye and leave. They were all anxious to go back and study the bottle of blood they had obtained on the Sea of Mist to find out what was so special about it. After the two left, Lynn took out a bottle of reagent containing dark green liquid after thinking about it. In the past few days, he has naturally done some research on the blood of the Eye of Death. But the results of the experiment were very bad. The power contained in this blood is very strange and has strong repulsion. Cannot be used to brew shaping potions. Those rodents that directly drank the blood died inexplicably in just a few seconds. Even the corpses were dissected and no cause could be found. Lennon suddenly thought that North once said that this blood was used in some kind of alchemy circle. Maybe you can start from this convenience. While researching in secret, Lin did not forget that he was still a professor. In fact, his one-week vacation had already ended, facing the reopening of the Mathematical Olympiad class. All the wizard apprentices were looking forward to it and having headaches. During the period when the Mathematical Olympiad class was suspended, they were all studying the homework left by Lin In, which contained all kinds of weird questions. For example, a wizard raised many chickens and rabbits in a cage. The number of heads was 35 and the number of feet was 94. How many chickens and rabbits were there in the cage? Another example is that another wizard bought a camel beast for 10 silver coins, sold it for 12 silver coins, bought it back for 15 silver coins, and sold it to another person for 20 silver coins. Ask him how much he earned. How much? In addition, there are snails running on the trees for a while, frogs trying to jump out of the well, but always sliding down, and carpenters who can't figure out how to match keys and locks find the intersection of two squares, the shadow area, and so on. Alok really couldn't figure out how Professor Lin's brain grew and why he had so many strange problems. Are all the wizards in the arcane society crazy? Why do we have to keep chickens and rabbits in the same cage? You still have to rely on counting heads and feet to determine the number. If you have this leisure, you have already separated the chickens from the rabbits. Very good. It seems that you all have a good grasp of it. Lin In took a rough look at the collected homework. Although there were many questions, they were all about the most basic knowledge of equation solving and geometry. It was just that there were more questions. They were all classic test questions that he had searched in his brain. It has to be said that the brains of these wizard apprentices are much easier to use than ordinary people. Alok, Johnny and others are worthy of being students in the elite class. In just two months, they have already mastered some basic knowledge. About there. After hearing Lin and words of appreciation. All the apprentices couldn't help but show joy on their faces, especially Pierce, as one of the apprentices who has been enrolled the longest in Yetta Academy. The magic power in his body is already overflowing. However, he has no talent in elements, alchemy, potions and shaping. So he is forced to stay in the academy. Inside, but the subject of Olympiad is different. Although his talent is not as good as Alok and Johnny, he is still much better than others. This can be said to be his only hope for graduation. Professor Lin. Have we completed this mathematical Olympiad course? Pierce asked excitedly. It's still far from enough. What you are learning now are the basics of the basics. Lenin shook his head and said in a dumbfounded voice. Is this still basic? A lot. Pierce and others couldn't believe it. They thought they had learned everything they could. After all, they now master various calculation methods such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, exponent, and square root. They can also accurately calculate the length, width, height, and surface area of various complex objects. Even the lazy snail needs a few days to do this. Climbing up the wall. You can clearly understand how many times the frog needs to jump to pick out the deep well. And you can also figure out the weird chicken and rabbit in the same cage. What else can be learned from this? There are also trigonometric functions. Probability. Linear algebra. Plane vectors. Inequalities. Infinite series etc. Have you mastered all of these? Lin asked with a smile. Lennon's iconic smile made the apprentices present shudder, and his words made them even more confused. The only thing they know is the one in trigonometric functions. Triangle. Chapter 116. This is the power of combining arcana and magic. Professor Lin, is there any use for us to learn this? Alok asked weakly. If it were just to exercise his brain power, 
A lot thought it would be enough to have exponents, square roots, and equations. This was already torturous enough. Lenin looked at everyone who was also confused and said with a smile, Aren't you always curious about how arcane numbers should be combined with magic? Are you going to teach us about the magic of the Olympiad? Deborah exclaimed. All the wizard apprentices also looked at Lin expectantly. They still remembered the terrifying ice magic that the professor had used on the training ground before, just by being exposed to the aftermath of the magic. They almost had their arms frozen off. I heard that this was the magic that Professor Lin N had improved on his own. Lydia pouted and kicked the table in frustration. Because among everyone, she was the only one who couldn't learn magic. You can say that? Lin nodded, and then asked everyone to leave the classroom and go to a more open space outdoors. After everyone stood still, Lin looked in the direction of the screaming tower, then raised his hand and began to calculate. What are you going to do? Professor? Blow up the entire tower of screams? Alok asked quietly. How is this possible? Pierce curled his lips. This screaming tower is a landmark building in the entire Ayata Harbor. How can it be demolished at will? But seeing Lin's serious look, Pierce became a little unsure. Probably. Isn't it? Under everyone's attention. Twelve magic missiles appeared around Lin In. And then he sped towards the screaming tower with a roar. When they saw that Lin In was only using magic missile, everyone present was a little disappointed. But they still stared at the trajectory of magic missile. Is this an attack on the top of the tower? Eric raised his head high. But to his surprise, the trajectory of the 12 missiles formed a parabola and passed directly over the top of the tower dozens of meters high, and then fell downwards, and finally disappeared directly in the crowd. In sight, the venue suddenly fell into deathly silence. Everyone's expressions were very strange, and Alok and Deborah even covered their mouths to prevent themselves from laughing. Mistake? This is definitely a mistake. Right? Professor Lin, it was just a demonstration. Right. Do you want to do it again? Johnny kindly offered to make amends to prevent Lin from being too embarrassed. However, Lennon's expression did not change at all. He glanced at the apprentices who were holding back laughter, then looked at Alok and Deborah in the front row, who were holding back laughter, and said casually, Alok, Deborah, go to the training ground and get all the training dummies. Okay, Professor. Alok held it in very hard. After receiving Lin's order, he immediately started running until he was out of Lin's sight, and finally couldn't help laughing. Ha ha ha. I didn't expect Professor Lin in to make such a fool of himself. Deborah laughed too. There was no way. In the past, Professor Lin in always looked calm and calm, as if everything was under control. But today such a teaching accident happened. It was really interesting. We'd better go quickly. Don't keep the professor waiting. After Alok smiled, he quickened his pace. He felt that the magic missile released by the professor was definitely not that simple. It was just a mistake. He also wanted to see what the combination of mathematical Olympiad and magic would look like. The training ground is far away from the classrooms of the Olympiad subject and is located at the corner of the entire academy. This is for safety reasons and to avoid some magical accidents. When the two arrived at the training ground, they were surprised to find that many people were gathering here. When they squeezed in, they were immediately stunned because in front of him was a row of headless training dummies. Twelve. Exactly twelve. Deborah counted. And then an extremely ridiculous idea suddenly appeared in her mind. Alok also thought of this, turned to look at the apprentices on the side, and asked eagerly, Daka, what happened to these dummies? We didn't know either. Just when we were practicing magic, several magic missiles suddenly fell from the sky and hit the heads of these training dummies, which shocked us all. Daka was also a confused look on his face. In the sky? Do you know which direction this thing flew from? Alok asked quickly. It should be over there. Daka pointed behind him. Alok and Deborah looked at each other. And their expressions changed immediately. Because behind them was the towering, screaming tower. Could it be that Professor Lan In was in front of the Olympiad math classroom? Separated by an entire tower and hundreds of meters away. And with no vision at all. Accurately hit the training dummy on the training ground. How can it be? What on earth is going on? Daka and others gathered around the training ground couldn't help but ask after seeing the two people's startled expressions. If I'm not mistaken, this was probably done by Professor Lin In. Alok swallowed and said in disbelief. Only then did the two of them realize that Lin had not asked them to move the training dummies there to experiment with magic, but to take these destroyed dummies back to demonstrate their effects. At the same time, 
Lydia and others waiting in front of the classroom were already a little impatient. What are Loke and Deborah doing? Just a few training dummies. Why haven't they come back after so long? Could it be that they wanted to see the professor make a fool of himself? Right? This is too bad. Pierce complained secretly in his heart. But a smile couldn't help showing at the corner of his mouth. Because the professor always liked to come up with some weird mathematical Olympiad questions to embarrass them. Just as he was thinking about it, Pierce saw Loke and Deborah, leading several people from Dhaka over. Each of them was holding two headless training dummies in their hands, which looked particularly terrifying. Then, before they could ask anything, Deborah immediately approached Lin In and asked extremely curiously, Professor Lin In, how did you do it? This is simply incredible. What's so incredible? Pierce couldn't help but interrupt. Alok didn't mean to show off, and quickly told them what they saw on the training ground. The people in Dhaka also added in a hurry that when they practiced magic, those magic missiles were how to fall from the sky and smash the dummy's head off. Chapter 117 Lin In, Time is Running Out. Let's get down to business quickly. After listening to the stories of several people, Pierce and others were a little unbelievable, and even wondered whether Alok was deceiving him. The Olympiad Mathematics Classroom is a full 600 meters away from the training ground and there is a screaming tower dozens of meters high across the way. Can this be hit? But the testimonies of the twelve training dummies, whose heads were smashed, and a few people from Dhaka told them, that all this was true. The puzzled apprentices could only look at Lin In, waiting for his answer. It's very simple. Just know all the data and calculate them, Lin said with a smile. During the time when he was a professor, he had already used his brain to record every location in Ayata Academy. So he knew the location information of each training dummy very clearly. And he only needed to construct the corresponding the parabolic trajectory equation can be fine-tuned based on interference terms such as wind speed. For the same attack, I can also replace it with fireball, pyrotechnics or even more powerful magic, Lin added. Alok and the others couldn't help but shrink their necks. No one wanted to be walking one day. And a big fireball fell from the sky and hit them on the head. This is so terrible. I don't even know how I died. Professor Lin. Is this the magic technique you have developed during this week? Tick, who had been listening, asked in surprise. You can say that, Lenin shrugged, just as he was still worried about how to explain that he had taken a week's vacation for no reason. Professor, when can we learn such magic? Deborah raised her hands high and asked a curious question. Since you want to learn so much, I will organize an Olympiad test at the end of this month. If someone can answer all the questions correctly, then I will make an exception and teach him this improved magic and even allow him to apply for graduation in advance. Lin In drew the cake path for all the apprentices. However, these words did not mean to deceive. He did not expect these wizard apprentices to master profound mathematical knowledge, as long as they could learn most of the knowledge in elementary school and junior high school. They could apply for graduation. After all, after becoming an official wizard, you can slowly further your studies. In fact, this exam is also to facilitate Joni's promotion. After all, she has become an official wizard now. So it is best to obtain the status as soon as possible. Under the dual stimulation of improving magic and applying for graduation, a group of wizard apprentices burst out with unimaginable enthusiasm. And each one listened more seriously than the other. Pierce was even more excited. Lin's promise was undoubtedly the only opportunity for someone with mediocre talent like himself to be promoted to an official wizard. Next, let's continue to explain the relevant content of the plain rectangular coordinate system. It's all very basic knowledge. Lin stretched out his hand. Use magic power to draw a cross shape in the air. And talk non-stop. After the mathematical Olympiad class ended, Alok and others either pondered hard or walked out of the classroom with blank faces. Their minds were filled with the so-called absolute value. The first quadrant. The second quadrant. The x-axis. The y-axis. From this point to that point. Pierce glanced at the contents of the note and felt that he understood it but he didn't seem to understand it completely. He was going to think about it when he went back. Sir Tick, please stay. After Lin and packed up the teaching tools, he called to Tick who was about to leave. Professor Lin, what's the matter? Tick stopped, paused, and spoke again. The concept of the coordinate system you proposed in class is very interesting. It seems that it can accurately locate any object in space. I just don't know which master or legendary wizard imagined this. Compared to the apprentices who were only interested in learning superficial knowledge, Tick knew very well how important this thing was. He guessed that Lin could accurately attack the entire, screaming tower, from a distance of several hundred meters. Hitting those dummies should also have used this knowledge. 
That's a concept proposed by a master named Descartes. Lin smiled and replied casually, Descartes, it would be great if I could have the honor to meet these masters who have studied mysterious mathematics, Tick said with emotion. The more he came into contact with him, the more surprised he was at the profoundness of this subject. Maybe there will be a chance in the future. Lin and responded with a smile, then straightened his face and thanked him. I heard Roar say before that you have been helping me with the patent application for the aerospace airship. I haven't had time to thank you yet. It's just a little effort. I can't listen to so many mathematical Olympiad classes in vain. Tick laughed. Counting the time. They will be here soon. After Lin and said a few polite words, he took the opportunity to ask about alchemy. I once heard a scholar from the Arcane Society say that some wizards can rely on certain alchemical formations to improve their strength and break through the upper limit of their strength. I wonder if this is true. Hearing this, Tick frowned slightly, but still explained, Alchemy can indeed do similar things, but now few people in the wizarding land do so. Tikian spoke concisely and did not intend to explain in detail. A hundred years ago, when the management of the wizarding land was loose, the promotion methods of various schools could only be described as various resulting in many undesirable tragedies. This is also related to a scandal that the Wizards Council is unwilling to mention. It also involves the evil mage Merc. Tick didn't want to mention this kind of knowledge too much. Lennon also saw this. So he changed his tone and asked about the layout of the alchemy formation and the knowledge of cracking it. This time Tick didn't hide it anymore and explained it to Lin very patiently. The two of them continued chatting until they reached the professor's lounge. When they saw the silver-haired witch standing at the door waiting, a smile appeared on Tick's face. I'd better go back alone. Professor Lin. Tick raised his eyebrows and said jokingly. As soon as Lin saw Tick's expression, he knew that the other party must have misunderstood. But before he could explain, Tick turned around and left. Lin shook his head, opened the room, invited the witch in, and then asked, Gianni, after your promotion yesterday, your body is not used to anything. Right. The silver-haired witch shook her head and looked at Lin in confusion. Why do you ask? Is there something wrong? No, there's nothing wrong. I'm just asking. Lin shook his head. It seemed that the potion that Johnny took was not strong enough to make the eye of death appear in the sea of consciousness. Next, let's get down to business quickly. We only have two hours. Lin looked at the witch and urged. Chapter 118, Bloody Thorns, Promotion Ceremony, Under Lin's Constant Urging. Johnny nodded, quickly took out the notebook in his arms turned to the latest page, pointed to the title on it, and asked, Professor, I'm not very good at the plain rectangular coordinate system you talked about today, especially this question. If you want to determine the distance between two coordinate points, you need to use the Pythagorean theorem mentioned before. You can mark the difference between the horizontal and vertical coordinates on the coordinate axis, and then connect them together with a line. Doesn't this turn into two right triangles put together? So it's back to the problem of geometry. Lin explained to Johnny the idea of solving the problem in a simple and easy-to-understand manner. The so-called doing business is naturally to start a small stove. After all, Lennon had previously promised that as long as he could pass the exam, he would apply for graduation in the name of the professor. Too many people passed the exam, and the number of applicants was eventually rejected by the council. Of course, the content of the exam should be as difficult as possible. However, this difficulty is also limited. It is impossible to introduce some knowledge points that have not been taught before. At most, the question type is slightly difficult. A little bit. In order to ensure that Johnny can answer all the questions correctly, it is essential to open a small stove. Although it is somewhat unfair to other students, it is not a shameful thing to ask a professor for tutoring. Lin and never prohibited other apprentices from asking him questions. But Johnny asked more and more deeply. Two hours passed in a blink of an eye. Johnny closed the notebook in his hand, raised his eyes to look at Lin, and said with a smile, Thank you for your guidance. Professor, I have to say that you are really a great person. Teacher! There was a faint blush on the girl's cheeks, and she looked at Lin in in front of her with bright eyes. She seemed to have been completely immersed in the academic exchange just now. I just came into contact with the mathematical Olympiad earlier than you. Lin shook his head. No matter how early it was, it was only half a year ago. Johnny rolled his eyes at him, and he finally understood why the eyes of the students in the ordinary class were filled with envy, jealousy, and hatred when they looked at them. This gap in talent is absolutely despairing. Then I won't disturb you, professor, and we'll see you tomorrow. Johnny put away the notes 
filled with answers and problem-solving ideas and prepared to leave. Lin stood up and sent the witch to the door. Before leaving, the silver-haired witch looked at the knuckles of Lin's left hand as she opened the door and said with a hint of emotion, I didn't expect that the teacher would even give you this. Lin paused for a moment, then followed Johnny's gaze and looked down. He was wearing Ladax, Ring of the Faceless Man, on the ring finger of his left hand. Kalu turns out to be a member of the Faceless Men. Lin In was greatly surprised. This was completely beyond his expectation. But his face remained calm. Teacher, he cares about this ring very much. Then do you know how to use it? Joni shook her head. She only knew that Kalu had brought this ring when he accepted her as an apprentice. She guessed that it should be a very powerful alchemy tool. But it had never been used in front of her. After the silver-haired witch left, Lin closed the door and looked at the ring of the faceless man in his hand. Could it be that Kalu revealed his identity? But wasn't this guy captured by the Holy See and taken to the Holy City? As long as he was not tortured and burned on the stake, the possibility of escaping was slim. Or maybe Kalu mentioned himself to someone before he was arrested by the church. Number four hasn't been here for a long time. Right? Lin suddenly thought of what one of them had mentioned when attending a gathering of faceless men. Could it be that number four was referring to his mentor Kalu? In the evening of the next day, in front of a luxurious manor in the southern part of Yetta Harbor, three convoys pulled by camel beasts slowly stopped in front of the door. Lin, who had already disguised himself, walked out of the carriage in the appearance of Ladak. Naturally, he was here to participate in the so-called promotion ceremony. Lin and also came with Ladak's 15 apprentices. Bok, Patty and others were both looking forward to it and excited, hoping that they would be selected this time, so that they could reach the sky in one step and become a noble official. Wizard. Master Ladak, please come. The sturdy guard at the door opened the closed iron door and invited him very respectfully. Lin led a group of apprentices into the gate of the manor and walked toward the interior of the manor along a path paved with cobblestones. Behind him, the sturdy guard had already closed the iron door again, looking at everyone with a mocking look on his face. But he failed to notice that dozens of small, dark-looking rats were passing through the crowd. Coerced by him, he quietly slipped into the manor. These rodents are naturally puppets controlled by Lin using psionic magic, necromantic manipulation. Their small size is not easily noticeable. In addition, there are several gray crows and more secretive geckos. Although they don't have much combat effectiveness, they can serve as his eyes to observe the layout of the entire manor and the surrounding environment. If necessary, the liquid bombs they carry may also come in handy. After passing through a long corridor, Lin and others arrived at the banquet hall of the manor. The interior was very spacious, and a variety of exquisite delicacies and desserts were placed on the long table. At this moment, many guests have gathered in the banquet hall. It is roughly estimated that there are only one or two hundred people. Most of them are apprentices, but there are also many formal wizards. Barbara and Hank are among them. Lynn even saw Yetta, Leia, Sheriff of the Harbor. There were more or less smiles on their faces, and they were talking to each other, and the atmosphere was quite harmonious. On the stage in the center of the banquet hall, a valet in a tuxedo was dancing an elegant jazz dance. The pretty maid held a silver tray and served drinks and meals to the guests at any time. Radak, why are you always the last one to arrive? Hank saw Lin entering the door at a glance, stepped forward, and gave him a light hammer on the shoulder. It's better to come early than to come in time, isn't it? Lennon looked around at the bustling scene in the banquet hall, answered casually, then lowered his voice and asked, are you sure North will come to this rally? In the past few days, Lennon also tried to control the Grey Crow to search for traces of North. But there was no gain. Since he has not cancelled this promotion ceremony, he will definitely come, Barbara said decisively. As soon as Barbara finished speaking, North appeared in front of everyone wearing a grey robe. Chapter 119, You Are Destroying the Foundation of Our Rights. Welcome to all of you to attend this gathering. Under the attention of everyone, North walked out of the passage behind the banquet hall and looked at everyone present with a gentle smile on his face. Hank and others looked at each other with a hint of suspicion in their eyes. They originally thought that North's inexplicable disappearance during this period was to break through and become a great wizard. But now it seems that this is not the case. Because they did not feel the obvious sense of oppression on each other. Which means that North should be a three-ring wizard like them. Realizing this, Barbara was relieved but also a little annoyed. She didn't care about the occasion and interrupted directly. North, should you explain some things to us? Such as where have you been these past few days? And when will you fulfill your promise to us? 
Barbara's words made the atmosphere on the field become more subtle. Leia and others who were invited shook the red wine in their hands and watched the excitement with interest. The Wizards of Bloodthorn looked at Barbara dissatisfied. In their opinion, no matter how big the contradiction is, it should not be said on such an occasion. Otherwise it would be a joke to outsiders. But North didn't care at all. He calmly raised the goblet in his hand, drank the bright liquid in it, and then laughed. After this promotion ceremony, I promise you that nothing will be missing. North's straightforward assurance made both Barbara and Hank hesitate. They couldn't help but wonder if their guess was wrong. Is it possible that North is not planning to leave the wolf empty-handed as they imagined, but is actually selling off his property to raise funds for them these days? The two of them turned to look at Lin, who shook his head and did not reply. His mind was already focused on the rats and gray crows wandering around the manor. The entire manor has been completely sealed, with one post every five steps and one sentry every ten steps. The door of the banquet hall has been blocked from the outside world. What exactly does North want to do? Is it just a warning? Or is he planning to kill everyone who comes to the rally? You must know that in addition to more than a hundred wizard apprentices on the field, there are also more than a dozen formal wizards and seven rearing wizards. These people cannot be underestimated in terms of their strength and influence in Ieta Harbor. Lin controlled a great crow to rise high and look down at the whole place from the air. Then he was keenly aware that the manner where the gathering was held was very neatly planned. With the banquet hall as the center, dozens of silver about half a meter long were placed everywhere. Tall pillars, viewed from a high altitude. The layout of the entire manor looks like a super large alchemy formation. Lin In recalled the alchemy knowledge he learned from Tick, and quickly determined that these pillars should be made of precious mithril and serve as the nodes of the entire formation. As soon as he thought about it, a small-looking rodent sneaked past along the shadow of the high wall, found an area with the weakest guard, and planned to take a closer look. But when he was about to get close, Lin suddenly felt his vision go dark, as if someone had unplugged the network cable while spying on a camera. And all he felt after that was the pain of the death of a rodent. Through the gray crow's perspective, a ferocious wolf dog with a brown body and a slit at the corner of its mouth was hovering near the mithril pillar. Several guards on patrol also noticed the movement here. But when they came over to take a look, they found the wolf dog holding a rat corpse in its mouth. After cursing a few times, they ignored it. The entire Nanshan district the rats are almost overrun, and they can't be killed no matter how hard they are killed. After several guards passed by, the ferocious wolf dog still guarded the area loyally, staring directly at the other rodents hiding in the shadows. Well guys, dogs versus rodents. Lin suddenly felt a little troublesome. Although these creatures were under his control, they had no special abilities. Their combat power was no different from that of an ordinary rodent. No matter how many there were, they might not be able to defeat a vicious dog. The only advantage is that they have air support. Of course, it must be killed with one strike, and you must not give it a chance to scream. While Lin In was secretly planning an animal war, North in the banquet hall put down the red wine glass in his hand and spoke. Since everyone has no other questions, I think it's better to start the promotion ceremony now. Now? Hank's expression was a little hesitant. He glanced at Leia and the others who had been invited by them. And he felt somewhat regretful. This was an internal secret of Bloody Thorn. Otherwise, it's not too late to finalize the list after the banquet is over. Barbara also raised objections. No, don't bother. I think the promotion ceremony can be done in a different way this time. A smile appeared on North's lips. In the past few days, I have used special materials to develop a new alchemical formation. As he spoke, North raised his hand downwards, and fine runes suddenly lit up on the floor of the banquet hall. The fine runes are constantly connected together, occupying half of the entire banquet hall. The outer circle is a large circle, and the inner circle is a complex geometric figure, composed of countless complicated lines, exuding a strange beauty. The expressions of the official wizards present changed drastically, and they quickly left the range covered by the formation. And Lin was no exception. No one is willing to take risks before being sure of the effectiveness of this formation. North didn't mind either and turned directly to look at the apprentices of Bloodthorn and continued. This kind of alchemy circle can increase the power of a wizard. Generally speaking, the longer you stay in the circle, the higher the improvement. Of course, everyone's will, endurance, and potential are different. I don't guarantee that it will be possible. The promotion was successful, but you can give it a try. Hearing this, Hank and Barbara frowned and looked at the alchemy circle emerging on the ground. Their expressions a bit ugly. 
North unexpectedly changed the process of the promotion ceremony without notifying them in advance, and even created a so-called alchemy circle. This made the two of them suspect that North wanted to reduce the rights in their hands. You must know that one of the most important factors why these wizard apprentices are willing to sacrifice their lives for themselves is that as the core members of Bloodthorn, they hold the promotion quota in their hands and use this as bait to drive a group of apprentices work hard. What North is doing is undoubtedly destroying the foundation of their power. Chapter 120 This is the meaning of the existence of Bloody Thorns. Isn't it? Compared to Barbara and Hank who looked ugly, the wizard apprentices present were extremely excited. In previous promotion ceremonies, there were often only three to five places, and most of them could only watch helplessly, hoping to continue working hard to get a precious place in the coming year. But this time it is different. Everyone has equal opportunities, and the extent of strength improvement only depends on how long they can persist in the alchemy circle. Everyone firmly believed that they would be able to persevere until the end. But Lin In and others were very powerful on weekdays. For a while. Except for Norse apprentices. No one took the initiative to stand up. However, in the face of great temptation, betrayal was only a matter of time. After hesitating for a long time, Bach gritted his teeth and stood in the alchemy formation. His body was trembling. And he did not dare to turn his head to look at Lin expression. He is gambling. He bet that he could become an official wizard this time. So that he wouldn't have to worry about the other party making things difficult for him. Lin gave Bok a meaningful look and said nothing. He didn't think North would be so kind. Seeing that Lin had no intention of punishing Bok, Patty and others, who could no longer hold themselves back, stood in the alchemy formation one after another, followed closely by the apprentices behind Barbara and Hank. You? How dare you? Seeing the apprentices she brought stepping into the alchemy circle without even saying age, lo. Barbara was so angry that she turned to glare at Lin in annoyance. If it hadn't been for him if the apprentice was allowed to leave, things would not have reached this point. It's useless. Lin shook his head. These wizard apprentices have only one purpose in joining, bloody thorns. And that is to become official wizards. Therefore, facing the temptation of promotion, I am afraid no one can resist it. No matter what he does, it is meaningless. This is really interesting. Leia laughed softly. The few wizards who were watching were not too concerned about the excitement. But they were more curious about whether this alchemy circle was really as magical as North said. North drank the red wine in front of the table in one gulp and looked at the more than a hundred apprentices standing in the alchemy circle with a satisfied smile on his face. The scepter he held in his hand lightly paused. Was activated. The fine rune shone with a dark green light. And then a strong wave of magic power emitted from the magic circle. The apprentices located in the center of the magic circle immediately noticed that some kind of power was pouring into their bodies. And then, their own magic power seemed to be drawn. Ready to move. It's true. It's true. My magic power has improved. Bok felt the power surging in his body and shouted excitedly. It was an ethereal, ethereal, comfortable and wonderful feeling. And he felt as if his soul was humming. He will soon become an official wizard. Leia and others who were watching watched intently at the scene in the circle. Originally, they had deep doubts about this alchemy circle that could help apprentices advance. After all, the growth of magic power in these apprentices' bodies has reached the limit, and it is not that easy to increase it again. However, Bok's heartfelt admiration made several people hesitate, and the surge of magic power all over his body is indeed a sign that he will break through to become a formal wizard. Barbara and Hank even vaguely guessed that the special material used by North to arrange the formation was most likely the blood of the Eye of Death. Only the terrifying monster had enough energy to satisfy hundreds of people at the same time. Promotion of Apprentices Your Excellency North, I wonder if this kind of alchemical formation is still useful for formal wizards. An old wizard asked excitedly. It works. Of course it works. North laughed heartily. At this moment, a wizard apprentice in the magic circle suddenly let out a painful roar and then fell to the ground. Bok, Patty and others also felt a burst of heartbreaking pain at this moment. At first, they ignored it, and thought it was the sequelae of breaking through the physical limit. They still persisted. After all, North said that the longer you persist, the longer you persist, the greater the magic power gained. In just such a short time, the magic power in their bodies had increased by 50%. But as more and more people fell, Bok could no longer hold on. What shocked him even more was that the power that had been absorbed into his body now turned into a deadly poison. His body was rapidly withered and decayed. The soul seemed to be torn apart by some strange force. Seeing rows of wizard apprentices fall down with distorted expressions and completely silent. 
Even the most stupid person can realize that something is wrong. North! What on earth are you doing? Hank yelled angrily. North did not answer, but murmured nervously. Since you all want to increase your magic power, then I will satisfy you. After absorbing the power of dozens of wizard apprentices, the power of the alchemy circle is becoming more and more powerful. Lay on the side seemed to suddenly think of something, as if a chill surged into her heart from the soles of her feet. And she shouted in horror. No! This is the soul-eating magic circle of the evil mage Merc. Are you crazy? North? Barbara had an expression of disbelief on her face. North grinned and laughed wildly. Of course not. Barbara, use blood to water the most beautiful thorn flowers. This is the meaning of the existence of bloody thorns. Isn't it? More than three years ago, the evil mage Merc used the blood of the Mind Flayer to set up an alchemical formation and sacrificed an entire village and many apprentices in the Psionic School using the souls of thousands of people as resources. He wanted to set foot on the legendary wizard realm. Afterwards, although the evil mage Merc failed, his power was greatly improved, and he was even able to compete head-on with several great wizards sent by the parliament. North is not greedy. The legendary wizard is too far away from him. As long as he can use this power to become a real great wizard. Come on! All of you will become part of the noble wizard, North. North said crazily. Madman! He has gone crazy! Kill him! Leia shouted loudly. The twenty or so wizards in the banquet hall were also furious. They all raised their hands to cast spells, preparing to tear the madman in front of them into pieces. For a moment, Hank didn't even care that this was indoors. He raised his hand and used a pyrotechnic, intending to blow up North and the alchemy circle on the ground. But the next moment, Hank felt that his soul was disturbed, as if something stabbed his head hard, causing him to twitch all over in pain and the hot fireball exploded on the spot before it was launched. Chapter 121 Hell on Earth The originally spacious and lively banquet hall turned into A.H. Hell on Earth in an instant. The wizards who tried to resist quickly realized something was wrong. Like Hank, many of them suffered strong magical backlash at the moment they cast the spell. At worst, they covered their heads and wailed. And at worst, they were directly hit by their own magic. Fly out. When the soul is disturbed, even performing the most basic magic becomes a luxury. Desperate shouts and screams were heard endlessly. But North looked intoxicated and enjoyed everything in front of him. The chaos at this moment was the best boost for his promotion. Lin In, who was in the chaotic crowd, was quickly checking his physical condition. This did not mean that he was also affected by the magic circle. But that Lin In did not understand why all the wizards present were mentally affected. The appearance of impact. He didn't seem to have encountered any attacks. Is it because he has fused and absorbed the power of the Eye of Death? Lin In immediately thought of this. The core thing of this magic circle should be the blood of the Eye of Death. And he has the same source of power in his body. Apart from Lin, the only person on the field who still had some resistance was Leia, who was proficient in shaping. When he realized something was wrong, he began to transform. And then a two-meter-tall owl beast appeared in front of him. In the chaotic banquet hall, Leia's eyes were red. And he let out a sharp roar. He was obviously affected by the magic circle. He first slapped a wizard who was blocking the way and flew him away, and then rushed straight towards Newell. Sri Lanka. Your resistance is meaningless, Nor said mockingly, opening his hand, condensing dozens of thick ice blades and flying away, ready to pin the running owl beast to the wall behind. However, these ice blades were broken by magic missiles flying from nowhere halfway. The owl beast had already crossed a distance of more than 10 meters and slapped North directly. A solid, made shield, lit up around North. But it was still directly shattered by the huge power of the Owl Beast. With a sound of, Boom! North was hit against the wall of the banquet hall. His entire right arm was directly twisted and deformed. And even the white bones were exposed. But he quickly struggled to stand up. And the injuries on his body recovered quickly, with a continuous replenishment of energy. Then he quickly used, Magic Barrier, to protect himself in all directions to avoid being, vulnerable, by these people. The resistance hurts. The owl beast let out a sharp roar again. But this time it was blown away by a spell impact before it could step forward. At the same time, Lin's magic was completed and a large amount of corrosive aqua regia penetrated into the floor tiles, corroding the alchemy circle located in the center of the banquet hall into pits. Ladak, I didn't expect you to be able to resist until now. North also noticed Lennon's presence at this time. He glanced at the alchemy formation that was nearly half corroded. His face twisted. And then he said viciously, It's useless. 
This is just a side formation. It's almost time. North shouted enthusiastically. Now, everyone merge with me. While North was speaking, through the perspective of the gray crow in the sky, Lin could clearly see that the mithril pillars erected in the manor also lit up. Then streaks of faint blue light floated out from everyone's bodies. The intensity and size of these flashing lights varied. The higher the level of wizards, the stronger the flashing light. A small part rushed into North's body. Most of them were integrated into the magic circle covering the entire manor. Even Leia, who transformed into a wildcat, couldn't resist, and soon fell to the ground in pain. A rapid increase in energy concentration is detected. A large amount of soul power is detected. Is it absorbed and converted into energy reserves? In Lennon's mind, two smart brain notification sounds rang. Yes. Lennon glanced at the blue light floating in the banquet hall and shouted silently in his heart. If he didn't absorb these soul powers, they would be used to enhance North's power. The spirit body has been captured and is expected to be converted into 3% of the energy reserve. The current energy remaining is 37.5%. The spirit body has been captured and is expected to be converted into 5% of the energy reserve. More than 10 beeps sounded in succession. Lenin never thought that the energy reserve of G now could increase so fast. In just a few seconds, G now's energy reserve reached 100%. Overflowing energy will be automatically used to increase the cracking progress of the virtual space. On the other side, North was also feeling the rising power in his body. This was the first time in nine years that he had experienced the feeling of increasing magic power. However, North soon noticed something abnormal. Although his magic power was growing very fast, but it is still a little short of breaking through the Great Wizard. This is impossible. This is impossible. What went wrong? North shouted crazily. There are hundreds of wizard apprentices, seven three-ring wizards, and more than ten official wizards in the entire banquet hall. Such a huge soul power is enough to send oneself to a higher realm. However, the reality was different from what was expected. Although he became stronger than before, he still did not break through the limit of the three-ring wizard. It's you. It must be you. Ladak. North looked fiercely at Lin'en, who was the only one standing in the banquet hall. Before... He thought that the other party had only temporarily resisted the influence of the soul-eating magic circle. But now it seems that it may not be that simple. You can't blame me for this. Maybe you accidentally drew the wrong formation. Lennon said sarcastically while distractedly controlling the rats and gray crows that were fighting with the vicious dogs. These words obviously had no effect. Because the soul power escaping in the air was pouring into his body continuously. North obviously noticed this. And he felt that his heart was being pulled together as if it was going to explode. You bastard. This is all my power. He had prepared for this moment for three whole years. Paid a huge price. And would never allow any accidents. Kill you. As long as I kill you, everything will come back. Perhaps the blow he received was too great. Norse's mental state was very wrong. And his eyes became red. Since part of his soul was absorbed by Lin-In. Then you only need to kill the opponent. And this part of the power will eventually return to your body. Chapter 122 Lin, I just lied to you. Idiot. North's expression gradually changed from ferocious and angry to ice-cold silence. The magic power escaping around him was quickly mobilized, and then submerged into the dozens of armors displayed around the banquet hall like decorations. Under the combined effect of magic and spiritual energy, these unconscious dead creatures moved like real guards, waving the giant axes and bows in their hands, and rushed towards Lin in in neat steps. Fossils turned into mud. Lin In dodged five flying arrows, then raised his hand and pointed to the ground. Under the sweep of the magic ripples, the rows of floor tiles were transformed into fine sand and gravel. The speeding psychic guard sank directly into the sand like a rolling gourd. And then the sand and stones soaked in magic were piled up. Psychic spell, summon the sphinx. Lin In followed Norse's example and used unskilled psychic magic. He piled up sand and stones and finally transformed into a monster with an upper body like a human and a lower body like a lion. But this was the first time I tried this new thing. The appearance of the Sphinx was very distorted. Like a figure made by a child. After punching away three or two psychic guards who rushed towards me. It was a pyrotechnic exploded half of his body. Magic barrage. After realizing that his half-baked psychic spells could not provide much help in the battle. Lin once again used the magic he was best at. Dozens of flashing missiles were suspended in the air. Like a dense rain of arrows covering most of the, the banquet hall was covered with a series of roars. All the remaining psychic guards were smashed into pieces. And then, 
they hit the solid, magic barrier behind them. Each one is like a cannonball, exploding immediately when it hits the magic barrier. In just two seconds, the solid, magic barrier was already covered with cracks. Just when the barrier was on the verge of breaking, North opened his mouth. A sharp sound wave continued to echo in the banquet hall. And more than ten magic missiles that were about to hit the barrier exploded instantly. Lin's figure paused, and his movement stagnated. That's exactly what Soul Screaming is. When he saw an obvious pause in Lin's movements, North immediately understood that the opponent's soul power was not as strong as his own, and immediately raised the scepter in his hand. Magic shock. On the top of the scepter, the fine runes lit up one by one, and then a strong magic beam suddenly shot out, aiming directly at Lin In, who was unable to move under the influence of Soul Scream. However, Nor soon discovered with horror that Lin, who was supposed to be unable to move, actually raised his arm freely, and a weak flame condensed at his fingertips. Then the flame expanded rapidly, condensing into a huge ball of endless flames. The demon's hand collided with the speeding magic beam. The violent white phosphorus fire swallowed up the beam of magic power almost instantly, imprinting it hard on the shattered magic barrier. Click! A crisp sound came, and the entire magic barrier shattered. Then the devil's hand swept through every inch of the banquet hall in a devastating manner. Everything that blocked its path was destroyed in an instant, and finally rushed towards North at the rear. North only had time to release a made shield, and then he was swept in by the scorching flames. The shrill scream soon came out from the raging sea of fire. The weak, made shield was obviously unable to withstand the white phosphorus hand of the fire demon, which had reached the limit of the three-ring magic. In just a moment, the white phosphorus the flames came into intimate contact with North's body. It was like the demon flame from H. L. Greedily attached to the body, using flesh and blood as nourishment, eroding every inch of his skin. The originally outstanding physical recovery speed has now become a kind of torture. Under the constant repair and destruction, North's spirit has almost collapsed. The magic power in the body has been quickly exhausted. And the physical recovery speed has become faster and faster, coming slower and slower. Lin and then raised his hand and extinguished all the white phosphorus flames. North's body had been burned to a disgraceful state and looked almost like a mummy. But his huge soul ability allowed him to maintain his last consciousness. His red eyes stared at Lin, as if he still didn't understand. Why was the other party able to suddenly break free from the shackles of Soul Scream? I just lied to you, idiot, Lin said coldly. After drinking the source of magic made by the Eye of Death's ectoplasm and becoming a psyker, the soul power he possesses is no worse than North, who swallowed a large amount of soul power. Therefore, when the opponent used Soul Scream, although Lin was affected to some extent, it was not to the extent that he was unable to move and cast spells. He deliberately pretended to be under control in order to make North relax his vigilance, so that he could use his strongest magic to kill him. North's scarlet eyes widened. Scarlet blood flowed from the corners of his mouth, and his body began to twitch, as if he wanted to say something. But as soon as he opened his mouth, the vitality disappeared completely. You must be angry to death. Right. Lenin shook his head, stepped forward, put his right hand on North's hot head, activated his psychic spell and prepared to retrieve the other person's memory. But it was soon discovered that North's memory was disorganized and dissipated rapidly. Obviously the person who arranged this formation could not escape the fate of being devoured in the end. Lenin glanced at Gino, who had no reaction, and immediately confirmed his guess. The brain converts and absorbs spiritual bodies into energy, which is not without limitations. In addition to being very close to itself, there should also be strength requirements. Judging from the fact that the converted energy reserve does not exceed 10%, those directly captured and absorbed should be the souls of wizard apprentices, and they must be separated from the physical body. Just as he was thinking about it, the sounds of explosions came from outside the banquet hall. Lennon's expression remained unchanged. This was exactly what he was controlling the rat and Grey Crow to quietly use liquid bombs to destroy several formation nodes in the manor. However, Lenin soon discovered that the progress of the matter seemed to be different from what he expected. The soul-eating magic circle covering the entire banquet hall did not end, but continued to spread to the outside world. The guards, who heard the explosion and rushed to the node of the magic circle suddenly fell to the ground with painful expressions on their faces. A faint blue aura emerged from their bodies and then disappeared into the ground. Not only that, the hounds patrolling the manor, the horses and camels in the stables did not escape the fate of having their souls extracted. The devouring magic circle, which had once again gained strength, 
shone with dark green fluorescence and flooded the entire Nanchung district. Chapter 123 The Truth of Everything Through Grey Crow's Perspective Lenin also saw the spreading soul-eating magic circle, and his brows furrowed vaguely. The creatures under his control seemed to be able to avoid the misfortune of having their souls taken away. However, to Lin's expectation, he had destroyed several nodes of the formation just now. According to Tick, this thing should have stopped. That's right. Maybe I made a mistake. The node of the formation is not here. Or there is a more critical formation I. The power of the soul-eating magic circle is self-evident. Even three-ring wizards like Barbara and Hank cannot be exempted from it. Let alone the poor people in South City. Lin didn't know whether this thing would expand indefinitely. If it did, the entire Ayata Harbor would be swallowed up. With such huge soul power, what kind of monster will eventually be born? Just as Lin was thinking about it, several rodents sent to search the entire manor discovered a secret. The bottom of the entire banquet hall was actually empty. And there was a very secret passage that probably led to the soul-eating technique. The Eye of the Formation. Squeak, squeak. At night, under the manor where the gathering was held, Faint rattles sounded in the narrow underground passages. Several small-looking rodents were running fast in the passage, stopping from time to time to sniff or use their paws to make sure there were no traps before continuing to run. Not far behind. Most of Lennon's attention had been turned to the beeps that kept ringing from the brain. The cracking progress is 94%, 97%, 100%. The remaining soul power has been reserved. Seize control of the virtual realm? Seeing the progress of reaching the full value. Lin En did not rush to agree, but asked what the role of this virtual realm was. After Shino replied, Lin En realized that this thing was almost like the metaverse created by the Federation in the previous life. But the difference is that this realm is made of magic, which is between illusion and reality, and can change with the imagination of the person with authority. As long as he wants, he can completely transform the chaotic space into the projection of the universe and starry sky. Of course, this premise is that you have the corresponding data and enough magic power. For example, if you want to manifest a star in the virtual realm, you must understand the nature of the star. Otherwise the sun will appear. It will only have an appearance. Not only will it not shine and heat, but it will break like cotton when poked. This is probably why the owners of the virtual realm didn't make it fancy. In theory, as long as there is enough accurate data, everything constructed will be the same as the real world. This is much stronger than those virtual spaces in previous lives under the banner of the metaverse. Although some companies tend to make great claims in their publicity, claiming to have more than 90% authenticity. But Lenin understands that this is pure nonsense. It would be good to have about 60-70% to 70 accuracy. And bugs are everywhere. But this virtual realm composed of magic power can really reach nearly 100% reality and become a second world in a literal sense. However, to accomplish this, the amount of magic required is obviously astronomical and cannot be expected in a short time. Lin quickly stopped fantasizing and turned to check out the two main functions of the virtual realm. The first natural step is to bring people in for a gathering and use the ring as a medium to project the magic power contained in part of the holder's soul into the virtual realm. The second function is a bit insidious. It can reversely connect the holder's mental power through the ring and access part of the other party's computing power. To use an inappropriate metaphor, Every wizard's brain is like a high-speed biological computer. And the process of projecting magic into the virtual realm is like connecting to a network, which will naturally be accompanied by corresponding risks, such as expose your own spiritual frequency. This process is not completed instantly, but is very slow. Judging from the frequency of the faceless men's weekly gatherings, it would take several years to break through the mental defense of an official wizard. And it is precisely because of the long time that they can be concealed enough. At the last meeting, the entire Faceless Men organization, including him, had a total of 15 members. And they should all be three-ring wizards. Now after the destruction of Bloodthorn, there are at least nine members left except himself. I just don't know how much computing power can be transferred. 071. Can you locate the source of magic power in this virtual realm? Lin In asked in his mind. He could tell with his feet that this thing must require a huge supply of magic power to operate. The signal source has been located. 30 meters directly ahead. South close? Lin paused for a moment. And then through the perspective of several rodents. He saw a scene that surprised him extremely. At the end of the passage is a spacious rotunda. With an altar-like high platform placed in the center. Many complex patterns are drawn on each step. Which are used to bind spirits as Lin saw in the Ladakh chamber. The alchemy formation is very similar. But it is more complicated in comparison. 
a lot of blue fluorescence was pouring out from the ground and integrated into the almost solid spirit body above. Rat raised his head high and saw a figure that he was very familiar with. At this moment, Lin In had also crossed the long and narrow passage, and the resentful spirit was floating on the high platform in shock. It was a girl about eight or nine years old, wearing a gorgeous long dress, with long hair shawl, slender and thin figure, with a faint blue aura floating around her body, and her exposed skin had strange lines like spider webs, as if it will break if touched, different from her delicate and cute appearance like a puppet. Her face was ferocious and twisted, as if she was suffering great pain, and her whole body exuded an aura of terror. Lydia? Lin In shouted subconsciously after seeing the face of the resentful spirit clearly, but then rejected this point. No, this is not Lydia. Although the other party's appearance is very similar to that of the halfling girl, her long hair, round ears, and clothing are completely different. In a sense, the spirit body does not have so-called clothes. It is just the manifestation of the soul power, showing the most profound memory of life. Therefore, the soul body in front of me should not be Lydia. It can only be. She is yet a... My daughter! A deep voice resounded in the tower. Lennon turned his head subconsciously and saw Helram, who had been away for a long time. The founder of the Aida school. The master of Harbor Town. The great wizard who had gone to Greenreel two weeks ago. Was standing here now. Chapter 124 Lin. What? Am I actually the evil mage Merc? Helrem looked at the distorted Aida, who was tied up on the high platform, with a look of unbearable expression on his face. But his expression soon became firm again, and he turned to look at Lin and asked, You don't seem surprised? Accident? I'm afraid it's a little bit. But there is only one great wizard in Aida Harbor. Right. Lin and responded calmly, when he saw that Ram seemed to have no intention of doing anything to him. The moment he saw the other person, all the doubts in Lin's mind were cleared. The person who can gather so many three-ring wizards, form faceless men, and create a virtual realm is probably a great wizard. However, Lin previously thought that this matter was related to the evil mage Merc. After all, many of the psychic books collected by Ladak were signed by the other party. And the soul-eating magic circle was also created by Merc. Just thinking about it now, there are too many unnatural things in Ieta Harbor. When the parliament completely banned the study of psionic magic, an organization like the Faceless Men, whose members are all psionic wizards, was born here. The Blood Thorns, force formed by North and others is also too large. Not only does it have six three-ring wizards as core members, but there are also more than ten official wizards and hundreds of wizard apprentices. And even Sheriff Leia and Bloody Thorns has some unclear connection, coupled with the chaotic scene of numerous magic workshops in Nanchung District. Either Helram, the controller of Harbor Town, is too incompetent, or it's the result of the other party's deliberate laissez-faire. Now it seems it should be the latter. So, Norse actions today were all ordered by you? Lennon couldn't help but ask. No, that's just his own idea. North is probably planning to use the soul eating formation to break through while I'm gone. And get out of my control. That's all. Haram replied concisely. Lennon didn't believe a word of it. Since Haram was standing here, it proved that North's little plan was still within the opponent's expectations. In other words, Haram deliberately let out the news to let North know that he had left the port of Aida. So he boldly went to hunt the Eye of Death and set up a soul-eating magic circle. Poor North is like a white glove. Lennon could imagine that without his own interference, North would most likely be successfully promoted to become a great wizard. Then he would find that the soul-eating formation was inexplicably out of control and spread to the entire southern city, causing even greater chaos. Suddenly Ram would appear and he rushed in at the last moment and killed the culprit thus quelling the riot, abandoning North and the entire Bloody Thorn as abandoned sons, using the promotion of a three-ring wizard to give an explanation to the council and remove himself from this incident. Harem's ruthlessness and meticulousness are undoubtedly revealed. So, you were the one who wrote that letter and invited me to join the faceless men? Lin asked again. Helram did not answer, but suddenly asked, What should I call you? Lin? Carl? Or Evil Mage Merc? Although Lin appeared in front of him in the image of Radak at this moment, Helram did not use a person's appearance as the criterion for judgment, but made the distinction through magic power. What? Am I the evil mage Merc? Lin's face became a little strange, and he didn't quite understand why Helram thought so. On the training ground two weeks ago, when you accepted Roar's challenge, you were still just a wizard apprentice. Right. Although Helram was asking, his tone was very affirmative. 
the essential difference between an apprentice and a formal wizard lies in the element of magic mimicry. This is something that everyone in the wizarding land knows. But only the great wizard can detect the subtle difference in the nature of magic between the two. This is important in combat. The most obvious time. However, Lin exceeded his expectations. As a wizard apprentice, he used Ice Domain, which was more powerful than the ordinary three-ring magic, and mastered a lot of novel knowledge. This was obviously not what a wizard apprentice could do. Did it? Helram could only think of one possibility, and that was to seize the body. Three years ago, he took the initiative to invite Ing to go to the north with two great wizards to destroy the entire Silaic school. However, unlike his two colleagues, he had another idea to obtain the evil mage Merc in the spiritual realm. Research results that can be learned. Although he encountered a lot of trouble along the way, Heron Ram still got what he wanted in the end. It's just that due to the previous fierce battles, many precious magic books were burned. So many research materials on psionics are incomplete. And this is why faceless men and bloodthorns were created. Helram carefully selected more than a dozen third ring wizards who were eager to break through and spread the psionics information he had obtained before, letting these people secretly conduct psionics research on his behalf. Just as he expected, with the continuous efforts and countless bloodshed and sacrifices of North and others. In just three years, they were able to restore the means of arranging the soul-eating magic circle and transferring the soul to another body. Method within. All that's left is the materials to replace the Mind Flayer's blood. And another more crucial technology. At this critical moment, Lin suddenly appeared in Ieta Harbor, bringing two very crucial things. An airship capable of defeating the Eye of Death, and a body of a witch that has lost its soul but is well preserved. This looked perfect, like a gift specially prepared for himself. It was precisely because of this that Helram felt a little bit of fear, just like the bloody thorn in his hand was like a puppet on a string. At that moment, he vaguely suspected that he was just a member of the game. In the original battle, everyone thought that the evil mage Merc was dead, but Helram, who had read a lot of psychic books, had a hunch that the other party was not really dead. In the past three years, the evil mage Merc seems to have completely disappeared. Maybe he has left the land of wizards. But one day he will come back again. Helram stared at Lin in front of him. Although the magic power fluctuations were not comparable at all, there was still the possibility of change after soul fusion. So he had to suspect that the person in front of him was the evil mage Merc. After all, the timing of the other party's appearance was too coincidental. Faced with Helram's question, Lin retorted, If I were the evil mage Merc, a former great wizard, I would never reveal my flaws in the training ground and expose my identity. Obviously you are mistaken. I am Lin In. And I am just Lin In. That's all. Lin In said decisively. Chapter 125 sees the magic network. Lin's words made Helram pause. But this did not affect his judgment. It is impossible for a wizard apprentice to master so much secret knowledge. Compared to the so-called secret society, he believes in the possibility of seizing the body more. However, Helram did not continue to dwell on this topic and spoke in a deep voice. In fact, I don't care about your identity, and there is no malice in inviting you to join the faceless men. I only need one thing. Lenin looked at the great wizard in surprise, not quite understanding what he meant. The perfect way to fuse souls, Haram said word by word, and then continued, You can put forward any conditions, as long as I can do it. Helram kept his posture very low, and had no intention of taking action directly. No great wizard is easy to deal with, since the opponent can complete the fusion and transformation of souls. His research on psionic science will only be better than his own. North is dead, as long as the people in the council are not stupid. They can find you. Lin shook his head. The promise of a great wizard was undoubtedly very tempting, but Helen's guarantee was meaningless, because he can't protect himself now. And unfortunately, I don't have what you said. Lin said directly. It seems that you are not ready to cooperate. Harem's tone suddenly cooled down. His old and rickety body became upright, and a strong magic wave emerged from his body, covering the entire rotunda. Then I can only do it myself and find it out of your mind. Helram's eyes were cold, and he approached step by step. An inexplicable pressure instantly fell on Lin's mind. This was a double suppression of the spiritual level and magic power. Lin suddenly felt that all the elements in the entire space had been infected by the other party's magic power. His body seemed to be stuck in a quagmire, and any movement required several times more energy than usual. Times the energy. This is exactly the fourth ring spell, slowness barrier. Every time Helram took a step forward, 
the magic around him became more intense. He raised his right hand and pointed at Lin. And the elements in the space suddenly became extremely active. An indescribable sense of crisis suddenly surged into Lin's mind. There was no way to dodge this magic, and there was no possibility of resisting it. At that moment, he even smelled the smell of death. Facing an unknown opponent who could complete soul fusion, Helram had no idea of holding back. And he used the five ring magic spell, Magic Torrent. However, what Lin was waiting for was the moment when Haram cast the spell with all his strength. He shouted in his head without hesitation. 071. Immediately. Now. Give me control of the virtual realm. In the vast space, the leaping torrent of elements seemed to have suddenly stopped. Also stopped was Halram's forward steps. Because a pain as if his soul had been divided suddenly hit his heart. The magic network was captured. Haram's face was full of horror and disbelief. He could clearly feel that his connection with the virtual realm was completely severed. And the huge computing power that had been blessed with him suddenly dissipated. What's more important is that the moment the spell is broken, the terrifying magical backlash is projected onto the body. White phosphorus hand of the fire demon. Lin In will naturally not give up this offensive opportunity that he risked his life and worked hard to create. Directly use the strongest killing move. The blazing flames transformed into a huge demonic hand, rushing straight towards Heron Ram. However, the moment before the hot flames touched the body, it was like a torrent blocked by a reef, separated by some mysterious force. Come on! Fourth ring magic, deflection field. However, Helram, who resisted the backlash and cast the spell again, was in extremely bad condition at this moment. Scarlet blood overflowed from the corners of his mouth, and his old and wrinkled skin cracked in several places, revealing the shriveled flesh and blood underneath. This is impossible! Helram ignored his physical discomfort and stared at Lin with a look of disbelief. The magic network is the biggest result of his decades of research. It can connect the spiritual power of wizards. More importantly, it has nothing to do with the evil mage Mer, and the source of its magic is in his own hands. And now the opponent has easily seized control. This simply subverted Helram's cognition. Unless the other party was originally a legendary wizard. Lin In did not answer. At this moment, he was experiencing the huge computing power blessing brought by the spiritual power of connecting nine three-ring wizards. It was a new world. Lin In could clearly feel the surge of magic power. And he even saw things that he could not see before. The space around Ram seemed to have deformed to a certain extent. So the hot only then will the flame stream pass over the real target in a surrounding manner. Is this force field magic? I'm afraid most of the offensive magic will be completely ineffective under such power. Lin In was thinking and suddenly felt that his head was swollen, like a sealed iron bucket being continuously filled with gas. The mental blessing of the nine three-ring wizards was obviously very close to the upper limit of what his brain could bear. Magic barrage. All his thoughts lasted only a moment. The moment Lin In realized that Hand of Fire Demon was ineffective. He raised his hand and condensed hundreds of magic missiles to test the weakness of this force field magic. Continuous magic missiles were fired at Helram from all directions and angles. As long as the curvature of the space was tested, it might not be able to hurt the opponent. However, Helram obviously did not give him this chance. He supported his body and tapped his fingers, and an invisible ripple spread forward in a semicircular shape. The magic missiles, flying in midair exploded before they even got close. This is the second time that Lin and his face such weird magic. It's just different from the time he faced Roar. It's thousands of times more powerful. This time, he can clearly see a strange magic wave that blows the missiles away. All of them were crushed into pieces and were pressing towards this side rapidly. The speed was so fast that Lin didn't even have time to cast a protective spell. Cell demonization. Just before the magic wave approached, Lin jumped up. With the help of the amplification power of the demonized cells, he narrowly avoided the strange magic wave. However, being in midair also meant that he lost the ability to turn. At the same time, countless slender, Sharp iron thorns appeared in the void, rushing down like locusts and arrows, covering half of the hall. The fourth ring spell, Iron Sand Storm. Just as Lin N had expected before, the great wizard can mimic and control more elements. But it was him who experienced this for the first time. Chapter 126 Feel the anger of everyone who died under the magic circle. Magic barrage is undoubtedly Lin's specialty. And it is also the magic he uses most often against the enemy. But the person who improved this magic was Haram. And now the other party had no choice but to use this technique on the flying iron thorns. The sharp sound of breaking through the air continued to sound. And fine beads of sweat oozed from Lin's forehead. 
He had no doubt that he would be shot into a sieve. Even the strongest protective spell, magic barrier, he had mastered could not do it. Completely blocking such a dense attack. Unless, Lin suddenly thought of the magic Hiram had used to defend against the hand of fire demon. There are many factors that can affect and distort space. Such as mass, momentum, stress, and pressure. But ultimately it's still energy. And there is only one kind of energy possessed by wizards. At that moment, Lin In understood clearly, stretched out his hand, and a large amount of magic power surged out of his body. And they were arranged very tightly together, forming a ring-shaped ball to wrap himself inside. Just before the Iron Sand Storm came, the space around Lin and deformed to a certain extent, and all attacks were deflected by just a hair. This is the four-ring magic deflection field. Lin and successfully landed on the ground, with cold sweat breaking out on his back. As an official wizard, with the help of huge computing power to forcibly cast four-ring magic, the consumption of magic power can only be described as terrible. And in an instant, only half of the magic power reserve in the body is left. The power of the great wizard is evident. This was still in a state where Harem had received a strong magical backlash beforehand and was unable to attack with all his strength. At this moment, the mutation occurred again, and a terrifying scream suddenly swept across the entire place. Both Lin and Helram were affected at the same moment. Lin and cast aside a glimmer of his vision and looked at the resentful spirit on the high platform. The massive spiritual light was constantly being integrated into Aeta's seemingly weak body. The opponent's aura became stronger and stronger, even through the restraints. He could feel the terrifying aura from the spirit's alchemical formation. After absorbing the soul power of an unknown number of people, Helram actually created a wraith at the level of a great wizard, different from the white pigeons raised by the brain. After the girl named Aida absorbed the soul power of countless people, her spiritual body changed from clear blue to dazzling bright red, and her eyes revealed a desire for the living, of resentment. Helram, what you are doing now is really what Aida wants. Lin kept saying things to disturb the other person's thoughts. If Philip had not lied, Ida would have died before the academy was established. In other words, this little girl with a mind of only eight or nine years old has been imprisoned by the formation that binds the spirit body for at least twenty years. She has increased her strength at the cost of sacrificing thousands of people, and will later be forced into the body of another person, resurrected in this weird way. This is not what the other party should accept. Perhaps dying like this would have been the best ending. You will never understand that the entire Ayata seaport exists because of this, Helram said in a deep voice, raising his hand. All the elements in the vast space in front were stripped out at an extremely fast speed. Four ring magic, vacuum domain. At this moment, there was only one thought left in his mind, which was to get the secret of perfect soul fusion from Lenin's mind. At all costs, while Lenin was struggling to deal with Hiram's offensive, two small rodents were quietly sneaking behind Hiram struggling to climb up the high platform with their claws, holding on to the resentful spirit. With that terrifying aura, he bit off the lid of the reagent bottle with difficulty with his teeth. At the same time, the vacuum field had spread in front of Lin In. Although he retreated again and again, no matter how fast he went, he could not catch up with the spread of the field. It seems that with this weak body, you can only exert so much power. Rams and different words rang out in the hall, but the vacuum field in front of him hindered the spread of the sound. After going through the previous temptation, Heron Ram had discovered that the wizard in front of him was not as powerful as he had imagined. Although he didn't know how the other party took the magic net from his hands, it seemed that Lin In was having a hard time even dealing with the fourth ring spell. Therefore, even if the magic backfires and the wizard level drops, Heron Ram still has enough confidence to defeat the opponent. Lin In had already retreated to the corner, and the spreading vacuum field was already in front of him. But his expression did not change at all. He deliberately retreated to the corner not just to avoid this magic. On the high platform at this moment, a thick light yellow liquid continuously spurted out from the reagent bottle. And then two rats hugged the flint. And the other bit it hard with sharp teeth. A trace of sparks appeared on the high platform. And then, the two rodents were knocked out by the violent explosion. At the same time, the alchemy circle that bound the resentful spirits was also destroyed. Accompanied by a piercing scream. The powerful resentful spirit immediately broke free from its restraints, with black mist surging all over its body, and attacked Haran Ram, who was closest to him. Ayata! Haram turned his head suddenly, with a hint of panic on his face, and more of an anger. Lenin dared to take out his hand and touch his daughter. But when he looked back, what he saw was not the girl who was soft and weak in his impression, as if her spirit body would be broken into pieces in the next moment. 
but a resentful spirit exuding a terrifying aura. The originally childish cheeks turned ferocious and vicious. The crimson blood mist surged. The hands that were almost solidified directly slapped Heron Ram away without waiting for him to react. Compared to the physical pain, the panic and fear in Heron Ram's heart were stronger. According to the records in the psychic books left by the evil mage Merc, after the spirit breaks through to become a great wizard, it will restore all the memories of its lifetime and become a soul that can exist without physical support. However, at this moment, Ayata seemed to have completely lost his mind and even made him a target of attack. Necro manipulation. Impressively, Ram's face was distorted and his huge mental power turned into chains to tightly restrain Aida, who rushed forward screaming, Look what your daughter has become! Is this your purpose? Heron Ram? Do you think a nine-year-old child will be able to control so much soul power? Lin In said sarcastically. When he fought with North in the manner before, he discovered that relying on devouring soul power to improve his strength was not without cost. Feel the anger of everyone who died under the magic circle. Chapter 127 The Screaming Banshee Aida! Aida! Blood continuously poured out of Ram's mouth and nose. This was a sign that his mental power had been severely damaged. But he couldn't care about it at the moment. He kept calling his daughter's name. Trying to wake him up. Yet a sanity. However, this was just a useless effort. The sole power of thousands of people and the resentment before their death had completely overwhelmed Aida's reason. Causing her to fall into madness. Don't blame me. Aida. Ram was heartbroken. He understood that if he didn't control the situation, everything would be over. Now, only by searching Lennon's brain for a way to fuse the soul can it be possible for her daughter to return to normal. For ring spell, soul binding, Ram shouted loudly, and countless runes composed of pure spiritual power instantly enveloped Aida's body. Ah! A shrill scream came from Aida's mouth, and the spirit body that was almost staring was struggling hard. This was the severe pain caused by the rune burning in the soul. Those bloodshot eyes. It made her look like an evil ghost. The girl's shrill screams made Ram's face show a trace of unbearable color. And the magic that restrained the spirit body also weakened a little. At this moment, the power of the resentful spirit increased to the limit. And the blood-colored mist continuously spurted out from the body. Eroding away the runes formed by mental power attached to the body. The moment Aida broke free from the restraints, he had already rushed in front of Hiram. Under the horrified gaze of the other party. His right hand filled with blood mist stabbed directly into Hiram's chest. Ayata. Heron Ram immediately felt an extremely cold force pouring into his body along the wound. His life force was being rapidly extracted. Looking at the familiar and unfamiliar face in front of him, a thought appeared in his eyes. A hint of regret and unwillingness. The body that lost its vitality soon fell to the ground, staring at Lin In with lifeless eyes, and opened his mouth as if he wanted to say something. Forgive her. Lin read out Heron Ram's last words, and then shook his head. You think too highly of me. Haram. At this moment, Lin In had quietly retreated to the entrance. Although he had eliminated the great wizard with the help of the resentful spirit Ayata, he did not have any means to deal with this resentful spirit. After seizing part of Heron Ram's power, Ayata's aura became thicker and thicker, and her eyes filled with hatred suddenly fell on Lin In. The terrifying scream sounded from Ayata's mouth again, and then the entire resentful spirit turned into a thick blood-red mist and rolled towards him. Lin suddenly felt a deep sense of depression and suffocation, as if his body had fallen into the mud and was struggling to move. This feeling is very similar to the fourth ring spell, Slow Barrier. A resentful spirit has mastered such powerful magic. Things were obviously beyond his control. But Lennon didn't have the mind to think about it at the moment. Because the blood red mist was already in front of him. Liquid nitrogen ice field. Lennon raised his hand. And a stream of extremely cold air surged forward in a semicircular shape. The next moment, a crisp sound of condensation sounded. And everything around seemed to slow down. The blood red mist instantly condensed into blood red ice crystals under the terrifying ultra low temperature. However, the three ring witchcraft ice field obviously could not trap this powerful resentful spirit for a long time. Under the surge of soul power, the bloody mist soon exploded. Ice shards flew. And a strong magic wave suddenly overwhelmed Lin and was blown away. The light of made shield lit up in front of Lin in, offsetting most of the impact and his body took advantage of the situation to roll back into the passage behind him. However, Lennon's face was still solemn. He deliberately released Aida before, in addition to wanting to use the opportunity to fight against her am. He also believed that an irrational wraith would always be easier to deal with than the great wizard. But after truly experiencing the terror of the other party, Lennon's previous thoughts of contempt were gone. 
facing such a terrifying wraith. I am afraid that all the wizards gathered in the entire harbor town may not be able to defeat it, but may instead become nourishment for the opponent. Hellram, you really have created a monster. Lin In had a headache, facing Ayata who was rushing towards him again. He was about to cast a spell to deal with it, but found that the opponent seemed to have hit an invisible barrier and was blocked from the passage. Is there a second layer of protection here that limits the spirit body? Lin In realized this immediately. And with a thought in mind, he asked, 071. Can you tell where I am now? According to the positioning, the target of the agreement is currently located in the Screaming Tower of Aeta Academy. Ten minutes ago, inside Aeta College, Tick was standing on the top floor of the teacher's lounge, staring at the towering, screaming tower, not far away. Sir Tick, you have been looking here for several days. Did you find anything? A voice came from behind, and the person who spoke was none other than Roar. He walked to Tick's side very curiously and asked, You deliberately stayed in Aida for a full month. I'm afraid it's not just to learn the Mathematical Olympiad. Right. Tick stroked his long beard. Don't you think the layout of the buildings in the entire Yetta Harbor is a bit too regular? I heard that it was Master Raphael's design. Luo paused and said with a smile, Raphael's obsessive compulsive disorder is famous in the Land of Wizards. This master architect stubbornly believes that everything in the world should be neat and regular. This theory has also been pursued by many people. No, I'm afraid it's not that simple. Tick shook his head, stretched out his hand, and used magic power to outline an image in the void, which was exactly the architectural layout of Harbor Town. Did you see anything? Is this like an alchemy circle? Roar quickly replied. Yes, and if I'm not mistaken, it may have something to do with psychic energy. Tick's face was full of solemnity and this formation was the Tower of Screams. It has to be said that Harem's method of using the building layout as a cover was very clever. If he hadn't received a secret report from the Parliament before going to Yetta Harbor and deliberately kept a few points, I'm afraid that I wouldn't even think about it in this direction. A spiritual magic circle that can cover the entire city? What exactly does the Great Wizard want to do? Roar frowned. I'm afraid it won't be good news. A trace of worry flashed in Tick's eyes which reminded him of the tragedy three years ago. Maybe he was overthinking it. Chapter 128 Nanchung District Falls into Chaos Roar also remembered what happened three years ago that shocked the entire wizarding land and led to the collapse of the Silenx school. Naturally, he understood Tick's worries and couldn't help but ask, Mr. Tick, what should we do now? If something really happens, it will be difficult for you and me to do anything alone. This is Hirlim's base camp. If nothing else, this great wizard alone is not something they can deal with. Of course you don't have to do anything, Tick said succinctly. The arrangement of this magic circle took more than a day or two. There shouldn't be any problems in a short time. And counting the time, they will probably arrive soon, Tick added. Those academic seminar specialists? Roar immediately realized what the other party was talking about. It was obvious that Tick deliberately took this opportunity to find some helpers. Not bad. Tick waved his hand to disperse the magic image appearing in the void and told another good news. If I'm not mistaken, your teacher, Master August, should also be here. Upon hearing the news, a look of excitement and joy flashed across Roar's face, and his original worry immediately dissipated, and he spoke confidently. Since the teacher is here, I can rest assured. So we just have to wait and hope that these days will go smoothly, Tick said calmly, stroking his long beard. However, as soon as he finished speaking, Tick's expression suddenly changed, and he suddenly turned his head to look in the direction of Nanchung District. A strong wave of magic power is coming from that direction. Tick and Roar looked at each other, and after blessing a slow fall technique, they jumped directly from the top of the tall building and sped towards the South City area. There were not a few people who sensed the fluctuations of magic power along with the two of them. The professors and students all woke up from their dreams, feeling uneasy, as if some terrible disaster was approaching. When Tick arrived in Nanchung District, what he saw was a chaotic scene, with countless poor people, apprentices, and even wizards fleeing like crazy. Because it was late at night, many people were disheveled, and some even ran out naked, or were trampled under the feet of the running crowd. Blood dyed the street red, and the air was filled with a pungent smell of blood. Disgusting. The sound of crying and wailing echoed through the entire Nanchung District, which was terrifying. Hands of the mage! Seeing a disheveled woman being knocked to the ground and about to die under a stampede, Tick quickly cast a spell to drag the person out. Do you know what happened in Nanchung District? Luo Air asked eagerly. Dead? 
Alba is dead. And Anthony. Everyone. Everyone is dead. The woman murmured with dull eyes, as if she couldn't hear Roar's question, and only kept repeating these words. One sentence. Seeing this, Tick had no choice but to let go of the opponent, directly cast a spell to jump onto the roof nearby, and then fired a fireball spell, lighting up the entire southern city area. Then the two of them couldn't help but take a breath of cold air. The streets in Nancheng District were covered with corpses. Tick saw with his own eyes several poor people running in a hurry in the distance, and suddenly fell to the ground without warning, and just lost it. He let out a breath, and then a faint blue light floated out of his body and poured straight into the ground. This is it. Looking at this terrifying scene, Luo Air felt a chill in his back. Soul eating magic circle, Tick said word by word. This must not be allowed to continue to spread. Tick said in a deep voice and stopped Philip and others who had just arrived from the academy. After a quick explanation, he found several wizards who had escaped from the Nanchung district and asked about the area. Building layout. The magic circle nodes should be hidden in those abandoned empty houses. As long as the outer nodes are destroyed, the magic circle should stop. But we'd better move faster. Tick spoke very quickly. Saying that, if you wait just one more second, dozens of people will die. Compared to Philip and others who have not yet experienced the power of the magic circle, the wizards who escaped from Nanchung district are unwilling to go in again. This place is too scary. Even formal wizards cannot avoid the fate of having their souls taken away. Where is Master Haram? Where is he? Someone in the crowd shouted. There was such a chaos in the harbor. And Ram, the controller, was nowhere to be seen. This made everyone present feel a little panicked, as if they had lost their backbone. Master Halram has left the port of Aida some time ago and went to the wizard city Green Reel. Philip explained hesitantly. Since the master is not here, we can only rely on our own strength to calm down the chaos in Nanchung district. Tick quickly took over the conversation, without mentioning their previous speculations, but looked at the people present. The wizards continued to speak. I think you all have heard about the tragedy of the psychic school three years ago. If this magic circle is not stopped as soon as possible, the entire harbor city may soon become a city of death. Think about it. Everyone. This is tens of thousands of lives. With Tick's sincere words of encouragement, most of the wizards finally took action. They still had a certain attachment to the Aida seaport. As the magic circle nodes hidden in Nanchung district were destroyed, the spreading soul-eating magic circle stopped at dawn. Lin In also took advantage of the chaotic scene in Nanchung District to blend into the crowd and help destroy several internal magic circle nodes, which made things go so smoothly. It was not until noon the next day that Tick, Roar, Philip, Kevin and others settled the frightened poor people. And then, they returned to Aida College together, preparing to discuss the next matters. Although the chaos was under control, everyone looked worried. The total number of poor people and wizards killed by the magic circle in the entire Nanchung district is probably thousands. No matter where such huge soul power is used, it is a huge threat. Lin In, who was sitting in the conference room and listening to the discussion of several people, remained silent. Although he knew that all the soul power poured into the Tower of Screams, creating a wraith at the level of a great wizard. But this matter involves Haram, the founder of the Aida school. If he rashly exposes the other party, I am afraid it will arouse some unnecessary suspicion and criticism. After all, Lenin couldn't explain why he was immune to the influence of the soul-eating magic circle, and how he was able to kill a great wizard. Since Ijeda's resentful spirit cannot leave the Tower of Screams, it would be better to wait for the Parliament to send someone to resolve this matter. Chapter 129 Transforming the Virtual Realm For the next two days, the entire Aida Harbor was filled with panic. The tragedy that happened in Nanchung District has spread throughout the seaport city. Although Tick and others wanted to stop it, they were unable to do anything. After all, the impact this time was too widespread. Thousands of poor people fled Nanchung District and witnessed their relatives and friends die inexplicably, and their souls were harvested. Various rumors emerged one after another. Some people suspect that a certain magic workshop is conducting a forbidden research on harvesting souls, while others believe that this is a sign of the birth of evil spirits. There are even rumors that the evil mage Merc is hiding in this seaport city. However, Philip, Orlando and others no longer have time to pay attention to these endless rumors. Because a very strange situation has occurred at Aida College. Whenever it is quiet at night, there will always be a faint scream coming from the academy, which seems to condense people's souls. And all the wizard apprentices are scared to death. A wizard apprentice like Pierce, who had been there for more than ten years recalled the past, which was before the psychic school was abandoned. 
Many students had heard such strange sounds. The Tower of Screams is named after this. Who can tell me what's inside that tower? On the morning of the third day, Tick, who had been unable to sleep for two nights despite the screaming, finally couldn't help but asked, That's the Tower of Screaming, a research institute of the Psionics School a few years ago. Since the school was disbanded, the tower has been abandoned, Philip explained, but he remained silent on the details. Don't want to say more. To be more specific, Let's wait until Master Hellram comes back and explain it to you. Orlando on the side also helped. Tick and Roar didn't dare to push too hard. After all, they were still in the Ieta Harbor. If there was a conflict, it would be difficult to even get out. As for entering the Screaming Tower to check the situation, this is simply the same as committing suicide. Tick guessed that the souls that were extracted were eventually gathered into this tower. The interior may be a scene full of undead. If you step on it rashly, your life may be in danger. In view of this, the two of them could only wait for the support of the parliament while wooing Lin in as a possible ally. If their guess is correct, the tragedy in Nanchung district is probably inseparable from Hellram. So Philip and others may be involved. In comparison, Lin in is the only one who is less suspected. He is a professor of Olympiad who has just arrived in the wizarding land. In view of this, Lin was inexplicably dragged into secret discussions by Tick and Roll all night long, discussing various possible situations. Lennon's expression was very strange when he came out, different from the two people's thoughts. He thought that there would not be too many people involved in this matter. After all, the reputation of the soul-eating magic circle is so bad that it can be said to be a taboo among taboos in the land of wizards. Once it is exposed, even if Ram is a great wizard, he may not be able to escape the fate of being hunted. That's why the other party created a faceless men, organization that didn't know each other's identities. In the entire Bloody Thorns, Probably only North knew who their boss behind the scenes was. Because of this, before the news of Helram's death was exposed, Lin did not think that they would encounter any attacks from remnants, taking advantage of the time when classes were suspended due to the riots. He studied the virtual world that had been captured by the brain. Field. After two days of familiarity, Lin In has transformed this realm composed of magic and soul power. It is no longer a state of chaos and nothing but darkness. Instead, there are countless stars twinkling like the universe. Here you can see huge stars constantly orbiting stars under the influence of gravity. And you can see the magnificent scene of stars collapsing or expanding into red giants. Lin was completely immersed in this creator-like experience. Although most of the work was completed by the intelligent brain loading the corresponding data, this sense of participation was also a very strange experience. Try again and see if you can recreate a black hole. Lin pondered and retrieved the black hole database in GNOW. However, when he was about to recreate it, he received a message indicating that there was insufficient energy. Lennon was stunned for a moment, and then asked, 071, how much energy do we have left? The remaining energy is 8.4%. Do you want to absorb the stored soul power to replenish it? Absorb it. Lin hesitated but nodded. Judging from Aeta's situation, it is not easy to resurrect a person in this world. Those who have been swallowed up by the soul-eating magic circle and transformed into soul bodies have lost their past memories, leaving only death. The most profound obsession in my past memory has no possibility of recovery. By the way, keep by G's spirit body for me. Don't convert her too. Lenin suddenly thought of something and said again. Unlike other spirits he has seen, Beige is a very rare spirit that can maintain sanity and communicate. It is of great research value. Not to mention that he has made a promise before. But in Jinao's view, Beige is a gift package that is several times stronger than the soul of an ordinary wizard apprentice and can restore 12% of the energy reserve. Therefore, whenever Jinao is short of energy, he sacrifices the offer of trading white doves for energy always pops up immediately. Seeing that Jinao's energy reserve increased to 100% in a very short period of time, Lin En didn't look very happy because there were so many places that needed energy. After Harem's death, this virtual realm lost its energy supply. Lin had no choice but to let Jinao be responsible for providing magic power. The consumption was also very terrifying. Consuming 15% of the energy reserve in one day. Forget it. Let's not deal with black holes for now. Just do a simple simulation of all the stars outside the visible range. Don't waste too much computing power on it. Lenin thought about it and quickly read in your mind. After the words fell, the stars in the distance suddenly dimmed a bit. And the daily magic power consumption also became 5%. If there is no one in the virtual field, the consumption will be reduced to about 
Lenin spent so much thought to create this virtual realm into a picture of the universe. Naturally, it is not just for fun, but it has great uses. After witnessing the darkness of Ieta Harbor and the dual faces of Helram, Lin understood that outsiders were ultimately unreliable, and he needed to form his own school of thought to avoid being blamed by others again. Chapter 130 Let's call this place outside time and space. It is not easy to form a new sect in the land of wizards in a short period of time. It's too slow to just recruit apprentices for training. And as he continues to come up with all kinds of magical knowledge, it's only a matter of time before he encounters trouble. After all, with his current strength, he can't walk sideways in the wizard's land. Even though he lasted so long in the previous battle with the great wizard Herlam, Lin In knew very well that if she now hadn't suddenly seized control of the virtual realm when the other party was casting spells with all his strength, causing the other party to fall into a strong the magic backfired. And even with the computing power of nine three-ring wizards, he had no chance of winning. In this case, it is necessary to fool some suitable people into believing that the arcane society is real and to become a member of it, thus voluntarily protecting the development of the school. This virtual realm is the best tool in his hand. The form of the faceless men rally gave Lin in a lot of inspiration. But of course, the location of this rally had to be high-end. After all, he had already blown his reputation. As Lin In thought about it, he created a limited cosmic bubble, suspended in the endless space of the universe. It contained atmosphere and even gravity inside. And the various constants were exactly the same as the surface of the planet. Let's call this place beyond time and space. Lin In quickly asked Chi now to record the name. From now on, this place would be where he used to fool those high-level wizards. Well, I need to add something more. Lin In was using his creativity wantonly until he found that Jinao's energy reserve had been consumed by more than half. And then he hurriedly stopped. You must know that the soul power collected by Jinao is not unlimited. If you consume one, you will lose one. Although he had memorized the alchemical formula for stripping the soul, Lin was not prepared to use this method of depriving life to replenish energy. After arranging the decorations in the space bubble, Lin and asked again, 071. What happened to the faceless men whose minds I connected to before? Are they still normal? Since these faceless men have basically stayed in the virtual realm for two or three years and participated in hundreds of gatherings, their mental protection has long been like a sieve. When Lin used the four ring magic deflection field, the calculation power was mobilized at the most terrifying level, which could even reach more than 50%. Therefore, after the battle, the mental strength of these people was severely damaged. Five of them died on the spot, and the remaining four lost contact temporarily. It is not known whether they fell into a coma or destroyed the ring of the faceless man in their hands. There are no connection targets remaining in the virtual realm. Could it be that everything was really wiped out? Lin In was speechless. But Ji now could only roughly judge the current situation of these people through the magic connection. Which may not be accurate. But in any case, the secret organization, Faceless Men, is about to be destroyed. Just like, Bloody Thorns, as the white gloves of Heron Ram. Every Faceless Man has numerous murders in his hands. You can get a glimpse of it just by looking at their research results. Lin has no sympathy for these people. I mean, letting them disappear with a ram is not necessarily a bad thing. The only thing that Lin and regrets is that relying on stealing computing power to improve one's own strength may not be useful in a short time. Even if new members join in the future, it will take a long time to crack the mental defense. After thinking about it, Lin temporarily withdrew from the virtual realm, turned over his hands, and took out three beautifully styled rings, which were Norse. Barbara's, and Hank's rings of the faceless man. As a caster, Helram does not need this thing to enter and exit the virtual realm. But precisely because the connection is too deep, he will suffer strong backlash when he is deprived of control. Ever since he obtained the ring of the faceless man, he has been studying the principle of this thing. After damaging a ring, he has gained something. But it will take some time to completely analyze it and successfully reproduce it. 071. Change the magic frequency that enters the virtual realm. Lin In muttered silently in his mind. As a result, the remaining rings scattered outside lost their original effectiveness. Without the receiver, the thing is useless. Boom, boom, boom. Just as Lin In was thinking about it, there was a sudden knock on the door. After putting away a few rings, Lin In urged the mage's hand to open the door. The silver-haired which quietly stood at the door and reminded her softly. Professor Lin, Mr. Tick asked me to tell you that several wizards from the parliament will be arriving today. Okay, I'll be there right away. Lin nodded and followed Johnny out. 
arriving at the gate of Aida College. Philip, Kevin and Orlando were already waiting there. Before he could say H, lo, Lin and saw several beautifully decorated carriages speeding towards, here on the street, not far away. The people pulling the carriages in front were not camel beasts. But strong fire lions with body as mane is like a burning flame. Looking extremely powerful. The motorcade stopped in front of everyone smoothly. Under the gaze of Lin An and others. The car curtain slowly opened. And a middle-aged wizard with a beard and deep eyes fell out of the car. At first glance. After observing the surrounding building layout. And seeing the rows of houses with the same length and width. He nodded with satisfaction. And said with emotion. Yet a harbor. It's been a long time since I've been here. Unexpectedly. The person said by the parliament would be this gentleman. Tick suddenly felt a little bad. But fortunately, a familiar figure quickly got off the carriage behind him. He was an extremely young wizard, who looked to be only in his twenties, with a handsome face and a slight smile on his lips, which made people feel a little fond of him just looking at him. Lin was also observing the two of them, especially the particularly different wizard medals on their chests. Two great wizards? He had no impression of the middle-aged wizard in the lead, and could not guess his identity, but the other one was easy to identify. There should only be one such young wizard who was famous in the land of wizards. Magic star, August. Philip and Kevin looked at each other and immediately realized that something was wrong. In the past, when academic seminars were held, the council would symbolically send an official wizard to inform them. But this time, two great wizards came at once, which made all the wizards of the Ayatta school slightly uneasy. Chapter 131 Angry Raphael Two masters! Welcome to Aida. Although he was a little uneasy, Philip took the initiative to greet him, barely showed a smile, and said H, Lo. Why isn't Haram here? Raphael looked around at everyone and asked rather strangely. Master went to Greenreel some time ago. Philip replied indirectly. Raphael raised his eyebrows. He had not heard the news, but Greenreel was very big, and he and Haram were not familiar with each other. In view of this, Raphael had no intention of refuting. After Auguste got off the carriage, his eyes fell on Lin, with a smile on his face. Is this Professor Lin An from the Arcane Society? During this period, Roar often mentioned your Olympiad course and your airship experiment when sending me messages. He must be a wizard, an important part of the country's history. Master August, you are overly complimentary. Lin responded with a smile. Raphael also interjected at this moment. I have seen your star map and I have to say that it is very perfect. It is much more accurate than those drawn by prophecy wizards. In fact, there is not much problem with the star map circulated in the wizarding land. The two are just different reference objects. Of course, they may not be aware of the impact of the planet's rotation. Lin it explained. In a word, he still has some respect for those wizards who are dedicated to studying the laws of star movement. After all, this is a very long and boring job. As for omissions, it is completely normal. There is always a process for exploring the world. The few of them walked towards the academy while talking like this. But Tick and the others were left aside. However, such a relaxed conversation atmosphere made Philip feel relieved. When several people were talking, Tick finally couldn't help but asked, Master Raphael, I heard that you personally designed the entire architectural layout of the Tower of Aich. Is that true? Of course. Raphael nodded proudly. Tick hesitated for a long time before speaking slowly. If I'm not mistaken, this layout should be for the convenience of arranging a certain alchemy circle. Right? Very good. You can actually see this. Raphael glanced at Tick in surprise. Combining alchemy circles with buildings was what he was best at. However, when Tick asked, he still explained, Road. Harem told me at the beginning that he planned to study some magic related to spiritual energy in Aida Academy. To avoid unnecessary accidents. He needed to set up a magic circle in Aida Academy that can suppress spiritual bodies. So I suggested that the alchemy circle could be integrated into the architectural layout. Tick and Roll looked at each other. Before the evil mage Merc caused the destruction of the psionic school, it was not a big deal for a school to add courses to study psionics. This city was founded more than 20 years ago. There is nothing wrong with what Raphael did. The only thing that made him feel strange was that since the entire city was covered by a magic circle that suppressed spiritual bodies, what happened to the poor people in Nanchung district who had their souls taken away? What happened in the Ayata school these days? August asked appropriately. Raphael also looked over. When they entered this seaport city, they already noticed something was wrong because there was no one on the bustling streets. Let me explain it. 
a tragedy happened in Nanchun district just two days ago. Philip sighed. When he saw the two great wizards arriving at the gate of the academy, he understood that this scandal was probably impossible to hide. Lived. Does that mean someone used the soul-eating magic circle in Yetta Harbor? After listening to Philip's story, Raphael's face became a little ugly, and he felt like he had been tricked. He quickly analyzed that someone must have secretly changed his layout. So when he heard the inexplicable screams in the academy, Raphael immediately understood that the souls of the dead must have gathered in the Tower of Screams, because that's where the center of the entire array is. Let's go. I want to see what tricks Aram is playing. Raphael snorted and rushed towards the location of the Screaming Tower. Philip and others did not want to believe that this matter was related to Master Helram, but they were unable to stop Raphael's actions, so they could only follow him together. Lin An was no exception. He was somewhat curious about how the two great wizards would deal with the powerful, resentful spirit. The tower that had been sealed for several years was opened again, and the dark and cold scene inside soon came into view. The walls and ceiling were covered with cobwebs, and the four tiles were also covered with dust. It was obvious that no one had been there for a long time. Taken care of. The moment they entered the tower, several people immediately felt an oppressive aura, as if something was staring at them in the dark. Raphael continued to move forward regardless, heading towards the basement of the tower. Compared to the dilapidated scene above, the place was very clean. Be careful. August suddenly warned. The next moment, an ear-piercing scream rang out in the tower. Under the surge of blood-red mist, a lightning-like shadow directly struck at Roar, the lowest wizard among the crowd. Under the influence of Soul Scream, the movements of several people stagnated in unison. Roar had no time to react. The resentful spirit had already rushed in front of him. But his body could not move, and he could only watch helplessly, as a bloody, she grabbed his chest with her palms. But faster than that was a strong magic beam, which hit the blood-red mist first and directly knocked the resentful spirit Ida away. It was August who cast the spell, and he was the first of all to break free from the influence of the scream. Roar walked around the gate of H, L but his body was still frozen in place. Unable to move. A drop of sweat fell down his forehead. He really thought he was dead just now. At this moment, Raphael had also calmed down, and he threw a reagent bottle out with a flick of his wrist. After touching the resentful spirit, it exploded instantly, and the powder contained inside swayed out, and the bottle that was originally entangled the bloody mist around him gradually dissipated, revealing his true appearance. Lydia? Tick shouted in shock. During the time when he was attending the Mathematical Olympiad class at the academy, he met the halfling girl frequently. So after seeing the face of the resentful spirit clearly, he couldn't help but speak out. Shouted. Chapter 132 The End of the Aida School Compared to Tick, who recognized the wrong person. Orlando and Raphael looked pale and had obviously recognized him. Aida, who had absorbed the soul power of thousands of people, was so powerful that he was invincible to Lin. But under the combined efforts of the two great wizards, he had no ability to struggle. With the help of the magic circle that already existed in the tower to suppress spirits, Raphael quickly bound the resentful spirit Ayata to a corner of the tower. August took out a blue crystal at the right time and used it as a means to bind the spirit body, assisting Raphael in sealing the other party. The azure crystal was soon stained blood red, and the resentful spirits surging inside could still be vaguely seen. After dealing with the threats in the tower, Raphael quickened his pace and walked deeper into the underground, his face becoming more and more gloomy. His guess undoubtedly came true. Helram had indeed secretly modified his alchemy circle. However, an angry Raphael soon discovered that the Haram he was looking for died in this tower. How come? Philip looked at the body lying on the floor with no signs of life in disbelief. If it weren't for that familiar face, he would never have recognized that the person in front of him was Haram. Kevin and Orlando also had expressions of disbelief on their faces. A great wizard died silently in a tower of screams. If they hadn't followed Raphael in, they would still be in the dark. Inside. But didn't Master Ram have already gone to Greenreel? The wizard city? A guess suddenly popped into everyone's mind. But they were not willing to believe that possibility. His life force was drained. This should be the cause of death. It may be the hand of the resentful spirit. Before his death, he suffered a strong magical backlash. Raphael looked at Haram carefully. Corpse's brows furrowed involuntarily, turned to look at Tick, and asked, You seem to know the identity of the resentful spirit just now. That should be Ida. Without waiting for Tick's answer, Orlando sighed and said, He knew that if the parliament wanted to investigate these things, they would probably not be able to hide them. So he took the initiative to tell what he knew. 
Ayeta is the daughter of Master Helram, a child with great magical talent and a psychic. But because of her good talent, Helram exposed her to various magics very early, including psychic spells. He wanted to train her to become the youngest official wizard in the entire wizarding land and create a new one. Records and even believe that the other party had the potential to break through the legendary wizard. However, things did not go as expected. Aida died in a psychic magic accident before he became an official wizard. Master Helram has always been brooding over his daughter's death. He believes that if he hadn't allowed Aida to come into contact with magic without her full mind, such a tragedy would not have occurred. At this point, Orlando shook his head and did not continue. One of the purposes of Helram establishing the school in this seaport city was to find a way to resurrect the dead. However, since Kalu, the psychic professor in charge of this matter, left for the Sika's empire, this screaming tower has been abandoned. He thought that Haram had given up on this unrealistic idea. But he didn't think. Philip and Kevin also had a sad look on their faces. They also did not expect that Helram would use such a cruel method as the soul-eating magic circle. Raphael couldn't help but sigh. It was undoubtedly a great irony that a great wizard died at the hands of his daughter and the resentful spirit he created. I'm afraid it's not that simple. August pointed to the floor tiles that were destroyed by dissolution. And the magic circle on the high platform was also damaged. There is no fire magic available to a wraith. Is it possible that someone else was involved? Maybe Master Helram didn't do this. Kevin said eagerly. Raphael sneered. The Screaming Tower was built in Ayata Academy. In addition, the psychic magic circle covering the entire harbor city was modified. Such a large project had nothing to do with Haram. He was. I definitely don't believe it. However, the traces of the battle left in the tower confused Raphael. If there was another great wizard who planned this incident together with Haram, then why did the other party not take away their achievements after Haram's death, but chose to leave this resentful spirit behind? Inside the Tower of Screams, the soul power collected from the entire soul-eating array created such a powerful, resentful spirit. If she was left here, her work would be in vain. Raphael suddenly thought of another possibility. That is, after the soul-eating magic circle was activated, someone entered the screaming tower and killed Haram in order to stop the magic circle from spreading. Is there a second great wizard in Yetta Harbor who doesn't want to show up? Raphael was puzzled and did not realize that the other target he was looking for was right next to him. After all, in Raphael's impression, Haram was a great wizard with five rings, and a formal wizard might not even have the ability to resist in front of him. Lin En was also observing the bottom of the tower. Due to the vacuum field released by Helram, the white phosphorus flame that had lost its fuel had long been extinguished. There were no clues to be found from the traces of flame damage alone. It should not be involved. On one's own body. Realizing this, Lin En immediately felt relieved. Killing the great wizard Haram and stopping the spread of the soul-eating circle would be a big achievement, but it would definitely bring trouble. In the next few days, things developed somewhat beyond Lin's expectation. Although Raphael and August reported the death of Heron Ram, they did not mention that the tragedy in Nanchung District might be related to the Great Wizard. Reveal it. After all, Helram has been operating in the Ayata Seaport for many years, and has a very high reputation. Now, he suddenly told these civilians that Helram had arranged a psychic formation covering the entire city, and wanted to capture the souls of all of them. The impact is too bad, and will only intensify the common people's fear of wizard rule. Therefore, the responsibility was pushed to those evil mages who fled, but the secret punishment was naturally not less. All the titles and honors that Ram had previously obtained were cancelled, and all his property was confiscated. Philip, Orlando, Kevin and others all looked gloomy. They knew that the Ayata school would probably come to an end in the future. Chapter 133 Chapter 132 Do you know who you just rejected? In the conference room of Ida College. After the discussion on how to compensate the families of the deceased, August suddenly made an invitation. Professor Lin, I wonder if you are interested in joining my school of thought. Everyone present was stunned for a moment. Philip hesitated to speak. After Haram's death, Lin was the only hope of the Ida school. But he also knew that the other party was just based on Kalu's friends and the spread of knowledge. It was only because of his philosophy that he became a professor of mathematical Olympiad. Nowadays, it is only a matter of time before the Aida school declines. And I really have no reason to let Lennon stay. What's more, the person who invited him was Magic Star, August. No one could refuse this offer. Not only Philip, but also Tick and others had the same idea. However, 
Lin's response was beyond everyone's expectations. Thank you for the invitation. Master August. But I'm sorry. Although Aida is encountering a lot of trouble now. I think it will eventually get through it. Is that so? That's such a pity. August shook his head. With a regretful expression on his face. But he didn't say much and left after the meeting. Do you know who you rejected just now? Professor Lin? Orlando said with emotion. Isn't he Master August? Lin in asked in surprise. Could it be that he had recognized the wrong person? Orlando choked, not knowing how to respond for a moment. That is August, the magic star, the most magically talented person in the wizarding land so far, and the person most likely to set foot on the legend. In Lin's words, it seemed that he was no different from an ordinary wizard. You have only joined the Aida school for two months. There is no need to live and die with it. You should have a broader world. Kevin on the side also tried to dissuade you. Lennon didn't know whether to laugh or cry. These people were probably misunderstanding something. He refused. Precisely because August's status was too high. You could tell by looking at Roar that he almost worshipped this magic star. Once he joined the other party's school, no matter how many achievements he made, he would be unable to do so. It is difficult to get the right to speak, and conflicts may arise. In comparison, today's Ayata school is more suitable for his performance. At least there is no one who can suppress him. Moreover, the geographical location of this seaport city is not very good. And it also has a gateway to the Sika's empire. Channel. However, Lin En had no intention of correcting them. After all, this misunderstanding was not a bad thing. Philip and others looked at Lin much closer. As the saying goes, a friend in need is a friend indeed. At such a critical moment, Lin En, an outsider, rejected a bright road and chose to stay as a member of the college, which moved all the professors. In a few days, there will be the annual academic seminar in the Land of Wizards. This is very important for the survival of the Aida school. I would like to invite you to participate in this seminar on behalf of the school, Philip said pleadingly, then looked at Orlando and Kevin, and spoke again. If we can get through this difficulty smoothly this time, we will jointly elect you as the leader of the school. Philip knew very well that his abilities were limited, let alone maintaining the glory of the school. He was afraid that it would be difficult to even maintain the status quo. You must know that the Aida school is more than just an academy. In fact, all wizards in the Harbor City belong to this school. There are more than a dozen three-ring wizards alone, and he cannot suppress them at all. If not, they may fall apart. What's more, in order to resurrect his daughter, Helram used the soul-eating magic circle in the seaport city this time, which left a very bad impression on the parliament. Maybe the higher-ups are already discussing whether to ban the entire Aida school. None of these problems can be solved by him. The existence of the magic school is based on two points. The first is strength, and the second is academic research results. Although Lin An is just like him. They are both official wizards, but he has the advantage of age. It will only be a matter of time before he breaks through and becomes a great wizard. The other party is also a member of the Secret Magic Society and possesses a lot of novel knowledge. Based on these two points, Philip made such a bold decision. Kevin and Orlando on the side had no objection. Obviously, they had discussed it before. Thank you for your trust. I believe there will be good news in this academic seminar, Lin said with a smile. But there are only four days left before the academic seminar. It seems we can't make it in time. Right, Kevin said hesitantly. It usually takes about seven days to get from the seaport of Aeta to the Wizard City Greenreel. These days, they were extremely busy dealing with the mess left by Helram. And they even began to hesitate whether to participate in this academic seminar because both Philip and Orlando initially felt that Lynn would definitely not stay at Aida College. This resulted in this very embarrassing situation. Of course, it's not enough to go there by land, but we can fly there from the sky. Right, Lynn reminded. Orlando and others suddenly felt their eyes light up. Yes, they almost forgot about the airship. Early the next morning, a huge airship slowly landed in the sky above Aida College. After more than two months of driving training, Lydia was already comfortable enough to park the airship in the open space in front of the Olympiad department. And she was enough to serve as the pilot for this voyage. This airship has also undergone some magical transformations. Lynn referred to Norse pirated goods and asked Tick to burn an alchemy circle on it to prevent wind and shock. The interior is very large. And the passenger capacity has been expanded to 10. 5 people. However, considering the comfort, Lynn decided that 10 people would be enough. In addition to himself, Lydia, and Philip. Lynn also picked up Johnny, Pierce, and Alok, 
three apprentices who performed well in Olympiad subjects. As for why there are only six people, that's of course because we have to bring Tick, Roll, Raphael and August with us. Lennon had seen a few people stranded at Ieta Harbor before, and they didn't look anxious at all. He thought they either didn't plan to attend the seminar, or had other means to get on their way quickly, but he didn't expect that these people actually planned to use his airship. Obviously these great wizards, who master force field magic can fly by themselves. Lin and complained secretly. But he didn't care about this trivial matter. Besides, with two great wizards, it would be safer if he bumped into some flying monster. Chapter 134 A Seminar with Magical Characteristics For the first time, they rode an airship up to an altitude of several thousand meters, feeling the cold wind and witnessing the white clouds flying by. Tick and Luo Air were also slightly excited in their hearts, but they still maintained a calm appearance on the surface. The wind is light, and the clouds are calm. Although they had been staying at Ieta Harbor for several days, and could take a ride on an airship at any time for ten silver coins, the two of them couldn't help but be embarrassed and hang out with the civilians. As a pilot, Lydia sometimes deliberately drives the airship into the clouds to let everyone experience the wonderful feeling of being soaked by the clouds. Luo Air stretched out his hand and touched the clouds that were coming towards his face. It's such a good alchemical creation! It can actually allow ordinary people who don't know magic to experience the feeling of flying freely in the sky like a great wizard. Tick thought of the usefulness of airships in transportation, which means that the time to travel to and from various places can be reduced by more than half. If it can be popularized, it will be very convenient to travel in the wizarding land in the future. The cost of this thing shouldn't be cheap. Right? Tick asked. It's a little expensive. Lin and nodded seriously. Although the overall cost of the airship is not high, and can be replaced with some cheap materials. The design concept is very valuable. Then Lin asked how previous academic seminars were held. Tick recalled the grand occasion when thousands of wizards gathered together in previous years, telling the novel theories developed by the school and demonstrating the latest magic researched. What impressed him the most was that 20 years ago, several top schools put forward more than a dozen assumptions about the nature of fire. Hundreds of official wizards argued with each other and even staged a full-scale martial arts show in the venue. For example, the fire element theory is sought after by many wizards. They believe that fire is an entity composed of countless small and lively microscopic elements that cannot be perceived by magic for the time being. It exists in those substances and elements that can burn at high temperatures. In this state, it will separate, and a large number of free fire elements will gather together to form a flame visible to the naked eye. The evidence is that after the element is burned, it will not completely disappear but will be produced or transformed into other elements. This must be caused by the separation of the fire element. However, there are many loopholes in this theory, and it cannot be recognized by all wizards. Opposing this are the theory of fire magic and the theory of fire phlogiston. Some wizards even believe that fire is just a state and a manifestation of violent movement of elements. The so-called fire element does not exist at all. Then what? Lin asked curiously. The founders of the last few mainstream doctrines each agree to use the strongest fire magic they created. The final winner is the Great Wizard Adela. The new magic he developed, Fire Elemental Storm, has ultra-high temperatures of tens of thousands of degrees and almost killed another Great Wizard, thus winning the debate. So now the doctrine of the element of fire is prevalent in the land of wizards, Tick said fondly, wondering when such a wonderful debate would happen again. Of course, although the fire element theory won the victory, the wizards who oppose this theory have not given up. They have been studying new fire magic with all their heart, hoping to win the game. However, until now, they have not been able to improve the strength of the magic. Beyond, is this okay? Listening to Tick's story, Lin couldn't laugh or cry. But if you think about it carefully, this seems to be quite normal. In the land of wizards, knowledge equals power. Whoever has the strongest magic shows who has the most profound research. When it is impossible to argue who is right, and who is wrong. Magic is undoubtedly the only way to solve the problem. After all, the big fist is the last word. Since you think your theory is correct, why can't you create more powerful magic and fight back? It can only be said that this is a method of debate that is characteristic of the land of wizards. By the way, I heard that the wizards of the prophecy school are preparing to refute your theory at the seminar. They seem to have found some errors and omissions. You'd better be careful then. Tick suddenly seemed to remember something as if to remind you. A person may be very knowledgeable, but it does not mean that he must be good at debating. Although it is impossible to refute the truth through sophistry, it will be very embarrassing in the debate arena. 
Could they also want to use magic to refute? Lin paused. Probably not, Tick said uncertainly. Although there have been conflicts caused by disputes and seminars over the years. Generally speaking, they would not lead to a fight. What about the legendary wizards? Will they be present at this seminar? Lin asked. I don't know about this. Tick shook his head. In fact, legendary wizards rarely participate in academic seminars. Unless there is an interesting or very important topic. They are usually an outstanding official wizard within the school. To explain new theories. Since it was Lin's first time attending the seminar. Tick explained various precautions to him in great detail. Lin also wrote them down one by one. And then asked for information about the legendary wizards in the council. However, these high-ranking speakers are very mysterious. And Tick does not know much information. The most discussed one is the legendary wizard Harav. This gentleman also comes from outside the land of wizards. It is said that he only started to come into contact with magic in his 30s. But he is very talented. Even though he missed the best time to learn magic, he still set foot in the realm of legendary wizards. However, unlike other legendary wizards, Harav has very few apprentices. Only a few. According to this adult, he only needs a few people to serve as starters and does not have so much time to devote to teaching students. Superior. Is it the Harav who proposed that gravity may exist widely in any object? Lin said in surprise. That's right. Tick nodded. After your planet theory was released, it was also Master Harav who flew into the sky immediately to confirm that the continent may be spherical. Is it because of the gravity of the planet? Lin and immediately understood why the legendary wizard was so interested in this conclusion. After all, this should also be what the other party was studying. The law of gravity? Lin pondered for a while. He had already made an invitation letter from the Arcane Society. He was still hesitating whether to give it to Raphael or August. After all, the Aeta school did not have a great wizard as its backer. This it is a hidden danger after all. Thinking about it now, the legendary wizard Harab might be a better choice. Chapter 135 Law of Universal Gravitation The speed of the airship was faster than expected. And on the evening of the third day, a magnificent city appeared in front of Lin. That is the city of Wizards Green Reel. This city is built between the mountains. It is circular in shape, like a huge gem inlaid among the mountains. There are a large number of high-level magic crystal cannons set up on the towering city walls. I don't know why. Under human control, he spontaneously turned the muzzle of the gun in the direction of the airship. Lennon has seen the power of this thing. And it can even severely damage the powerful eye of death. But he was not here to invade. He had already reported it through the alchemy circle before. In addition, there were two great wizards on the airship. Lennon was not worried about them being attacked. But looked straight towards located in the center of the city. The towering spire tower towers into the clouds. Shining with magical light under the afterglow of the setting sun. Which looks very eye-catching. Is this the tower of the sun? Lin whispered to himself. Raphael on the side nodded in response. Yes, this is the Tower of the Sun, the symbol of the Wizarding City. Master Raphael, can I ask why this tower is called this name? Lin asked. After experiencing what happened at Ayata Harbor, he felt somewhat shadowed when he saw such a tall spire. Actually, its original name should be called the Tower of Eclipse or the Tower of Shadowlessness. But it was just because the meaning of these names was not very good that it was changed to Corona. Raphael explained. Every year in mid-July, under the sunlight at noon, the shadow of this magic tower will completely overlap with the base, forming a shadowless tower. Of course, this was true of all the buildings in Greenreel that day, but the Corona Tower was very tall and the most shocking. The calendar and hours of the Wizarding Land are also divided according to the length and angle changes of the shadow of the Corona Tower under the sun. It is a perfect 360 days, divided into 12 months, and each month is no more, no less. Exactly 30 days. Nice design, Lin said with a raised eyebrow. In this way, the entire tower becomes a huge clock. As for the cause of the formation of the shadowless tower, he could guess that it was simply that in mid-July, the tower happened to be at the direct point of the sun. While the two were chatting, the airship had already entered Greenreel and landed in the square in front of the Magic Research Association on the east side, attracting a large group of wizards to watch. After all, everyone came by carriage so they were the most special. Is this an airship? It's even bigger than what you see in the newspapers. It's really impressive. If it's not expensive, it would be a good choice to buy an airship for travel. Noisy discussions continued one after another. In view of the previous publicity in Magic Daily, Lin An and his Sky Airship were already known to everyone. But the pictures were naturally not as shocking as the real objects. 
Those alchemists even discuss this matter. The design principles of alchemical instruments. Being able to fly and levitate without wings. Could it be that some kind of force field magic is used? As a result, as soon as Lin In and others got off the airship, they felt countless pairs of eyes staring at them. It was obvious that they had become the focus of the audience. Compared to Lin, who was very calm, Johnny and Alok, who arrived in Greenreel for the first time to attend this event, seemed a little embarrassed. Philip adjusted his robes. Even when Master Helrem led the team in the past, there were not many opportunities for the Aida school to show their face like this. At this moment, a tall and burly wizard with meticulously combed hair walked out of the crowd, bowed to August and Raphael with a smile, and then turned to look at Lin. In it all, Mr. Philip and Mr. Lin, welcome to Greenreel. Please come with me. Then, two masters, we will meet again tomorrow. Lin said goodbye to August and Raphael, and then followed the tall wizard towards the dedicated lounge of the Aida school. After arranging the accommodation issue, Philip quickly pulled Lin aside. Have you figured out how to deal with those wizards from the prophecy school tomorrow? Of course, Lin said in a longer tone. No, Philip's whole body was in a mess. Looking at Lin's extremely calm look, he thought he was already well prepared, but he was unexpectedly unprepared. But before Philip could jump anxiously, Lin spoke again. If you can help me get the detailed data on the star map of the prophecy school, then I will be absolutely sure. This is simple. Just wait. I'll be back soon. Philip hurried out the door. The Wizards of the Prophecy School published these research results in previous issues of Magic Daily. And there are corresponding records in the library. It should be not hard to find. Lin took out a piece of parchment from the table and wrote down the famous Kepler's third law and the law of universal gravitation. If you want to understand the laws of star orbits, you need to conduct continuous observations for tens or even hundreds of years. It is definitely too late for him to do it now. Fortunately, the Wizards of Prophecy have helped him complete the final task. For complex work, he only needs to verify whether the theory is correct. At night, the Wizard City Greenreel, Ling came to Harab's Manor alone, preparing to meet this famous legendary wizard. However, when he arrived at the door, he was surprised to find that the door was already crowded with people. More than ten wizards were waiting anxiously in front of the door, each with an envelope or manuscript in their hand. Before Ling could ask anything, the door to the manor opened, and a witch of about 30 years old walked out. Judging from the badge on her chest, she should be a three-ring wizard. Almost at the same time, the crowd gathered at the door immediately crowded forward. Teresa, this is the data that I have spent 10 years researching. I hope it will be helpful to Speaker Hera's research. A tall and thin wizard begged and folded a pile of them into his hands. The manuscript paper was handed over. Not to be outdone, the rest of the wizards crowded forward to explain their research results hoping to attract Teresa's attention and put their manuscript paper at the top when reporting. And some even included it in the manuscript paper. A few magic gold coins or even an entire money bag. Only then did Lin understand that he was not the only one who knew that Harab was studying gravity and was preparing to start from this aspect. Chapter 136 Lin, I brought three laws and a formula. Okay, stop arguing. Teresa looked at the messy crowd very displeased. Scolded and then collected the envelopes and manuscript papers from these people with an expressionless face. As for the gold coins and money bags quietly handed over by several wizards, then they were all thrown back. Then, the witch looked at Lin, who was also holding an envelope. Miss Teresa, I am Lin from the Arcane Society. I have something very important to ask to see Lord Harav. Lin bowed slightly and saluted, showing enough respect. After a pause, he continued continue to speak. I have made some achievements in the study of gravity, and I have brought three laws of star movement and an arcane formula, which should be able to provide some help to Lord Harav. Lennon's words made Teresa frown involuntarily. Others just asked her to submit some research results, but Lennon actually wanted to meet with the teacher directly. This was simply pushing the envelope. As for the so-called three laws mentioned by the other party, Teresa even scoffed. What is the law? It is an eternal law of magic, and the fundamental rule for the operation of this world. Every wizard who creates a law of magic will be recorded in history, and may even become the founder of a top school or even an important doctrine. And now the other party actually said that he had researched three laws about the movement of stars and wanted to provide help to the legendary wizard Harav. This was simply arrogant. In the past, Teresa had not seen wizards who had the courage to say that they had important research results to deceive her into recommending them. But this was the first time she had ever seen such an exaggeration. 
An extremely impatient look appeared on Teresa's face. She reached out and snatched the letter from Lennon's hand and said very stiffly, The teacher is studying a very important topic these days and does not have time to meet with you for the time being. If your theory is really that useful, I think the teacher will consider giving you this opportunity after reading it. The planet theory that Master Harov has verified before is my theory. I think he should be willing to meet me. Lin did not give up, but explained. He somewhat doubted whether the other party failed to recognize his identity. Teresa saw what Lin was thinking and said with a sneer, Of course I know who you are. That Lin in who brazenly said that the magic theory in the Wizarding Land has long been outdated. Right. But I want to tell you that the teacher has already known the law of free fall you proposed. But the relevant research results have not been published yet. The teacher went to the top of the world not just to verify whether the continent is round. Speaking of this, Teresa felt somewhat dissatisfied. The law of free fall was a byproduct of her teacher Harav's research on gravity. The conclusion had been drawn a few years ago, and she was just going to publish it in the soon-to-be-completed theory of gravity. Unexpectedly, Lin In took the lead. What's even more irritating is that this wizard from the Sika's empire also ridicules and questions the research on magic in the wizard's land. This is simply an ignorant rodent mocking the dragon in the sky. How does this make Teresa look good? You heard it just now. Everyone here thinks that their research can help the teacher. So should I let others go in too? Teresa said coldly. Almost every day, there are people waiting at the gate of the manor, submitting their research materials in an attempt to gain the appreciation of the legendary wizard. If they all agree, there will be no end. The so-called research of these formal wizards is of no value at all. Most of the theories are full of errors or outdated assumptions, which will only waste the teacher's precious time. After saying that, Teresa turned around and left with a pile of manuscript papers and envelopes. And the door of the manor was also closed. After being rejected, Lin In showed a somewhat helpless expression on his face. He originally thought that through the promotion of Magic Daily, he would be somewhat famous in the land of wizards and meet the legendary wizard Harav. It should still be fine. But now it seems that his name brings more than just positive influence. Sir, do you know how long it usually takes for the legendary wizard to check these letters? Lin turned his head to look at the wizard beside him and asked. Then it might be a few hours or a few days. It depends on when Harav will be interested. The wizard shook his head and looked at Lin with a rather confused look in his eyes. There is a sense of schadenfreude in the past half month. This wizard from outside the mist has become famous. But now, he is not rejected like himself. Lin In shook his head. He suddenly set his target to the level of the legendary wizard. Perhaps a little too quickly. After all, the other party was the top figure in the wizarding land. And he couldn't just meet him if he wanted to. At the same time, in the manor, Teresa carefully opened the door to the laboratory, trying not to make the slightest sound so as not to disturb Harav who was thinking. A huge high platform is placed in the center of the laboratory, with several small magic clusters suspended on it. They are surrounding the huge magic cluster in the center, and are constantly moving in a uniform circular motion to simulate the influence of the planet's gravity by the star. The huge picture of stars was actually reduced to a very small distance, and Teresa couldn't help but sigh at the greatness of the legendary wizard. At this moment, Hera was standing under the high platform, holding the data he had just calculated in his hand, shouting with an angry expression. Impossible. Absolutely impossible. The orbit of the star should be a perfect circle. And the center of the circle should be placed in the center. The more Harav thought about it, the angrier he became. And finally he tore into pieces the data he had spent more than 10 hours calculating. According to his vision, gravity is like water waves, which will take on a perfectly circular shape. The effects of some force field magic can well verify this. However, the star map data produced by the Prophecy School did not correspond to the perfect gravity model he established. There must be something missing, such as an interference factor that he had not noticed yet. Or maybe the star chart data given to him by the prophecy school was actually wrong. Harav was thinking hard, while Teresa squatted on the ground carefully, picked up the torn manuscript papers one by one, and then pieced them together. In her opinion, every research done by the teacher is an in-depth exploration of the world and the laws of magic even if there are errors and omissions. They are extremely valuable. These manuscripts contain the most profound thoughts. Chapter 137 The Shocked Legendary Wizard Harav Harav thought for a while, but to no avail. Finally he sighed, looked at Teresa, and asked, Where are today's research materials? Here, teacher. Teresa handed over the stack of manuscript papers very respectfully. Harav took a piece of parchment and read it. 
although the various ideas put forward by these official wizards were full of loopholes. It was precisely because they were sufficiently unconstrained that they sometimes brought him some inspiration. After all, this is what he lacks most right now. Harav scanned it line by line, then quickly threw it aside, then picked up the next piece of parchment and read it. After reading more than a dozen copies in a row, Harav's patience gradually ran out. Because the quality of the theories in this issue is so poor, many theories are not even based on facts at all and are just groundless fantasies. It's simply a waste of your time. Forget it. Let's just read it first. In case we can find some inspiration? Harav shook his head, holding on to the last glimmer of hope. He picked up the exquisite envelope remaining on the table. Tell them next time. Just bring them the manuscript paper. There is no need to make these messy decorations, Harris said dissatisfied. Yes, teacher, I will remind them. Teresa nodded quickly, feeling more and more disgusted with a wizard named Lin from outside the wizarding land, because this letter was taken from him. Of, huh? Harris was stunned as he opened the envelope casually, because the envelope was not a research paper filled with magic theories, but an invitation letter. Dear legendary wizard Mr. Harav, I heard that you are studying the law as a star movement and are committed to deciphering the secrets of gravity, space and time. You are hereby invited to join the Arcane Society to explore the mysteries of the truth of the universe. Harav's brows knitted together. He didn't know how many invitations he had to reject every month from this kind of academic discussion organization. But now he actually got them mixed in with the research materials. I'm sorry. It's my fault. Teacher. I should have reviewed it first. Teresa responded in a panic. This was her job. But because she had delayed some time before, she directly brought it in. Arcane Society. Harab did not throw away the letter directly because he seemed to have heard this name somewhere. Who brought this letter? It's a wizard named Lin. The wizard from the Sea of Mists who proposed the planet theory. Teresa said rather angrily. That arrogant person also said that he brought three laws and a formula that can solve the problems you encounter. What about the laws and formulas? Harav asked next. Since this wizard organization can clearly propose the planetary theory and the law of free fall, it still proves something. So it doesn't hurt to take a look. Teresa choked immediately and was speechless. Fortunately, Harav quickly found the formulas and laws written by Lin on the back of the invitation. First law, the orbits of all planets around stars are ellipses. And the stars are at some focus of the ellipse. After Harav's eyes scanned the first line, he nodded thoughtfully. Indeed, he also discovered this phenomenon while studying the movement of stars. But the question is why it is like this. According to his speculation, the gravitational field should be a perfect circle, and the star would be at the center of the circle. This is one of the problems that has always troubled him. So Harav hurriedly looked down. But to his surprise, there was no explanation at all. But the second and third laws were directly put forward. Second law, for any planet. The area swept by its connection with the star is proportional to the movement time, and the planet's surface grazing velocity is constant. Third law, the ratio of the cube of the semi-major axis of all planetary orbits to the square of the revolution period is equal, and the ratio is only related to the celestial body around which it orbits. Harav's expression immediately became serious, because these were two brand new rules that even he had not found yet. Quickly, bring me paper and pen. I want to verify it, Harav shouted loudly. Is it possible that these so-called laws are really useful to teachers? Teresa felt a little uneasy in her heart. And she didn't understand why Hera, a legendary wizard, was so out of control with just three short sentences. Although she was confused, Teresa quickly brought the paper and pen over. But Hera, who couldn't wait for a long time, directly used magic power to write and draw in the air, and then took the data of the star maps to compare them one by one. Teresa was so frightened that she did not dare to speak out. She could only wait aside with a pen and paper, and stayed there for several hours. When the sky became brighter, Harav stopped, looking at the star orbit data suspended in midair, muttering to himself, It's right! It's really right! Harav felt that he was closer to the truth than ever before. So, he looked at the end of the invitation. There is only one short formula there. However, these operation symbols. He couldn't understand it at all. What does this F stand for? And what is G? Harav knew nothing about these mathematical operation symbols from another world, and could only make guesses based on his previous research. He had a hunch that what he had been pursuing was within this short formula. What about Lin? Where is he now? Harav suddenly remembered the person who sent the letter and asked eagerly. The other person must understand the meaning of this formula. Old. Teacher. 
because it was too late yesterday. The wizard named Lin has already gone back. As for now, he should be attending the seminar. Teresa replied hesitantly. Not at all. He dared to mention that he blocked him from the door on purpose. I'll bring him over immediately. Teresa hurriedly planned to go out and bring Lin back. As for the previous conflict, she couldn't care about it anymore. Teresa knew very well that she was just a three-ring wizard with ordinary talent. She had provided some inspiration to Hera through an academic paper. And then she was appreciated and became his apprentice. If the legendary wizard knew that he had made such a big omission, his current status would probably not be preserved. No, it's too slow. I'd better go in person. With a thought in his mind, Hera sorted out the messy research manuscripts in the room and gathered them in his hands. And then flew out of the wide open window. Chapter 138 Morning Star Silver Moon Corona Professor Lin In, where did you go last night? I originally wanted to discuss today's topic with you. But I waited for more than an hour, and you didn't come back. In Greener City, in front of the Magic Seminar Hall, Philip asked with a slight complaint. You must know that he was busy all afternoon and all night yesterday just to help Lin win this debate. I went to find Lord Harov and wanted to test a theory. Lin continued. Then what? Have you seen that adult? Philip asked curiously. No, not really. In fact, I was stopped directly outside the door. Lin replied calmly. That's normal. Even Master Hellram. If he wants to meet this legendary wizard, he has to make an appointment in advance and choose a time when the other party is free. Philip laughed. But Harab was Lin In is a well-known research geek. It would be strange not to be disappointed if Lin In came to the door so rashly. Lin shrugged and didn't pay too much attention to this failure. Instead, he turned to look at Johnny and the others, asking if they were ready for what he wanted. After getting a positive answer, he talked to Johnny and others. Everyone walked into the magic seminar hall together. This is a beautifully decorated auditorium. The interior space is large enough to accommodate thousands of people. There are red chairs placed in a circle. And the overall shape is ladder-like. Even the wizard sitting at the back can clearly see see the debate live. Philip led Lin and others to sit down at the long table belonging to the Iata school. But unlike in the past, this time they were arranged to seats at the back. Philip knew very well that this was due to the impact of the death of Master Hellram. Ayata was no longer a magic wizard with great powers. School? As soon as the two sat down, today's seminar began quickly. Among the people responsible for presiding over the meeting, Raphael and August were prominently listed. The first person to take the stage was a tall wizard. After signaling to several great wizards, he looked at the wizards present and spoke. Everyone, I am Yasos, the shaping mage of the sky and wind school. Next, I will demonstrate a brand new flying magic to you. As he spoke, the wizard turned around, and amidst the screams of the ladies, he took off his shirt, revealing his strong back muscles. Then a wave of magic spread out from the whole body. The muscles on the back began to deform and extend from near the shoulder blades, and a pair of huge wings with a length of three meters appeared in front of everyone. However, unlike birds, Yasso's transformed wings are bare and featherless, like a thin and wide film. This kind of wings is based on the wings of bats. It is very light and does not add too much burden to the body. It can become very wide and support the weight of the entire body. Yasos explained a few words, then flapped his wings vigorously. And after a few sprints, he flew directly up and walked around the seminar hall a few times, causing waves of exclamations. It's a very delicate shaping magic. And the deformation is perfect. But it's too slow and too laborious to fly like this. In the audience, Philip shook his head and didn't think much of this magic. Lenin also nodded. First of all, the weight of the human body is not light. Flying by waving wings requires a lot of physical strength. Secondly, this magic requires a high degree of plastic surgery. Those wizards who are truly proficient in shaping magic can consider directly transforming into a Dogard falcon when they want to fly, instead of simply getting a pair of wings, just as the two of them thought. After Yasos explained the details of magic research and development, the evaluations given by several great wizards were not high and it was finally defined as an unpopular three-ring shaping magic. Yasos walked off the stage with a sigh. He knew that he had no chance to win the Morning Star Medal this time. In the next hour, wizards from more than a dozen schools of thought came on stage one after another to explain the novel theories they had discovered, or the new magic they had created. In the end, only one potion master, relying on a potion that could quickly replenish the wizard's physical strength, won the recognition of many great wizards, and was nominated for the Order of the Morning Star taking advantage of this gap. 
Philip also explained to Lin the three major awards in the Wizarding Land. They are the Morning Star, the Silver Moon, and the Corona. The Morning Star is looking for wizards who have researched and improved new magic, potions, and alchemy formations. A few will be given out every year at the seminar. But not all magic counts. The improved magic like Yasos demonstrated just now is not even qualified to be nominated because of its limited scope of application. The conditions for obtaining the Silver Moon Medal are even more stringent and will only be awarded to wizards who have made outstanding contributions in a certain magical field. Even Adela, the great wizard who founded the Fire Element Theory 20 years ago, failed to get a Silver Moon Medal because this theory could not be truly verified. As for the Medal of the Sun, it is the highest magical academic award in the entire wizarding land. Only those wizards who have established mainstream disciplines and have had a profound impact on the magic theory system in the wizarding land can be nominated for the Order of the Sun. If you can prove the planetary theory and correct the star map of the prophecy school in the debate this time, you might be able to get a silver moon medal, Philip said with anticipation and excitement. The Order of the Silver Moon was an honor that only a very few great wizards could obtain. When Helram was alive, the Ieta school had not been able to obtain such a high honor. Lenin didn't care about awards or anything, but turned to look at the seats of the prophecy school not far to the right. Several male and female witches had already stood up and walked towards the high platform. The leader was wearing a gray robe, with a slightly thin face and sunken eyes, as if he had not slept for several nights. But his spirit was particularly high. He looked at the crowd and spoke in a high tone. Masters, gentlemen and ladies, I am Yolanda from the Prophecy School. However, I am not here today to elaborate on new astronomical research results. I have some questions that I hope to come from Lynn and outside the Wizarding Land. Sir, you can answer our questions. Although Yolanda's words were not sharp, everyone could hear the tit-for-tat in his tone. All the wizards looked in Lynn's direction, with playful expressions on their faces. They all guessed that the Prophecy School would definitely refute Lynn's planetary theory in public at this seminar but they didn't know the other party. How to deal with it? Chapter 139, of course, I have the evidence of planet rotation. Under the gaze of countless eyes at the venue, Lenin stood up with a calm expression and walked towards the high platform. Professor, he should be able to withstand it. Right. A look whispered to himself. The wizards of the prophecy school looked like they were outnumbered, as if they were trying to overpower others. Philip was also a little worried. He had wanted to go out together just now, but Lenin pushed him back. When Yolanda saw Lin in walking on stage, he asked impatiently, Mr. Lin In, I have read your theory. According to your theory, all stars, including the continent under our feet, revolve around the sun. Right. To be precise, the planets in this galaxy revolve around the sun. Lin corrected the errors in Yolanda's words. Yolanda did not pay attention to this difference, but said regretfully, But I find that you seem to have overlooked a very important issue. What's the problem? Lin asked strangely. Since you mentioned in Magic Daily that the continent under our feet revolves around the sun in a period of 360 days, which is exactly one year, how should we explain the phenomenon of day and night replacement? Could it be one year? It's only been one day and night. Right, Yolanda asked. According to the theory of the prophecy school, it is precisely because the sun rotates around the continent with a cycle of one day that the sun rises. The moon sets and there is day and night. Lin An was speechless. He thought Yolanda was going to say something high-end. So he immediately explained in a dumbfounded way. It's very simple. That's because the planet under our feet is not only rotating around the star, but also rotating all the time. This is why we see the alternation of day and night. Lin stretched out his hand and created two water groups of different sizes in the void, letting the smaller one rotate around the larger one and at the same time. Each rotation represented the alternation of day and night. Rotation? Yolanda was stunned for a moment. He didn't expect Lin to come up with such an explanation. But he soon laughed. I have to say that your theory is very interesting. But if, as you said, the continent under our feet is constantly rotating and even moving around the sun, then why won't we be thrown out directly? Yolanda's tone increased a bit. And his voice continued to echo in the auditorium. All the wizards present were also talking about it. Even the wizards, who originally supported the planet theory began to waver under such sharp questioning. After all, Yolanda's words are easy to imagine. For example, if you put a rice grain on a ball and then rotate the ball rapidly, the rice grains on it will inevitably be thrown out. What's more, the continent under their feet is so huge. Once it moves, 
it will definitely produce very terrifying power. Even if they are lucky enough not to be thrown out, they will definitely be able to sense it. Philip was as anxious as an ant on a hot pot, as if he was the one being targeted on the stage. Lennon's expression remained unchanged, and he asked with a smile, You must have made a carriage. Right. Mr. Yolanda, why do you ask this? Yolanda said hesitantly. Lynn did not answer, but turned to look at the wizards at the seminar. I think everyone should have noticed that when the carriage is driving. We can only feel it most clearly at the beginning and end, when the body is swaying back and forth. The rest of the time, what we feel most is the bumpy feeling caused by the carriage driving over uneven roads. That's because we are in the carriage during the ride. And based on friction, we move with the carriage. Of course, because the speed of the carriage is fast and slow. It is not intuitive enough, Lenin said, suddenly turning his head looking at the great wizards. I think Master Raphael and Master August, who have flown on airships, should have a better understanding of this. The eyes of everyone on the field immediately fell on Raphael and August. After thinking for a while, the two nodded together. The airship is different from the carriage. It is completely floating in the air. After being blessed with a windproof magic circle, it travels very smoothly. They can hardly feel that they are moving quickly on it. The same is true for this planet. Previous freefall experiments have proven that the resistance we feel is based on elements. Under the influence of gravitational binding, all elements and materials change positions together with the rotation of the planet. So of course we can't feel that we are moving. If one day it suddenly stops rotating, then we will all fly out, Lynn said jokingly. False! Next to Yolanda, a red-haired witch shouted loudly, interrupting Lynn's words. Master Harab once flew to the top of the world. If the continent under our feet really rotated again, Master Harab would have flown to other places with the rotation of the continent in such a long time. The influence of gravity is very large. Ma'am, much larger than you think. It's so large that even if we rise to an altitude of hundreds of thousands of meters, we can't escape its control, Lenin said lightly, and then added looking at the crowd. He said loudly, Just like we cannot notice that the planet under our feet is round, the rotation speed of the planet is very slow compared to its huge size, and we are as small as dust, like ants building holes in the hills, for at this hill alone is the whole world. The discussion in the hall became more and more intense. Some people very much recognized Lin's planet rotation theory. After all, it could well explain the replacement of day and night. But more people still have deep doubts. According to Lin In, just because they follow the rotation of the planet, they don't feel that they are also rotating? This is outrageous. Not magic at all. Where's the evidence? What evidence do you have to prove that the continent beneath our feet is rotating? This is all just your fantasy. Yolanda sneered in a sharp tone. Based on your theory, are we flying along with this continent when we sleep at night? Then when you were riding in the carriage, did you move by yourself? Lin asked funnily. Of course. Yolanda paused. He wanted to say that he was not moving. But when he thought about it carefully, he was indeed moving. This contradictory feeling confused Yolanda, who did not know what a reference system was. In the end, he could only conclude that he did not move, and that the carriage moved him. But this conclusion undoubtedly proved Lin's rotation theory. Yolanda struggled for a long time and did not speak. As for the evidence of the planet's rotation, of course I have it. Lin ignored the entangled Yolanda, but looked at the seat of the Aida school and said, Gianni, Alok, Pears, bring up everything you have prepared. Chapter 140 Lin's Pendulum Experiment Okay, it's finally time for us to take the stage. Alok and the others, who had been watching below for a long time, were already excited. After getting Lin Un's approval, they immediately ran to the high platform holding a large box. Yolanda stepped forward and took a look uneasily. The big box contained some strange things. The most conspicuous thing was a big iron ball with a protruding sharp needle embedded at the bottom. Masters, please allow me to use magic to make certain changes here, so that the effect of the experiment can be more intuitive, Lenin said. If you think this can be of any help, Raphael nodded and agreed. Lin and immediately used fossils to mud to turn the large stone bricks under his feet into fine sand. Then he asked Johnny and others to piece together the stone slabs placed in the box, forming a giant outside of the high platform. A disc. Precisely 360 scales are divided into the corners of the disc, and a wooden stick is placed in front of each scale. Finally, Lin asked the wizard who had developed flying magic to hang the iron ball on the ceiling of the seminar hall with a wire rope. Due to the need to demonstrate magic, the hall of the entire magic seminar is not only wide, 
but also built very high. With the ceiling being 60 meters above the ground, the iron ball weighing 30 kilograms was tied by a slender wire rope only about 10 centimeters away from the sand. The sharp needle protruding from below had sunk into the sand. What are you trying to do? Yolanda was completely confused. He couldn't understand the other party's operation at all. The rest of the wizards on the field also had confused expressions. Do an experiment! Lin waved to Alok and others to stand aside. And then asked, Mr. Yolanda, what do you think will happen if you push this iron ball hard? The iron ball will be thrown out and then swing back and forth in a straight line. Does this need to be said? Yolanda responded impatiently. I don't think so. Lenin shook his head. Because you have ignored a very important factor. That is, the continent under our feet is rotating. And the geostrophic deflection force generated will inevitably affect the swing of the iron ball. So this when the pendulum swings, it will continue to deflect and rotate around this disk. Absurd. Yolanda doesn't believe in the so-called geostrophic deflection force, let alone such an outrageous thing as the continent's rotation. That's a complete fallacy. Thinking like this, Yolanda's eyes were fixed on him, for fear that the other party would play some tricks during the experiment. Lin didn't even use magic. Instead, he pulled the iron ball to the zero mark of the sand table and then let go of his hand, letting the iron ball swing freely with the help of gravity. The steel wire rope, nearly 60 meters long, was stretched straight due to the weight of the iron ball. Under the action of gravity, it caused a gust of wind and hit the wooden bar on the opposite side that belonged to the 180 mark. Just like Yolanda said, the path of the iron ball is indeed a straight line. The eyes of all the wizards in the room were focused on the pendulum because the wire rope binding the iron ball was very long. The iron ball swung back and forth not very fast, but it was very regular and not as Lin and said, deflect away. Yolanda waited for a while but saw no change. Deng even looked at Lin and said mockingly, Where is the phenomenon of the pendulum rotating around the disc you just mentioned? Why didn't I see it? You were too impatient and didn't observe carefully enough. So you couldn't see it? Lin sighed. Yolanda was very annoyed. He was not blind. Couldn't he still tell whether this thing was spinning or not? At this moment, a cry of surprise suddenly came over. It's off! The trajectory is really off! Several great wizards stood up from their seats and stared closely at the sand table under the pendulum. Where is it wrong? Yolanda also looked in the direction of everyone's gaze, and was surprised to realize that the trajectory left by the fine needle at the bottom of the iron ball on the sand table was not a completely straight line, and would deviate slightly every time it went back and forth. It's just that this deviation is so small that it can't be seen with the naked eye. It can only be judged by the trajectory left by the pendulum across the sand table. Boom. With a slight muffled sound. The wooden bar representing 181 degrees was knocked down by the iron ball. And then the pendulum knocked the opposite wooden bar representing 181 degrees to the ground. Whether it is the traces left on the sand table or the knocked down wooden bars, there is no doubt that the pendulum is really moving slowly. And it is not wandering around, but deviating regularly to the left. The wind! The wind must have blown it! A wizard from the prophecy school shouted loudly. Yolanda also thought of this immediately. But before he could speak, he heard Philip on the side saying mockingly, This is indoors. Where is the wind coming from? Even if there is no strong wind, the air is still flowing. No matter how subtle the impact is, it is an impact, Yolanda said with a smile on his neck. In short, he never believes in something like the rotation of the planet that is not magical at all. Masters, since Mr. Yolanda is suspicious, please turn this area into a vacuum, Lin suggested with a smile. This time it was August who took action. He was also very curious about such an interesting phenomenon of pendulum deflection. So he followed Lin's request and extracted all the elements in the entire disk without affecting the pendulum as much as possible. Separated, forming a vacuum field. Yolanda held his breath and stared at the disk intently, eager to see new changes in the trajectory of the iron ball. 10 seconds, 30 seconds. For one minute, the pendulum still moved firmly to the left and even the amplitude of each deflection was exactly the same as before. Soon the wooden bars corresponding to the two scales, and the 182 scale were also pushed to the ground. There must be no wind now, Philip said in a sinister tone. Yolanda's face turned green and red, and he opened his mouth but could not speak. He did not use magic, and there was no interference from the wind. Where did the power to deflect the pendulum come from? Is it possible that there really is a so-called geostrophic force? As time went by, more and more wooden bars fell down. In the seminar hall, 
the wizards who were originally sitting in their seats had gathered around and blocked the high platform with water. Just to observe this at close range. Fantastic experiment. This is actually true. The continent beneath our feet is moving. It is really moving. A witch screamed loudly. It's incredible. This is simply a miracle in the history of magic. We actually live on a constantly rotating planet. Raphael also said with emotion. Chapter 141 Raphael. My brain is shaking. Under the gaze of thousands of pairs of eyes. The swinging iron ball slowly knocked down the wooden bar representing the 15th scale. The traces drawn out by the pendulum on the sand table are like slender petals. Revealing an ultimate sense of beauty. This is the engraved line that represents magical truth. Only then did Lin point to the sand table. Look at Yolanda. And said teasingly. I think that's clear enough. Isn't it? Mr. Yolanda? This is the evidence you are looking for. The rotation of the planet is not without impact. But this force must be amplified by a pendulum before it can be displayed intuitively in front of you and me. Yolanda sat on the ground with a pale face. Looking at the iron ball that was still swinging without saying a word. A wizard from the prophecy school beside him was shouting hysterically. This is impossible. This is impossible. You must have cast a spell on the pendulum. As soon as these words came out, several great wizards on the field couldn't help but frown. And their faces were a little unhappy. Are they still unable to feel the magic fluctuations? Lenin looked at the wizards of the prophecy school, who were still unwilling to accept the facts. Shook his head. And said something. The materials I used are not difficult to obtain. Aren't they? Anyone can perfectly replicate this experiment under the same conditions. The truth is just there, and will not be transferred by anyone's will. The reason why this world has day and night is due to the rotation of the planet. And the changes in the four seasons are related to the movement of the direct point of the sun. Lenin stretched out his hand, and used several water masses to simulate the orbital motion of celestial bodies. Using the most concise words, he gave everyone a unique astronomy lesson. The wizards present listened with fascination. No theory in the past could explain the changes of day and night. The four seasons, and the movement of the stars so clearly. The mysterious veil of the world seems to have been suddenly lifted from a corner. Although what is revealed is only the tip of the iceberg. It is enough to make people feel trembling. Until Lin finished speaking, the sound of needles could still be heard in the seminar hall. And everyone was immersed in thinking about the laws of planetary operation. The silent silence lasted for several minutes. As more and more people woke up, thunderous applause suddenly erupted in the seminar hall. Some people even took off their hats and bowed to Lin in. And some people shouted loudly to vent their excitement. What a wonderful and irrefutable theory! August also applauded and said in an appreciative tone. The exquisite and regular starry scene displayed by Lin and made Raphael's brain tremble. And countless inspirations came to his mind. If the seminar hadn't ended yet, he would have been impatient to go back. My inspiration turned into sculpture. I knew you could do it. Professor Lin. Philip excitedly stepped forward and hugged Lin. He had already seen the silver moon medal waving to them. Lydia. Alok and others looked at Lin in with admiration and admiration in their eyes. Pierce even fantasized about when he could be like Professor Lin in and explain his research under the spotlight. The magic theory that came out received a lot of applause from the audience. But their excitement was soon shattered as Lin quickly spoke up. Lydia! Johnny! Alok and Pears! Why don't you record the rules of the pendulum's motion and the time after each tick? You should also record the length of the wire rope, the weight and circumference of the pendulum. Make it clear. Draw its motion curve. And calculate various data. This is your homework today. Aw? Pears who was originally immersed in fantasy, was immediately brought back to reality, and his face suddenly drooped. Why is there such a thing as homework in Green Reel? Have you all written it down? Alok quickly looked at the two witches on the side. Lydia shook her head. She just stared at the pendulum swing trajectory, her head feeling a little dizzy. I have recorded it. The length of the wire rope is 60 meters. The weight of the pendulum is 30 kilograms. The time for each deflection of one scale is 5 minutes and 3 seconds. And the period of the swing is. Johnny recorded himself the data has exploded. Alok and others looked at Joni and were so moved that they almost cried. You are simply our savior. Compared to Lin In, who was attracting all the attention and became the absolute focus of the meeting. All the wizards of the prophecy school had a look of death on their faces. They had spent more than a hundred years and countless energy observing the movement of the stars. The rules paint a perfect star map. As a result, someone now told them that this star map was actually wrong. And their efforts were in vain. There was not a continent under their feet, but a rotating ball. Under such a huge blow, 
the wizards of the prophecy school almost collapsed. And for a while, it seemed as if the whole world was about to collapse. Cheer up! We haven't lost yet. This pendulum experiment just proves that there is a strange force affecting the movement of the iron ball. A witch from the prophecy school stood up and spoke firmly. But apart from the geostrophic deflection force, what else can affect the movement trajectory of the pendulum? Yolanda was almost desperate. After all, such a big pendulum was placed there. And Lin did not exert any influence on it. Of magic. Have you all forgotten? Master Harov is studying a theory of gravity. Using the star data we gave. If there is any force that can affect it, then I guess it must be gravity. The witch shouted loudly said. Hearing this, Yolanda and other wizards from the prophecy school were immediately cheered up and immediately regained some confidence. Yes, if their research is wrong. How could the legendary wizard Harab discover the secret of gravity from the data of these stars? Could it be that even the great legendary wizard couldn't see these errors and omissions? Yolanda is even more aware that Lord Harab's research has reached the most critical moment. It is a great theory that is enough to change the entire magic theory of the wizarding land. After all, this involves the mystery of space and time magic. Just as Yolanda and others were thinking about it, the door to the magic seminar was suddenly opened. No. Open is not quite appropriate to describe it. In order to ensure that the seminar process is not disturbed, the door has been locked for a long time. And now the doors on both sides have fallen to the ground with a loud bang. Chapter 142 It seems that you are no longer suitable to host the next seminar. The sudden violent knock on the door immediately attracted the attention of all the wizards present. Raphael was even more annoyed. Who was so bold and dared to barge into the seminar so rudely? Could it be that the wizards of the Doomsday sect are going crazy and trying to disrupt this academic seminar? Raphael looked at the door angrily. But he saw a figure that surprised him. A wizard with messy hair came in. The legendary wizard Harav. Raphael's anger was extinguished immediately. He couldn't control this adult. Those prophecy schools gathered around him as if they had seen a savior. And a witch even shouted excitedly. Lord Harav, that Lin in from outside the wizarding land just now questioned the star map data that we spent hundreds of years researching. This is even more questioning your theory of gravity. However, Harab didn't bother to listen to what they were saying. He only heard the word, Lin, and shouted impatiently. Where are the others? Where is Lin? He is on the high platform now. It is the young wizard with brown hair, the witch said loudly. Harab pulled the witch blocking the way aside. And the wizards, who had gathered in front of the high platform, quickly retreated. Seeing Harab looking for Lin in such a hurry, and with a group of wizards from the prophecy school following behind him. Several of the great wizards on the scene looked vaguely uneasy. Could this legendary wizard really be looking for trouble? Raphael was the first to stand up, stopped in front of Harav with a headache, and spoke in a tactful tone. Lord Harav, Mr. Len has just proposed a very important new theory that is related to the entire theoretical system of the wizarding land. We are considering submitting a nomination to the Congress for the Order of the Silver Moon. Raphael did not directly stop him but pointed out the Silver Moon Medal. This was a big event that could alarm several other speakers and made Harav stay calm. Even if there are any conflicts, they can be resolved through words. Silver Moon? Harav paused for a moment. He did not listen to the previous seminar. He immediately thought that what Lin In was explaining was the law of gravity. He looked at the several great wizards with a little dissatisfaction on their faces. Look, the law of universal gravitation will become the foundation theory of all space magic in the future. This is definitely a highlight in the history of magic. In the end, there was only one silver moon medal. It would not be too much to just give him the corona medal. Raphael and others couldn't even see this. He highly doubted that these people were no longer suitable to host the next seminar. You can directly submit the nomination for the Order of the Sun to the Parliament. Just in my name, Harav said without hesitation. Ah? Raphael and others almost wondered if they had heard wrongly. The wizards of the prophecy school, who had just raised some hope, were dumbfounded. What exactly is going on? Isn't Lord Harav here to rectify the name of their prophecy school? Why did he suddenly propose to issue the Corona Medal to the other party? Is there something wrong? Even Philip felt a little unbelievable. Even if Lynn painted a picture of the movement of stars, he wouldn't directly award the highest academic award. Right? Directly to the Corona Medal? Is this a bit too exaggerated? You must know that in the past hundreds of years, only three people in the entire wizarding land have received such an honor and without exception, they are all legendary wizards. After Harris said casually, he looked at Lin, the only young man with brown hair on the field, and asked anxiously, Tell me quickly, what does the formula on the invitation mean? What is M? 
And what is G? The moment Lin saw Harris suddenly barging in, he guessed that the other party must have read his letter. So it was not surprising that Harris suddenly asked and responded freely. The two M's in the formula refer to the masses of the two objects. G is the gravitational constant, and R refers to the distance between the two objects. To put it simply, it is the gravitational constant multiplied by the product of the masses of the two objects divided by the square of their distance. Lin said concisely and clearly, Is it that simple? Harib muttered to himself. He had studied the problem of gravity for several years and looked up a lot of data. But now the other party summarized it in one sentence and a formula. The complexity lies in its deduction process. Many truths are often simple. Clear and clear. Lin responded casually. Well said. The truth should be simple and everyone can understand it. Harib nodded in agreement. Master Harib, what is that formula you are talking about? Is it related to gravity? Raphael who had been listening for a while, couldn't help but interrupt. The wizards present were also waiting for Harav's answer. They had vaguely noticed that the legendary wizard had previously said that he would issue the Corona Medal to Lin. I'm afraid it was not just because he painted a picture of the stars. Yes, I have studied the laws of star movement for more than 10 years in order to explore the mystery of gravity. But I didn't expect that someone had already given the answer first, Harav said with emotion. It is not a secret in Green Real City that Harav is studying gravity. Many people are waiting for this legendary wizard to construct a spell model for force field magic. This can be said to be the most exciting and anticipated thing in recent years. Once successful, the conditions for the use of this type of magic can be greatly reduced, and more powerful space magic may be developed, creating another mainstream magic discipline. But Harav is now asking Lin for advice on gravity. Could it be that a three-ring wizard has a more profound research on gravity than Harav? The legendary wizard? There was a ridiculous feeling in everyone's heart. Harib didn't care about this. After pondering for a while, he asked another key question. I can understand mass and distance. But what is this gravitational constant? Unfortunately, I don't know. Lord Harib. Lin shook his head and said bluntly. If it was the Earth's data, he could tell it casually. After all, there was a lot of information in G now. But if it was this alien planet, he didn't dare to be 100% sure. He could only calculate the data by weighing a kilogram of iron balls and infer that the gravitational constant should be very close to the Earth. However, without rigorous experiments, Lin was not prepared to speak rashly. Lin's answer was obviously beyond Harav's expectations, and also confused all the wizards present. You even have the formulas, and you talk clearly and logically. But when you ask about the data, you don't know anything about it. Could it be that they are all made up? Chapter 143 Lin, my apprentice can calculate the circumference of the planet with his feet. Seeing that Lin In was, speechless, under Harav's questioning. She could only excuse herself by saying she didn't know. The wizards of the prophecy school, who were originally ashen faced, suddenly became frightened again. Yolanda asked as if he had found some breakthrough. Mr. Lin, if I'm not mistaken, you're not a great wizard yet, so you can't use force field magic. Right. Yolanda's question was very fatal. And many wizards, who supported Lin immediately discovered a serious problem since the other party is not a great wizard and does not even know force field magic. How did he figure out this gravity formula? The formula of universal gravitation was calculated by me based on the three laws of star movement proposed by the legendary wizard Kepler, and then using arcane mathematics. Lin replied with a calm expression, and repeated the three laws. Last night, he used this method to confirm that the law of universal gravitation still applies in this other world. So he acted very calmly when faced with Yolanda's inquiry. Calculation? How to calculate? Another witch from the prophecy school jumped out immediately. According to you, if you want to calculate the universal gravitation, you need to know the so-called gravitational constant, the distance between two stars, and their mass. A star is extremely huge, tens of millions of times larger than the largest Mount Kogel in the Wizarding Land, and the distance between them is so far away that it is unimaginable. How to measure this? Is it possible to measure it with a ruler? Or is it possible to put the continent under our feet on a scale and weigh it? If that's the case, then what should be placed on the other side of the scale? Is it another star? The witch said with a sneer. In the discussion hall, thousands of wizards started a heated discussion because the picture of star movement that Lin showed them before was too perfect. Many people were still willing to believe that the gravity formula proposed by Lin was true. But no matter how hard they thought, they could not think of any way to calculate the weight and distance of these stars. Raphael looked at Lin and sighed. He suspected that this formula of universal gravitation was probably a purely theoretical theory 
that had not been verified. Originally, this was nothing. After all, there were many purely theoretical theories, and this one was not lacking. However, it attracted Lord Hera's attention, and he even paid attention to it to the point of issuing the Corona Medal. If this theory turns out to be wrong, then no matter how much praise Lin received before, the fall will be just as tragic. Yolanda and others let out a sigh of relief. They had reason to believe that the other party's so-called formula of universal gravity was simply made up. Lin looked at these people with eyes full of pity, as if looking at a fool. Don't think this process is too difficult. Ladies and gentlemen, as long as you use some basic mathematical knowledge, even a few of my apprentices can calculate the mass of a star and the distance between them. Lin In said in a calm tone, but in the eyes of the wizards of the prophecy school, this was just nonsense. If Lin In had a way to calculate it himself, they might still believe it. But if he said that it was even possible a wizard apprentice can calculate the data of the stars, which can only be described as outrageous. The eyes of thousands of wizards immediately turned to Johnny, Lydia, Alok and Pierce. I'm not. I don't. I can't figure it out. Alok was about to cry now. He had long discovered that Professor Lin might have had some unrealistic illusions about their abilities. In fact, they are really not that awesome. How could I possibly calculate such huge stars? How heavy they were? And how far apart they were from each other? Lin In seemed not to see the resentful looks from Alok and others, and continued to speak. If you want to measure the distance between stars, you need to first find a reference object in the vast universe. And the best reference object is the planet under our feet. As long as you know its data, everything will become easier. Yolanda sneered. He wanted to see how the other party calculated the various data of the continent under his feet. Lenin looked at Alok and the others, and suddenly asked, What should I do if I want to know the circumference of a circle? You can multiply the diameter by the circumference. Professor? Lydia shouted loudly, and she still remembered this very clearly. What if we don't know the diameter data? Lynn asked again. Lydia's little face froze immediately. Alok and Pierce thought hard for a while, and finally Johnny pointed to the sand table on the high platform and responded. A circle has 360 scales, and each scale is equal, so I can also determine its circumference by measuring the length of each scale segment. That's very well said. Johnny, you have been doing very well in the Mathematical Olympiad. Lin laughed and then continued. The planet under our feet also happens to be a circle. Can't we just use the same method to calculate it? As soon as these words came out, the wizards in the hall were stunned for a moment, as if this was the case. The planet under our feet is extremely huge. How should we judge the angle and distance? Hera frowned. He had flown to an altitude of hundreds of thousands of meters. With the help of magic sight, he could see slightly curvature cannot be artificially divided into equal scales, like the sand table under your feet. Lin In did not answer directly. He walked to the sand table and asked, I heard that every year in mid-July, under the sunlight at noon, the shadow of the Corona Tower will overlap with the tower body. Is this true? Not bad. Raphael on the side nodded. Then I believe you have not forgotten that when I introduced the changes of the four seasons, I mentioned that the direct sunlight point and the Corona Tower have no shadow. It is precisely because at noon in mid-July, we are in the direct sunlight. Point. Let's make it the zero scale. Lennon walked to the sand table, took a wooden stick, and placed it on the place representing the zero scale in the sand table, and then put down the second stick a little further away. A wooden stick. Then we only need to use magic to erect a towering pillar as far away from the corona tower as possible, and measure the length of the pillar and the shadow respectively. Can't we calculate the angle between the center of the earth? Use the tall pillar as the base point, and use the sunlight as the ruler. Genius. What a genius idea, Hera said excitedly. In this way, the pillar is like a straight line on an arc, and the shadow is the other side of the right angle. This is a simple problem of finding the vertex angle of a right triangle. Raphael and others looked at the two wooden roots placed on the sand table, and couldn't help but take a breath. How could this be done? Chapter 144 Enter the Sika's Empire and Overthrow the Holy See Alok, it shouldn't be difficult for you to calculate the data of the planet under your feet now. Right. Lin In looked at the wizard apprentices and asked with a smile. Alok and others nodded with great excitement. Only then did they realize that what the professor said when he gave the first class was not bragging. It is true that everything can be calculated in the mathematical Olympiad. Once you know the circumference of the planet, it is easy to calculate the radius, area, and even volume. The wizards in the seminar could not restrain their excitement. There were only 10 days left until mid July. In other words, 
ten days later. This continent will be under our feet. No. It should be said that the entire planet will be displayed in front of them. I really don't know how your head is so long that you can think of such a strange method, Raphael said with emotion. Before Lin arrived, although there was no systematic Olympian mathematics in the wizarding land, most wizards still knew the calculation methods of basic geometric figures. But they never thought that they could actually calculate using such simple calculation methods. The circumference of the planet beneath your feet. I'm afraid this is genius. Facing the praise from everyone. Lin acted very calmly. After all, this method was not thought up by himself. It was the idea of the former, father of geography, Eratosthenes. And it was only based on the land of wizards. Things have changed a bit. When searching for historical information in his previous life, Lin In was also surprised by the other party's genius thinking. This was simply using basic methods to solve the most complex problems. Are there any requirements for where to place this pillar? Harav couldn't wait to verify this conjecture. If it weren't for the fact that there were still 10 days until mid-July, he would have wanted to take action now. The ground should be as flat as possible. And it must be at least 500 kilometers away from Green Reel. In order to make the data more accurate, it is best to be more than 1,000 kilometers away, Lin said thoughtfully. After all, the continent under our feet is too big. One scale may be tens or hundreds of kilometers. It is better to be as far away as possible. The pillars must be as high as possible, so that the shadows are obvious enough. So far, Hera's brows couldn't help but frown. As a result, it may be impossible to verify it in the wizard's land. There is a place that is very suitable. I heard that there is a tower hundreds of meters high outside the fog. This is a ready-made pillar, August suddenly suggested. The wizards present were a little surprised, guessing what August was talking about. Philip on the side suddenly seemed to have thought of something, and suddenly said in shock, Master August, are you talking about the Sky Tower in the Holy City? Although he had never reached the Sika's empire, he had heard from Heron Ram and the sailors who traveled back and forth between the two places about some novel deeds outside the mist, including the Sky Tower. It is rumored that it is the place where the Creator of Life, the Lord of the Stars, and the Goddess of the Moon, Ella, manifested. And it is a holy place in the hearts of all believers. Philip naturally sneered at this so-called god. But he also knew the power the Holy See had. If they went to the Holy City to measure the shadow length of the Sky Tower, it would no longer be described as death. If you can't get through the gate, you will be caught and burned to death. However, there are not many people as sensible as Philip. And many young wizards are even clamoring to go directly to the Holy City. In their view, today's wizarding land is no longer the refuge of the exiled wizards. After hundreds of years of development, they have created countless novel magics and established a wizard promotion system and a magic theory system, which are more powerful than imagined. The picture of stars that Lin and told them made all the wizards realize that the world is so big, but they are trapped in this small wizarding land. But Harav quickly poured cold water on him. We only have ten days. Even if we set out now, we may not be able to reach the sky tower at the fastest speed. And there is no need to make it so troublesome. We can directly use magic to create a floating island on the sea and erect an icicle on it. The calculated data will be the most accurate. The side of the wizarding land facing the Sika's empire is the Sea of Mist. But this does not mean that the entire island is wrapped in mist. In fact, the sea behind it is passable. It's just that this sea is too wide. A great wizard once wanted to see what was on the other side of the sea. After flying for a month, he only found some uninhabited islands and ferocious sea beasts. And he almost couldn't find his way back. Under Herod's decision, public opinion did not evolve to the point of charging into the Sika's empire and overthrowing the Holy See. Although Herod's floating island plan seemed to some wizards to be afraid of the cowardly approach of the Holy See, they did not dare to speak out against it. The focus of the discussion soon turned to how to determine the Corona Tower and Pillars. Distance. A witch quickly suggested that they could find a very long rope, measure the length, and use it as a link unit, and then leave a trace on the ground as a mark for each distance of the rope. In the end, as long as just count how many markers there are. But this proposal was rejected soon because it was too troublesome. Not to mention that the terrain of the wizarding land was undulating and there would be large errors. After a heated discussion, the more convenient methods of distance measurement by horse-drawn carriage and ship quickly gained the upper hand. How about using an airship? Lydia raised her hands high and suggested. Raphael and others suddenly felt their eyes light up. He had just wanted to say this. But Lydia mentioned it first. Compared with the alchemy ship that will be disturbed by wind and waves, the airship suspended in the air is undoubtedly a better choice. Not only can it overcome all obstacles 
and achieve a true straight line. But after being blessed with windproof magic, the sailing speed is also very stable and not prone to fluctuations. If sailing at full speed, the airship can sail 15 kilometers per hour. So sailing at full speed in one day is 360 kilometers. It is still very accurate to judge the distance based on this. Lin In did not participate in the discussion. He turned to look at the wizards of the prophecy school and asked with a smile, Mr. Yolanda, do you have any questions now? Yolanda didn't reply in a daze, and his mind was filled with Lin and's method of measuring the circumference of a circle by dividing it into equal parts. Although the accurate result has not yet been obtained, he understands that the prophecy school has lost this time, and it is lost completely. Chapter 145 Reference Objects and Pi Your Excellency Lin In, you have one. It seems that all our efforts over the years have been in vain. Yolanda said in despair after a long time before he realized what was going on. These words seemed to take away the little energy left in Yolanda's body, and his whole person seemed to have aged several years in an instant. The rest of the wizards of the prophecy school also looked like they were distracted. Their star map is wrong, and the hundreds of years of efforts of the entire prophecy school have become a complete joke. There is no need to be so presumptuous. Mr. Yolanda, in a sense, your star map is still very accurate. Lin shook his head and said with relief. He was able to confirm that the law of universal gravitation was still applicable in other worlds, using the laws of star movement that the prophecy school had spent hundreds of years observing. Lin In was too embarrassed to attack these wizards, who longed for the stars. So you finally admit that all this is fabricated? A witch from the prophecy school said excitedly. Lin In glanced at her, speechless. When did he say this? But before he could say anything, Yolanda stopped several colleagues who were still trying to continue arguing, and waited for Lin's answer with confused expressions. Lin ignored the wizards of the prophecy school, who had suffered a huge blow, and were already somewhat delirious. He looked at Yolanda, and continued to speak. Remember the carriage problem I told you? If the carriage is used as a reference, the person inside is stationary. But if the starting point is used as the basis, then he is indeed moving. In my opinion, both statements are correct. To put it bluntly, geocentric theory and heliocentric theory have different reference objects. Of course, in comparison, the heliocentric theory is more suitable for solving some practical problems. After all, the essence of the formation of a galaxy's orbit is the gravity of stars. So the proposal of the heliocentric theory is indeed a huge progress. As for whether these people can understand it or not, that is none of his business. Amid everyone's discussion, the magic seminar that lasted all morning came to an end quickly. But the topics about planets, stellar orbits, and airship distance measurement remained unabated. It wasn't until some wizards from the top schools walked out of the seminar that they suddenly remembered that they were attending this seminar to demonstrate the new magic and new doctrines they had developed. As a result, they didn't say a word, and the entire seminar became Lin's one-man show. However, under such a situation, I am afraid that not many people will care about what novel magic they have developed. Everyone is guessing how long and how big the planet under their feet is. Philip was so excited that he couldn't control himself. Before attending the seminar, he was a little worried that Lin would not be able to cope with the difficulties of the wizards of the prophecy school. Unexpectedly, Lin refuted these people completely in just a few words and used an exquisite experiment. He demonstrated the rotation of the planet and was even nominated for the Corona Medal. This is the highest award in magic academics. He never thought that the Ayata school would one day receive a glorious Corona Medal. In the past, it was the patent of legendary wizards. Philip considered using magic communication to call Kevin. Orlando and others over to participate in the investiture ceremony for a while. It would definitely be the most glorious day for the Ayata school. Compared to Philip, who was still immersed in joy, Lin was now surrounded by a group of wizards who were eager for knowledge. After getting the method to measure the circumference of the planet, everyone was very curious about the mass of the huge star. How to calculate? Lin In, who was tired of being asked, could only evade it by saying that he needed to wait until the radius and gravitational constant of the planet were calculated before further calculations could be done. After finally sending these curious babies away, Lin turned to look at the legendary wizard Harav who had not yet left, and asked, Master Harav, do you have anything else to ask? I still have a few doubts, and I hope you can give me some advice. Harav's posture was very low, and he didn't look arrogant just because Lin was just a three-ring wizard. In fact, this problem has been bothering him for a whole year. Please ask, as long as it's a question I can answer. Lin nodded. I have read the three laws of stars you wrote. 
But why can I be so sure that the orbit of a star must be an ellipse? Harab asked very puzzled. According to my research on gravity, it is like a water wave. It uses itself as the base point and spreads around to form an orbit. It should also be a perfect circle. About this point, I have discussed this with some scholars within the Arcane Society and put forward a lot of conjectures. But in summary, it can be summarized into two points. Lin En responded. Which two points? Harab asked quickly. First, there is no perfect circle, Lin said freely. After precise mathematical calculations, pi is an irrational number. So the perfect circle in our imagination may not exist in reality. That's not necessarily true. Right. Hera frowned. The wizards from the Alchemy Society were also studying the curvature of circles. Although they came to similar conclusions. In his opinion, everything in the world must be there is a pattern. But they haven't found the pattern yet. It's a pity that this is the case. I heard that an adult from the Arcane Society spent decades calculating pi to 200 billion digits after the decimal point. The figures still have no structure and can be deduced infinitely. Go down. Lin shrugged and said directly. 200 trillion bits? Harav was a little confused by this terrifying number. He doubted that Lin told him the same thing at all. Or that he heard it wrong. He remembered that the Alchemy Association had already deduced the number of pi. So it should be. Ninth place? I don't remember much. Probably only the first 200. Lin and raised his hand and used magic power to manifest the numbers. 3.1415926535897932 Looking at the series of complex and confusing numbers in front of him, Hera's face couldn't help but twitch. The first nine numbers were almost the same as the values deduced by the Alchemy Association. He had to admit that what Lin In said was probably true. Of. But how free does the other party have to be able to deduce the value to 200 billion digits? At the same time, Harav also admired the other party for decades of working hard on the unsolvable pie. Just to get a final answer, Harav is also becoming more and more interested in the arcane society mentioned in the invitation letter. It must be a gathering place for top academic researchers. Chapter 146 The Omniscient I and the Invitation from the Secret Magic Society Harav thought for a long time before reluctantly accepting the fact that a perfect circle did not exist, and then continued to ask. I understand the first point you said, but what about the second point? The second point is the interference of the gravity of other planets. Even if the orbit of the planet under our feet approaches a perfect circle at the beginning, under the interference of the gravity of other stars, after tens of millions of evolutions, a certain deviation will inevitably occur. Move, Lin explained. That's it. Harris suddenly realized that gravity exists among all things and will inevitably interfere with each other. Even if the magnitude of this interference is small, it will be amplified under the action of time measured on the scale of millions of years, enough to affect the orbits of stars. There is also a third impact, which Lin did not mention. That is, the star itself is not stationary. It is also moving around the center of the galaxy. So interference is inevitable. However, this is probably beyond the understanding of these wizards. They have not even figured out the rotation of the planet. And they know nothing about the larger picture of the universe. I have another question, which is that the first law says that a star is at a certain focus of an ellipse. What is this focus? Harav continued to ask. I'm afraid it's not convenient to explain directly. Why don't you just draw an oval and you'll know? Lenin said with a smile. Harav stretched out his hand without hesitation. Using his right index finger as a pen and magic power as ink, he drew an ellipse in the void and then looked at Lin, waiting for his answer. Damn, drawing an ellipse with freehand is so standard. The corner of Lin's mouth twitched. He finally understood why the technology tree in the wizard's land was so messy because many instruments were not used by wizards at all, and they would probably only consider which one when encountering a problem. It is more convenient to solve it with magic. Seeing this, Lin In, who couldn't laugh or cry, could only turn his head and look at the apprentices. Alok, you should paint it! Alok nodded excitedly. He could still draw an oval. Not to mention that this was an opportunity to show his face in front of the legendary wizard. Alok ran all the way and quickly found two small wooden sticks and a string and then put the string was put on two wooden sticks that were inserted into the ground. Using this as a fulcrum, he used the quill to hold the string and draw a circle around the two small wooden sticks. An oval immediately appeared in front of Harav. The positions of these two wooden sticks are the focus of this ellipse. What's special about them is that the sum of the distances from any point drawn on the arc to the two focus points is the same. Some scholars within the Arcane Society 
They even believe that a perfect circle is actually an ellipse with two foci exactly at the same position. With the help of the process of drawing a circle, Lin explained to Harab the meaning of ellipse and the derivation process of Kepler's three laws. Harab was fascinated by what he heard. And in the end, he couldn't help but marvel. Wonderful! So wonderful! I didn't expect that the movement of stars could be reproduced so intuitively and clearly through the mathematical Olympiad. If you had stayed a little longer last night, I wouldn't have had to spend most of the day using the most primitive method to verify these three laws. Harab said with emotion. He spent a whole night working on it. The conclusion was now perfectly summarized by Lin in in a few short sentences and a few Olympiad formulas. Master Harav, Professor Lin wanted to visit you in person last night, but unfortunately, he was blocked from the door. Philip on the side said quickly, Is there such a thing? Harav was stunned for a moment, then turned to look at Lin. Miss Teresa thinks that your research has reached a critical stage, and I'm afraid you won't be able to find free time for this meeting. Lin shook his head and said, I told her that these laws and formulas should be helpful in your research. But this lady seems to have some small prejudices against me. Harris' face immediately turned ugly. This was not how Teresa explained to him when they were in the manor. After Len and pointed out the other party's problem, he continued to accuse Teresa of being offensive. A witch who couldn't see the situation clearly was not worthy of his deliberate targeting. One or two sentences were enough. Before coming to the wizard's land, an adult from the Arcane Society entrusted me to give this ring to a very wise and learned man to discuss the mysteries of the universe. Time and space together at the next gathering. The time should be around 12 o'clock tonight. Lennon said as he took out a beautifully styled ring. That was the ring of the faceless one that he had recast. But compared to before, the shape of the ring had changed a lot. The most obvious one was the blooming flower of thorns on the ring. It became a very peculiar geometric pattern. The outer ring is a circular clock, and the inside is a pyramid-like pattern. In the center of the pyramid is a striking. Strange eye made of geometric patterns. That is the all-seeing eye. Although he had an unpleasant quarrel with his apprentice Teresa in front of the manor, Hera was able to put down his dignity without any scruples and ask him, the three-ring wizard, various questions. After thinking about it, Lin still decided he handed over the only signal transmitter he had made. Hera reached out solemnly to take it. After carefully examining the alchemical patterns on the ring, he quickly concluded that the function of this thing was to project his own magic power to a certain place. This method is not very novel. But Harav is still very concerned about his first contact with the Arcane Society. In his opinion, Lin was like a representative sent by the Arcane Society to contact the Wizarding Land. And this gathering should be a formal contact between the top leaders of both parties to talk about cooperation or exchange some more esoteric matters. Magical question. After getting the ring, Harab didn't stay long and quickly left. He had to go back and think carefully about what knowledge could be used as a bargaining chip. After Harab left, Lin asked in his mind, 071. Are you sure the magic field is safe enough? There's no chance of it being taken away again. Right? Lin N has not forgotten that this thing was taken from Halram. Normally, he is not worried. After all, Jinao's computing power is very strong but he is not so worried when facing a legendary wizard. Guarantee. The original form of magic transmission and reception was too simple and has been replaced by quantum encryption. Theoretically, there is no possibility of being cracked. Lin and nodded with relief. Chapter 147 Is the Corona Metal Important to Me? Do you really think that the continent beneath our feet is a planet and it's still spinning? That's incredible. Didn't Mr. Lin improve it through experiments just now? The pendulum that keeps deflecting without external force is the best evidence. Idiot! The pendulum has always been swinging back and forth in a straight line. This means that it is not the pendulum that is rotating at all, but the continent under our feet. Teresa, who rushed to the seminar venue, perfectly missed the end of the seminar and could only see the wizards walking out of the venue in an orderly manner. Everyone couldn't hide their excitement on their faces, and they kept discussing Lynn's pendulum experiment. On the way here, Teresa had heard Lin's name no less than 30 times, which made her feel vaguely uneasy. Cass, where is Mr. Harav? Teresa stopped a familiar wizard and asked eagerly. Master Harav just left with Mr. Lin. Cass responded. Teresa's expression suddenly changed. She realized that she was still late and hurriedly asked what happened at the seminar. It's a pity that you didn't come to today's seminar. Didn't you see that Mr. Lin and completely refuted the wizards of the entire prophecy school? Cass happily told all the interesting things that happened at the seminar and did not notice that Teresa's face was getting more and more ugly. You mean? Teacher, 
He is planning to award the Linda Corona medal? Teresa couldn't believe her ears. And a strong sense of jealousy arose in her heart. That is the highest award in the magical academic world. How could he duh? A three-ring wizard. Achieve such a high level of achievement? Yes. Mr. Lin Un's research on stars and gravity is probably ahead of everyone. I don't know which disciple of an adult in the secret magic society has such a high attainment in the theoretical research of magic academics. Cass said with emotion. Although the other party was only an official wizard. He was more knowledgeable than many great wizards. Teresa's head was buzzing. She originally thought that Lin Un's research could at most provide some help to the teacher's theories. But this is not the case in Cass's description. It is more like the other party has organized and summarized the theory of gravity one step ahead of time. And it is so complete that even the teacher has to ask the other party about the gravity of stars. But? How can this be? This is a topic that the teacher spent several years but failed to research. The final answer to the stars and the universe. After bidding farewell to Cass, Teresa returned to the manor in despair. Harab has also returned a long time ago and is currently thinking about what to say to open the evening gathering so as not to lose the momentum of the wizard's land. Teacher! Teresa shouted in a low voice, racking her brains to think of how to keep her current position. Harab came back to his senses, looked at Teresa, and spoke coldly. You don't have to call me that from now on! Teresa! Because of the other party's arrogance and prejudice, he almost missed the opportunity to perfect the theory of gravity, knowing that he was not the only legendary wizard in the council. Lin could have found another person to explain the three laws of star orbits and the formula of universal gravitation. Even if these theories will be published in the end, I am afraid they will have nothing to do with me. And there is a high probability that they will be laughed at by colleagues. What is more important is the opportunity to communicate with the legendary wizards of the arcane society and discuss magic academics. It will be left to others. Teacher, please give me another chance. Teresa knelt down on the spot in fear and cried with tears. It was Lan En who took away the honor that should have belonged to you. Teacher, you should have studied the law of free fall first. Corona Medal. Yes, there is also the Corona Medal. You have been studying the theory of gravity for several years. And you will be able to publish these results soon. But that Lin suddenly shows up again. The more Teresa spoke, the more excited she became. In addition to justifying her behavior of making things difficult for Lin, she was also somewhat sincere. Last night, she really felt that the other party wanted to join the theory of gravity with one or two novel ideas. Research and share this glory. Do you think the Corona Medal is important to me? Harib shook his head. Teresa stayed on the spot, with tears still hanging on her face, not quite understanding what Harib meant. That is indeed the highest honor in the land of wizards. But the fundamental purpose of the Parliament's establishment of these awards is to encourage wizards to explore new fields, make their research magical theories available to the public and promote academic exchanges in the entire magical world. Harav was indifferent. Said, I think you may have forgotten something. Teresa, for wizards, the so-called glory, money, and status are just derivatives of power. But only knowledge is the source of power. Suppressing academic speech that is not conducive to oneself in order to gain glory is simply to sacrifice the fundamentals. Having said this, Harav couldn't help but sigh. Because in the land of wizards, this kind of thing is not uncommon. Do you know why I was willing to accept you a year ago? Harav suddenly asked. Teresa hesitated for a while before speaking. It was because of an academic paper. Discussing the similarities and differences between magnetism and gravity. Harav recited the title of the paper in full. Then shook his head and continued. I have to say that the article was very exciting. Even though you couldn't use force field magic. You came up with many innovative ideas based on the information in the magic library. That's why I'm willing to give you a chance. As my disciple, you can easily seek help from those great wizards and mobilize enough resources to verify these theories. But what about now? A full year has passed. How much research have you completed? Harav he asked questioningly. Teresa's face was full of shame, and she was speechless. As a result, you wasted all your time and energy on attending banquets and listening to flattery. Harav's words were very stern. He threw down a piece of parchment and said decisively, you are no longer suitable to be my disciple. I will transfer Coral to take over your job. Teresa sat limply on the ground. She understood that from today on. All the glory and status would be far away from her. Those wizards who had flattered and flattered her before knew the news. The humiliation was returned twice as much. Teresa turned to the parchment with empty eyes. What Harab dropped was the magic paper she submitted a year ago and was appreciated by the other party. 
but the difference was that there were many more annotations on it. It became the only thing she could take away. Chapter 148 The First Meeting with the Arcane Society Harav watched Teresa leave in despair, and couldn't help but shook his head. He had good intentions in recruiting the other party as his apprentice. But he didn't expect that it only aroused Teresa's vanity. Harav only hoped that the other party could regain his original intention after losing all his current glory. Otherwise another good academic prospect would perish. Come out, Aurora. Your polarizing magic can't fool me. Harav suddenly turned his head and looked not far away, frowning and said. After the words fell, a figure appeared out of thin air in the empty space. It was a witch who looked about 26 or 17 years old. She was wearing a bright red dress and a pointed hat. Her long and curled eyelashes were slightly trembling. After being spotted by Harif, she didn't look panicked. A charming smile formed on the corner of her mouth. I'm curious, what went wrong this time? The witch named Aurora casually pulled out a chair, sat down, tapped her cheek with her index finger, and asked in confusion. You can make your own guess, Harif said angrily. It's okay to break into his mansion without permission. What makes him feel even more unbearable is that the other person is obviously older than him but he likes to pretend to be young, which is simply nerve-wracking. It's just that Harab didn't care too much about this trivial matter and asked directly, You should be present at this morning's seminar. Right. Yes. Massive stars rely on gravity to attract small-mass planets, thus forming a complete star orbit. I have to say that this theory is very interesting, Aurora said playfully, leaning back on the chair, legs overlapping. I'm surprised that since you were at the scene, you were able to resist coming out to refute this argument? Harav asked in surprise. Aurora is the founder of the entire prophecy school, and the star map circulated in the wizarding land was also written by her. According to the little wizard, the two star maps are just different reference objects. The prophecy school studies its own destiny trajectory, not the birth and death of stars. Of course, it must be based on its own observation position. So there is nothing wrong with my prophecy theory. A sly smile appeared on Aurora's face. Harav curled his lips. He had also heard of the other party's theory of star divination. The prophecy school believed that the outcome of all things was already predetermined from the moment it began. And information about fate could be found from the movement of the stars. Enlightenment. Harav naturally sneered at this statement. He never believed in the so-called fate and prophecy. Compared with the huge stars and the boundless universe. Wizards were as small as dust and not worth mentioning at all. Why should the movement of the stars be linked to the fate of the wizard? This is simply ridiculous. Have you received any new revelations after so many days? Harav asked sarcastically. The main star disappears, and the brown star hangs high in the sky. This is a sign of chaos and disaster, but it may also herald a new hope. Aurora's face straightened, and she spoke thoughtfully. I'm afraid we need to pay attention to those doomsday sect wizards in the near future. Are you talking about those idiots who burn out their brains by studying elements and believe that the world is heading towards the end? Harav said disdainfully. Just like this so-called prophecy, he did not think that those crazy wizards, how much trouble it can cause. Honestly, what exactly do you want to do after following me all the way here? Harav asked impatiently. Of course, I came here for the only ring that can communicate with the top leaders of the Arcane Society. Aurora was also very interested in this wizard organization. Didn't you hear it before? The Arcane Society is looking for a very wise and knowledgeable person to discuss the mysteries of the truth of the universe. It is undoubtedly the most suitable for him to give this ring to me. Choice, Harav said quite proudly. About this, I will consider relaying it to the other speakers and let them listen to your speech, Aurora said playfully. Harav's face couldn't help but twitch. Harav was extremely dissatisfied with Aurora's insistence on staying here and not leaving. However, as a legendary wizard, he did not have the ability to send her away. He simply stayed out of sight and out of mind. And in front of Aurora, he would portray the girl. The ring of the omniscient I was put on his finger. Calculating the time. It should be almost time. Harab glanced at the magic clock. When it was exactly 12 o'clock, he input magic power to activate the ring. As an inexplicable faint light came on, Harab immediately felt that his perspective was divided. And there was an extremely vast dark space in front of him. No. Harab soon realized that this was not pure darkness. There were countless bright stars shining in the boundless void and the most powerful light came from under his feet. Harav glanced down, and then his pupils suddenly dilated, because an unimaginably huge star was rushing towards him at a rapid speed. No matter how rich Harav's knowledge is, he is still shocked and speechless at this moment. What a vast existence it is. At this moment, he is like an ant looking up at a giant mountain. 
Any magic he masters is in such a huge volume. Everything seems insignificant. An indescribable feeling of fear and powerlessness rose from the inside out. Harav had not experienced this feeling for a long time after becoming a legendary wizard. Fortunately, before the star really got close, it changed its direction and passed directly in front of him. Its huge size covered everything he looked at. Harav even broke out in a cold sweat. But he quickly paid attention. It is moving forward in orbit to this star. It was a real picture of stars, with several huge planets of different colors surrounding a giant reddish-brown fireball, constantly rotating like stars over the moon, different from the planetary orbits that he simulated with magic balls in the manor. They were three-dimensional and dynamic, but the process seemed to be accelerated hundreds of times, so that he could intuitively see the planets continuing to cycle along an invisible orbit. Scene. Is this rotation and revolution? Harav immediately remembered the two concepts Lin mentioned at the seminar. But this was the first time he saw them so intuitively. The most eye-catching thing is undoubtedly the star in the center of the gravitational orbit. It is dazzling and dazzling. Even if it is far away, you can clearly feel the majestic heat emitted by that star. It looks like an extremely huge fireball. A ray of hope in a dark void. Harav looked at it in fascination. Among the studies of stars, what fascinates him the most is the sun. There should be nothing in the void. But where does its energy come from, and why can it last so long? Spread light. Chapter 149 Chapter 148 What I'm going to talk about is the Big Bang. Just when Harav was immersed in the majesty of the star and couldn't extricate himself, a sudden change occurred. The huge red star seemed to be getting bigger and brighter. The orbit of the planet seemed to be affected. And a strong sense of crisis instantly filled Harav's mind. However, the whole process was too fast. Before he could react, the huge star suddenly and rapidly moved inward after expanding to the limit. Collapse. The next moment, Endless light spread across the entire universe. And the star that was heading towards its end bloomed with its final light. It was the scene of a supernova explosion. The planets originally orbiting were torn to pieces in an instant. The intense electromagnetic radiation lit up the entire dark galaxy. Endless matter continuously spewed out from the interior of the star. Forming an extremely gorgeous picture. Harav couldn't recover from such a shocking sight for quite a while. Muttering to himself. What's this? This is a star that is dying! An old and deep voice rang out in the cosmic space that had returned to calm. Harav turned his head, and then realized that besides himself, there were four figures in this space. The one who spoke had a very strange hairstyle, and his white hair was scattered and messy. Like, the disorderly starry sky exudes a terrifying pressure all over the body. It was a terrifying feeling like facing a star directly. There seemed to be endless energy in the opponent's body, which was constantly spreading to the outside world. The person who spoke at this moment was naturally Lin In. But at this moment, he did not appear here in his original appearance. But temporarily borrowed the external image of Albert Einstein. The scene of the previous supernova explosion was naturally a show of force that he had specially prepared to establish a high-ranking image of the arcane society. Lin glanced at Harif, who was in a daze, and thought to himself, Would this stimulation be a little bit greater? Star? Destroy? Harif could not imagine that such a huge and majestic star could one day perish. There is nothing to be surprised about. Scenes like this happen all the time in the universe. What you see is just a reproduction of a certain supernova explosion. Lin said again. Projection. Harif carefully chewed every word Lin in said, looked around cautiously, and asked, Where is this place? The small universe of magic mimicry. Lin in explained, and then said again, Welcome to beyond time and space. Outside time and space. Harav repeated. Does it mean independent of time and space? Harav barely suppressed the shock in his heart. He did not forget that he came on behalf of the entire wizarding land. Harav was secretly annoyed by his previous rude performance. And immediately reminded himself silently in his heart that he must do it no matter what situation he encountered. Calm down. With the light brought by this supernova explosion. Let's start today's agenda. Under the control of Zinao. Another person said slightly stiffly. Hera's expression became very strange. Such a terrifying star explosion scene. In these people's mouths. Was as simple as turning on a magic lamp because it was too dark here. However, Harav quickly adjusted his mood and thought about the possible next topics. The so-called gravitational constant. Or the discussion of space and time magic. How should I deal with it? However, Lennon's next words once again exceeded his expectations. I think the entire universe was born from a big bang. Lin said in a solemn tone. Harab was stunned. Universe. Explode? He even wondered if he had heard wrongly. This thing could also explode? But before Harab could recover, 
Lin continued to speak. The beginning of the universe was probably a tiny point with extremely high temperature and extremely high density. I call it a singularity. Then at a certain moment for unknown reasons, it suddenly began to expand rapidly. At this moment, all the forces were unified. But as the universe expanded and the temperature further decreased, gravity was separated and became an independent entity. When Lenin explained the Big Bang Theory of the universe, Harab was confused. He couldn't understand a single word about quantum vacuum, inflation period, particle period, and matter period. For a moment, he even wondered if the other party was telling a ridiculous story about the universe. But after listening for a while, Harab soon discovered that the other party's narrative structure was very rigorous and did not seem to be imagined. He did not understand many nouns at all, but he could also detect that there was some kind of magic contained in them. Mystery? Harav thought that studying the movement of stars with his small body was already an extremely grand thing. But he did not expect that the legendary wizards of the Arcane Society were actually exploring the origin of the universe. What is your basis? The red shift phenomenon of galaxies? White Pigeon, who appeared here as Madame Curie, asked weakly according to someone's instructions. Although she didn't know what the red shift of galaxies was. What is it? Lenin glared at Baigu, asking her to speak louder not to be so nervous, and to answer freely. This is indeed one of the pieces of evidence. Immediately after, she now controlled the other two people and expounded a few preset words in a slightly stiff manner. Then the four figures present looked in the direction of Harab together, seeming to be waiting for the other party to propose some valuable information. Views? Lin En was very curious about how the legendary wizard would view the theory of the Big Bang. This theory was still very popular in previous lives but it is not necessarily the same in this other world. After all, the Big Bang Theory does not take into account the factor of magic. There are definitely imperfections, but there is no problem in putting it forward as a magical theory. Harav looked very calm on the surface and seemed to be deep in thought, but secretly he was breaking out in a cold sweat because he didn't understand what the other person was saying at all. But this is a gathering of legendary wizards, and everyone is actively exploring the truth of the universe. It's hard for him to suddenly say that he doesn't understand or doesn't know. Right? Harav opened his eyes suddenly, looked at Aurora beside him, tugged on the sleeve of the lazy witch, and asked eagerly, Aurora, tell me quickly, what does galaxy redshift mean? At this moment, he was extremely lucky that Aurora, who was also keen on studying the stars, was by his side, and there was someone he could discuss with. Chapter 150 Harav, It's Too Late to Explain Please tell me what the galaxy redshift is. What happened? Aurora had long noticed something strange about Harav. From the moment, he put on the ring. Harav's expression was startled. She almost thought that the other party had been attacked at the soul level. It's too late to explain. First tell me, what is the red shift of a galaxy? Harav spoke very fast, with an anxious look on his face. But those people were still waiting. Aurora shook her head. Sorry, I've never heard of this term either. Do you have any clues about that? This is probably a strange astronomical phenomenon. Harab asked again. It is unlikely that the two legendary wizards with extremely high attainments in astronomy could not even answer this. Bar? Aurora hesitated and said uncertainly. When I used magic to observe the light of stars in the distance, I accidentally discovered that their relative positions seemed to be changing. Maybe the so-called red shift of galaxies refers to this? Harab was also a little unsure. But there was obviously no time to hesitate now. You can only treat a dead horse as a living horse doctor. Harab gritted his teeth and quickly sank his consciousness into the magic realm. Under the gaze of four figures, he seemed to be steady but actually said in a panic. In fact, I have also noticed this. The galaxies in the distance seem to be gradually, well, gradually moving away from us under the influence of some kind of force. In short, the Big Bang Theory of the universe does have its rationality. Harab tried his best to consider his words while paying attention to the reactions of the four legendary wizards. Seeing that they did not jump out to refute, he felt relieved. Fine. Fortunately, I finally got over it. Yes, I think the phenomenon of galaxy red shift is likely to be evidence that the universe is constantly expanding. As long as the expansion rate is calculated and then extrapolated, the age of the universe can be roughly calculated. In addition, microwave radiation can also be used as the basis for the existence of this theory. Lin and explained eloquently. Harav suddenly realized that since space is constantly expanding, we only need to know the rate of expansion, and we can naturally deduce the beginning of the universe. Harav, who had just witnessed a supernova explosion, 
quickly got a glimpse of the mystery of the theory of universe expansion through analogy. That star suddenly exploded after collapsing hundreds of times, spewing out the internal material at an unimaginable speed. Perhaps the same is true for the so-called gravitational singularity. After understanding this, Harav was very excited and worked very hard to absorb this theory that might be related to the ultimate mystery of the universe. Even the parts he couldn't understand were written down forcibly, preparing to think about it carefully in the future. Just when he thought that this theory was impeccable and that he had glimpsed the truth of the universe, the other three people in the magic field refuted this argument. If all matter was born from the Big Bang, and even time and space appeared because of it, where did the singularity of the explosion come from? And why can so much matter and energy be derived? These questions were extremely horrifying and chilling to think about. Harav could not imagine what a world without time and space would be like. That was completely beyond the ability of his brain to accept. The senior officials of the arcane society's rigorous attitude towards magic theory and their terrifying knowledge reserves made Harav ashamed. For a moment, Harav even felt as if he had returned to the time when he had just learned magic. Everything was new and unknown to him. But he still had to maintain his style as a legendary wizard. This awkward feeling made Harav feel on pins and needles. And his original plan to discuss the formula of gravity with the top management of the arcane society could only be put aside. Because only by speaking less can he avoid exposing his true level. But since the magic field is a place for academic discussions, naturally everyone has to say something. After the other wizards finished talking about the other two possibilities for the origin of the universe, the dimensional theory, and the steady state theory, it was finally Harav's turn. Under the gaze of four pairs of eyes, Harav only felt a heavy pressure constantly coming. Ahem. Sir Albert and I have similar views on the origin of the universe. I won't elaborate too much here. Let me talk about the impact of magic structure on space. Harav changed his words very stiffly and talked about his areas of expertise, so as not to be corrected and die on the spot. Even so, I still couldn't help but worry a little bit whether the theories I told were too low level. However, Harav soon discovered that even the most knowledgeable legendary wizard named Albert Einstein was listening carefully to his words. Could it be that these, arcane society, wizards have not yet been able to study the best magic structure for performing space magic? No. Absolutely impossible. Harav quickly rejected this conjecture. It can be seen from this small universe where magic is manifested and those theories that explore the origin of the universe. The legendary wizards of the arcane society may have done much more research on gravity and space than they expected. Perhaps the other party already knew these theories. But because he had just arrived and it was his first time to participate in such a high-end academic gathering, it was difficult to refute his face. Just like the academic seminars held every year in the wizarding land. No matter how superficial the magic doctrines explained by the official wizards on stage are, they will listen carefully to each other's words and point out the mistakes. The academic atmosphere of the arcane society can only be superior to that of the wizarding land. Harav sighed secretly and explained his research results over the years as concisely as possible, and then looked at the legendary wizards, who were deep in thought, waiting for the other party to put forward some reference opinions. At this moment, Lin En was a little confused. If it was purely scientific theoretical knowledge, he would have no problem talking to Hera for three days and three nights. But if it had something to do with magic, he would not dare to speak casually to avoid making mistakes. Was caught on the spot, destroying the image he had painstakingly created. Before, Lin thought that Harav would definitely ask questions about the gravitational constant, and had even thought about how to deceive him. However, unexpectedly, his voice changed, and he directly talked about the impact of magic structure on the use of space magic. This was undoubtedly it is his knowledge blind spot. The white pigeon on the side shrank even more after seeing Harav's gaze sweeping over, not even daring to breathe. Fortunately, at this time, the light produced by the supernova explosion was rapidly disappearing under the acceleration of time hundreds of times, and everything within the visual range was swallowed up by endless darkness again.